Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 313 Take her away too. M.O. Linyuan's eyes were a little cold. You just saw the city boundary map in my hand, and you pestered me or saying that you want to leave the palace. Now you want me to believe that you have no other intentions. Are you treating me as your emperor father? Do you think you can play around at will and provoke me? Zhao Mingyu was completely panicked. She sat up from the bed and said quickly, No, your majesty, it's really not like that. I how could I think about the city boundary map? You better not. M.O. Linyuan sitting on the side of the bed chuckled. Zhao Mingyu, you do well to remember, if Zhao country finds the treasure ahead of me don't know what will happen to me, but as for what will happen to you. I know very well. He bent down, lowered his voice, and said with a faint smile, I promise you won't see the day when Zhao country rises. After he finished speaking, regardless of Zhao Mingyu's pale face, he smiled and got up. Wait. Your Majesty, wait. Seeing him about to leave, Zhao Mingyu felt like she woke up from a dream, and suddenly tugged Mo Linyuan's sleeves. Your Majesty is wise. You may not believe what I say, but I haven't done anything. If Your Majesty is not at ease, you can marry me and lock me directly in the cold palace. This way, I can't escape. Heh. Mo Linyuan shook his robe and said coldly, You're on your own. After he finished speaking, he strode out. Zhao Mingyu knew that Mo Linyuan was angry, and she felt even more uneasy. She must leave here immediately. If she continued to stay here, she was afraid that. But how can she leave? In a daze, Zhao Mingyu felt that her wound was aching again. However, she remembered her imperial brother who would come to deliver her dowry in a few days, and a gleam of light flashed in her eyes. At that time, would she be able to escape? She just didn't know if her imperial brother would help her, but there is always a way. A few days later, Princess Zhao was very contained. Even if she knew that her wounds would leave scars, she did not make a lot of noise. Finally, Zhao country's envoys sent the princess dowry over. The most valuable of this dowry list, apart from the fragments of the city boundary map, was the two cities. This time, the emperor of Zhao country really took great pains to win the trust of M.O. Linyuan M.O. Linyuan could not deny it. After a while, the prince from Zhao country asked to see his sister. M.O. Linyuan readily agreed. In the exquisite and majestic palace, Zhao Mingyu had been fidgeting ever since she knew that Zhao county's people had come. She didn't know how long she waited, until suddenly, she heard a familiar voice. A trace of disgust flashed in her eyes, but she quickly raised a smile and greeted them. Imperial brother. Zhao Mingyu told all the people in the palace to retreat, overjoyed to meet Zhao Xu, the second prince of Zhao country. Zhao Xu looked at Zhao Mingyu's pale face and made a sound. Well well, is this still our most favored princess in Zhao country? Why does she look so pitiful now? Zhao Mingyu knew that the other party was gloating. She took him into the bedroom, then gritted her teeth and whispered, Imperial brother, take me out of here. Zhao Xu raised his eyebrows slightly. Imperial sister, what are you talking about? You are the princess sent for a marriage alliance and you are here to establish the peaceful relations between two countries. How can you leave? If you leave, we are not here to become relatives but to become enemies. Zhao Mingyu gritted her teeth secretly. I don't believe that Emperor Father did not tell you anything. I have important information, and I want to go back to see Emperor Father. Zhao Xu snorted. Important information? You can just tell it to me. As for you, since you are married, don't think about going back anymore. His eyes became fierce and his voice became cold, currently in Zhao country, there is no place for you anymore, Imperial Sister. Chapter 314 The Man Being Forced One you! Zhao Mingyu gritted her teeth in anger. But she quickly changed her mind. She still had to beg him now, but as long as she can go back to Zhao country she wouldn't need to anymore because she made a copy of the city boundary map in Mo Linyuan's hands. This meant that as long as she goes back, Emperor Father should honor his promise. With this thought in mind, Zhao Mingyu suppressed the anger in her heart and said to Zhao Xu, I know that Imperial Brother has always been displeased because Emperor Father pampers me more, 
but now we are members of the same camp. My news can bring earth-shattering changes to Zhao country. You can fight with me in whatever way you want, but it must wait until we head back. Right now, you should be clear about where the priority lies. The second prince Zhao Xu sneered. If the news you talk about is so important, then Emperor Father will definitely remember to acknowledge your great merits. At that time will Zhao country still have a place for us brothers? So Imperial Sister, don't waste your energy. I won't take you back. Zhao Mingyu stared at him in shock, you you won't even listen to Emperor Father's commands. Zhao Xu laughed unkindly when he saw that she was so nervous. Okay, okay, my Imperial Sister, it's not impossible for me to take you back. A faint light flashed in Zhao Xu's eyes, and that meaningful tone made Zhao Mingyu's scalp numb. What do you want? She looked at Zhao Xu warily. And Zhao Xu looked at Zhao Mingyu from head to toe with an unkind look. Imperial sister, look at you now. You have nothing. Take a guess at what I want. Zhao Mingyu didn't understand at first, but thinking of a certain possibility, she suddenly crossed her arms across her chest and took two steps back. Beast! Beast? At this time, there were only him and Zhao Mingyu in the bedroom, so Zhao Xu's eyes became bolder. If you think I am a beast, then Imperial Sister can refuse. Anyway, apart from this, you don't need to offer other things. If you want me to take you back, this is the only way. After Zhao Xu finished speaking, he left triumphantly, and Zhao Mingyu didn't stop him in the end. The same father but different mother no matter how much Zhao Mingyu was willingly to sacrifice, it was impossible for her to agree to this. She couldn't pass the hurdle in her heart. This damn Zhao Xu. She must think of a way to force him to take her back to Zhao country. On the other side, Yi Mu stood up a little helplessly. Mo Linyuan compared the mark left on the door frame last time, and said seriously, not bad, an inch taller. Yi Mu sighed. She had a small face, but she did not lack in height. Was it necessary to fuss over such small gains? As if sensing her thoughts, Mo Linyuan said, a little bit is very important, Xiao Muir, I really hope you can get bigger in an instant. I can't even remember how many years I have been waiting for you. Yi Mu remembered her nonsensical thoughts before, and she was really embarrassed. Back then, she was sure that she was going back no matter what. Why couldn't she be more flexible in her plans? Thinking about it this way, she also felt that she really missed a lot. The previous actions of hiding from him were really uselessly depressing. She looked at the man in front of her. Fortunately, he never gave up, solving the problem at hand. If she didn't think things through and really left with the city boundary map and left, that she would feel a lifetime of regret, even if she managed to save her father. When she thought about this, she was a little afraid, but Mo Linyuan was hunched over, as if recording the height of a child, leaving a new mark on the door frame. Chapter, 315 The Man Being Forced To When Mo Linyuan lowered his head, Yi Mu looked at his face. With his serious appearance and exquisite features, she was completely unable to see the usual scheming and plotting. In this moment, he was simple, just like an ordinary 18-year-old boy. She moved and the next second she leaned in and kissed the corner of his mouth gently. This time should be Yi Mu's first time taking initiative. Mo Linyuan's breathing was stagnant, and he didn't recover for a long while, but Yi Mu chuckled and jumped back a little farther. Suddenly I found that I still like you very much, Xiao Momo. In the future, please teach me a lot. After she finished speaking, she felt that she was a little perverted by doing this, so she turned her head and ran away. Only then did Mo Linyuan recover, annoyed that he had let go of such a good opportunity. When Xiao Muir kissed him just now, why did he go into a daze? They were infinitely sweet on this side, but Xiao Mingyu's life was very difficult. In the next few days, she tried all kinds of methods openly and secretly, but Zhao Xu was unmoved. No matter what benefits she promised, Zhao Xu would not help take her away. Seeing the day for Zhao Xu to return get closer and closer, Zhao Mingyu finally couldn't sit still. On this day, she learned that Zhao Xu had gone to find Mo Linyuan to say goodbye, and that he intended to depart for home the next day. Mo Linyuan also promised that he would definitely find a suitable man in Mo country for Zhao Mingyu. Zhao Mingyu, who was still recuperating was trembling with anger when she heard the news. At this time, the servants accompanying her in her marriage came over, 
but none of them were her former trusted servants they were all Zhao Xu's people. Zhao Mingyu had no choice. During the evening and in spite of the eyes of others, she called Zhao Xu over, saying she wanted to say goodbye. Imperial sister, have you decided? As soon as Zhao Xu entered the place where Zhao Mingyu lived, he showed some eager expressions. This imperial sister was competitive, and she regularly pressured and crushed the princes, but Emperor Father favored her, and the princes couldn't win against her. So when he had a chance, he had long wanted to teach this sister a lesson and crush her dominant spirit. And Zhao Mingyu was also very good-looking, with a slender body and a decent appearance. It would be great if he could have a taste. With these thoughts in mind, he let everyone leave seeing that the servants next to her listened to other people's orders, Zhao Mingyu was itching with hatred but couldn't say anything. Imperial brother, what do you want? Zhao Xu frowned, Imperial sister, don't pretend to be confused. I have already told you what I want. If you do this, won't you be afraid that I will retaliate against you after returning home? Zhao Mingyu's eyes were gloomy, and at the same time, there was some suspicion in her heart as to why Zhao Xu was so confident. The only explanation was that he didn't plan to take her back at all, so he dared to say anything. Unexpectedly, Zhao Xu smiled coldly. Don't you know? Imperial sister, your consort mother, has been arrested by my stepmother for using witchcraft. What? Zhao Mingyu was surprised. How long was she away for those people to dare to attack her mother? Why did no one in the country send news to her? Zhao Xu drawled, however, because of imperial sister's honor, Emperor Father did not directly kill her in the face of ironclad evidence. You'll find that the situation is no longer the same when you go back. If you want your mother to live, you have to beg me. And even if I slept with you now, would you dare to lay charges against me when you go back? Chapter 316 Scheme within a scheme one Zhao Mingyu didn't expect the other party to be fearless, and it turned out that this was the reason for his boldness. She thought of her consort mother who was currently in danger of losing her life, and remembered that she did not receive any news from Zhao country during this period of time. She panicked, and her determination to go back as soon as possible became more and more urgent. She must go back. At this time, Zhao Xu said with a smile, Okay, I've said everything that needs to be said. Has Imperial Sister made a decision? If not, I will be gone tomorrow. He touched Zhao Mingyu's face boldly with his fingers. She originally wanted to dodge, but when she remembered something, she gritted her teeth and didn't avoid it. Seeing that Zhao Mingyu had made a decision and was ready, Zhao Xu was overjoyed and picked up Zhao Mingyu. Zhao Mingyu was flustered. This beast, does he really want to? Zhao Mingyu was thrown on the bed. Zhao Xu's movements were not gentle at all. He directly untied his belt and tied Zhao Mingyu up, then stretched out his hand to tear her skirt. Zhao Mingyu knew martial arts. If she regretted it, and wanted to break free, it was possible. Her pure innocent body, she originally thought that for her own motives, it would be fine to give it to M.O. Linyuan. After seeing M.O. Linyuan, she confirmed that only a person like him was worthy of owning her body, but at this time, M.O. country has no place for her. In order to go back, she can only, can only. Thinking of this, a tear fell on the bed, something was stuffed in her mouth, and then, what followed was a painful affair. On the other side, M.O. Linyuan had received this news a long time ago he even knew what time Zhao Xu left. At the beginning, he never thought that Zhao Xu would be such a beast, and he never thought that Zhao Mingyu would actually agree. Otherwise, with her martial arts, even ten of Zhao Xu would not be her opponent. At this point it was already midnight, and Yi Mu who was sleeping beside him had not woken up yet. M.O. Linyuan dismissed the servants with a wave of his hand. This imperial palace is like this. Hiding in dirt and grime, the more powerful the person, the more ruthless. It was enough for him to be completely stained with this darkness. There was no need to let Yi Mu know, nor was there a need to dirty her ears. His little Muer as long as she works hard to grow up, it is enough. The next day, the Zhao country party said their goodbyes, while Zhao Mingyu claimed that she was ill and could not show her face. M.O. Linyuan personally escorted them to the palace gate. Your Majesty, please don't worry about seeing me out. Imperial sister has a bad personality. In the future, I will have to trouble your Majesty to take care of her. Zhao Xu said these words with a dignified bearing, 
as if the brute who forced his little sister last night was not him. Today, his whole person was more energetic, and his expression was evidently delighted. Mo Linyuan did not look around, as if he hadn't noticed at all in Zhao Xu's team, there was a petite, pale-faced stable boy. He smiled and said, definitely, Zhao country can rest assured of this. I will choose a desirable man for the princess of Zhao. The two exchanged a few more words, and then Zhao Xu took his people away. As soon as they left, Yi Mu couldn't help but said, Hey, I think there is a person in their group that looks like Zhao Mingyu. Why didn't you stop them? Yi Mu didn't know exactly what Mo Linyuan's scheme was this time, so she asked him in confusion. Mo Linyuan touched her hair, his eyes darkening. Don't worry, everything is under my control. On the way back, the Zhao country convoy was walking very slowly. The anxious Zhao Mingyu ignored her weak body and found Zhao Xu to say, Imperial brother, I really have a very important and urgent matter. If you have to walk so slowly, then give me a horse. I'll go back by myself. Chapter, 317 Scheme within a scheme too. In fact, she had already made up her mind to go. With her martial arts, she wasn't worried about what she would encounter on the road. At this time, Zhao Xu, who was hugging Beauty's left and right in the carriage, raised his eyebrows slightly and directly stopped the convoy on the official road. He pointed to the woods on one side and proclaimed he wanted to say a few words with Zhao Mingyu alone. Zhao Mingyu was not stupid. In the wilderness, she couldn't take risks easily despite possessing high martial arts skills. She felt safer in crowded places. Seeing that Zhao Mingyu was not leaving, Zhao Xu chuckled, left three words in her ear, and walked over first. Those three characters made Zhao Mingyu change her expression greatly because the three words he said were, city boundary map. Zhao Xu, how could he know about the city boundary map? Zhao Mingyu hurriedly followed Zhao Xu. Under the scorching sun, she broke into cold sweat. As soon as she arrived in the woods, Zhao Mingyu couldn't help but ask, Zhao Xu. What did you mean just now? What kind of city boundary map? Zhao Xu waved his fan, his eyes full of mockery. Imperial sister really doesn't know what I mean. Not only do I know that you came to Mo country to steal the city boundary map, but I also know that the old man who refuses to die promised you that if you can get the city boundary map, he will crown you as the female emperor after he dies. Mockery appeared at the corner of his mouth. Female emperor. Zhao Mingyu, your ambitions are really big. Impossible Zhao Mingyu took a few steps backwards. These are all secrets that only a few confidants knew. Could it be that someone betrayed her? Where is the city boundary map now? At this time, Zhao Mingyu was a little bit afraid to think about whether the city boundary map had been delivered to the Zhao country troops or. Zhao Xu stepped forward and said, Are you thinking about that map? Ha! Huh. I don't know which expert helped me. He told me of your conspiracy in advance and gave me the opportunity to intercept the map in advance. The city boundary map is not in the hands of Emperor Father, but in my hands. For Zhao Mingyu, this information was no less shocking than a lightning bolt hitting her. So Zhao Xu had been playing with her all along. He clearly knew what she was going to do, and he had already obtained the city boundary map, but he still used this to deceive her for her body. This beast. There was a killing intent in her eyes. She wanted to capture the Zhao Xu in front of her as a hostage, but Zhao Xu was prepared for her attack. He narrowly avoided Zhao Mingyu's strike, took a step back, and in the next second, Zhao Mingyu was surrounded by a group of people. Zhao Xu. You're despicable. At this time, Zhao Mingyu's chest was violently heaving up and down. She had just given her first time yesterday in exchange for the city boundary map, and this damn beast was actually lying to her the whole time. Zhao Xu laughed. Soldiers do not tire of using deceit. Do you think I will let you return alive? If not, why can't I taste you before you die? I am going to kill you. But as soon as Zhao Mingyu stepped forward, she was stopped by several masters of internal strength martial arts. Her eyes seemed to breathe fire. Zhao Xu. If you dare to kill me, Emperor Father won't let you off. She still had an Emperor Father. She didn't believe that Emperor Father would ignore her. Unexpectedly, when she said this, Zhao Xu looked at her with increasing pity. 
You know, I sent a message back saying that the city boundary map is in my hands, and that if Emperor Father wants it, he must allow me to kill you. Take a guess at how Emperor Father replied. Zhao Mingyu didn't dare to think. Zhao Xu smiled and said, Father did not hesitate much at all before he agreed. He only told me not to tell you everything, but I think you have the right to know why you will become a ghost. Chapter, 318 Kill the Witness One Zhao Xu's words made Zhao Mingyu unable to recover for a while. It was no wonder that her consort mother was arrested and her loyal servants didn't pass on news to her. It must be the result of her emperor father's suppression. She was previously in power because of the emperor's favor, but now that she was without favor, she would naturally lose power. She resented only one thing, although the city boundary map was alluring, did all those years of imperial favor not count. Originally, she put herself in danger for the sake of Zhao country. Even though she had her own selfish intentions, she hoped in her heart that Zhao country was as prosperous and powerful as Mo country. Why did Emperor Father do this to her? For a map, could she be sacrificed so casually? Right now, Zhao Mingyu regretted that she had copied the city boundary map. Not only did it benefit Zhao Xu, the beast, but it also benefited those cruel and unscrupulous people. What are you all still standing there for? Zhao Xu snorted. Kill her, and then we can get back on the road. At this time, all of Zhao Mingyu's hopes were gone. If she died in the territory of Mo country, she might even be used by Zhao Xu and others. Later, if Zhao country wanted to go to war after receiving the city boundary map, they even had this prepared reason. Thinking that her death might be used by them to create a scene, Zhao Mingyu fought desperately, but she was outnumbered. She tried her best but could not break free from the encirclement. Her body was continuously injured. She watched Zhao Xu sneer while holding a fan. Zhao Mingyu shed tears of regret, thinking of the humiliation of last night, and the feeling of relying on her homeland was completely reduced to nothingness. Just then, one of them was about to slice off her head. Zhao Mingyu's eyes widened, watching the blade approach quickly. Clang! Hearing a crisp sound, the knife that nearly killed her was knocked away. Who is it? Zhao Xu's expression changed instantly as a dozen people in black walked out of the forest, headed by Mo Linyuan and Yimu. Where is Prince Zhao planning to take Princess Zhao? Didn't you mean to establish diplomatic relations between the two countries? Are you trying to renege on the agreement? Zhao Xu was shocked. Before, he had left a woman similar to Zhao Mingyu's appearance and figure in the palace as a fake, while sneaking the real Zhao Mingyu out. He didn't think that the truth would be discovered so soon. The moment Zhao Mingyu saw Mo Linyuan, she seemed to have seen a savior. Fortunately, Mo Linyuan was not easy to fool, and followed the convoy over here. She must not die, she must not die. But because she was seriously injured, she was held down by Zhao Xu's people as soon as she wanted to speak. Upon seeing this, Zhao Xu rolled his eyes, walked out and said, Your Majesty, apologies. Actually, I have ineffable difficulties behind my actions. Mo Linyuan, who was dressed in black, held on to Yi Mu, who was also dressed in black, and asked with a smile, Then I really want to hear, what are Zhao country's troubles? Zhao Xu hurriedly stepped forward and said, The truth is, although Zhao Mingyu is Zhao country's princess, Emperor Father discovered not long ago that Zhao Mingyu's mother, Consort Ming was practicing witchcraft in the palace. Emperor Father was furious, but because the consort Ming is weak in nature, Emperor Father thinks that the real practitioner is Zhao Mingyu. Therefore, I was sent to take her life. Zhao Mingyu is a princess sent for a peace marriage, but our angry Emperor Father refuses to listen to any explanations. Therefore, I thought of a compromise that involves using a woman who looks very similar to Zhao Mingyu to impersonate her, while bringing the true sinner to justice according to the law. After a while, the person who pretended to be Zhao Mingyu will naturally die as she was ordered to. When the time comes, ITLLB like the marriage alliance never even happened. Isn't it perfect? Chapter, 319 Kill the Witness 2 Zhao Xu's tongue was very articulate, and Zhao Mingyu was currently gagged and pressed on the ground. At this time, he could say whatever he wanted. Zhao Xu had a smile on his face, but he was very angry because if Mo Linyuan hadn't arrived in time, he would be able to blame Mo country for Zhao Mingyu's death. 
when the time comes, they would also have a fair and honest reason for the two countries to go to war. Zhao Mingyu would die regardless, so why not contribute a little something to Zhao country for the last time? Unfortunately, Mo Linyuan ruined such a good plan. After hearing this, Mo Linyuan smiled and looked at Zhao Mingyu who was on the ground. I don't want to listen to one side of the story. I think Princess Zhao seems to have something to say. It's better to let her say a few words, so as not to wrong a good person. Zhao Xu quickly blocked Mo Linyuan's sight. What's worth listening to about the words of the daughter of a sinner? Besides, your majesty might not know, but when I arrived, I heard the confession of Zhao Mingyu's cronies. Only then did I find out that this woman was no longer a virgin. That's the real reason Emperor Father had me rush over if the peace marriage proceeded, then wouldn't it be a loss of Zhao country's pride? This is a matter of Zhao country's imperial family affairs, and I hope your majesty can give way. Before Mo Linyuan spoke, Zhao Mingyu on one side already showed a hateful expression. Zhao Xu, this beast, knew very well who took her virginity away. Mo Linyuan frowned. Since it is within the territory of Mo country, and since Princess Zhao still has the identity of a princess sent for a peace marriage, then I have to take care of this matter. Second prince, you should let her speak. Zhao Xu saw Mo Linyuan's stubbornness and deep hatred blossomed in his heart. He glanced at Zhao Mingyu who was on the side, killing intent flashing in his eyes. He turned around and said, Okay, if your majesty wants to question her, then let her go. In reality, he squinted his eyes and motioned for his guards to kill her to shut her up forever. Zhao Mingyu's eyes widened in an instant. If she died, she could only die with humiliation and infamy. She doesn't want to die, she doesn't want to die. The two people who were pressing her down were instructed to pull the person up and let go, but one of them suddenly took a dagger in his hand, and stabbed Zhao Mingyu fiercely. At this very moment, Yi Mu moved suddenly she almost appeared to float in front of Zhao Mingyu, and struck her abdomen hard. Zhao Mingyu closed her eyes. The imposing palm didn't make her feel anything at all, but the two people behind her were instantly knocked away. Zhao Mingyu was stunned. She stared at Yi Mu in front of her blankly. Is this person a human? How can she move so fast? Zhao Xu didn't expect that none of his people could kill her even at such a close distance, so he panicked. Your Majesty, what do you mean by this? Mo Linyuan did not answer, and in the next second, Yi Mu and Zhao Mingyu were surrounded by Zhao Xu's people. Zhao Mingyu clutched her chest and only said one phrase. Mo Linyuan, I copied the city boundary map Zhao Xu wants to kill me and take the city boundary map back. Zhao Xu's face changed drastically. He motioned with his hands, and everyone in the Zhao country convoy came over. Mo Linyuan only brought a dozen people, so Zhao Xu felt that he still had a chance. Your Majesty, don't listen to this woman's nonsense. How about this, if you want this woman, they will leave her and you can let me go. If we fight to the death, it would not be beneficial for either party. It would be best if Mo Linyuan could call for a ceasefire, but if not, then he wouldn't mind fighting. Chapter 320 Changing Sides, Helping the Enemy won. Mo Linyuan remained calm and unhurried. Are you threatening me? I don't dare Zhao Xu's slender eyes narrowed into a slit, and he said maliciously, it's just that your majesty is more precious than ten thousand tails of gold. It is best to think twice before doing anything. Mo Linyuan smiled. He turned to Yi Mu. Muir, come here. When he said so, Yi Mu nodded, and walked in his direction with Zhao Mingyu. Zhao Xu saw that Mo Linyuan wanted to fight him to the death, so he said harshly, stop them. In response, more than a dozen masters of internal strength immediately slashed towards Yimu. Yimu looked very, very small, and they could not feel any internal force fluctuation on her body, but the next second, she waved her sleeve and the other dozen people were immediately knocked over by internal force. They couldn't even get up again. This internal force, this combat power, immediately made Zhao Xu panic. It was no wonder that Mo Linyuan stood there like he was holding a winning ticket, unmoved at all. It turned out he was accompanied by Yi Mu, this killing machine. Zhao Mingyu didn't expect Yi Mu to be so powerful. She was very surprised. Seeing Zhao Xu completely suppressed, she heard Mo Linyuan ask in the next second before she had a chance to think about it, What do you want to do with this person, Princess Zhao? 
Zhao Mingyu looked at Zhao Xu, and Zhao Xu suddenly panicked. He sternly said, Your Majesty, you wouldn't think about doing anything against me, right? Too am a prince of Zhao country. If I die, the two countries will go to war. Zhao Mingyu knew that with Yi Mu's martial arts, even if there were many more people around Zhao Xu, she could easily kill Zhao Xu. After thinking about this, she completely relaxed and the hatred surged. Gritting her teeth, she said, I want him to die. Mo Linyuan smiled softly, and he asked, Then what will you use to exchange? At this time, Zhao Mingyu had nothing. She really didn't know what else she could use to pay Mo Linyuan, so she directly said, I will use my life in exchange. Who would have guessed that Mo Linyuan actually shook his head? I don't want your life. Then what do you want? Zhao Mingyu raised her head, grit her teeth and said, As long as you help me kill him, I can give you anything. Mo Linyuan said leisurely, originally, Because Zhao country fooled me like this, I plan to kill you all, but... Mo Linyuan squinted his eyes, and said calmly, However, you can replicate the city boundary map after looking at it once. This ability fills us with anticipation. Zhao Mingyu seemed to understand, but also seemed to not understand. She looked up at Mo Linyuan, but because of her injury, blood rushed to her face. When she looked at Mo Linyuan's figure, there was a haze of red. You what do you want? Mo Linyuan suddenly leaned close and said word by word in her ear, you must have seen the real city boundary map of Zhao country. I want you to draw it. Zhao Mingyu's pupils shrank instantly. Mo Linyuan knows, he knows that the city boundary map she brought was a fake. It makes sense from the fact that she would steal the city boundary map, it means that she did not bring the real city boundary map over. Thought it through. Mo Linyuan's voice seemed to echo from afar. Do you agree? He asked with laughter in his voice. At that moment, Zhao Mingyu felt her determination rise. Okay. I agree. Help me kill him. The next series of events were solved very easily. There were more. Mo Linyuan said, if the princess can accomplish what she promised me, then these people, and the Zhao people in the Mo country palace, will all be handed over to you. Zhao Mingyu nodded. Then your majesty, I only have one request. As long as your majesty helps me, I will immediately copy the city boundary map after I go back. The people who were alive were all shocked. What the Zhao princess wanted to copy wouldn't be the map from the Zhao country palace, right? Mo Linyuan nodded, go on. Zhao Mingyu cowed out three times before Mo Linyuan, and then said firmly, Please, your majesty, put these Zhao people and those in the palace to death. Don't let a single one escape. Chapter, 322 The Real City Boundary Map 1 Zhao Mingyu's words shocked everyone. She wanted to kill all of the Zhao people. When the people of the Zhao country heard her words, they immediately knelt down and cried out, begging the princess to spare their lives. They did so because they had no other alternative, but Zhao Mingyu was unmoved. She wanted to kill these people, but not because they almost helped Zhao Xu to kill herself, nor because she was abandoned by Zhao country and she wanted to kill them to vent her anger. She looked at Mo Linyuan. She believed that Mo Linyuan understood her intentions. You want to go back to Zhao country? Zhao Mingyu nodded. Mo Linyuan really understood her. These were all from the country of Zhao, and they were all Zhao Xu's people. If any one of them were to be let off, it would be very detrimental to her in the future. Whether it was that she had her virginity taken by Zhao Xu, that she wanted to help Mo Linyuan copy the city boundary map, or that she begged Mo Linyuan to kill Zhao Xu, none of the people of Zhao country could know about these events. Otherwise, she would be convicted of collaborating with the enemy and treason if she returned. On the contrary, if these people were dead, even if those people suspected her, there would be no evidence. She could push all of it onto Mo Linyuan he wouldn't care anyway. Mo Linyuan smiled. As long as Zhao Mingyu was worth it, he really didn't care if he shouldered all the responsibilities. So he stretched out his hand. Zixu. His Majesty. Except for Zhao Princess, spare no one from Zhao Country. Yes. What happened next were a lot of deaths. It was a dozen versus more than a hundred people, but these odds did not create any difficulties for the Mo Country soldiers. Zhao Mingyu knelt there unmoved, listening to the screams, curses, and pleas for mercy. 
didn't these people watch her die before? What was wrong with her borrowing someone else's hands to kill them? The only thing that moved her was probably when she looked up and found that Imo Linyuan was holding Yi Mu in his arms. Her face was buried in his chest, with his hands covering her ears. She felt a lot of feeling stir in her heart. Yi Mu had obviously killed before. She had thought that with Yi Mao's terrifying martial arts, it was no wonder that Mo Linyuan was so fond of Yi Mu, and she deserved his respect because of her skills. But what she didn't expect was that, despite having killed before, Mo Linyuan still had a very protective attitude towards her. Could it be that he couldn't see how strong Yi Mu was? Soon, those slashing sounds were exhausted, and Mo Linyuan let go of her. At this time, Yi Mu was a little annoyed and gave Mo Linyuan a glare, but Mo Linyuan just smiled and did not speak. It was probably that Yi Mu couldn't see blood before, so even if she is now healed, he would still be subconsciously worried, right? After Mo Linyuan burned the corpses in a pile, he secretly took Zhao Mingyu back. Then Zhao Mingyu also fulfilled her promise and truly copied the real city boundary map of Zhao country. The city boundary map was finally complete. Mo Linyuan asked someone to assemble the fragments. Finally, a real city boundary map was completed. At this time, after everyone in the palace had left, Mo Linyuan lifted the dragon pen and with a serious expression wrote down three words on the map, city boundary map. This time, when these three characters fell and the dragon seal was printed on, not only Yimu, but even Mo Linyuan saw a light flash. There's no mistaking it this is the real city boundary map. At this moment, Mo Linyuan was also a little excited. After all, he had been looking for it for so many years. However, when Yimu wanted to look at the map, he pushed her head back. Chapter, 323 The Real City Boundary Map 2 From now on, you must keep a distance from my dragon desk at all times. Yi Mu snickered. Are you worried about me? Afraid of me going back? Mo Linyuan hurriedly put away the city boundary map in a bamboo case, and then said seriously, this can't be treated as a joke. His serious appearance really made Yi Mu playful. She suddenly leaned over and grabbed the bamboo case with an extremely fast speed. Yi Mu. Mo Linyuan called her name seriously, and reached out to grab it. Of course, Yi Mu refused. She wanted to escape while holding it. But what she didn't expect was that Mo Linyuan's speed could keep up with her. Even if she did not try her best, she was still a little confused when she was stopped in front of the dragon desk. Give it to me, Xiao Muir. This is not a joke. Mo Linyuan never felt so nervous before, his heart seemed to want to jump out of his throat, although he didn't believe that she would disappear if she got the map. But looking at Yi Mu holding the bamboo case in her hands, the expression in his eyes became dangerous. But Yi Mu didn't notice. She harumphed and thought, I just wanted to take a look, I won't touch it. No way. Mo Linyuan stretched out his hand to grab it again, but he wasn't able to. Seeing Yi Mu's gloating expression, he was immediately annoyed. This little thing, doesn't she know what she can and can't play with? In the next second, Yi Mu changed the bamboo slip to her other hand, flexibly avoiding Mo Linyuan, and just when she felt proud, Mo Linyuan suddenly stopped grabbing at the map. Instead, he bowed his head and kissed Yi Mu's mouth directly. Yi Mu's eyes widened. She wanted to hide, but the dragon desk was behind her. In the next second, she was pressed down by Mo Linyuan on the dragon desk, and the kiss deepened. Yi Mu was flustered. She let go of her hand and the bamboo case fell to the ground, but at this time, no one cared about it anymore. Mo Linyuan looped his arm around Yi Mu's waist, closed his eyes and carefully traced her lips. After raging in the opponent's mouth, he looked at Yi Mu's blushing face and smiled softly, Are you going to continue making trouble? Yi Mu immediately shook her head, no more. Mo Linyuan reached out and angrily squeezed the tip of her little nose. If you make trouble again, I will eat you now. Yi Mu was dumbfounded. I haven't matured yet. Then don't fan the fire. Mo Linyuan let go of her, smacking her bottom with a steady hand. If you are naughty in the future, don't blame me for eating you raw. Yi Mu was immediately turned obedient like a rabbit. She clutched her bottom and ran away quickly. She was only fourteen, and if they do that now, it would definitely be so uncomfortable. 
Mo Linyuan was such a beast. After Yi Mu slipped out, she felt bored, she went directly to Zhao Mingyu. Before, she was somewhat defensive against Zhao Mingyu, but now, she felt more at ease because Zhao Mingyu was completely dependent on them for her survival. At this time, Zhao Mingyu was packing up her bags. Right now, Mo country was not a place she could stay for long. She must go back to Zhao country and take back what was hers. When she saw Yi Mu come in, she was a little surprised. Previously because of their differing political stand, she and Yi Mu were clear enemies. They naturally couldn't not be wholehearted when they talked before. Now, it was different. When Zhao Mingyu saw Yi Mu, she gave her a sincere smile. Miss Yi, what brings you here? Yi Mu watched her pack her things and couldn't help asking, are you planning to go back? Chapter, 324 Friend 1 Zhao Mingyu nodded. The longer I delay, the harder it will be for me to go back. It is better to return as soon as possible. Yi Mu nodded. She respected Zhao Mingyu's strength, especially her decisiveness earlier to let Mo Linyuan kill everyone. She admired Zhao Mingyu's strong will. So she said, if you are unhappy in Zhao country, you can actually still marry over to Mo country. After all, Mo Linyuan will definitely not return the two cities contributed by Zhao country. When you come, he will still help you to find a good husband. After hearing this, Zhao Mingyu smiled softly. She suddenly wanted to see her emperor father's frustrated expression. Her downfall was that she had trusted her emperor father too much, and thus gave up everything to come to Mo country alone. Unfortunately, her emperor father broke her heart. Now, she would no longer rely on him wholeheartedly and fight for his favor to live. The two girls chatted privately with each other. After a while, Yi Mu smiled suddenly and said, By the way, after such a long time, you are the first girl I have ever seen that is so self-reliant and independent. But it also showed how cutthroat the Zhao country's palace was, to force a princess to be so strong. Zhao Mingyu said with a smile, I will treat that as a compliment, but if I had the choice, I also hope to be able to embroider flowers and catch butterflies like ordinary women and not worry about the world. It is a pity that my current state was all forced out of me. Yi Mu listened carefully. Zhao Mingyu said, Miss Yi might not be aware, Zhao country is really not a good place. Father has more than forty children. To stand out from among them, my hands have long been stained with blood. She smiled and continued, I did things that other princesses will be afraid of when they hear it. I did things that other princes don't want to be tainted with. Emperor father wanted to lay his hands on his own daughter-in-law, so I volunteered to find evidence of imperial brother's intent to rebel, giving emperor father a chance to kill him. It was also me that altered my imperial sister-in-law's appearance so that she could become a new concubine of Emperor Father. My brother cursed at me before he died, but he seemed to have forgotten that when I was a child, he used a whip to lash me. Zhao Mingyu said this while giggling. She was bright and beautiful. Although her face was injured, Yi Mu still thought it was very beautiful when she laughed. Seeing Yi Mu staring at herself, Zhao Mingyu pulled her over to the table and poured her some tea, does Miss Yi think that I am frightening? She should be scared, right? Since Zhao country's women were so disgusted and terrified of her. Yi Mu shook her head. Everyone has their own methods of survival. No one has the right to say anything if they are just judging you now without knowing the reasons of the past. Zhao Mingyu laughed when she heard this. Miss Yi is indeed a sensible person. No wonder His Majesty of Mo country favors you so much. She poured herself a cup of tea and drank it, her eyes flashing with a sinister light. When that brother was young, he had someone tie me up and used a whip to lash me because I accidentally smashed his things. When I was a child, I was frail and sick. That beating almost killed me. So, all this time, I've hated him. I just pretended I didn't remember it at all. Later on, I became his follower, but he didn't seem to remember beating me. Seeing that I was capable and loyal, he started to rely on me. Yi Mu sighed, wicked people won't remember the evil things they did, they just make you suffer bitterness. Chapter, 325 Friend 2 There's no bitterness, these hardships are nothing. Zhao Mingyu sneered. Compared with the things I have done, the suffering I have suffered is nothing. Miss Yi should not sympathize with me because of my words. I am a true bad guy. 
Yi Mu was dumb, her slack expression fell into Zhao Mingya's hands. Zhao Mingya's hands felt itchy for some reason, and so she stretched out her hand to squeeze Yi Mu's face. I wanted to do this before your face is really tender. Yi Mu's eyes widened and looked at her accusingly, while Zhao Mingyu continued. Little lass, although you are powerful, you still have to be careful. There are many bad guys like me. She said gloomily, you know, in order to fight for favor for my consort mother, I secretly ruined the appearance of a beloved concubine, and caused three or four women to have miscarriages. In order to stop my mother's pretty face from aging so fast, I forced her to eat placenta monthly. Even my mother was terrified of me, let alone other women. She smiled and stared at Yi Mu. Right now you are still young, and you are the only one beside Imo Linyuan, but all men are greedy, let alone an emperor. I don't believe that there are men in this world who choose to be with a single person for life. And even if there are, it's only temporary. Once he does something to hurt you, with another woman by him, everything in the past will become a passing moment. Yi Mu couldn't help but chuckle. You are only eighteen, but you know a lot. Of course. Zhao Mingyu said, I grew up in the imperial harem, and I learned those tricks from the women in the harem. There is nothing they want dare do. If Mo Linyuan is really like that, you can't be as naive as you are now. You have to learn to protect yourself. Was she naive? Yi Mu quietly touched her face. She did seem quite innocent. Zhao Mingyu felt in the mood to chat, and she told Yi Mu many stories. Those weird methods one after another made Yi Mu speechless, and the two talked very happily. Finally, Yi Mu suddenly said, Zhao's princess, have you ever thought that you are taking advantage of Mo Linyuan to go back to seize power right now, but in the future, he might use you to seize Zhao country? Zhao Mingyu smiled and said, of course I have thought about that. There are no eternal friends, only eternal interests. Don't worry. If there is such a day, I will not fight against Mo Linyuan. Why? Yi Mu couldn't help asking, but Zhao Mingyu smiled without saying a word. Because in the past few days, she gradually figured out that she seemed to have fallen into Mo Linyuan's game from the beginning. She took one step and he took ten steps. Everyone was his chess piece, and he played with them in the palm of his hand. Not to mention, in the end, she still has to be grateful to him. Such a man was truly terrible. So Zhao Mingyu changed the subject. Don't worry, after I return to my country, I will work hard. At that time, if Mo Linyuan dares to bully you, you can also come to me. Yi Mu said very seriously, he won't bully me. PFF, I mean just in case. Silly girl. Zhao Mingyu poked Yi Mu's head, and Yi Mu was stunned. Besides Mo Linyuan, only Zhao Mingyu would make such an intimate gesture. Zhao Mingyu saw Yi Mu looking at her with piercing eyes, and said with a smile, What? I can't poke you. Are we not friends? Yi Mu couldn't help but smile, You are right, we are friends. Moreover, it was her first female friend here, and it must have been the same for Zhao Mingyu. Chapter, 326 Farewell 1 On the day Zhao Mingyu left, Yi Mu accompanied her on behalf of Mo Linyuan. Zhao Mingyu could not go back with great fanfare, so it was just the two of them on their own horse, riding alone along the official road. Zhao Mingyu, dressed in her disguise, smiled and said, When I go back, I will say it was Imo Linyuan who discovered Zhao Xu's intention and killed him. He snatched the city boundary map back, and hearing this news, I snuck out, narrowly escaping death. After hiding my identity, I evaded pursuit and returned to my home country. After she finished speaking, she smiled and asked Yi Mu, Do you think there is a problem with my rhetoric? Yi Mu shook her head, just say what you think is appropriate when the time comes. Anyway, it doesn't matter what you say. Mo Linyuan won't care. Zhao Mingyu said, naturally, he won't care. Emperor Father dare not come to trouble him, but I am the bitter one. I took this trip in vain not only did I not gain anything, I suffered a double loss. Yi Mu couldn't help but expose her, Mo Linyuan has already handed over his people in Zhao Kingdom to you. With your ability, it is not difficult to regain power. Maybe you can go even further. So no matter what you say, I will not sympathize with you. Xiao Muir is so ruthless. Don't call me Xiao Muir. Yi Mu looked at her helplessly. Then why can Mo Linyuan call you that? 
Zhao Mingyu was a little dissatisfied. Yi Mu sighed, I can't beat him. Ha ha ha. Zhao Mingyu couldn't help but look at her sympathetically, I already have a foreboding of a future where you will be eaten up. Yi Mu felt resentful and didn't want to talk to her. The horses under the two of them walked slowly, the weather gradually became colder, and the trees on both sides turned yellow. The scenery still looked beautiful. Zhao Mingyu was also full of expectations for the future. When I go back, I must force my emperor father to make me the female crown prince. I want to be a female emperor. Why can men do it and women cannot? I didn't work hard for so long to end up as emperor father's dog. Seeing her high spirits, Yi Mu couldn't help asking, what about after you become the emperor? Zhao Mingyu's beautiful eyes brightened. Of course it is to expand the imperial harem and enjoy it. When I was a child looking at my father's harem of three palaces and six courtyards, I had a terrifying idea, if I could be the emperor, it would be great. When that time comes, I also want three palaces and six courtyards, and to be pampered by others. Yi Mu thought about the scene and was inexplicably interested. Wouldn't you be too busy then? Zhao Mingyu snorted at her. Why does this sound like jealousy? That's right, just one is enough to keep you busy. If you want to have three palaces and six courtyards, I am afraid it will be very difficult in your lifetime. That sounds terrible I've never thought about that kind of thing. Yi Mu said hastily, it's tiring to have multiple lovers. I would rather live peacefully with one. There is nothing wrong with that. Hearing what she said, Zhao Mingyu smiled slightly and said with some jealousy, actually, I envy you very much. Mo Linyuan is not a good person, but from what I can see, he is very sincere to you so far. I, at least, haven't met an emperor who pampers someone so much. You don't have to abide by the imperial etiquettes and get the freedom you want. This is the result of his hard work. Yi Mu was embarrassed and humbly wanted to say a few words, when she heard Zhao Mingyu say, it's a pity I couldn't seduce him. Otherwise, how could I let you benefit from it? Yi Mu. You'd better go soon, he'll send you off here. Chapter, 327. Farewell too. Come on. Zhao Mingyu smirked, I can't even speak the truth anymore. So petty, no wonder your man doesn't dare look at me for too long. Yi Mu looked at her with a complicated expression. I think know what plastic sisters are now. What do you mean? It's describing you. It doesn't sound like a good thing. It's not. The two of them walked while chatting, and before she knew it, Yi Mu arrived at Shirley Pavilion. Even after accompanying a friend for a thousand miles, they must part in the end. Yi Mu understood the reality. She gave Zhao Mingyu a dagger that could cut iron like mud. The dagger was inlaid with seven gems, shining brightly in the sun. Take this. Zhao Mingyu took it without hesitation. Yi Mu was really powerful and didn't need this. She was different. Her martial arts were not bad, but it was only not bad. Yi Mu sat on the horse and didn't say more, go, be careful on the road. Her attitude seemed very casual, as if Zhao Mingyu wasn't leaving and would come back at night, but Zhao Mingyu's eyes were red. She led the horse over, and the two sat on horseback, hugging each other lightly. Actually, I was boasting before, Xiao Muir. What if I fail and die? Yi Mu said, when you are in danger, you can go find Mo Lin Yuan's people, and they will send you to Mo country. What if I suddenly die before I find them? Yi Mu patted her on the back. People must die eventually. Survival is a human instinct, and so is death, so don't be afraid. Her calmness made Zhao Mingyu calm down slowly, and she finally burst into laughter, let go and sat back down on her horse. Really, with you here, there is no sentimental parting. You really know how to ruin the atmosphere. Yi Mu said helplessly, you wouldn't ask me to cry for you, would you? Don't you want to go back and become a female emperor? If I cried too much, it would also ruin the atmosphere. Ha ha ha. Zhao Mingyu couldn't help laughing. She stretched out her hand and stuffed something into Yi Mu's hand. This incense is a gift for you. It is the rarest dream incense in Zhao country, and cannot be bought with one thousand tails of gold. Don't waste it. Yi Mu put it away properly. Then, Zhao Mingyu took a long look at Yi Mu, as if trying hard to remember this person. She wore a very simple outfit, 
sitting on a maroon horse dressed completely in black, looking small and insignificant. But Yi Mu has a pair of very clean eyes. Her cute little face usually didn't have many expressions, but those eyes were clear and bright, which proved that she was actually very easy to get along with. Zhao Mingyu chuckled, and finally turned around resolutely. The wind brought over her loud laughter. Wait for me. I will give you good news. Goodbye, Xiao Mu. Yi Mu looked at the direction she was leaving and stared for a long time. Zhao Mingyu's departing back was very elegant. The flying clothes and her indulgent voice, together with the rising yellow sand, were deeply imprinted in her memory. Such a strange woman would, just like Yi Li and Wusheng, shine in this world. Although they will eventually disappear in the long river of history, she knew them and understood them, and that was more than enough. Yi Mu smiled lightly, holding the round scented bottle in her hand. It was the first time she received a gift from a woman. When she thought about it, she was a little excited. When Yi Mu returned, it was already very late. But the Mo Country Palace is different from other places, as its door could be opened at any time for one particular person. Comes from the phrase a good sister's feelings are like plastic flowers. They are particularly fake, but they never fade. A close friend that does not truly care for you. Chapter, 328 There's a problem with the fragrance one. Yi Mu walked into a depressing palace. Just as Zhao Mingyu said, the palace of Mo country was still too deserted. But when she walked to Mo Lin Yuan's palace, she would unconsciously smile, because the lights there were bright and the air smelled of food. Obviously, Mo Lin Yuan was still waiting for her. She sped up quickly. When Mo Lin Yuan saw that Yi Mu had returned, he put down the book in his hand. The food had been heated up again at this time, and it was the right time to eat now. Yi Mu sat beside him and said embarrassedly, Why didn't you eat first? Mo Lin Yuan took the towel handed over by the servant, and personally wiped Yi Mu's hands and face. He casually said, If you are not here, I don't want to eat. Yi Mu was instantly touched by the sweetness. The more Mo Lin Yuan grew up, the sweeter his mouth became, giving her the feeling of being pampered in the palm of his hand all the time. Let's get started. She first gave Mo Lin Yuan some food. She seemed to be in a good mood, and Mo Lin Yuan was also happy. They didn't eat much for meals, usually six dishes and two soups. They looked like an ordinary commoner couple, simple and fulfilling. Yi Mu remembered Zhao Mingyu's words, and suddenly asked, Mo Lin Yuan, do you sometimes feel you suffered a loss? What? Mo Lin Yuan looked at her and put down his chopsticks. His eyes seemed very serious when his beautiful phoenix eyes swept over. It's just Yi Mu asked with a smile, it's just, you are the emperor. You could originally have a harem of three courtyards and six palaces, but now you only have me. The two servants who were waiting behind them all smiled. Mo Lin Yuan was taken aback, and said helplessly, isn't it that I don't dare to? They are all weak like rabbits. After marrying in, they might even be killed with just a glance of yours. So, for the sake of their lives, I don't want to commit this sin. Yi Mu was not convinced. I wouldn't kill your woman. She stared at Mo Lin Yuan, at most, she would be teaching the guy in front of her a lesson. Mo Lin Yuan shook his head, stretched out his hand, picked up his chopsticks, and gave her a piece of meat. He said flatteringly, then I dare not even more. If you don't beat them up, you will definitely beat me up. I can't win against you. Yi Mu listened, pretending to be annoyed. She wanted to hit him, but her mouth was accurately targeted by his chopsticks, and the taste of shrimp burst in her mouth. Yi Mu stared at him angrily, and Mo Lin Yuan said with a smile, just kidding, I can't bear to let you hit me. What should I do if your hand hurts? Yi Mu really saw that he had no temper, so she bowed her head and ate up her rice. Mo Lin Yuan didn't move, but asked with a smile, Xiao Moor, when will you marry me? Before or after we look for the treasure? Yi Mu couldn't help but to say, it must be after the treasure hunt. I'm still young at this age. Look at my face, can you bear to lay your hands on me? Zhao Mingyu said her face looked at most twelve. Mo Lin Yuan took a serious look at Yi Mu. It was indeed very young. He looked down and realized that because of Yi Mu's martial arts training, her body was well developed. So, he couldn't help but say, actually, 
it's okay if we blow out the lamp. Beast! Yi Mu finished eating as quickly as possible, and then ran away. It would be useless for her to run so fast, though, because they still had to rest together at night. After arriving at the sleeping hall, the little palace servants were lighting incense. When Yi Mu slept at night, in order to make her sleep more peacefully, Mo Linyuan was accustomed to lighting incense. Mu remembered the fragrance Xiao Mingyu gave her, and quickly stopped a little palace servant. She had him change the incense, and then went to wash up. Chapter, 329 There's a problem with the fragrance too. The little palace servant first tried the incense with a silver needle, and found that it was not poisonous. Then he lit it and put it in the incense burner. After the room was cleaned up, he retired for the evening. At night, neither master wanted anyone to be there. When Mo Linyuan came back, Yi Mu was still taking a bath. He had washed before, so he just cleaned up briefly and went to bed. He didn't know if it was his illusion, but he felt that the atmosphere in the room today was particularly oppressive. Was it due to autumn humidity? After reading a few pages of a book, he felt a little hot, and he couldn't stand it anymore. Where is Xiao Muir? Why hasn't she come out yet? He sent someone over to ask. The servant replied that Yi Mu was drying her hair and would come over soon. Only then did Mo Linyuan realize a difference. Wait, the fragrance in the house smells different. It was lighter and smelled better. The palace servant replied, it's the incense that Miss Yi lit. It has been tested for non-toxicity. Since Yi Mu brought it, Mo Linyuan naturally had no doubts. When he lay on the bed again, he began to feel thirsty, so he drank all the nearby tea, but the heat still couldn't dissipate. After he tossed back and forth several times, Mo Linyuan tore his clothes apart and suddenly understood something. He stared at the incense burner with a deep thought in his eyes. When Yi Mu finished washing and went in, she found that the room was completely dark. An elegant scent hit. She couldn't help but take a few deep breaths. She didn't think there was any problem at all it's just, why didn't they light the lamp? She asked, Mo Linyuan. But no one answered. She slowly walked towards the dragon bed. She was wearing only thin clothes and her long hair was down. She looked innocent and harmless. She didn't know that the danger was approaching. After walking to the bed, she saw a human-shaped lump on the bed, so she asked, why didn't you answer, and why didn't you turn on the light? She finished speaking, but Mo Linyuan still didn't respond. Yi Mu felt strange, stretched out her hand, but was caught halfway by a hot hand. Xiao Muir. Mo Linyuan's voice was extremely hoarse, startling Yi Mu, and she was dragged under the quilt in the next second. When a hot body was pressed against her, her brain was blank, and she couldn't help but ask, You have a fever? If not, why was his body so hot? When Mo Linyuan saw that Yi Mu obviously didn't know what happened, he knew that Zhao Mingyu had tricked her. This was obviously the most famous aphrodisiac from Zhao country, Meng Huichun. It was this silly girl who stupidly lit it. But now it was too late to regret, because he had breathed in too much and couldn't hold back anymore. Since this stupid girl kindled the fire, let her extinguish it by herself. Yi Mu didn't understand. So, in the next second, she was kissed by Mo Linyuan. His kiss was as hot as his body. What was going on? Was it possible that, as he said earlier, he could eat her when the lights were off? Unacceptable. Yi Mu turned over so she was on top of Mo Linyuan. Seeing him short of breath, Yi Mu was a little surprised. What's the matter with you? Do you really have a fever? Mo Linyuan was so angry. Don't you know what's wrong with me? I don't know. Yi Mu said innocently, sitting on him. Mo Linyuan gritted his teeth and said, you don't even know what kind incense was given to you and still lit it, shouldn't you take responsibility? Chapter, 330 Solve the Problem 1 Incense Yi Mu took a deep breath full of suspicion, and asked with a strange expression on her face, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this incense. She hadn't noticed it because she had just entered the room, but Mo Linyuan had been here for more than an hour. You don't think anything is wrong? Mo Linyuan gritted his teeth and smiled, very well, then I will allow you to experience it. So, he stretched out his hand and concentrated his internal force in the palm of his hand, and the incense burner was sucked over by Mo Linyuan. 
he put the incense burner on the bedside, and the originally light scent of incense became richer. Yi Mu suddenly held her breath and glared at Mo Linyuan. Was he stupid? If you know that there is a problem, why don't you get rid of it? Mo Linyuan's muffled laughter came from below her, don't worry, this incense is harmless to the human body I guess you must be using martial arts to hold your breath. Yi Mu pretended not to be. It's useless. Mo Linyuan snorted, this fragrance does not have to be inhaled to be useful. As he talked, his fingers gradually dropped down Yi Mu's body, he smiled and said, Xiao Muer, you look small, but the place that shouldn't be small is not small at all. Yi Mu blushed immediately, and could not hold her breath any longer. Rogue. After she took a deep breath, she finally felt something wrong. In the depths of the body, there was a kind of heat that kept climbing, and she hurriedly used her internal force to press it down, but she didn't expect the heat to get stronger and stronger the more she tried to press it down. And Mo Linyuan also deliberately didn't tell Yi Mu that the feeling could not be suppressed. The more she suppressed it, the more intense it would become. Gradually, on the dragon bed, both of them felt it was difficult to hold on to themselves. Mo Linyuan gradually became addicted to it. Anyway, Xiao Mu belonged to him sooner or later. So rather than sooner or later, why not now? He tried his best to take advantage. She provoked this, so she must be responsible for extinguishing it. But what to do? Yi Mu really didn't want to do it at this time. Let's go to sleep in different rooms. Yi Mu held him away with both hands, panting. But Mo Linyuan refused. I can't hold on anymore. If you don't put out the fire, don't think about leaving. But I haven't grown up properly yet, how can I extinguish it for you? Yi Mu's gritted teeth came. If her body was mature now, she might just pounce down on Mo Linyuan, because right now, she couldn't bear this feeling. No, she couldn't stay in this room anymore. Otherwise, what if something were to happen? As soon as Yi Mu got up, she was held back by Mo Linyuan. If you don't put out the fire, you can't leave. Yi Mu wanted to cry without tears she really couldn't help him. Who told him not to leave before? Isn't this bullying? But Mo Linyuan was so strong that she couldn't shake him off. In the dark, his eyes were as sharp as a cheetah. Yi Mu even felt that his eyes could penetrate her clothes. Seeing that she couldn't get leave, Yi Mu couldn't help but bite her lower lip. She had to put out the fire. How could she extinguish it? Suddenly, she had an idea. If she remembered correctly, Mo Linyuan was still a virgin now. Then maybe she could help him put out the fire. Yi Mu endured the heat and asked, Do you promise to let go after I helped you put out the fire? Mo Linyuan said without hesitation, Yes. Okay. Mo Linyuan was taken aback. Did he hallucinate? Did Xiao Mu actually say yes? In the next second, Yi Mu suddenly went under the quilt. When Mo Linyuan was about to ask her what she was going to do, Yi Mu suddenly began. Chapter 331 Solve the problem too. Hmm. Mo Linyuan's forehead jumped with blue veins. He stared fiercely at the bulging piece of the quilt, gritted his teeth and asked, You want to put out the fire for me like this? Doesn't it work? Yi Mu's dull voice came, and her subsequent movements made the air agitated. Damn it! He obviously should refuse, but Yi Mu's small hands were also very comfortable. Damn, he's really letting her off easy this time. By the time Yi Mu rushed out of the bedroom, it was already half an hour later. As soon as she came out, without a word, she jumped into the Yuehua pool not far from the bedroom. The palace servant was shocked when he heard the sound of the splashing water. Just as he was about to chase after her to see what was going on, Mo Linyuan walked out. He put a piece of clothing on his body casually, and his face was extremely ugly. Don't worry about her. Mo Linyuan gritted his teeth. This girl said that her hands were sore halfway through, and then ran away while he was not paying attention. In the end, he had to solve it by himself. Seeing her so uncomfortable at this time, to the point that she jumped into Yuehua pool, Mo Linyuan felt satisfied and distressed at the same time. So, after saying leave her alone, he couldn't help but follow up and add, what are you still waiting for? Go prepare water and clothes. The people around hurriedly scattered, but in the pool, Yi Mu scolded Zhao Mingyu eight hundred times. What a scammer! 
Zhao Mingyu swindled her and left. She had better not come back, otherwise Yi Mu would definitely let Zhao Mingyu taste this kind of feeling. What happened next was almost a whole night of tossing and turning. Neither Yi Mu nor Mo Linyuan slept well. The next day, the faces of both of them were very ugly. Mo Linyuan could not eat her and was in a bad mood. But work still needed to be done, as Mo Linyuan decided to look for the imperial treasure before Zhao Country created trouble. This time, Zhao Country suffered heavy losses. The most important thing was that their second prince died in the Mo Country, a huge humiliation for the country. Therefore, even if Zhao Country did not dare to act openly, they would act secretly. However, if Mo Linyuan succeeded in finding the treasure, then Zhao Country might not dare to do anything. But now that the city boundary map was complete, a problem had arisen. The map was very clear, but where is the location of the treasure? After all, the world was so big there were mountains everywhere, and the city boundary map only drew mountains and other geographical markers. Mo Linyuan asked many geological scholars to help him, but they studied for a few days and still found nothing. Having a treasure map, but not understanding it, was quite an awful feeling. But Mo Linyuan didn't allow Yi Mu to study it. No matter what she said, it didn't work. But Yi Mu wanted to help, too so, on this day, when six or seven talented people in this field gathered in the imperial study to study the map on the table, Yi Mu was secretly watching from the beam of the room. She hid her breath, so no one else noticed her. Mo Linyuan sat in the main seat and asked impatiently, you are all geological scholars. Is it possible that no one can see the location that is drawn on the map? Everyone looked at each other, and the leader replied profusely with a forehead of sweat, Your Majesty, there are no text signs on this map, and there is no route division. There is only a map and a treasure location. This is really unclear. Please rest assured, Your Majesty, us officials work day and night, and try our best to find the treasure. Mo Linyuan still felt unhappy. It was a race against time. At the critical moment, none of these people were useful. Chapter, 332 Geomancy Master 1 Yi Mu worried while looking at the map. That city boundary map looked just like a simple landscape painting. In the current time, where there's no satellite scanning, it's very difficult if you want to find a place in the countless desolate mountains and rivers. But as she looked at the path of the mountain lines, she suddenly recalled the excuse that Zhao Mingyu found in order to look at the city boundary map. Perhaps, you shouldn't only be finding geologists, but also two geomancy masters. Yi Mu thought like this and unconsciously spoke out. As a result, everyone stared at the beam of the room. Yi Mu reacted with hindsight. Oh no, I'm caught. Mo Linyuan's complexion changed when he heard the voice. He hurriedly put away the city boundary map, and then said to everyone, All of you retreat. Yes. Those people know that only Miss Yi could hide on the beam, and they soon left one after another. Yes. Those people know that the only one who could hide on the beam was Miss Yi, and they soon left one after another. They did not go home, but rather stayed in the imperial palace. The matter of the city boundary map was no trivial matter. Before the treasure is found, none of them can go home, nor can they see their family members and outsiders. After they left, Yi Mu stuck out her tongue and jumped off from the beam. Why are you here? Mo Linyuan was a little unhappy. Didn't I say that you're not allowed to be near the city boundary map? He always felt that the map seemed to be able to eat people, and if Yi Mu approached it, she would be eaten. Yi Mu didn't touch his bottom line, and said with a smile. Didn't I find the problem? So I rushed to tell you, she mischievously laughed. When I was watching from the beam of the house just now, I found that there are two clearly connected mountain ranges by looking straight down on the city boundary map. So I guess that the excuse that Zhao Mingyu used at the beginning was indeed correct. This treasure is hidden in a geomantic, treasured place, so if you find a few geomancy masters to take a look, perhaps you'll have a clue. Treasured place rich with feng shui. But Mo Linyuan felt this was unsuitable. The city boundary map cannot be leaked. There are many people outside who understand geomancy, yet few really have the ability. I'm worried that when the time comes, people will be mixed up and someone will take advantage of it. His worries are also reasonable. After all, the thing had been found with much effort. 
If others secretly copied it and found the city boundary map first, it would be giving away a bride and losing an army on top of it. Suffering a double loss after trying to trick the enemy. Yi Mu said, how about this? The next imperial proclamation will announce to the world a recruitment to repair the emperor's mausoleum, and there will definitely be more than one person who will reveal the imperial proclamation. At that time, let them assess each other. In the end, with who's superior and who's inferior, you can always see some results. After Mo Linyuan heard this, he thought this method was not bad and thus had someone draft the imperial proclamation. This imperial proclamation didn't say half a word about the city boundary map, it only said that after a hundred years, the emperor wanted to find a geomantic, treasured place to build a mausoleum for himself. It also said that the one who has true abilities can stay in the post of the imperial palace grand master. So there were many people who revealed the proclamation. In just three days, a dozen people who believed their abilities were not bad were found and gathered inside the palace. In fact, there were some who understood geomancy in the palace. After all, there are specialized astronomical government officials for the daily calculations for omen and luck and nightly observations of the celestial bodies. But when it comes to proficiency, they absolutely cannot be regarded to that point. However, they can still help Imo Lin Yuan examine these people who revealed the proclamation, to see if they really have the true ability and understanding of the material. Everyone was gathered on an open military ground. Mo Li Yuan sat on the platform, letting the astronomical government officials examine first, then have them step forward one by one and explain the field they're an expert in. After all, geomancy is a category of much knowledge, and one's energy is limited, making it impossible to understand everything. But what they're wanting to find is roughly just a person who is adept at searching for dragon pressure points. That person would preferably be an experienced person. Dragon pressure points in Chinese is, which originated from a saying that it takes three years to searching for dragons and ten years learning acupuncture points. The dragon they're talking about is terrain that looks like a dragon, meaning searching for the terrain is difficult, but finding the pressure point, or the geomancy point is even harder. This is what I perceived and if you want to learn more, hey race the link, https, by key. Baidu. Com item 15407196. Chapter, 333. Geomancy Master 2. But a majority of these people present are not young. They stood in front of M.O. Linyuan, each boasting themselves to the point of being something heaven has and earth doesn't, and being able to brag can be considered their special ability to make a living. But M.O. Linyuan didn't understand these, and felt muddled when hearing them. Means heaven has, earth doesn't, meaning it's a good thing that only exists in the sky and exceeded the scope of the mortal, being the extreme. Some of they said they're good at numerology, some said they're good at astronomy, and there's also some who are good at finding the dragon pressure point. Some even say that when they were traveling around the world, they found a precious pressure point that could be immediately presented to the emperor. Numerology is the method of using numbers, or birth date characters, relating to someone to determine their fate and luck. Not exactly traveling the world these people are in a profession that is in the same category as selling arts, fortune-telling, selling medicine, and more back in the old times, they had to travel around for their profession. Meaning rivers and lakes, represent the nation's characteristics, thus the world. Yi Mu listened on the side, thinking that these people should all have some kind of skill, but those can't be counted as great skills. Perhaps it's a kind of intuition. Until the last person walked up front. Your Majesty, this lowly one is adept at geomancy. Regardless if it's astronomy or geography, attracting yang or searching for the dragon point, this lowly one is skilled at all. The polite speech of how a person of lower social status would say I. His way of boasting shamelessly had everyone raising their eyebrows and casting side glances at him, just to find out that he was merely a young scholar in his twenties, and their expressions were even more dissatisfied. Truly shameless boasting. Geomancy is a study including all living things. Young fellow, how old are you? You dare to say that you understand everything? An old geomancy master said this, and that youngster finally raised his head. Learning things depends not on age, but rather talent and experience. This lowly one, although young, is rich and abundant in experience. My talent is ordinary, but compared with everyone, it's considered outstanding. You. Those few old fellows discontentedly glared at him immediately, and Yimu also saw that person's appearance. 
The other geomancy masters' faces appear to have hints of the vicissitudes of life, and the majority are quite skinny. Yet this man had a baby face, appearing to be very prominently small. Moreover, that bright pair of eyes are the kind of eyes that would leave people unable to forget after having a look. Silence. The eunuch on the side said, and open military ground immediately quieted down. At this time, Yi Mu smiled and said, rather than disputing like this, which isn't even a solution, how about this? Let me ask you all a question, and you all have to answer truthfully. Everyone knew Yi Mu's abilities. Hearing that she wanted to ask a question, all respectfully stood properly with a manner of speaking without reserve. Means that they're willing to say all they know in respect to Yi Mu's request of honesty. Yi Mu said while smiling, although geomancy and physiognomy don't belong together, everyone should more or less know a bit of palmistry and physiognomy when traveling the world. Practice of assessing a person's face, relating it to fortune, destiny, etc. Everyone promptly nodded, we know, we can all be regarded as proficient at this. Then fine, all of you step forward one at a time, and look at my palm features. I want to know how you guys would assess mine. This everyone looked at each other in dismay. Looking at Yi Mu's palm features wouldn't offend the emperor, right? Mo Linyuan could still be regarded as open-minded. It's just looking at palm features, and he nodded, I permit it, all of you just step forward one by one. He felt this method of Yi Mu's perhaps is useful, since her numerological fate was originally different from ordinary people. Perhaps, if there's someone out of these people who can really understand it, not talking about other things, just proving that he really has skills, it's worth it to keep them and put them in an important position. Does Yi Mu's physiognomy and palmistry still need to be looked at? Everyone secretly thought, being able to become the emperor's cherished one, could that life still be a bad life? Funny thing but the actual term they use here for cherished one directly translates as heart muscle. Since your heart muscle is very important and kinda relates to your innermost feelings, you know. Furthermore, even if something's wrong, they wouldn't dare to say it. Yi Mu saw through their concern, smiled and said, whatever you guys see, you can say it all directly. I promise to not hold anyone responsible, but there's one point. You all have to speak truthfully. Anyone who makes things up will be killed without mercy. She smiled while saying the three words killed without mercy, having everyone's heart trembling, and they became alert and combat ready. Not exactly in battle, but it meant they were preparing to face the challenge internally. Chapter 334 Can't see three kinds of people one. The first to step forward was an old man. He first looked at Yi Mu's face, and then looked at her hand. Physiognomy, if it was said to be mysterious, then it was very mysterious. But if it was easy, it could also be very easy. People often say, a good melon, whether it's sweet or bitter, can be known just by looking at its shape and color. The physical strength of a horse, whether it walks fast or slow, whether each part of its body is well proportioned or not, how its coat color, manner and breath smells like, will tell if it is a good thoroughbred horse or an inferior horse. People are also like this. A person's fate is inseparable from appearance and complexion. Appearance is the facial features, posture, and character traits. Complexion is the looks and demeanor. A person's facial features can change with the changes in environment after being born. So from the person's body condition, features, complexion and more, the person's fate and fortune can be inferred. But this was not applicable to Yi Mu, because by only looking at her regular complexion, there could not be a person who'd say she was bad. Hence, that man used his special skill, reading Yi Mu's palm. But after a long time, he felt defeated. Yi Xiaojie's five fingers are round, thick and soft. The hollow of the palm is rosy, all the three palaces of blessings, prosperity and longevity are complete. There's nothing wrong with it. Zio Ji honorific for unmarried young lady. Fu El Shu These are three stellar gods in Chinese mythology with the meaning blessings, prosperity and longevity respectively, and thus also the three palaces for them. Yi Mu nodded, switched to another person, and that person was also bent on seeing something different. But Yi Mu's palmistry was indeed too remarkable, it was simply a model for the business circles. So after a while of relentless praising, that person was also defeated. Hearing so many people praising her, Mo Lin Yuan was in fact very happy. He looked at Yi Mu, and in his heart, he thought, is it because her wisdom has changed, so her past predestination is concealed? 
At last, it was finally a young person's last turn. Seeing Yi Mu, a smile immediately formed in his round face, revealing his two sweet dimples. Yi Mu extended a hand, but he didn't look at it. Looking at Yi Xiaojie's facial physiognomy from the outside, it's full of blessings and prosperity, a physiognomy of auspicious wind throughout the journey. Idiom, which means smooth sailing. Everyone originally thought this person would try to court favor with Claptrap. They didn't think he would also give a similar statement and couldn't help but twitch their mouths. Smiling, Yi Mu said, then, do a palm reading and carefully check. The physiognomy in this ancient time was still meticulous it was different from today's swindlers. Before, although most of these people gave high praises, in the end the praises were true, and the words of blessings weren't applicable to everyone. So she was a bit looking forward to what this young man would say. Who would have thought that the other party would wave his hand and earnestly say, Yi Xiaojie, I can't help you look at your fortune. Why? Yi Mu withdrew her hand, looking at him strangely. The other party smiled, the two dimples appearing once again. He opened his mouth, Shifu once said, there are three kinds of people whose fortune can't be seen. First, royals, generals and ministers of state. Second, a renamed person. Sh Fu Master. Yi Mu immediately showed an interest. Would you say I'm the renamed person? The other party repeatedly shook his head. No, you are the third kind. Those who were looking came over. Mo Linyuan also couldn't help but ask, what's the third kind? That person laughed. The third kind, ah, is a dying person. His words settled, and everyone sank into a deathly silence. Bastard. Mo Linyuan slammed the dragon seat. Except for the young man below, everyone knelt down in fear. The great masters in particular, each and every one of them looked at the person with eyes that were about to poke a hole at him. Chapter 335 Can't see three kinds of people too. Even if you want to speak nonsense, you should do it in a reasonable way, right? Then and they're saying that the emperor's cherished one is about to die, are you not afraid they'll die sooner? XN Jean are you a metaphor to say someone who's really important most cherished and is held very very close to heart, literally the meat of the heart's apex. Yi Mu also started to frown, but quickly gestured to Mo Linyuan to keep calm because she remembered, the original owner of this body seemed to die at the age of 14 in the past. If this person was able to see the original Bodhis fate, then there really might be some meaning to this. She asked the other party, what is your name? That person clearly saw Mo Linyuan's anger, yet he wasn't in the least afraid at all. With an even more smug expression, he said, This humble one is Lin Jizhao. A humble way to say I. Yi Mu nodded her head. Then where did you see that he'll die? Mu Er. Mo Linyuan's expression now was dark, extremely frightening. He looked at this person with an impudent mouth that called himself Lin Jizhao and the group of trembling old men. He couldn't control the murderous intent in his heart. Why waste your breath talking to these people? I can see that he's only trying to impress the public, talking nonsense. Why not drag them all down and behead them? After saying so, the kneeling people hurriedly cried for mercy. More people were saying that the one who was uttering claptrap was all Lin Jizhao, it had nothing to do with them. But Mo Linyuan, who was in a fit of rage, didn't care. He thinks they're all in this together. Daring to go as far as cursing Xiao Mu to die, they should die first then. In the midst of the mournful wails, only that Lin Zhizhao remained undaunted. He looked as if he didn't see the imperial guards rushing in, and shouted out, Your majesty is wise, but now he's got such an evil face, having the appearance of a tyrant. If things go on like this not good, not good. Ancestor, please don't speak anymore. This is definitely everyone's wish. Literally translates to ancestor, may refer to someone who's hard to deal with, or expressing like oh my god. Mo Linyuan laughed with rage. Im a tyrant? That's right. Somebody. Drag this person away for public execution. But Yi Mu steadfastly held him back. Wait. Hearing her words, the imperial guards who were ready to arrest him stopped. Mo Linyuan looked at Yi Mu, furrowing his eyebrows. Could it be that you believe his nonsense? Yi Mu heaved a sigh. She spoke beside his ear, it may not necessarily be nonsense because this body of mine originally should meet its death at this age. This person is right. 
M.O. Linyuan startled. So what's going to happen to you now? Yi Mu signaled him to keep calm, then said to everyone, except for Lin Zhizhao, the rest of you are repatriated from the palace. Each and every one of you will be rewarded a hundred tails of gold as consolation. Those people originally thought they were about to lose their own lives. Hearing Yi Mu say that and seeing no opposition from M.O. Linyuan, everyone was overjoyed and repeatedly expressed their gratitude. Being able to get their lives back was already a blessing, they didn't expect to also be rewarded gold. Everyone left with overwhelming gratitude but secretly swore in their hearts. The palace is really too dangerous, they won't come anymore. Never again. M.O. Linyuan still viewed Lin Zhizhao as an eyesore and left first, Yi Mu following closely behind. She told a palace servant on one side, check this person carefully. If there are no problems, bring him to the study. Understood. The servant gave a swift reply and instantly went to handle the matter. M.O. Linyuan, who returned to the chambers first, was seething. Heaven knows, when he heard that person talking like that, he wished he could put him to death for good. Unfortunately, Xiao Muer said he was correct. If everything he said was true, then he, then he. Then had better kill that person first. It seemed as though killing him would solve the problem. Chapter 336 Talking about the current Yuan When Yi Mu entered, she saw that Emo Lin Yuan was sullen. She smiled as she said, What are you anxious for? This body is already mine, it'll be fine. Emo Lin Yuan couldn't help but ask, according to the past, why did she die? He thought, as long as those causes could be avoided, she could be safer. Yi Mu, somewhat embarrassed, said, Ah, this, she snickered, is not serious. Mo Linyuan had a strong hunch that something was wrong. Is it related to me? Yi Mu suddenly broke into a giggle. Mo Linyuan was dumbfounded, but he carefully thought again. If Yi Mu didn't change her attitude and humiliated him like how the Yi family originally did, he certainly wouldn't have let her off. Thinking this, his expression became very ugly. Yi Mu reassured him at once, you don't need to worry. Look, you can't even harm me, how could something happen to me? M.O. Linyuan's face was still gloomy. He gazed at Yi Mu. Then how did I kill her? Yi Mu paused, seeing M.O. Linyuan's brilliant eyes on her with a look that said he needed an answer. She pretended to ponder over it for a while, then said, the tiger ate her. M.O. Linyuan instantly thought of the big tiger he kept in the zoo. It seemed that he should kill it and peel its skin off. Yi Mu guessed his thoughts and burst out laughing. You're not thinking about harming the poor tiger, are you? Don't worry. Think about it, even if the tiger tries to touch me, it won't be able to. Even with my small fists, ten tigers won't be able to come near me. What she said was true. M.O. Linyuan temporarily let go of the pitiful tiger as he held her on his lap. Worried, he said. So you'll be okay this time. Lin Zitzhou's dying person was like a curse, making him restless. Actually, he was more afraid that Xiao Muer would go back home. If she went home, her body here would die, right? Thinking this, he wanted to burn the city boundary map. Feeling his uneasiness, Yi Mu did her best to reassure him. Stop worrying. It'll be fine, really, and nothing can defeat you, right? No one can defeat me either. If we work together, how can a problem arise? M.O. Linyuan pressed his lips together and didn't speak. Yi Mu added, moreover, I've changed so much of the original Bodhis fate. Since fate can be altered, there's no need to worry. So you have to trust me, okay? Mo Lin Yuan nodded and tightly embraced her. In any case, you're not allowed to leave me. And, not leaving. I'll for sure stand by your side and accompany you all my life. Mo Lin Yuan gradually relaxed, his head resting on her, sighing. Xiao Muer, I really wish I could make you smaller and hide you in my arms, I always feel that you'll disappear. Yi Mu chuckled. Whole give birth for you after I become smaller. Mo Lin Yuan was stunned, then clenched his teeth. Can't you be bigger when you want to be bigger, and smaller when you want to be smaller? Yi Mu looked at him maliciously. At last, she told a dirty joke, I'm not you, I don't have this function. Mo Lin Yuan was first stunned, and then with a surprise said, Xiao Muer, you've gone bad. No, no, it's you who taught me well. 
The atmosphere around them relaxed again, but at this time, a servant's voice was heard. Your Majesty, I've brought Lin Jizhao. Hearing this name, Mo Linyuan's mood became sour in a flash. Chapter, 337 Talking about the current you two. Yi Mu patted him. She said earnestly, we should be happy, because if this person really has the capability, the matter with the city boundary map presumably can be solved, too. Mo Linyuan nodded his head, then the said person came in. At this moment, Lin Jizhao had changed into navy blue attire which made him look smaller. He saluted the two and smiled with his two dimples. Thank you, Yi Xiaojie, for sparing my life. Yi Mu waved her hand. It's nothing. I just wanted to ask about what you said before, that you know everything. Is this sentence true? Lin Jizhao proudly said, of course. Yi Mu said, then what did you come to the palace for? In other words, what are you seeking? The other party smiled. Have I not told you? After managing your majesty's matters, can I be granted the title of the country's counselor? Mo Linyuan snorted. He absolutely will not give this person that title, no way. Yi Mu had a strange expression. So you want to be the country's counselor? Correct. He said magnanimously, the world outside is full of suffering. I want to be the country's counselor to be prosperous, and also so that I don't need to worry about not finding a meal. Yi Mu chuckled. This person is quite interesting. But Mo Linyuan said, aren't you very capable? Three meals are not sufficient. This couldn't be a liar, right? The words before, perhaps, were only to trick them. Lin Jizhao helplessly said, because I'm very capable, I have to earn money, but I have many enemies too. So there's no other way, if I become the country's counselor, I don't have to be afraid anymore. Mo Linyuan thought, with your shameful behavior, the probability of someone carrying out a vendetta against him in the palace would still be big. Yi Mu thought to herself, the matter of the city boundary map was significant, she still needed to check this person's skills. So she asked, earlier you said I was about to die. What do you mean by this? Do you know when and in what way? Lin Jizhao with some embarrassment said, I'm not an immortal, naturally it's impossible to know for sure. Then what else can you see from me? Her soul pierced through this person. It should be the change of her fate, but Lin Jizhao only could see her impending death, which was quite odd. Hearing this question from her, Lin Jizhao suddenly showed a strange smile. I know what Yi Xiaojie wants to ask. He narrowed his eyes. I also discovered that there seemed to be a trace of an altered fate. But when I said you're dying, I didn't mean the past you. I meant the you right now. Yi Xiaojie, I'm not saying this to frighten you, yeah. It's true, you're about to die. Mo Linyuan sneered. Somebody, drag this person out and dismember him to death. Yi Mu startled and again held Mo Linyuan back. But how could Mo Linyuan stand still and look at the person in front of him cursing Yi Mu again and again? Yi Mu tried, calm down, calm down. Think about it, if what he's saying is false, we can kill him anytime. If what he's saying is true, then we can discern the problem from him, there might also be a solution and keep me safe. Calm down. Mo Linyuan listened, took a few deep breaths. He narrowed his phoenix eyes and said to Lin Jizhao, I don't wish to hear death from your mouth again, this is the last time. Lin Jizhao looked at him and opened his mouth. In the end, he felt wronged and didn't say anything. Yi Mu had a headache looking at him. She softly asked, tell me, this fate of mine, is there a way to resolve it? Chapter, 338 Land in the Southwest 1 Lin Jizhao said with a smile, of course there is, you just need to find someone to change your fate, and you'll live. Yi Mu couldn't help but ask, can you do it? Lin Jizhao waved his hand quickly. That's too advanced, I haven't mastered it yet. Yi Mu listened, and couldn't help but deeply look at this person. Although he looks like he hasn't said anything, and has an undisciplined attitude that makes people skeptical, she carefully considered his words. Yi Mu felt rather uneasy, it was as if something deep within her heart was telling her that everything he was saying was true. Mo Lin Yuan was losing his patience and on the verge of losing his temper, but Yi Mu squeezed his hand and asked Lin Jizhao, then what can you do? Lin Zitzhou's eyes twinkled. Didn't I say it before? Aside from changing someone's fate, 
I can do anything else, especially finding the dragon and tapping the acupuncture points. Xuan Long Din Xue In ancient China, most tombs used Feng Shui for site selection. The royalty and high society usually had Feng Shui masters spend a few months or years walking the mountains to find an ideal spot for use as the family's burial ground. This arduous task was called Sun Long Dian Shui. Retrieved from HTTPS N. Everybody Wiki. Com Chinese Superstitions. In Chinese Jiamen Siphing Shui, the ancient saying goes three years to find the dragon, ten years to find its acupoints. This means it takes a long time to find the dragon, and it's even harder to figure out the acupuncture points which can take 10 years. If you fail, you won't be able to find it for another hundred years, making the search for the dragon for naught. With a smile, he said word by word, I believe your majesty is not looking for a feng shui master to build the imperial mausoleum, right? What do you need to find? Because I can see that your majesty is not the type to be busy constructing an underground palace. The coffin chamber of an imperial tomb. Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu looked at each other, not saying anything, but this person judges people accurately. It's hard to say, but maybe he really has some ability. In a small voice, Yi Mu spoke a few words beside Mo Linyuan's ears, what if we ask him about the city boundary map first? Well speak about my matter later. And he looks like he can't do martial arts, so even if we tell him about the city boundary map, we don't have to worry about him pulling a trick. Mo Linyuan listened. After pondering over it for a while, he channeled with a deep voice, looks like you have some skills. Fine, I might as well let you know my real purpose. In any case, he had made up his mind with a plan. Just like what Xiao Moore said, if this person really had the skills, he'd be of use. If not, killing him was easy. So he looked at Yi Mu. Yi Mu had no other choice but to take a few steps back. Only in this way could Mo Linyuan take out the city boundary map without worrying about her getting hit. While the city boundary map was slowly being spread out on the long dragon table, Yimu noticed how Lin Zitzhou's eyes brightened, hurriedly taking several steps forward. Mo Linyuan said word by word, You most likely have traveled north and south, it should be clear what I've been collecting these few years. City boundary map you have actually collected the entire city boundary map. Lin Zhizhou didn't hide the fact that he knew the city boundary map, his two eyes unwaveringly staying on the blueprint, immediately frozen on his spot. That's right. Mo Linyuan also looked at the blueprint. With a cold voice, he said, this is my purpose for looking for a feng shui master. Lin Zhizhou just discovered, on the city boundary map, besides the three word city boundary map, there were no other words which also meant, they wanted to look for this place that was concealed in some way. No wonder the emperor was looking for a feng shui master. Yi Mu was sitting further from them. She couldn't refrain from saying, if you can find the place marked on that blueprint, it will be an exceptional feat. Until then, it doesn't matter if you want to be the country's counselor or something else, his majesty will meet your demands. But right now, since you've seen the map, shouldn't you prove to us your skills first? Lin Zhizhou heard her and faintly smiled, his dimples subtly showing. All right, since His Majesty and Yi Ziyaji have such confidence in this lowly one, then this lowly one will humbly show you. He's using a self-depreciating eye. He's saying it in a self-depreciating way so I'm writing it as humbly show. He first shut his eyes. When his eyes opened, the expression in his eyes had changed. Chapter, 339. Land in the Southwest 2. He first carefully looked at the map, and then said, Your Majesty, the place drawn on this map indeed is well situated with good feng shui. This lowly one guesses, this place was originally left for the last dynasty's emperor to build an underground palace for himself, but didn't expect that in the end it would be used to hide treasure. He's using another way of saying a self-depreciating eye. The coffin chamber of an imperial tomb. Mo Linyuan motioned him to continue, so Lin Zhizhou did. This map has drawn two dragon veins. Your Majesty, Please look, the overall context of this mountain is that of a dragon. The ground is the dragon's flesh, the rocks are the dragon's bones, the plants and trees are the dragon's scales. If you follow my finger, you should be able to see two dragons encircling from the top to bottom. Terrain that looks like dragons here it's related to feng shui. More info, https steam it.
Conculturic 136 that Dragon Vane decides that the Feng Shui Good and Bad Qingming Festival will arrive. Before looking for the dragon, we should find the ancestor and parent mountains first, examine the qi, that the qi is not resentful, and split it into yin and yang. The so-called ancestor mountains are the mountain's origins, where the mountain ranges come from. Examining the qi refers to whether or not the mountain ranges are undulated, and whether or not the formation of the mountain ridges has a halo effect. If there is a halo effect, it's auspicious otherwise, it's ominous. Qi good energy that makes a place auspicious. If this sentence is confusing it's like the ancestor mountain is like a mother the origins, giving birth to the other series of mountains making the mountain ranges. And these dragon veins run from south to north straightly and smooth, accumulate and store qi, it's the best of the best feng shui. It's hard to come by. Terrain that looks like dragons, related to feng shui. Like having no obstacles hindrance in its way, simply going straight. Hearing him speak so much, Mo Linyuan felt a little lightheaded. He impatiently asked, let me ask you, can you locate where these dragon veins are? When he asked this question, Yi Mu wasn't expecting much, but still listened to Lin Zhizhao say, these dragon veins are like a horse's gallop, like ripples of water. My guess is, it should be where the southwest mountains assemble. It's only that place that has a lot of mountains. It's just that you will only find it by going there. Southwest. You're sure. Mo Linyuan skeptically looked at him. Lin Zhizhao smiled thinly. It's not at all difficult to see its position, you can already see it from the dragon's direction. It's only that finding it cannot be done in one day. You must go to that place first, then you'll receive more information. Mo Linyuan listened and stashed away the city boundary map. He frowned. In other words, just by looking at the map, you can't get the exact position. Lin Zhizhao saluted and said, that's right, your majesty. This finding the dragon and tapping the acupuncture points is not an easy task. But this lowly one assures you, except for this lowly one, no one else can find this place. These exceptional dragon veins are inevitably concealed, but this lowly one dabbles in many ways. Breaking the barriers of the acupuncture points is not difficult. Your majesty, why not bring this lowly one with you? This lowly one will definitely find the treasure for your majesty. Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes and scrutinized him. Only after a long time did he say, this matter will be discussed another time. You can withdraw first. Lin Zhizhao also wasn't bashful, beaming, then this lowly one withdraws first. After he left, Mo Linyuan sent Wen Feng to follow him and strictly watch over him. After that, he asked Yi Mu, the words of this person, how much do you think is credible? Yi Mu couldn't make it out and only said her own thoughts, should be 50-50. Frowning, she said, it's as if that person knows beforehand why we're looking for a feng shui master, and I think he seems to have some real skills. That being the case, we shouldn't let him go. Until then, I will be with him. If something is abnormal, I can definitely win against him, so there's nothing to worry about. Mo Linyuan said, I also feel that he seems to know what I'm looking for beforehand. However, I also believe that there is nothing wrong with his deductions. The treasure in the southwest can be a very big one because the place is sparsely populated, the mountains and rivers dense, and the distance is also near the empire's country at that time, so I might as well send a group of people to check the southwest. Yi Mu nodded. Then send people to go check. As for whether we go or not, this can be thought over again. Chapter, 340 The Eye of Heaven the matter of the city boundary map had been delayed as such, but because of Lin Zitzhou's words, the past few days Mo Linyuan's mood wasn't very good, he even went as far as to developing strange thoughts. Was it possible that as long as he got the treasure, Yi Mu would disappear? If it was like this, he would rather not want anything. While he was having these kinds of thoughts, the person who went to investigate Lin Zhizhao returned. He not only investigated Lin Zhizhao thoroughly but also brought unexpected information. Your Majesty. No need for courtesy, just speak. Mo Linyuan, who was sitting in front of the long dragon table, frowned, and then listened to Zi Su say, the one who investigated said, Lin Zhizhao was actually the disciple of a very famous feng shui great master, and also the last disciple. But what was unexpected is, before that feng shui master died, he was expelled from the master's home and also spread the news to the outside that no one was allowed to let him practice feng shui. 
Because the Feng Shui great master was extremely famous, in the city where Lin Zhizhou grew up, not one person dared to use him. His life was spent extremely down on luck, he couldn't afford three meals. After that, the great master died. Lin Zhizhou insisted on giving him filial piety for three years, then left his birthplace. He went to Yuan City, and only then did he show people his feng shui. There was little accuracy then, so his reputation was bad. But there was one thing that he saw very accurately, and that is, whose house has dead people, when they die, which house has a dying person. So, in Yuan City, he should be a person whose existence everyone shouted at. There was no other way, he came to the capital and just happened to see the imperial notice. Mo Lin Yuan listened, the space between his eyebrows tucked in. So is this person a liar, or does he really have skills? This investigation only seemed to make it more confusing. On the other side, Yi Mu secretly monitored Lin Zhizhao and even saw him eat and sleep, then sleep and eat. She didn't know life was so natural and unrestrained. It was when Yi Mu was feeling very bored that Lin Zhizhao suddenly said, The young miss who's been watching me, it's boring for me to drink alone EY, want to come down and join me? Jin Yang LZZ has been calling her Xiao Jie. Yi Mu was taken aback because she was called a young miss. She felt somewhat strange. She jumped down from the beams. How do you know him around? This person shouldn't know martial arts, and she also didn't have any special scent on her body. Lin Zhizhao said with a smile, this is a secret. If you accompany me to drink, he'll tell you. Yi Mu sat in front of him suspiciously. From the smell of it, it was that kind of inebriating vintage wine. He tilted his head for another cup and then smacked his lips. Good wine, truly a good wine. Only in an imperial palace would there be such good wine. Too bad, M.O. country's royal bloodline has declined, these kinds of good wine placed in a wine cellar would surely accumulate dust. It's a pity, such a pity. Yi Mu couldn't help laughing. You actually dare to say that. His Majesty has wanted to kill you for so long, can you not have such a loose tongue? Lin Zhizhao looked at Yi Mu with a genial smile. Isn't there still you? I believe you won't let His Majesty kill me. So I have nothing to fear. Because he's got a strong backing Yi Mu. Yi Mu slightly smiled. Since I'm helping you like this, shouldn't you tell me the truth? Lin Zhizhao seemed tipsy, but he very generously said, ask away. I guarantee he'll tell you all I know without reservation. Yi Mu slightly raised her eyebrows. Then he'll ask, you said you saw that I'm about to die. Lin Zhizhao nodded. Then, did you make it out, or did you figure it out? See or something similar maybe could work him using make it out to match the latter because Yi Mu uses similar phrases here which have a similar meaning, she just changed one Chinese character. This Lin Zitzhou's vigor shook. Is there any difference? Of course there is. Yi Mu laughed. Making it out means the heaven showed you. Figuring it out means there's a possibility that it's wrong. So, tell me the truth. Lin Zhizhao was somewhat at a loss as he listened. He didn't expect his own secret would be caught by someone so quickly. But he looked at Yi Mu, eyes clear and bright, mind big heart. It was as if telling her would cause no harm. So he moved closer and said beside Yi Mu's ear in a small voice, actually, I make it out. Ever since I was small I have had a strange gift, which is being able to see Qi. Qi. Yes. Lin Zhizhao lowered his voice. It's the gray color of death Qi. If I see that someone has it, then, they're definitely not far from death. Before I didn't know I had this ability, seeing whose body carries this ghostly gray color, I even thought it's my own blurry eyesight. After that I tested multiple times, then I knew this thing is for real. Yi Mu felt extremely odd, she didn't think this person would have this kind of ability. This could be regarded as an extraordinary talent, right? Lin Zhizhao saw Yi Mu's expression and couldn't help saying, how are you not scared at all? These eyes of mine have never predicted wrongly. Yi Mu forced a smile. What will feeling scared do? Things happen, you just have to solve it. Could it be that being scared will solve the problem? Lin Zhizhao was stunned. He looked at the expression in Yi Mu's eyes, and became somewhat different. Also, having lived until this time, the number of fate being changed is not so little anymore. Since fate can be changed, then there's no need to be afraid. 
But Lin Zhizhao shook his head. Have you never heard of this phrase? Called reaching the same goal by using different means. I don't know what fate you've changed, but carefully think again, have you really changed those people's outcome? SH2 Tom Gu Idiom Yi Mu suddenly was taken aback. She suddenly thought of Yi Li, thought of Wu Sheng, thought of Zhao Yunqin. Did she not change their fates? For a moment, she was deep in her thoughts. In the past, after being defeated, Yi Li committed suicide by cutting his throat, and in fact, Yi Li died in front of her. And Wu Sheng, the past didn't show Wu Sheng's ending, so she also didn't know what bad ending he got after Zhao Yunqin's defeat. As for Zhao Yunqin, in the past, she went to the temple to practice Taoism, and in reality, she actually did go to the temple to practice Taoism. Thinking this, Yi Mu stood, suddenly feeling a chill. Has she changed it, or has she not changed it? Lin Zhizhao drank some wine, and softly said, I've also met a person whose fate changed before, but actually, they didn't change it, they only deceived themselves. Yi Mu listened, her whole body slowly going taut. She thought of Mo Lin Yuan, thought of his affection and investment toward her. Her hand that was on the table suddenly clenched. The time and energy he spent with her. You've never met someone who successfully changed their fate. Yes, I've never met. Yi Mu faintly smiled. Then you can look at me now because I absolutely, absolutely, will not end up like what you said, a dying person. She says it twice. Lin Zhizhao listened. Those pairs of bright eyes instantly looked in her direction. You're fighting against the heavens. Yi Mu stood up. What else? Lin Zhizhao heaved a sigh. No one has fought against the heavens. Yi Mu didn't budge. That's because those people are not me. Lin Zhizhao instantly remained silent. Yi Mu swept her eyes to him. I think you shouldn't drink this wine anymore. I can persuade His Majesty to bring you together to find the treasure, so you should be a little clear headed. Lin Zhizhao sobered at once. You can do it. Yi Mu held the wine on the table in front of her and emptied the glass in one gulp. Of course. Chapter 341 is it the treasure or a trap? After Yi Mu returned, before she could say anything, Mo Lin Yuan told Yi Mu all the information he had received. Yi Mu listened, nodding. Then that makes sense. What? Yi Mu said, I just asked Lin Zhizhao, asked how he saw my fate. He finally said he has the eye of heaven. After that, she retold Lin Zitzhou's words. Mo Lin Yuan frowned. But according to this information, even if he really has this kind of eyes, he didn't learn his true skills, or else people wouldn't have accused him of being a liar. This kind of person, do you really want to bring him with us? Yi Mu nodded, her smile a little mysterious. Think about it, if he can really see the black chi on people's bodies, he may be able to see the purple chi from the east. And the hidden treasure in the place with good feng shui will surely accumulate chi. Having someone who can see chi, what's there to be hesitant about? In Chinese culture, the color purple is auspicious and associated with immortality and spiritual awareness. It was also an imperial color. Retrieved from HTTPS Immortal Mountain. WordPress. Com 20170211 Purple, Chi, from the East. Mo Lin Yuan listened but still stood on his ground. But, what if he can only see Death Chi? Yi Mu said with a smile, then on the way, bring a feng shui master as a backup. Nowadays, an arrow fitted to the bowstring has no choice but to set off. Setting off early is always better than setting off late. Idiom Jin Zi Xian SHNG B Day BF means can't do anything but go ahead. Mo Lin Yuan nodded. National affairs and such could be given to the Prime Minister to handle. These few years, the relationship between Mo Lin Yuan and the Prime Minister has become better and better. If the matter isn't like what the outsider said, Mo Lin Yuan can kill him solely by using imperial authority. If he wanted to leave right now, the prime minister staying would definitely be suitable. And it didn't matter whether Lin Zitzhou's words were true or false, they also ought to set off. This treasure hunt had been delayed for so long. The longer the night, the more dreams there are. It's better to fight a quick battle to settle a quick decision. Wai Chang MNG Du means trouble comes with long delay. After three days of preparation, they could set off already. 
the entire troops were elite selected from M.O. Linyuan's personal army. Although there were only 500 people, every one of them was skillfully matched against 10. The troops had continuously advanced toward the southwest, but it was interesting to say, the southwest had lofty ridges and towering mountains. It happened that it was where the three countries Zhao country, Mo country, and Yu country met. So after Mo Linyuan and Yimu discussed, to keep low profile during the journey, all of them changed into plain and simple clothes, pretending to be ordinary merchants going to the southwest mountains. The mountains here were extremely dense, villages were rare. There were places with primary forest, without trace of a human. Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan's party walked the long, arduous journey for ten days, and finally arrived inside the mountains. Throughout the way, Lin Zhizhao and another Feng Shui master, heading toward the mountains, showed about the same direction. Lin Zhizhao the other Feng Shui master are pointing the direction for the others guiding them. So Mo Linyuan and the others went even deeper into the hinterland, but after they walked for three days, they suddenly discovered themselves that they got lost, because it was the same place, they walked here before already. So the party had no choice but to stay and discuss a way to deal with the situation. The leader Mo Linyuan was somewhat impatient and asked, Are you saying that you all cannot differentiate the direction? Could it be that you want to leave me stranded here, unable to leave? The other Feng Shui master was an old man, he listened, he hurriedly kneeled down in reverence. But Lin Zhizhao didn't, he smiled as he said, Your Majesty, don't be impatient. All treasured objects aren't that easy for common people to get their hands on. I've been on the lookout for the weather these two days, and observed that natural white chi covers the top of our heads, leaving us stranded here. It's definitely because of it. Lin Zhizhao added, Also, places with good feng shui are not that easy to find. In the middle of the year or month, they can create a natural barrier, not allowing outsiders to venture in, let alone that there are so many of us. So what are you saying? Mo Linyuan asked, narrowing his eyes. Lin Zhizhao said, it's really easy, there are so many of us. What about dividing into small groups, to different directions? On one hand, this can get rid of this maze, on another hand, maybe the treasure's location can also be found earlier. Mo Linyuan was about to refuse, but heard Lin Zhizhao quietly say, your majesty might want to move a little faster. Once we get out, the treasure's location will surely be already exposed by an observant person's eyes. If your majesty can't act quickly, then the other two countries' people who receive the news will swarm over here like flies, then we'll be very idle. And this place is even more mysterious, which can mean a greater possibility of the treasure to be here, isn't that right? Can't do anything whatever the others say though. His last sentence persuaded Mo Linyuan. The more strange and dangerous the place was, the more opportunities that followed. This aspect was not wrong. So after discussing with Yi Mu, Mo Linyuan divided 500 people into 10 groups, and then from a central point, faced toward different directions to set out. If they still can go back to the original point like this, then that would be meeting evil. Zi Su opened the way in front. When Feng kept watch on Lin Zhizhao and the other Feng Shui master from behind, Mo Linyuan said to Yi Mu, looks like this Lin Zhizhao has some skills. Only, in getting more and more suspicious of him. Him doing this obviously wants to weaken the manpower on my side. Yi Mu nodded. Confront soldiers with generals and stem water with earth. Also, his words are not wrong. We definitely don't have much time left, getting it done quickly is better. Idiom meaning do what's necessary different situations call for different actions. Finally, after they walked for a day, at last they were out of the earlier difficult place. But at this moment, as that old Feng Shui master and Lin Zhizhao were pointing the way, they unexpectedly pointed toward two completely different directions. The old Feng Shui master said, Your Majesty, according to the mountain's trend, the possibility of the dragon's vein in the south is very big. So, this lowly one thinks we have to go to the south. But Lin Zitzhou's words were easier, I see purple chi lingering on the west side, so I think, the treasure is definitely on the west side. Yi Mu couldn't help from asking, didn't you say you can only see death chi? Lin Zhizhao immediately smiled. That's not true. Since I can see black chi, naturally I can see other chi. You have to believe me. So now what? They only brought 50 people. At this moment, do they need to split the group again into two directions? 
Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu looked at each other, then they walked to one side. Yi Mu said, I think since he wants us to separate, maybe, there might be an ambush ahead, which is to target you. Mo Linyuan said, or maybe they want to target you. Do you think the treasure is really here? He was a little skeptical, the other side was holding a fake treasure that would cheat him. Yi Mu nodded. She went closer to Mo Linyuan's ear, telling him, after I arrived here, the reason why I'm very certain the treasure is here is because I thought of one thing. Do you still remember, on the original drawing fragment of the treasure, what color is used for some mountains? The original drawing fragment found from Zhao Yunqin and others' hands at that time, the original version of the city boundary map, the mountain was painted in crimson. That time, they thought it was because it was too old, the color changing from being weathered, but now looking around, the mountain's body bare, all of them are crimson. Mo Linyuan didn't think Yi Mu would be this meticulous. In other words, them wanting to harm us is one possibility, but they also have a high possibility of scoring a lucky hit? Yi Mu nodded. Not eliminating this possibility. But if they know the treasure is here, and still bring us here, then that can only mean that the treasure has been taken away. The one waiting for us is a trap. Chapter 342 Stone Door Entrance but they had already walked this far, going back was not possible. It didn't matter if there was someone scheming, or it really was the treasure, they should figure out the truth of the situation first. Mo Linyuan was naturally cautious. On the surface he brought so many people, but long before he came here, he had already sent someone to come first, and after he came out, the army at the back would be ready at any time. It could be said, as long as he was careful, no matter what the people were conspiring, they weren't afraid. So, the two discussed for a while. Considering the west and south of the tallest mountain as the last destination, one of them would go west, the other would go south, each for a day. If they didn't find any clue, then they would deviate from their direction and go to the tallest mountain to meet. If they found anything, they would use fireworks to signal. Relying on her skillful martial arts, Yi Mu requested to walk together with Lin Jizhao. Mo Linyuan was uneasy, and sent Wen Feng to follow her. Afterward, the group separated into two directions, advancing toward different directions. Only after Yi Mu saw Mo Linyuan off did she say to Lin Jizhao, In trusting you like this, you must not be wrong. Her words carried double meaning, but Lin Jizhao didn't hear it differently. He revealed his sweet dimples in a smile, nodding. Yi Xiao Jie, don't worry, you'll find that walking with me is the right decision. At this moment, aside from Lin Jizhao and Wen Feng at her side, there were still ten people following them. They started to go to the west. At this moment the sky flashed with lightning, and suddenly it was raining. When it was night, the rain became heavier, they had no choice but to look for a shelter from the rain. When Fong and the other ten people hurriedly cut down trees, constructing a very simple shelter. Tonight, it seemed that there was no place to sleep, trees were everywhere, so they may not be able to find a cave. They lit a campfire, drying their clothes. But seeing the heavy rain, Yi Mu thought deeply. At this moment, a wine sack was passed over. She turned her head and saw Lin Zitzhou's pair of bright eyes. Although you are amazing, you should still drink some wine to get rid of the cold. No, Yi Mu immediately refused. Traveling outside, I never drink wine. I advise you not to drink either because drinking wine can mess up situations. But Lin Jizhao didn't listen to the advice at all. He still raised his head to drink the wine, with flame reflecting in his clear eyes. Always maintaining a clear head is boring. You're also not a soldier, why be so harsh to yourself? Yi Mu didn't continue this topic, only asked, approximately how much longer will we find it? Asking this question, she thought the other party would give an ambiguous reply. She didn't expect Lin Jizhao to be straightforward this time. If there are no unforeseen situations, then tomorrow. I have a premonition we're already very close. Is that so? Yi Mu couldn't hear her tone. Looking at the heavy rain outside, she felt somewhat wistful. Feels it's been a long time seeing such a heavy rain. She only randomly sighed, but who would have thought Lin Jizhao would fix his gaze on the night rain, and, with a smile that was not quite a smile, said, yeah, whenever there's a heavy rain, there'll surely be panic. Who knows what's concealed behind this rain? Yi Mu shook her head. 
I don't understand what you're saying, I only think that heavy rain can wash away a lot of marks. For example, Xi and Imo Linyuan had discussed to leave marks on the way. The next day, Yi Mu found that the marks she left had washed away as expected. She felt uneasy, but she already came to this point, so she could only continue forward. On the way, she noticed that the road Lin Zhizhao pointed to was gradually deviating from the west, and rather, going closer toward the south. Lastly, she noticed from Lin Zitzhou's direction, she surprisingly arrived earlier at the foot of the big mountain she and Imo Linyuan had discussed yesterday. She couldn't help but ask, don't you think you should tell me, if the treasure can be at the summit of the mountain? Lin Zhizhao asked with a smile, why is it not possible? This mountain right in front of my eyes is lingering with purple chi. Since you've come, why not go and have a look? Yi Mu felt this was a trap even more, but she still went with it. After she left a mark at the foot of the mountain, she immediately brought the people to go up the mountain. This mountain was often precipitous, they climbed all the way, the walk slow. In their walk for half a day, only two-thirds of the walk, Yi Mu was already impatient. But Lin Zhizhao suddenly pointed to a direction, you look over there. Yi Mu turned, but didn't see anything. She brought people to carefully check, and discovered that an extremely enormous door unexpectedly appeared in front of her. That door was concealed among the trees, and half was buried under the ground. It seemed that there was no trace of it ever being excavated. This made Yi Mu shocked. Could it be, this is really the treasure's entrance? It was this easy for her to find it. She became even more uncertain, but Lin Zhizhao laughed. See, I didn't lie to you. In my eyes, the purple chi here is most dense. It's definitely the treasure's entrance. All along the way, haven't you wrongly blamed me? He feigned sadness as he said, I feel that you are always suspicious of me. Yi Mu was very shocked, she walked to the front of the door to have a look, and discovered this door opened facing the outside. But half of it was buried in the ground, and the plants surrounding the door were thick. It was very clear, no one has ever opened this door. Could it be that Lin Zhizhao really didn't deceive her, and because he could see the invisible qi, it was really easy to find this place? Having this kind of suspicion, Yi Mu did not light up the fireworks rashly. She only had people dig the place up, and see what would be behind the doors after it opened. The ten people simultaneously began to work. The door was not far from the summit of the mountain, nestling close to the mountain's surface. It towered aloft facing the sky in a tilt of 65 degrees, its age appearing to be very old. When they cleared away the remaining one side, a sentence was written on both sides of the door. Forget this world to live. Like forget your worries and concerns about the world, maybe about what'll happen tomorrow, what you'll eat, etc. Then you can survive, cause if you worry too much you might get sick. Enter the door to face death. After Yi Mu looked, she held out her hands to try push the door, while Lin Zhizhao was on one side, being watched by Wen Feng alone. Yi Mu pushed, and discovered that it indeed couldn't be pushed. This door needed to be pulled out. She was disconcerted as this door did not have any handle. If they wanted to pull it, it would still not be easy to pull. All of you move back. She suddenly opened her mouth and the others around her hurriedly backed away. Then, she placed both hands on the stone door and used her internal energy in one breath. Having spent a lot of her strength, finally, the door that most likely weighed a thousand jean was slowly torn open. Jean zero. Five kilograms, but here it means it's a really heavy door. Lin Zhizhao was surprised. He originally thought, just this door alone would most likely be a long struggle. He already knew that Yi Mu was impressive, but he didn't think she would be this impressive. After the door opened, someone immediately jammed a boulder on the door, lest it closed again because of gravity. After all, this door was slightly slanted toward the sky. Yi Mu did not rashly enter because when the door opened, a horrifyingly rotten smell wafted out from inside. There shouldn't be a mechanism inside, right? Chapter 343 Three People's Footsteps The door is open now, but who's going down to check? Everyone wanted to go down together with Yi Mu, but Yi Mu said, "You'll go down with Lin Zhizhao, all of you wait up here. Wen Feng was rather anxious. No, Yi Xiaojie, His Majesty had me come to protect you. But Yi Mu had already made up her mind. It's alright, you'll feel at ease if you stay up. 
It'll only take a glimpse inside, to confirm for a while. If I don't come up after one shirchen, send someone to go down to find me. If we still don't go out after three shirchen, set off the fireworks. One shirchen, two hours. When Fon thought, indeed, the people staying above are also important. Thinking it over, only himself was the most suitable, so he could only nod. All right then. Be careful, Yi Xiaojie. Lin Zhizhao said with a long face, I don't want to. I'm afraid of the dark, I don't want to go down. But Yi Mu didn't give him the chance, immediately pulling him straight down. Through the stone door was a long paved tunnel that looked like a big hole of pitch blackness. It was as if it could swallow up a person. Yi Mu and Lin Zhizhao didn't walk for long to realize that the sides of the tunnel were all dry skeletons. These people should be the craftsmen who renovated this place at that time, unless they talked about the place outside, they were deliberately sealed here. Thinking about it, it was really pitiful. Yi Mu had grabbed Lin Zhizhao to go down, but Lin Zhao had been wailing all the way. Yi Xiaojie, I've already brought you here, so why did you also have to bring me down? I'm really afraid of ghosts. Yi Mu chuckled. A feng shui master who's afraid of ghosts, do you think it makes sense? Lin Zhizhao was silent, and then groaned. Let go of my collar, I'll walk by myself. Yi Mu let go of him. The two followed the path going downward, the blue stone steps thick with stone powder. Yi Mu carefully observed, and found that besides them, there was no trace of anyone ever coming here. Because none of them were speaking, only their footsteps were heard in the tunnel. But at this moment, Lin Zhizhao said, Yi Xiaojie, have I ever told you, you were born to help him O Lin Yuan? Yi Mu walked ahead without looking back. After the tediously long paved tunnel was a sloping path going downward. She said, what are you suddenly saying this for? Dismayed, she recalled the silent monk again. Lin Zhizhao smiled as he said, look at you, after finding this place, obviously you could have waited for Mo Lin Yuan to come with you, but instead you came down first. Why, even when you felt strange, did you come down first to check? What good will this do? Is it because Mo Lin Yuan promised you to be the empress? Yi Mu didn't speak, and then Lin Zhizhao continued to chatter. That definitely is the case. You're a powerless orphan. If you want to take the Empress position, you can only gain M.O. Lin Yuan's favor. You're wholeheartedly very strong, so M.O. Lin Yuan dotes on you. You two mutually benefit each other, but in fact it's actually a relationship between a superior and a subordinate. You were born to help, while he's destined to achieve great things. Are you done talking? Yi Mu asked as she walked without looking back. Lin Zhizhao proudly smiled. Have I exposed you to the fact that you're now shamed into anger? Yi Mu shook her head. You're saying, me and Mo Lin Yuan are a couple deeply in love just because we're using each other. Is that right? Is that not right? Lin Zhizhao had a delicate smile. I've noticed, you're still a virgin until now, and also, the way you and Mo Lin Yuan speak is really similar to that of a soldier and a general. What else can I say? Yi Mu became silent. She doesn't understand, why does everyone not see them in a good way? Is it really because she has no emotion? Yi Mu felt it wasn't Mo Lin Yuan's problem. After all, Mo Lin Yuan was very provocative. She paused. Even if I say I like him now, you won't believe me. Lin Zhizhao curled his lips in disbelief. Look at your attitude, where does it show that you like him? There's not even the least bit of bashfulness. You're only loyal to him, that's all. Yi Mu suddenly became defensive. A person is only willing to hold on to his own beliefs, so, since that's what you're thinking, I won't say anything else. Yi Mu spoke while continuing walking ahead. Her face did not show any sign of embarrassment or anger it was indifferent, an expression that was completely beyond her age. Lin Zhizhao was rather uncontented as he ran to catch up to her. Say, if you're down here and haven't come out for a long time, Will Mo Lin Yuan come down to find you? Yi Mu nodded with absolute certainty. He will. Lin Zhizhao continued, What if he encountered a more important matter? Say the treasure is not here, and then he discovers the real treasure, do you think he'll cast away the treasure and come save you first? Yi Mu still nodded. Yes. Her stubbornness made Lin Zhizhao rather irritated. 
His eyes indescribably flashed with anger as he coldly said, Maybe all women are as stupid as you, so blind and confident. But you're really loyal to him. But at this moment, Yi Mu pulled him a little closer. Lin Zhizhao was rather frustrated. What are you doing? Yi Mu pulled him while continuing to walk, voice as calm as before, listen carefully. Listen to what? There isn't only the sound of both our footsteps here. When Yi Mu finished talking, Lin Zitzhou's back inexplicably felt cold. And then, he heard something strange behind him, and that sound was as if somebody was hauling a heavy object while walking. No way, is there really a ghost? He clutched Yi Mu's sleeve tightly and looked at her motionlessly. You, Yi you are not scared. Yi Mu calmly looked ahead, smiling as she said, not scared. This world doesn't have ghosts. If there are, they're unknown. As a commando, they couldn't believe those supernatural beings. Even if she encountered it now, she would believe it was the result of the loopholes of time and space. Seeing Yi Mu undeterred, Lin Zhizhao was convinced. The continuous sound behind him was neither near nor far, its walking pace slow. And then he carefully listened again, discovered that the sound had become very different. He wanted to turn his head to look but didn't have the guts to. After such a while, his vest was already damp with cold sweat. He walked rigidly while stiffly pulling Yi Mu. You go turn and look. Look back. Two don't dare. Yi Mu snorted a laugh. She looked at Lin Zhizhao. Are you really a feng shui master and not a liar? Lin Zhizhao hastily said, I'm a liar who relies on the eye of heaven to eat and drink, what skills do I have? You look back. Seeing him this terrified, Yi Mu found it rather funny. Then he'll look back. Yes, tell me after you see it. Yi Mu smiled, and then turned her head. Suddenly. Her eyes widened. Chapter, 344. The Smell of Death. Seeing Yi Mu not speaking for a long while, Lin Zhizhao panicked. He didn't dare to turn around even more, pulling Yi Mu's shirt. What happened? Tell me. He pulled a few times, but Yi Mu still didn't move. Instead, with a shocked voice said, Don't look back. Her voice scared Lin Zhizhao and he wanted to run away at once, but Yi Mu firmly clutched him. He couldn't run. So so what is it? The sound still continued in his ears, the hairs on his body stood, the luminous pearl in his hands was clutched even tighter. There's a person's shadow. Yi Mu's trembling voice reached his ears. The shackles in his feet are in his hands, holding a chicken. Chicken. Yes. Speaking of it makes me hungry. Yi Mu's tone suddenly lightened. Lin Zhizhao abruptly turned his head, and saw that there was nothing behind him. There was only the sound of footsteps that continued. Angry, he shoved Yi Mu hard. You purposely scared me. Yi Mu faintly smiled. You don't have to be so agitated. We just came in and you're already frightened, will you still go to the path at the back? Lin Zhizhao turned around to go. You go yourself. I want to go up. Yi Mu's faint voice rang out, if you want to go up, then go up. Anyway, we don't know what's the sound coming from behind us. Well part here. Lin Zhizhao suddenly became alarmed. Even if he dies, he still doesn't want to go back alone, especially since that strange sound is still behind him. WH what's the matter with you? Lin Zhizhao pulled Yi Mu's sleeve as he followed her to walk while looking back from time to time. That strange sound, where does it come from? Yi Mu calmly said, maybe it's some kind of a mechanism. When it's touched, it gives out this sort of sound to scare certain cowards. Lin Zhizhao was both confident and doubtful, and as before kept looking behind. Yi Mu suddenly laughed. You don't have to keep looking back. You're not scared that when you look back there'll suddenly be the face of a female ghost in front of you. Ah. Lin Zhizhao suddenly screamed and hugged Yi Mu tightly. And Yi Mu immediately lifted him away. Looking at his pale round face, she was puzzled. You're heavy. I'm only fourteen, do you not feel ashamed seeking protection from me? Lin Zhizhao indignantly said, then why did you have to scare me? Yi Mu indifferently said, it's only two of us here. Who do I talk to if not you? And how would I know you're easily scared? Can't I even joke around? Lin Zhizhao suddenly became dumbfounded. 
he grabbed Yi Mu's sleeve and continued to walk with her. Not long after, the strange sound became further away, similar to what Yi Mu said. Maybe it was a small mechanism specially to scare intruders. At this moment, they arrived in a big stone chamber. An enormous map was drawn on the stone chamber. This map drawing was extremely complex, similar to a maze. She scrutinized it for a while, and then Lin Zhizhao pulled Yi Mu a few times. Hurry, let's go back after you're done looking. Yi Mu only walked ahead. This place doesn't look like the treasure's place. Lin Zitzhou's complexion changed. Are you doubting my ability? Maybe the treasure is still way below. Yi Mu couldn't disagree. At this rate, in a few hours I can't be certain if there is a treasure below. Lin Zhizhao couldn't help but say, didn't you say Mo Linyuan really likes you? If you don't go up, he'll definitely come down to save you. Yi Mu didn't say a word. But Lin Zhizhao seemed to get interested. Or are you worried that the people above will walk away for another important matter and Mo Linyuan won't come save you? Yi Mu frowned. You seem to really want to see my disappointment. Whether Mo Linyuan comes down to find me or not, you think he'll wait for the outcome. Chu didn't say that. Yi Mu stepped closer to him. Or did something similar happen before and someone abandoned you and ran away, so you brought up this sort of embitterment? Nonsense. Lin Zitzhou's expression suddenly changed. But at this moment, something was rolling and rumbling toward their path. Not good, it's a rolling stone. Yi Mu instantly knew it was the common type of trap. She hurriedly grabbed Lin Zhizhao and ran ahead, more and more forks appearing before them. But the rumbles of the rolling stone were growing nearer and nearer. In the end, Yi Mu pulled Lin Zhizhao into a fork. Behind them, a gigantic stone ball rumbled away. Yi Mu said once more, the terrain here is so complex, but I've seen nothing after being inside for a long time. So this place is definitely a trap, it's definitely not the treasure's place. What's more, this place is completely different from the one marked on the city boundary map. Lin Zhizhao panted heavily. Maybe it's the city boundary map that lied to you. Hood specially leave a map after leaving behind a treasure. Yi Mu faintly smiled. What you're saying also sounds reasonable. So you're saying, we should go on. Lin Zhizhao nodded. We've come this far. Do we still have a way back? Yi Mu looked at him deeply, continuing forward with him. Her appearance was as calm as before, and Lin Zitzhou's pace gradually became slower. Yi Mu said with a smile, if this is a trap, who do you think will be at an advantage in the end? Lin Zhizhao was dumbfounded. What do you mean? I mean, Yi Mu began, I'm suspecting this place is definitely not for the treasure. It's a very dangerous place. Did you trick me to go down so Mo Linyuan will also be tricked to go down? Or a trap is also ready for Mo Linyuan over there, and until then, he still has a chance to choose. Lin Zitzhou's complexion changed, suddenly retreating a few steps and stopped. He used the wall to support his hand, and after a silent while, he said in a low voice, if you knew, why did you still want to come down? You've doubted me since the beginning, and now, why did you want to come down? Yi Mu sighed looking at him. If I start doubting then I doubt, but I was also hoping that what you're saying is true. Unfortunately, you disappointed me. Lin Zitzhou's complexion changed, and then in a cold voice said, No, you just think too highly of yourself. You think you won't be scared of anything if you excel in martial arts. The path you took downward changed early, you can't go back, you'll be trapped here underground for all your life. And I. He exerted a strength in his hand. I'm not accompanying you here. After saying that, he pressed down a mechanism, and stone bars suddenly swooped down, separating Yi Mu and him. Take your time enjoying the smell of death in this maze. Lin Zhizhao suddenly opened a stone door beside him. Before going in, he coldly smiled. Maybe Mo Linyuan won't really come down to save you. Chapter, 345 A Way Out Seeing him about to walk away after he finished speaking, Yi Mu quietly said, You said the way to come here changed, what do you mean? Lin Zhizhao was impatient, but still said, From the moment you came in, the mechanism had already started. This underground place has more than 300 tunnels. Ever since the door was opened, it has constantly changed. He paused, and with a cold smile said, Don't waste your energy. 
even if you keep asking, you still won't be able to go out. He swung his sleeve to leave. You said I can't go out. Yi Mu faintly smiled. Behind the stone bars, she glanced at Lin Jizhao. Then you're sure that once you enter this door, you'll be able to get out. Lin Zitzhou's back chilled from her words, but he didn't look back as he went in the stone door. The stone door shifted and the block of wall became smooth. It was as if no door ever appeared there. Yi Mu held out her hand, pinching the stone bars in front of her. Exerting strength on her fingers, her hand became covered with stone powder. She retreated a few steps, and then rushed forward with a powerful kick. Suddenly, the stone bars in front of her crumbled. She patted the dust on her body and walked toward the place where Lin Jizhao entered. She tried to push a couple of times, but was fruitless, so she drew on her internal energy. The door was forcefully pushed with some effort, but she only heard buzzing sounds. After pushing the door open while being oblivious about the mechanism, she discovered behind the stone door was a path, but it was a dead end. Could it be after Lin Zhizhao entered this place, the path behind this door changed? Yi Mu recalled the enormous map of maze she saw earlier on the wall and continued walking deeper. She had a speculation, and after seeing these bizarre mechanisms, it became true. Perhaps this was another passageway for the treasure's entry. It's just that this passageway was very dangerous for people who didn't know the mechanism. But its built was so complex, it was impossible that there was nothing behind it. There must be a principle to its operation. Yi Mu raised her head. She took note that she had continuously walked downward. According to where she first came in, it was near the summit of the mountain. Then how did she end up halfway up the mountain? And just as Lin Zhizhao said, the forks in front of her multiplied. The over 300 tunnels was the same as what she saw on the map on the wall. Thinking this, she sped up her pace at once, turning left and right like a ghost. Because of her great internal energy, her memory was also good. At this moment the map was stored in her mind, and she ran purposefully toward an intersection. Then, with one hand striking down, one of the four intersections was blown down by her, covered with debris. Then she kept moving, again sweeping past like a ghost. She believed she moved much faster than Lin Zhizhao, if he was in front of her. When she arrived at a three intersection, before she could get to work, she saw a boulder suddenly blocking one of the intersections slowly. She raised her eyebrows. No wonder Lin Zhizhao said after she came in, the moment the mechanism was touched these tunnels would change. So it was true. More than 300 paths, if it suddenly blocked here and there, then the people who came in would definitely not be able to go out forever. After all, with this kind of pattern, other people would find it difficult to understand. But Yi Mu was not worried. Seeing one of these intersections was already sealed, she looked at the remaining left and right paths. She assessed the location of the map in her mind, then she extended her hand and destroyed one of them. Looking at those stones crumbling down from her palm force and sealing the way, Yi Mu faintly smiled. It didn't matter how much Lin Zhizhao had lied, because there were some things that he couldn't lie about, and that is, he really couldn't do martial arts. Lin Zhizhao was originally full of confidence. After leading Yi Mu down, he calculated the time of the changes in the underground and escaped at the appropriate time. He had already walked this path once, so he couldn't be wrong. He remembered it very well. But after turning a corner, he suddenly stopped, his face ghastly pale as his eyes fixated on the collapse before him. No way, this was originally a path. He panicked. Thinking that he might not be able to get out himself, his eyes turned red. Calm down, calm down. There was still one more path. He could go there to go out. So he turned back and wandered around again. On the ground, there was a very thin scratch. It was the mark he left when he was small. He couldn't be wrong following it. Finally, he recomposed himself. After walking for half a shirchen, he was suddenly stupefied. Because the path in front of him was similarly collapsed. With his strength, he definitely couldn't move those rubbles away. Or it could be said, with the time head use for moving away the rubbles, the underground tunnels would already change to an appearance he wasn't familiar with. Who did this, who? His forehead was full of sweat, but he remembered the words Yimu said earlier behind the bars, you're sure you'll be able to get out. She said it so leisurely. It's definitely her. So the distant rumbles he heard before was Yimu destroying the underground. 
How is her speed so fast, how did she run past him? Wouldn't an average person in this situation be anxious and slowly find a way out carefully? Why is she fearless and even dares to do this? After realizing the situation, Lin Zhizhao gnashed his teeth in hatred. But he also knew he didn't have much time left himself, this underground place would change every one shirchen. If he couldn't go out within the remaining half a shirchen, then this underground maze would become unfamiliar to him. He staggered and continued to walk, but this time, there was no guide, there was no propriety. The hand that held the luminous pearl was trembling. The entire underground resounded with his own footsteps, and occasionally rumbles of explosion could be heard somewhere. He knew that it was definitely Yi Mu carrying out the obliteration. After he had repeatedly walked to the same place three times, he knew he had gotten lost. Now, his back was wet with cold sweat. The path was under his feet, but he had no strength to take another step forward. And at this moment, he heard the shaking sound again. He couldn't help walking over to the sound, even though he knew it was a trap. But being in a confined space and panicked state, he wasn't thinking straight anymore. He only wished for a companion, even if it was his personal enemy. But he didn't expect the rumbling sound this time wasn't Yimu, and instead was a rolling stone. The realization dawned on him too late. He fled downward aimlessly and in confusion, away from the rolling stone. But the more anxious he was, the more mistakes he made. Suddenly. He fell down. He raised his head in panic, and instantly saw a gigantic stone rolling over toward his direction. Whether the speed was fast or slow, at this moment, he no longer had any strength to get up. The luminous pearl in his hands rolled toward a corner, but at this moment, the rolling stone was already in front of him. Chapter, 346 Back figure He's going to die. Hell die just like this. He can't believe it, how could he die? As the huge stone drew near, Lin Zhizhao had many thoughts. But in the end, it turned blank. He had struggled for so long, yet he was still going to die. What were his previous efforts for? He shut his eyes, but as he was waiting for his death, a figure suddenly came rushing in a flash, appearing in front of him. Then, the rolling stone that was close to crushing him to death was blocked by Yi Mu. A muffled sound was heard. Yi Mu fell a few steps back from the force of the rolling stone. Her feet dug into the blue stone slab, and finally the rolling stone gradually stopped. Your expression is really interesting. She panted. You're closing your eyes, do you think you're dead? Yi Mu. Lin Zhizhao opened his eyes, stunned to see her. In the dim light, he could only make out a shadow, but this shadow suddenly made him feel at ease. It's really Yi Mu. He didn't die, he survived. He hurriedly got up and picked up the luminous pearl, tightly clutching it. Yi Mu wasn't in a comfortable position to move. She should be glad that although the ground was sloping here, it wasn't too steep, so it wasn't too strenuous to stop this rolling stone. She spoke to Lin Zhizhao who was on one side. Why are you still not moving? Go down, and then go a few steps to the left. There are stones there, pick two of them up and bring them here to wedge them under this stone to resist it. At this moment, Lin Zhizhao had lost his own judgment. He hastily left after listening. He staggered downward, and then turned to the left. Sure enough, he saw there was one fork in front that was sealed by Yi Mu. The stones rolled all over the ground from big to small. No wonder she wantonly destroyed the place like this, it forced him to find her in the end. After all, it was hard for her to go out, but it was easy for her to keep him from going out. She just needed to use Qing Gong to run until she was in front of him and block a few paths. Qing Gong also spelled Qing Gong is a Qigong martial arts technique for making the body extremely light in weight, by altering the distribution and flow of qi. Retrieved from, https, www. Learn Religions. Kong Qing, Gong, 3183115. So Lin Zhizhao gazed at the crushed stones before his eyes, not moving. Yi Mu's voice rang out, hurry, I don't have any more strength. Lin Zhizhao listened, and in his heart thought, if he made Yi Mu hold up the huge stone, no one would be able to carry out the destruction, right? He remembered the whole map, so maybe, if there was no Yi Mu, he could go out. Thinking like this, he ran away to the only path that wasn't destroyed. Yi Mu heard Lin Zitzhou's footsteps that grew distant and heaved a sigh while shaking her head. 
he still didn't learn. She rescued Lin Zhizhao because she thought he could be useful. Who would have thought he would return her kindness with ingratitude? Yi Mu had a headache looking at the rolling stone in front of her, and then pushed it step by step, slowly moving backward. Beads of sweat glistened on her forehead. Every step under her feet would break the slab stone. Using this speed, after very carefully retreating more than ten meters, she suddenly roared a shout, pushed the huge stone with full strength, and then her whole person fell over to the left fork. She pushed the huge stone to a halt, and when it rolled downward, Yi Mu was already in the other fork. Yi Mu got up and patted the dust on her body. Hearing the rumbles of the rolling stone colliding against the wall, she went forward without looking back. She came back to save Lin Zhizhao because after running toward the end of the map, she discovered it was only half of the map. The path behind was definitely even more complex. Even if she had a lifetime of internal energy, it would still be impossible to use brute force to break out. Maybe before she could even go out, she would have used up her internal energy and only could wait for death. But Lin Zhizhao was different. Since he dared to run, he definitely knew the whole map. If he led the way, even if this underground constantly changed, there was no need to be afraid. After all, its changes were only the blocking and clearing of the path. The original underground terrain didn't change. As long as she knew the whole map, then if she encountered a blocked path she could just instantly blast it away. So in order to save time, this Lin Zhizhao still couldn't die. After Lin Zhizhao ran out, he repeatedly looked back. Although he thought the huge stone could stop Yimu for a while, it surely wouldn't hold her back for long. He ran away just like that, if he got caught by Yimu, she would definitely kill him. So he ran very fast following the map in his mind. He ran until he arrived at a completely unfamiliar surroundings. Originally, he didn't need to run until this deep. The deeper he went, the more dangerous it was. He was really scared to be killed by Yimu. After a while, the way out in front was already blocked by the stone door. Angry, Lin Zhizhao hammered at the door. As long as he passed through here, he could arrive outside. Too bad, the changes of the underground wasn't something he could control. He also didn't have the strength to break open this door. So he had no choice but to continue downward. He had memorized all the paths here, but never walked through them, so his forehead was covered with cold sweat, especially in the several following occasions, the way out from his memory kept being blocked by the mechanism. He gnashed his teeth and ran madly with full strength. Finally, he was out of the underground maze. In front of him appeared a mountain cliff. Lin Zhizhao didn't think he had walked so far. This underground was divided into two sections. It looked like he had walked half of it already. Seeing the suspension bridge on the cliff, he hesitated. Although he remembered the paths behind him, it was still even more mysterious to him. How could he be sure those mechanisms wouldn't trap him inside forever because of a mistake? But right now wasn't the time to think too much, Yi Mu would catch up to him soon. If he didn't want to be killed by her, he just needed to cross the bridge and destroy it. No matter how good a person's Qin Gong was, they still needed to use some strength. As long as he destroyed this bridge after going across, Yi Mu would not be able to catch him. And the underground palace had almost been destroyed by Yi Mu. If she wanted to turn back, it was impossible. So he still had a chance. Lin Zhizhao thought so and directly went to that suspension bridge. He didn't know how many years this suspension bridge had existed. He took a step and there was a creak, and what Lin Zhizhao didn't tell anyone was, he was scared of heights. Every time he was in a high place, his feet would go weak. And this time, he looked at the darkness below the overhanging cliff. Although he was obviously walking on the suspension bridge, he felt like he was walking on a tightrope. The bridge kept on shaking, giving out creak, creak sound. His feet trembled, and at this moment, he suddenly saw at the end of the suspension bridge, there was a woman in white sitting with her back toward him. Onomatopoeia for creaking noise, G-E-G, G-E-G. When did that woman appear? She definitely wasn't there before. His mouth suddenly dried, hands and feet even more sluggish. Standing on the bridge, he no longer dared to move. Behind the bridge, there was Yi Mu who would most likely kill him. And in front, was the unmoving figure of someone's back to him. With the sudden appearance of the woman's back, what was he supposed to do? 
While he was hesitating, a cold wind blew, and, slowly, the sitting back view of the woman turned to his direction. Chapter 347 Mechanism At that moment, Lin Zitzo's breathing stopped, his hands and feet ice cold. He felt he should turn back and run, but it was as if his feet were rooted into the bridge, not moving at all. A strange kakik voice was heard. Lin Zhizhao raised his eyes to look, and saw that after the sitting woman completely turned around, there was only a mummy-like face. This wasn't the most terrifying. The most terrifying thing was that she unexpectedly opened her mouth slowly, and at the same time, that kakik voice grew louder. Lin Zhizhao cried out in fear. His feet went soft, and they fell through the cracks between the bridge's planks. Luckily, at the last moment, his hands caught the iron chains but his hands were sweating profusely. By his ears were the uncanny laughter, and under his feet was an endless abyss. But he wasn't most afraid of these, what he was most scared of was, he noticed that the wooden pile attached to one end of the suspension bridge's mountain was gradually loosening. He's dead, this time for sure. With a loud bang, the wooden pile completely pulled out, and he gripped onto the suspension bridge's iron chains, his body immediately falling down. Because the suspension bridge only snapped at one side, for a person like him who lacked the strength to trust a chicken, once his body bumped against the mountain wall, his hands would definitely lose their grip, and then he would directly plummet down. So in the split second that he fell, he had already accepted his fate and his hands weren't clutching that firmly anymore. Idiom, meaning very weak physically. When his hands were sliding off the iron chains, there was still the horrifying person's voice in his ears. And at this moment, he saw a person jumping down with him. Yi Mu Dove, one hand reaching the suspension bridge's iron chains, the other hand firmly grabbing Lin Zitzo's hand. The next second, the body of the suspension bridge ruthlessly slammed against one side of the mountain wall. Seeing it in advance, Yi Mu used her feet to brace against it, so Lin Zitzo's lower body bumped against the mountain wall while his upper body didn't. You loosened your hands so early, you really wish to die. Yi Mu's voice came out. Even if there was the suspension bridge's creak sound and the eccentric laughter above, her voice was as calm as before. That calmness really made Lin Zhizhao want to cry. Onomatopoeia for creaking noise ge -Zhi. She actually saved him again. No matter what her purpose was, what her reason was, Lin Zhizhao only felt he wouldn't forget this person all his life. Hey, are you a fool? Yi Mu's voice snapped Lin Zhizhao back. It'll pull you up now, you climb up using the iron chains, understand? Lin Zhizhao nodded, but he hurriedly said in a twist, can't can't go up. There's a ghost up there. But Yi Mu laughed. This cowardly, how did you have the courage to run away before? Saying this, she firmly pulled. Lin Zitzo's hands grabbed the iron chains. Yi Mu said with a smile, hold on tight. If you fall again, I won't be able to catch you. It'll go up first. Saying this, she climbed up first. Before, Lin Zitzo's legs were weak because of the female ghost above. But now there was Yi Mu, and he found that he wasn't scared of anything anymore. So after his hands regained their strength, he gritted his teeth and followed climbing up. Yi Mu went up first, but after she went up, Lin Zhizhao unexpectedly neither heard her scream nor heard other movements. He noticed that that horrifying person's kakik laughter was gone. Feeling strange, he called, Yi Xiaojie. Yi Mu didn't answer. He became scared and called again, Yi Xiaojie. Yi Mu still didn't answer. He felt uncertain, but at this moment, he also could not continue climbing up. Hence, he continued with his heart in his mouth. In the split second he raised his head, a mummy head suddenly appeared before him. I died so miserably. Ah! Lin Zhizhao cried out in fear. His hands loosened their grip at once and he was about to fall, but Yi Mu unexpectedly grabbed his collar, and then directly lifted him up. Yi Mu placed the person's head on one side, roaring with laughter. You're this terrified, how did you have the guts to leave me and run away alone? Hmm. Yi Mu would never admit she was taking revenge on him and deliberately frightened him. But if she didn't scare him for a bit because of his previous behavior, she would feel sorry for herself, so Yi Mu wasn't the least bit guilty. After going up the cliff, Lin Zitzo's feet were still weak. He just suddenly loosened his grip. If not for Yi Mu, he would definitely have died. 
But after realizing that she scared him, he furiously said, Don't you know people can scare people to death? Yi Mu squatted beside him and with a smile said, Then have you been scared to death? You and me are still alive and well. Lin Zhizhao glared at her hard, but his line of view stopped at the mummy at one side and his expression grew fearful again. This is not an ordinary mummy. I just saw her move, how did you dare how did you dare seize her head? Yi Mu pointed to the chair at the side. She said, I didn't seize it, it was when this woman was alive that her head was chopped. When I came up before, she smiled at me. I wanted to see what exactly she was, so I reached out. Who would have thought her head was loose? Look, there's a wooden mechanism inside. Lin Zhizhao looked up, and found that the chair that was sat on by this woman was clearly not an ordinary chair. It was clear it was specially prepared by the people who renovated this place to frighten people. Lin Zhizhao felt irritated. He was very unwilling to think about how he was so scared before to the point of being weak in his feet, but he still didn't dare to let himself go near the mummy. Yi Mu said with a smile, the way here must have already been destroyed by me, I know you must have the whole map in your head. This time, you won't leave me alone, will you? She looked at the corpse with a smile that wasn't a smile. This time it was only to scare people, but who knows what's inside. Without me, will you be able to go out? Yi Mu deliberately spoke gloomily. Lin Zhizhao felt diffident, but he also knew Yi Mu wouldn't kill him. So he stood up, puffing his steam-stuffed bun face and fiercely said, then why don't you follow me? Yi Mu also stood up, ready to go with him. Lin Zhizhao looked back at the overhanging cliff in front. You left like this. Are you not worried the people above won't be able to find you? Yi Mu said, no need to worry. She smiled. I've completely destroyed the mechanism in the tunnel in front. The tunnel won't move anymore. Moreover, I left a message not far from where I came in and sealed the path. They can't come in. Lin Zhizhao frowned, and finally groaned. You sound so certain that someone will come save you. Yi Mu smiled but didn't say a word. On the other side, Mo Lin Yuan looked at the blocked path, frowning. Your Majesty, there's a word here. Mo Lin Yuan hurriedly looked, but saw Yi Mu saying to wait at the foot of the mountain. Once she came out, she would set off the fireworks, and she also said she would be fine. But if there was no problem, why did Xiao Muer collapse the tunnel? This clearly said, inside was very dangerous, and she didn't want him to risk his life. Chapter 348 The Imperial Family's Orphan Your Majesty, what should we do now? Mo Lin Yuan waved his hand. There are so many of these tunnels. Being this complex, the mountain might be hollow. Well go out, gather all the manpower and search from the top to the bottom of the mountain. Be a little attentive, well definitely find either the exit or entrance. Yes. Everyone hurriedly withdrew. After entering this area, the air circulation was profound. Clearly, there were air vents, and there were also more than one. As long as they looked carefully, they would definitely find it. At this moment, Yi Mu followed Lin Zhizhao. This half section of the maze had the same pattern as the previous one. From time to time, there would appear a door at the end of the path, and at times, elsewhere. When Yi Mu encountered a blocked path, she instantly blasted it away. She didn't show it, but in her heart she knew her internal energy had been used up to an extent. So after destroying another door, Yi Mu rubbed her hand and asked Lin Zhizhao. How much longer will we be able to go out? My hands ache. Lin Zhizhao was already numb going all the way down. He had always known Yi Mu had outstanding martial arts, but he didn't know she was actually so powerful. Hearing what she said, he grumbled, when you move your hands, do it lightly. If it hits the dragon pillar and the entire underground collapses, you won't be able to escape no matter how strong you are. Implying the destruction carried out by Yi Mu. Yi Mu grunted. All right, hurry and lead the way. Carrying out this way, they walked into numerous forks and arrived in another secret chamber. At this time, both of them were exhausted. They decided to sit down and rest, but when Lin Zhizhao turned a corner and planned to sit there, he suddenly cried out in surprise and the luminous pearl fell from his hands. Yi Mu picked up the pearl and walked to him. What happened? Under the lights of the two luminous pearls, Yi Mu saw a dead person shrunk against the corner, 
seeming to have died some years ago and had deteriorated into bones early on. Lin Zhizhao was a cowardly person, but unexpectedly, he fixed his gaze on those dead bones. In the end, his whole body trembled. Yi Mu was skeptical. Looking at those dead bones, it looked like a woman's. Could it be Lin Zizhou's family? Lin Zhizhao forced himself to look away, and said to Yi Mu hoarsely, let's go. But Yi Mu hugged her arms against her chest, unruffled despite the situation. Are you not going to explain? Who is this person? Lin Zhizhao looked left and right evading the topic. How would I know who she is? Yi Mu raised her eyebrows. She lifted her foot. So you don't know. They'll kick her since you don't know. You still won't feel sorry. You dare. The expression in Lin Zizhou's eyes immediately changed. Of course, Yi Mu wouldn't possibly kick it, but her stance still looked like it. She snorted. I also feel upset at being brought to this ghostly place. What do you think, do you think I dare? Seeing Yi Mu not scared at all, Lin Zhizhou didn't dare to gamble, so he softly said, don't. I'll speak. Only then did Yi Mu put her foot down. Lin Zhizhou gazed at that hollow skeleton. The rims of his eyes were red. After a long time, he hoarsely said, she was my mother. Yi Mu continued to ask, so what about you, what's your identity? Lin Zhizhou became silent. Yi Mu said with a smile, the matter has come to this point, yet you're still hiding the truth from me. We don't know how many more mechanisms there are ahead of us, and we may not necessarily be able to go out. So, here, I can agree on a three-point law with you. Idiom, meaning to make simple rules that all parties can abide by. Lin Zhizhou stared at her. Yi Mu said, no matter if we can go out or not later, he'll let you go. I want kill you. Lin Zhizhou startled. You want kill me? He had harmed Yi Mu twice, how could she not kill him? She definitely was lying. Lin Zhizhou inwardly thought to himself. If you had seen me before, then you should know, I never break my promise. Lin Zhizhou looked at her and said, So, you promise not to kill me? Yi Mu said, That's right, I promise I won't kill you. After we go out, I also won't let him O Lin Yuan kill you. But in the future, whether you fall into our hands or not depends on yourself. Right now, we're in the same boat, so I think we should trust each other. Being frank and open is important. Lin Zhizhou then lowered his head, as though pondering it over. A short while later, he nodded. Okay. There's no harm in telling you anyway, and it's also easy for you to kill me. He looked at the skeleton locked in the corner, eyes filled with pity. Then, he suddenly said, did you know? Two hundred years ago, the empire's imperial family didn't die. Yi Mu naturally knew this. If they died, where would the city boundary map have come from? Originally, the empire left a treasure with a total of two maps. One is the city boundary map, the other is the bright king map. Among them, there is only one map that has the treasure, while the other is originally for the emperor's imperial tomb. There are countless mechanisms inside which can be said to be a trap. But at that time, all the surviving imperial descendants weren't important figures. They were sent away before the empire was destroyed, so even if they got the two maps in the end, they wouldn't know which of the two maps is the treasure, and which one is the emperor's imperial tomb. Later, after the city boundary map was stolen by someone, the remaining imperial people could only watch over the Wang Ming map. It has two sides, one side is the complex underground palace route, and the other is the map and coordinates. Because of the crown prince, they wanted to work on the dream to restore the imperial family. Hence, from generation to generation, they used all their efforts and resources to look for the treasure. At this point, Lin Zhizhou wanted to laugh. It's really too bad, they spent 200 years and found this place from the Wang Ming map that has no single character. And in reality, besides ruthlessly giving them a beating, the Wang Ming map is not the treasure map. Underneath, is all traps. He looked at those dead remains, coldly smiling as he said, and the reason why they came to this ending is because of my mother who died here. He walked over. After fumbling for a while from the bodice remains, he took out a small one-sided mirror. My mother was a really excellent mechanic. Because she fell in love with my father, she invested all her life for him. 
At that time, after my father found the location from a different entrance, many people died as a result of the mechanisms. My father didn't give up, he thought having mechanisms around the treasure was normal, but he didn't want to die. So he told my mother to come down and check. But my mother was quite reluctant, because at that time, I was still small. She was afraid that if she went down, if it was the emperor's imperial tomb and she had to face the numerous mechanisms, she could die inside. But my father said, all his life, he had been a person in complete isolation, what matters most are me and my mother. He also said, if she doesn't come out after half a day, he's ready to pay any price. Even if he has to dig up the mountain, he will save her. And now, the one who understands mechanisms most and is the most excellent in martial arts is her, so he hoped, for his sake and for preventing so many people from dying in vain, that she could go down to thoroughly investigate. Chapter, 349 The Singing Voice in the Dark As you can imagine, my mother agreed. But I still thought it was very dangerous. I had a feeling that if she goes down, she won't ever come up again. But father refused to listen to me, so not long after she went down, I followed her when they weren't paying attention. Yi Mu finally understood Lin Zitzhou's identity. So, you're the descendant of the Imperial Crown Prince? Lin Zhizhao listened and smiled derisively. Right. I'm the younger brother of the Empire's last emperor, Jing Emperor's great-grandson. If you say I'm in the upper-class status, then that's true, because I have the blood of the Imperial family. Yi Mu was suddenly surprised. Although she had lightly guessed before, she was still shocked and Lin Zhizhao said it himself. What happened after? She asked. Lin Zhizhao said with a sigh, in the end, I couldn't find her. I was stranded in the maze with her. The underground path keeps changing every shirchen. Although I memorized the map, my mother and I didn't have the strength to break the stone wall. He smiled. In the end, I finally met her. She heard my crying and came running, but we were separated by a wall. She didn't dare to run recklessly, afraid that the more she ran, the further I'd be. She kept asking why I came down, and I said I was worried about her. Then, she cried behind the wall. After hearing me cry too, she sat there and comforted me. When Lin Zhizhao spoke until here, it was as if he could still hear his mother's voice coming through that wall. That time she was also really scared, because although her mechanism skill was good, she couldn't break the mechanism here, so besides waiting for someone to come save them, she couldn't do anything else. She could only tell him calmly, Zhao er, don't be scared. The slight trembling voice, separated by a wall, dispiritedly came out. Your father will come down to save us in a while, don't be scared. At that age, the small Lin Zhizhao who was scared kept on crying. The torch he took from the entrance had died out early. He sat on the ground with the endless darkness all around him. He could only rely on his mother on the other side of the wall. Mom, I'm scared. Will dad really come down? Although he was still small, he had a faint gut feeling that if his mother didn't go up, his father might not dare to come down. Since even his mother couldn't go out, it clearly explained that this was the emperor's imperial tomb. In that case, if father knew very well that it was dangerous, would he still come to save them? He was very doubtful and scared. But his mother said with certainty, don't be scared. Your father hates to part with us, we're his dearest family. He will definitely come save us. Mom, I'm still scared. I spoke with dad before not to send you down and he ignored me. His mother listened, turning silent for a long time. In the end, she didn't know if she was telling him or herself, he will come down. Don't be scared. Zhao or, they'll sing for you. Don't be scared. Saying this, his mother began to sing. To be a little closer to her, Lin Zhizhao firmly pressed himself against the wall, hoping it would open up. And the woman on the other side also did the same, her trembling voice singing for him. Darkness made them distraught. But because they had each other in the darkness, they didn't seem to be as scared anymore. They didn't know how long they had waited. Maybe a day. Lin Zhizhao only felt his whole body was ice cold, and he was hungry and sleepy. Finally, he saw a torch and heard footsteps. It was a white bearded old man, looking like a transcendent being. Seeing Lin Zhizhao, he spoke one sentence, found you. Seeing him, Lin Zhizhao was overjoyed. Were you sent by father to save me? His excitement shot through the wall, 
and his mother's enthusiastic voice also came through from the other side, Is it in Lang? Is it in Lang's people? He's using a different way to say dad here, rather more formal. The old man frowned. He calculated the time and reckoned that the tunnel would change again, so he came over and grabbed Lin Zitzhou's hand, walking out. Lin Zhizhou hurried, wait. My mother is still over there. Save her. She's behind the wall. The old man said, there will be someone whole save her there. The tunnel down here changes from time to time, you should come with me first. No. I'm not going. I don't have anywhere to go without mom. The old man's face clouded over. It'll count to three. You must come with me, or else, you'll be staying here by yourself. I also won't be able to go out if I stay here for another moment. I'm asking you one last time, are you going or not? Lin Zitzhou's mother heard it clearly. She also knew the tunnel changed every shirchen. With the mechanism so formidable, it can't be cracked by just one or two people. So she hurriedly said to Lin Zhizhou, Zhao, you must go first. Your dad's people will come save me soon. You should go up first, mum will follow in a while. Lin Zhizhou was really scared. He looked behind him and looked at the old man in front. He uncertainly asked, father has sent someone else to come down. They'll save mum. The old man almost couldn't bear it anymore and said, yes, come with me first. Lin Zhizhou was still unwilling, and his mother said once more, Zhao er, trust your father. He won't abandon me, mum will come up in a while. With tears, Lin Zhizhou said, then, mum, you should hurry. And, hurry and go up. Lin Zhizhou blindly followed the old man upward, but in the process and in the dark, he thoughtfully left marks on the corners of the wall. This way, if his father doesn't come down to save her, he will still remember the way. Thinking this, Lin Zhizhou looked at the old man in front, knocking east and west to find the stone door. He quietly remembered the mechanism in his heart, and then was led outside. After he was outside, he was brought to his father. Before he could speak, his father slapped him. The slap made his ears buzz, the corners of his lips flowing with blood. Father, Munch is still. Silence. His father immediately said to the servant, take the young master down and bind him up. Tomorrow, bring him to the old residence early in the morning. Of course, Lin Zhizhou was unwilling. He screamed at the top of his lungs, but when he was dragged away, his father was already speaking to the old man ingratiatingly, does Xianqing think the treasure is also here? Can we find it with Feng Shui? Honorific to address men Mr. Mr. Lin Zhizhou couldn't hear the last words. He didn't expect that his father actually didn't care for his mother's life, only ingratiating himself with the old man for the treasure. Is the news of the treasure more important than a human's life? He couldn't express his resentment, and that night, he cried all night while he was locked up. He thought of his mother who was trapped underground, still waiting for his father to save her. He thought of his mother who had so much trust in his father, willingly waiting alone in the dark to be saved. But in the end, because of the news of the treasure, on the same day and night, his father left. Chapter, 350 Schemes from all sides That time, he was bound in a carriage. Seeing the mountain growing further and further away, tears of blood stayed in his eyes. From then on, he vaguely could see something others couldn't see. To show extreme suffering. When Lin Zhizhou finished talking, Yi Mu's heart felt a little heavy. Having met such a man, she really married to a bad husband. Lin Zhizhou knelt before the corpse, performing three loud kowtows. Mother, I'm an unfilial son, I'm a useless son. I couldn't save you. The corpse rolled up in the corner, unmoving. It tightly curled up into a ball, maintaining the position even if it had turned into bones. Who knew what she felt prior to her death, alone in the dark by herself, walking from the map's first half section to the last half. She must have thought to find the way out herself. But she failed, and was tired and hungry. Maybe she was also sleepy, and then suffered in despair, sleeping here for a long time, never opening her eyes again. After Lin Zhizhou had recomposed himself, Yi Mu took off her robe. Here, we have to hurry. Bring your mother's remains, since you've met her now, she can be buried in peace after we go out. Lin Zhizhou suddenly looked at Yi Mu, his eyes red. He didn't reject her kindness and gathered the bones. Afterward, they
They continued walking. Seeing Lin Zitzhou's mood was almost sorted, Yi Mu asked, So what happened after that? You didn't come back here. Lin Zitzhou's smile was wry. I did, of course. I came down more than once, but because I was afraid that the tunnels would change and I can't go out, every time I'd use different doors and go down for one shirchen. Besides the main door here, which is the door we came in, I've gone to the other six doors. Yi Mu pursed her lips. No wonder there was no trace of anyone stepping into the main door. Then, right now you're still working for your father, and he wants to be the emperor, so he made you come here and lie to Mo Lin Yuan. Lin Zhizhao coldly smiled. All his life he couldn't have the life of an emperor, how could he be one? He hugged the corpse, gnashing his teeth. That time, the Feng Shui master pointed to the wrong direction. My father lost hope, but he still thought, by using Feng Shui, there would be a day when the real treasure is found, so he made me study with the Feng Shui master. Although I felt grateful he saved me, I also hated him for not saving my mother, even though I knew he also couldn't help. After all, he was just an old man, and even my mother's kung fu couldn't break that wall. I really hated it, and I also hated my father. I refused to learn feng shui, so I actually don't understand it. Then who are you working for now? Lin Zhizhao said with a faint smile, after my father got a qi deficiency, soon after, I was expelled from my teacher's home. Later, it was the people of Yen country who found me. Yen country? Yi Mu thought it was strange. I remember Yen country is far from here, and is Zhao country's neighbor. How did they find you? She vaguely felt this matter was quite big. It originally was only a competition between the two neighboring countries. Now that Yen country was involved, it became more complicated. Lin Zhizhao faintly smiled. It's not hard to understand. A friend who's far attacks close. Yen country has always wanted to attack Zhao country, but his strength is not a match for Zhao country. So he hopes the more powerful Mo country can go to war against Zhao country first. I can clarify for you, Zhao country's people have already come. This time, Yen country's purpose is very clear. They want you dead, and then place the blame on Zhao country. For a while, Yi Mu was unable to fathom the complicated relations between the countries. In the end, she frowned. Is Yen country not worried that Mo country will find the treasure first? Until then, Zhao country will not dare to fight against Mo country. Lin Zhizhao scoffed. Treasure. Who's seen it? Yen country doesn't believe in the treasure. What they're pursuing is only the benefits in front of their eyes, that's all. Yi Mu couldn't help but ask, then what about you? What will you gain being involved? Lin Zhizhao faintly smiled, shrugging. I don't gain anything. It's just that my father is in Zhao country and was granted a high position, and I don't like it. I want him to die and accompany my mother. When he said these words, his eyes glinted with malice. Yi Mu was prejudiced against his expression, shaking her head. Your evil tendencies are overwhelming you. Look at your face now. If your mother were still here, she might not recognize you. Saying this, Yi Mu effortlessly lifted the mirror hanging from Lin Zitzhou's neck, letting him see himself. Who would have thought, when Lin Zhizhou saw his reflection in the mirror, he became dumbfounded. What's the matter? Yi Mu turned the mirror over and found that there was nothing at all, only the very clear glass of the colored glaze mirror. Lin Zhizhou pressed his lips together, and suddenly said, Let's hurry and go out, I don't want to stay here any longer. His sudden eagerness made Yi Mu befuddled, but going out earlier is also good, and she also didn't want to stay here. But before they could walk far, suddenly, a barely discernible singing came out from the darkness. Yi Mu was still processing what this sound was, but Lin Zhizhou suddenly widened his eyes. This is this is. He looked down at the skeletal remains he was embracing. It was his mother's voice. Mother, she's still here. Seeing Lin Zhizhao start running toward the voice, Yi Mu immediately reached out to grab him but only grabbed empty air. It's her voice, it's her voice, she's still here. Although Lin Zhizhao knew his mother had died many years ago, the many years of remorse made him chase the sound with no second thoughts. Even if it was a ghost, he still wanted to see her and tell her he was sorry. That day, he shouldn't have left. He should have stayed and accompanied her, 
so that her last moments were not crammed in darkness, and so that she wouldn't die alone and hopeless. Mom. Wait. Yi Mu grabbed him. You're out of your mind. You're holding your mother's remains in your arms, where are you trying to find her? Lin Zhizhao was stirred up. Let go of me. It's definitely because she couldn't leave me. I want to find her, tell her that I'm looking for her, I'm seriously looking for her, that I'm not abandoning her. Wake up. Yi Mu held a tight grip on him. There's an echo of stone, the mechanism might be able to record sound, don't get deceived by it. It's definitely a trap over there. Even if it's a trap I still want to go. Lin Zhizhao said and bit Yi Mu hard. Yi Mu gasped and loosened her hold, and Lin Zhizhao was already out of sight. At the thought of the path behind her, Yi Mu gritted her teeth and gave chase. After a second, a rotten smell floated over. She hurriedly halted her steps, and unexpectedly found a swamp in front of her. And Lin Zhizhao was dumbstruck, stuck in the middle of the swamp, carefully holding the skeletal remains. He brazenly looked at her. There wasn't any leverage here, how could she save him? Chapter, 351 Live or Die After Lin Zhizhao ran for a good many steps, he finally snapped back and found himself here. The barely discernible singing vanished, and there was only the ring of swamp. Lin Zhizhao was sinking quickly. He held the corpse and wanted to turn around, but couldn't. Don't move. Yi Mu hurriedly stopped him. This kind of swamp, the more one moved, the faster they sank. I can save you, don't panic. This cave looked very humid, Yi Mu went to the side and brushed it, and she could feel the water seepage. It was clear that this area was not far from the groundwater. What the hell was down here was still hard to say. She thought of something, and her eyes suddenly brightened. She said, throw the corpse here, quick. But Lin Zhizhao didn't move as he hugged it. It's useless, I can't get out. Yi Xiaojie, thank you for saving me several times. I might just die here now with my mother. At the thought of his mother in his arms, even if he was stuck in the swamp, Lin Zhizhao felt very safe. This feeling was like that year, the same when he heard his mother singing for him behind the stone wall. He was scared of the dark, and then he wasn't. Yi Mu was irritated. If I said I can save you then I can. Listen to me, throw the corpse here. I assure you ITLL be okay. No. Lin Zhizhao tightly hugged the bundle. Yi Xiaojie, you don't have to waste your strength. Being stuck in the swamp, I can't get out alive. Besides, I lied to you. I can't see purple chi, I can only see death chi. And just a while ago in the mirror, my face lingered with death chi. This is my ending, I can finally die together with my mother. Yi Mu was so angered to death. Fuck death chi. What want die? Try doing as I say and you won't be at a loss. I said I can save you, so I definitely can. Hurry up. Lin Zhizhao was startled by her fury, and then subconsciously held the corpse tightly in his embrace. But at this moment, his lower legs already sank below the swamp. In this situation, can he still be saved? Yi Mu said, don't worry, if I can't save you, they'll definitely place your mother's corpse together with you. Now, hurry up. Hearing this, Lin Zhizhao finally made up his mind and threw the corpse over. After Yi Mu caught it, she said very quickly, now, slowly lean back and lie down. Lin Zhizhao was dumbfounded. Wouldn't that be a quicker death? Seeing him not moving, Yi Mu was impatient. Hurry, I'm seriously saving you. Lin Zhizhao thought in his heart, he was dying anyway, what was he scared of? And at this moment, he heard Yi Mu say, move slowly, a little lightly, and lie down. Her voice was very light, very calm, and also very earnest. I hope you know, as long as you believe you can survive, you can do it. Your eyes may really be able to see the unusual, but maybe, showing you these is not to let you just be a bystander, but rather to let you try to change it. Lin Zitzho's heart trembled. He did as she said and reclined. Then, he asked, then what about you? Has your fate changed? I can see you're not someone of this world, you might definitely die. Yi Mu was very tranquil. Granted that I'll die, it ought to be my decision. Granted that I'll die, I will not have any remaining regret. I know my fate well. 
If it can't change, it has to. Lin Zhizhao completely calmed down. He lied on the swamp, taking his legs out with effort. Hearing the silt slowly flowing under him, he said, If I die, remember to let us be together. Literally translated as to be one meat. But at this moment, Yi Mu said, If you die, ill toss your mother's corpse outside, exposed to the wilds. You. Yi Mu cut him off, before your mother died, what she was most glad of should be that you're alive. But right now, you keep thinking you'll die. Having a son like this, I think your mother wouldn't want to know you, so I'm not burying you together with her. Lin Zhizhao was originally irritated, but hearing Yi Mu's words, he suddenly laughed. He laughed as he felt his own body slowly sinking, but he had never felt so light before. He always thought, being able to see those darkness was maybe a curse because, at that time, he fled by himself, so God cursed him. To let him see death and feel everyone's despair. But right now, he thought, maybe this was a granted by his mother. When she wasn't at his side, she wished for him to avoid danger. After all, at that time, she kept urging him to live. She really wished for him to live. Thank you, Yi Xiaojie. Once we're out, I'll treat you to a drink. Hearing him say that, Yi Mu relaxed. All right, let's see after we go out. Now use your hands to slowly swim, and then use your legs to pedal over to my side. Remember, move slowly. Keep your body straight as best as you can. Don't be scared, if something happens, it'll definitely save you before you drown. Lin Zhizhao did as he was told, but in the process, he couldn't refrain from asking, from the way I've treated you, you're still helping me. Why? He thought Yi Mu would use the opportunity to say something pretentious, to gain his trust, but Yi Mu said instead with a smile, who told you to remember the map. So that I can escape as early as possible, I can only save you. She deliberately spoke with a pitiful tone, making Lin Zhizhao smile gloomily. All right, this master guarantees to bring you out for sure. He worked on his side, and Yi Mu undid her own belt, directly throwing it over. Lin Zhizhao struggled for a long time, slowly moving out. At last, he caught Yi Mu's belt. Yi Mu was pleased and directly pulled him out. Her strength was powerful, and her speed was quick. Lin Zhizhao watched as he was dragged out of the place he almost died at. The feeling was similar to being resurrected alive. How's that? Didn't lie to you, did I? Yi Mu smiled, patting his shoulder. Lin Zhizhao looked behind him, sitting on the ground, and looked again at the squatting Yi Mu in front of him, then also smiled. When he wanted to speak, his mouth open, he suddenly spat out a mouthful of blood. Seeing him like that, Yi Mu was also shocked. What's going on? Why is he suddenly spitting blood? Lin Zhizhao looked at his own hands, and saw bluish-purple color appearing on his hands. If he didn't guess wrong, the swamp was poisonous. And the poison was really strong. Lin Zhizhao only came into contact with it and the poison was already slowly seeping into his body. Yi Mu stretched out her hand, but was stopped by him. Don't touch me. I'm poisoned, if you touch me you'll also be poisoned. Yi Mu glanced at the swamp. She didn't expect this trap to be so sinister. Lin Zhizhao looked at his own hands, and there was a deep sense of defeat. So, he still couldn't escape his fate. He was doomed to die here, unable to escape. Chapter, 352 The End of Bright King Map at this moment, Yi Mu suddenly stood up and pulled Lin Zhizhao close to walk. Come with me. Lin Zhizhao blankly stared at her. With a purple face, he hoarsely said, Impoisoned, don't touch me. This swamp's poison is really strong, maybe smelling it is also poisonous. We should be on our way to avoid it. Lin Zhizhao was pulled by her, staggering as he followed. He felt miserable, the poison was really too strong, his time was running out. So he said, you you let go of me. There is only little left of the map, they'll tell you the rest. You must go out. Shut up. Yi Mu dragged him onto the path, earnestly looking at him. Well go together. But I Lin Zhizhao bitterly smiled. As you can see, I can't escape from death, I can't. No one can escape. Yi Mu said, you said before I'll die soon. Lin Zhizhao wanted to smile, he felt his face was rather numb. I lied to you. 
Yi Mu clenched her teeth. Damn little liar, it made her worried for so long. Everyone will die, but you can live, he said hoarsely. Yi Mu groaned. She didn't want to pay attention to him anymore. Independent Illinois draw you the map. After they stopped, Yi Mu loosened her hold, and Lin Zhizhao sat on the ground. At this moment, he felt lightheaded. He wanted to use the opportunity when he was clear-headed enough to draw out the map, but Yi Mu destroyed the stone in his hand. I said, well go together. This time, Lin Zhizhao didn't smile. He intently looked at Yi Mu. People's fate can't change. Yi Mu similarly stared at him. Then he'll let you know, it can change. Saying this, she patted Lin Zhizhao and spun his whole body around. Sit properly. He'll force the poison out of you. By giving him internal energy. Lin Zhizhao was startled, and finally said the truth, actually, I just lied to you. You do have death chi. You can't force the poison out of me. For the rest of the way, how will you go out if you use up all your internal energy? Yi Mu didn't care which of his words were actually true and which were false. I only know that I must bring you out. I never abandon someone who's beside me. Lin Zhizhao wanted to refuse, but Yi Mu restrained him. In a second, he felt a gentle force pouring onto his vest. Yi Mu, she really chose to force the poison out of him. All the way until here, he knew, although Yi Mu's internal energy was great, after breaking so many stone doors, it should be about used up by now. And right now, she chose to lend him internal energy and force his poison out. The poison in his body could get infected. Is it possible that the death chi he sees on Yimu is because of her saving him? The more he thought about it, the more he couldn't bear it. He just said she didn't have death chi, but that was a lie he only wanted to give her a little faith that she could live, that's all. Moreover, if Yimu doesn't save him, she definitely can go out. But saving him, it was also still uncertain whether or not he could be saved. Even if it was possible, her internal energy would be used up, and she would undoubtedly die. Yi Mu. Shut up. Yi Mu closed her eyes, used her whole Bodhis internal energy to force the poison out of Lin Zhizhao. But Lin Zhizhao still said, don't mind me. You might still live then. Yi Mu snorted. Then he'll reiterate one last time, I definitely won't die here, and neither will you. Why does she have so much self-confidence, why exactly? Because, Yi Mu faintly smiled, because even if I use up my internal energy, even if I'm poisoned and can't go out, there's still someone who'll come save me. Lin Zhizhao couldn't think of a response after a long time. He endured the blood that he nearly hurled out of his chest, and said with a cold smile, you know what happened to my mother, and you still trust men. Men, especially rich and powerful men, sincerity to them is something that can be bought. It's nothing strange. It's really dangerous down here, you seriously think hell risk his life for you. You're really as naive as my mother. Yi Mu worked on his poison as she earnestly said, all the more reason you have to live. Why? What does this have anything to do with his survival? Yi Mu said with a smile, because only if you live will I be able to give you proof. You're wrong, the person I like and the person your mother liked are different. So, if you keep questioning him like this, he'll get angry. Lin Zhizhao choked on a breath in his heart, and in the end he sneered. Don't worry, he'll definitely hang in there and die together with you. He humphed. Anyway, both of us are plagued with death chi. When you start hacking and succumb to despair, I can still comfort you, that it's better for you to die alone. The raw use is onomatopoeia for coughing cuckoo. Yi Mu clicked her tongue. That's very kind of you. After she finished talking, she exerted strength onto her palm. Lin Zhizhao couldn't bear it anymore and spat a mouthful of blood. Yi Mu's original lively complexion slightly dulled, but in any case, the poison was stopped. If there's still poison remaining, you just have to wait until you go out, eat some herbal medicine and you'll get better. As you wished, I don't have much internal energy left. Let's keep going. Lin Zhizhao heard her, and stood with a deathly pale complexion. But in any case, his face wasn't of that purple color anymore. Next, they must find the exit even more quickly, this time for real. Who would have thought, when they arrived in front of a completely sealed door and Yi Mu slapped a hand down, the door actually did not budge a single bit. 
She did not believe it, and struck down again. The stone door vibrated, but it never opened. At that moment, the two people fell silent. In the end, Yi Mu sighed. Well then, my internal energy is used up. Actually, her internal energy had been worn out early. She only clenched her teeth and persevered, destroying one door after another. But now it really was depleted. Are they really trapped now and have to wait for someone to come save them? Lin Zhizhao had slim hopes. But at this moment, Yi Mu suddenly asked him, Say, we've walked this far, so we should be close to the end of the map, right? Lin Zhizhao nodded. Yes, but who knows what's at the end of the map? We're already like this, we don't want to risk it, do we? But Yi Mu said with a deep breath, No. From what you've said, no one has walked to the last of this Bright King map. Who knows what's at the end? Get up. Anyway, the exits are all blocked. We'll try our luck and see if we can make it to the end smoothly. What's there to see at the end? I've already said, this place was used for the Emperor's tomb before. The dead remains are no longer here, much less the burial objects. Yi Mu didn't care. We've been here for a long time already, sitting like this makes us lose our spirit. Get up. I said we should check, so we definitely should. Chapter 353 Python Lin Zhizhao didn't have a choice, he only scrambled up. Luckily, they brought emergency food and water when they came down. Otherwise, they might really not be able to move. Whether it was the will of heaven or something else, they didn't look for the exit, but kept going deeper. This time, they didn't encounter any obstacles. They unexpectedly arrived at the end of the map smoothly. But what they saw first wasn't the treasure or imperial tomb, but a deep pit. On both sides of the path, there were two deep pits. Inside were people buried alive. Seeing Yi Mu looking at it, Lin Zhizhao said, this is called living sacrificial pit. The majority of these people were coolies for excavating caves. To prevent them from leaking the secret, after the construction, they were killed with poison and were used as burial goods. Yi Mu looked at those skeletal remains that were half buried in the ground and had nothing good to say. So ruthless. The country deserves to perish. After she finished speaking, she went into that path. This feeling was similar to walking on the Naiha Bridge, and both sides were the Wangchuan River. Inside were the wronged spirits who were unable to reincarnate. Also called Hopeless Bridge. The river under Naiha Bridge in Chinese mythology about the underworld. After going across the bridge, there will be a lady called Mengpa who will give a soup to forget the past life and to be ready for reincarnation. More info. HTTPS, Chinese Mythology Podcast. Com 2018087 Episode, 77% EF% BC% 9 A Soup of Forgetfulness. Lin Zhizhao hastily caught up. His poison had not disappeared, so his pace was slow. Fortunately, Yi Mu was reasonable to wait for him, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to keep up. You should be a little more careful. The area at the back is unfamiliar to me. If we encounter any danger, our life will be forfeited here. Yi Mu nodded. Of course, she didn't take her own life as a joke, it's just that the path was blocked, so she naturally would change route. Sitting still while waiting for death was not her style. After both of them walked for quite a while, Yi Mu looked back at the field littered with corpses behind her, and felt regretful. Adding up all the coolies on both sides, there should be a thousand of them. The person who ordered to kill them was really nuts. Lin Zhizhao couldn't disagree. The successive generations and dynasties of the empire have been as such. Let's keep going. N. Yi Mu nodded, one person walking in front. Although the two maze-like tunnels in front wasted a lot of our time, seeing the area, for the sake of building this imperial tomb they hollowed up half of this mountain. It's truly a massive project. Lin Zhizhao said, then you haven't seen Emperor Yuan Zhao's tomb. I heard my ancestors say before, he started building the imperial tomb from the beginning of his reign. After thirty whole years, he hollowed out two mountains, and he presumed, this emperor's tomb was still considered plain. Yi Mu sighed. Each is truly more deranged than the next. After walking for a while, Lin Zhizhao couldn't help but ask, Have you noticed this last section of the path seems a little too quiet? Yi Mu nodded. Maybe their mechanism hasn't reached the back yet. 
Impossible. Lin Zhizhao said with certainty, mechanisms are installed inside out, my mother said. We've walked for so long and there hasn't been a mechanism, the only possibility is that we haven't triggered it. But his voice fell behind and he suddenly stopped. What's the matter? Yi Mu asked. With his complexion turning pale, Lin Zhizhao pointed to the front. Just now, it looks like there's something flashing past from there. Yi Mu looked over, and said with a smile, don't be overly suspicious. There's nothing to eat in this underground palace, how can there be a living thing? I really saw it. Yi Mu nodded. All right then, well go take a look. You don't even have internal energy right now, you still dare to go. Don't worry. Yi Mu said with a smile, even if I don't have my internal energy, I'm not a person who lacks the strength to trust a chicken. Lacks the strength to trust a chicken means physically weak. Both of them went to the front, but they didn't see anything that could move. The path before their eyes only seemed to have the natural form of a limestone cave tunnel. After they went in, besides feeling rather cold, there wasn't anything else. See? As I said, how can there be a living thing here? Lin Zhizhao walked behind Yi Mu, his complexion still very ugly. But I really saw it, and it was something bigger, like. Like what? Yi Mu asked without looking back. Like a snake. Lin Zhizhao suddenly cried out in alarm. When Yi Mu looked back, she saw a gigantic snake biting onto Lin Zhizhao. Yi Mu swore, she had never seen such a big snake, it's like the Titan Python recorded in paleontology. Although she didn't know whether it really was that kind of snake, seeing Lin Zhizhao still struggling, Yi Mu gave chase while shouting. Lin Zhizhao, do you have a sharp object on you? Cut the film connecting its upper and lower jaws. Quick! When a snake bites on an object, its upper and lower jaws are wide open. This allows it to swallow prey that are larger than its head. And this snake kept going forward while Yi Mu was behind it, which completely obstructed her view of the situation in front. But finally, Lin Zhizhao used a dagger to separate the python's mouth. He fell from its mouth and dropped to the ground. The injured snake closed its gigantic mouth and stopped. With displease, it stared at its disobedient prey Lin Zhizhao, its thick and sturdy tail rising. In a second, it dropped heavily toward Lin Zhizhao. Watch out! Yi Mu rushed over and rolled on the ground carrying Lin Zhizhao, narrowly avoiding it. She saw Lin Zitzhou's collarbone had marks from the long, sharp fangs. She took out a wound medicine and stuffed it onto Lin Zitzhou's chest, and then said, apply the medicine yourself, you'll go meet this beast. Just as she finished speaking, the python went to attack Yi Mu. Lin Zhizhao was tense from head to toe. At this moment, his face was covered with the repugnant smell of a snake. But he didn't dare wipe it because he didn't know if the snake was poisonous. He hastily spread the medicine over his wound, and then tightly held his mother's remains tied to his body. Yi Mu's movements were extremely agile, but the snake's scales were rough and its flesh thick. She noticed, her dagger slashed seven cun across the body of the snake, but it didn't cut the scale open. A traditional unit of length, equivalent to three. 333 inches or one. 312 inches. Yi Mu couldn't do anything about this big fellow. She shouted loudly, Lin Zhizhao, can you still run? Lin Zhizhao nodded with effort. Although his feet now felt weak, he still said, I can. Yi Mu listened, and said word by word, see that path on the left. When I say run, you run without looking back, they'll be behind you. In this kind of underground palace, even if they parted only for a moment, they might never meet again. But at this moment, Lin Zhizhao only said one sentence, all right, I trust you. Yi Mu was very gratified. After Yi Mu tussled back and forth several times with the snake, she suddenly roared a sharp shout. Run! Lin Zhizhao instantly ran without looking back. One of his hands held the luminous pearl, while the other held his mother's remains. The road in front was black and dark, his whole body was exhausted, and his lungs hurt as he ran. But surprisingly, he didn't feel scared. Is it because of her? Is it because of Yi Mu? Who could calm people's minds? Yi Mu in response looked for the right opportunity and jumped up, brutally kicking the python on the head. Chapter, 354 Found it. In a second, in the instant when the python's head bumped against the wall, 
she hurriedly ran toward Lin Zitzho's direction. After that snake reacted, it hurriedly chased them. This snake must have grown up by eating dead human meat, and later, it caught and killed some prey in the mountain, so it looked especially gigantic. Yi Mu met with Lin Zhizhou quickly. Her ears perked up, vaguely hearing something, and then hastily pulled Lin Zhizhou to run to the left. The python had them in relentless hot pursuit, and Yi Mu ran even quicker, her hearing becoming even clearer. It's underground water. Water means survival, by jumping into the water, they might be able to go out. This thought bolstered Yi Mu. She grabbed Lin Zitzhou's hand and ran at lightning speed. Lin Zhizhou said, I. I can't run anymore, you, yourself. Shut up. Yi Mu clenched her teeth. We're surviving this together. Can you swim? Lin Zhizhou said, can't. Yi Mu smiled. Then you'll have to learn in a while. Hearing the snake coming nearer and nearer, and the water sound becoming louder and louder, she said, take a deep breath. Lin Zhizhou took a deep breath. When the python suddenly stretched its head out to bite them, Yi Mu shouted, jump. And then Lin Zhizhou followed Yi Mu, jumping down with no second thoughts. The python had ferociously opened its mouth wide to bite, but then saw the two prey in front had disappeared. Jumping down a few meters away, they fell into an ice-cold water. Yi Mu tightly gripped Lin Zitzhou's hand, but Lin Zhizhou was desperately struggling in the water. Finally, he hugged Yi Mu's hand. Yi Mu felt the water current became faster and faster. In the end, she said, not good. Then, she hugged Lin Zhizhou as they were suddenly washed away by the water. An enormous rock dangerously swept past above their heads. In a second, the two felt their eyes brightened, and their lower body suddenly became empty. Ah! Lin Zhizhou couldn't help shrieking. Soon after, he and Yi Mu plummeted down the waterfall, with a bottomless cliff below them. Stretching her hand out in haste, Yi Mu clung onto a tree vine just in time, and the other hand gripped Lin Zhizhou. Lin Zhizhou glanced at the precipitous cliff below and felt that the whole day today, he had used up all his nine lives. If not for Yi Mu, he would have died long ago and wouldn't be able to die again. The idiom is actually nine deaths, still alive which means narrowly escaping from death. Yi Mu clenched her teeth, saying, jump onto the rock beside you. She shouted very loudly. Beside the waterfall, three meters to their left was an enormous rock, extending about five meters tall from the cliff. Lin Zhizhou didn't know where his courage came from, he actually borrowed Yi Mu's arm to swing and used all his strength to jump. But when he jumped there, because the rock was too slippery, he immediately fell, and then rolled over and over. He rolled so fast that he was about to roll down the cliff. Yi Mu who jumped after caught hold of him, and once again saved his life that was hanging by a thread. After running for his life, Lin Zhizhou didn't want to move anymore. He lay down on the rock, letting the water spray on him now and then. He looked at the blue sky above, and never felt the world outside was so fine. Yi Mu also sat down, exhausted. Right now they were drenched all over, but their hearts were aflamed. They survived. What did I say? As long as I'm here, you won't die. Yi Mu smiled, revealing her pearly white teeth. She gasped heavily for breath, and Lin Zhizhou took a long time to recover before feeling relieved. Out of breath, he said, sure we didn't die in the underground palace, but look where we are now. Above is the waterfall and below is the cliff. After two days, we'll die here from hunger. Yi Mu said, that might not happen. Then she took out the fireworks to set off the signal. Being prepared for the unexpected, she had carefully packed the fireworks and kept them from getting wet, but what was frustrating was that the fire didn't ignite at all. Ha ha ha. What did I say? Seeing Yi Mu disappointed, Lin Zhizhou deliberately laughed out loud. See, so we're really going to die here. My eyes of heaven have never been wrong. With a solemn expression, Yi Mu looked at him. Then look at me carefully now. Do I still have death chi? Lin Zhizhou listened, fixedly staring at her. Suddenly, he noticed a strange matter. He saw the black chi on Yi Mu had disappeared like a tide. Not only that, but originally his world, even if it was of crystal clear water and blue sky, he would still be able to see some darkness. But right now, he couldn't see the darkness. 
he picked up the mirror to look at his own face, and finally came up with a conclusion. My eyes of heaven are gone. Yi Mu heard it and immediately smiled. That's a good thing. Good thing. Lin Zhizhao felt a sense of loss. When he had it before, he dreaded this pair of eyes. But now that it was suddenly gone, he felt disappointed as if he lost something. Yi Mu nodded. Sometimes, something unordinary may not necessarily be a good thing, and sometimes, something mediocre may not necessarily be a bad thing. Her words carried profound meaning. Hearing them, Lin Zhizhao felt as if her voice echoed in his ears, telling him to ponder over it again. At last, he petted his mother's remains on his chest, suddenly laughing. If it was gone then let it be gone. Just like she said, sometimes, mediocrity may not necessarily be a bad thing. It's just a pity he shook his head. We didn't get to see the last of the Bright King map. Before, it felt scary inside, but after going out, it feels quite regretful. But Yi Mu said, not a pity, because I've found what I sought. N. Lin Zhizhao looked up at her, but saw Yi Mu pointing to the front. Look. He subconsciously followed her fingertip, and found that at this height, this angle, the scenery before his eyes was exceptionally majestic. In the midst of the misty water vapor, the mountains and sky beyond melted away into a beautiful view. There were two continuous and unending mountain ranges, looking like two dragons playing with pearls chasing one another. Lin Zhizhao looked at the shocking sight before him, suddenly in a daze. Because this scene was exactly the same as the previously seen city boundary map. He cried out, it's the city boundary map. Yi Mu smiled, somewhat slyly. I've guessed early on, this emperor's imperial tomb should be related to the city boundary map, and now it looks like it's true. She pointed at the mountains in the distance, and loudly said, the empire's emperor thought to go as far as to guard his own treasure after death. This idea is really interesting, it's just too bad that now, it's discovered by us. Lin Zhizhao looked at the mountains and couldn't utter a word after a long time. Before, his father had looked for it here for many years and was in vain. In the end, he even thought the treasure was not in this place. But Yi Mu on the other hand, she actually scored a lucky hit. Could it be the will of heaven? She truly is the Purple Star Emperor, a predestined nobility. Also known as Ziwei Pinyin Star, the North Star or the Emperor Star, being the star that is most prominent and brightest, and having the noble color purple. In Chinese culture and theology, it symbolizes the human world's emperor. Chapter 355 Waterfall The sky gradually darkened. Beside the waterfall, the cold and starving two people were listless. Lin Zitzhou's clothes kept getting damp as the waterfall kept splattering toward him. The rock beneath them was also damp. If they were even the slightest careless, they might slip down. Lin Zhizhao desperately tried to stay awake, because he felt that once he fell asleep, he wouldn't wake up anymore. And Yi Mu concentrated on regaining her physical strength, hoping to recover her internal energy as quickly as possible. Lin Zitzhou's teeth chattered as he asked, Now do you still still believe hell come save you? This mountain was very cold. Lin Zhizhao felt his headache pounding excruciatingly on his forehead, but he persisted to stay awake. Yi Mu said, Of course hell come. Hang in there for a while. Lin Zhizhao bitterly smiled. Even if he comes, he won't be able to find us. After all, who would think that they would be in the middle of the waterfall? This was indeed a dilemma, so Yi Mu didn't speak for a while. A moment later, Yi Mu noticed that she didn't hear anything from Lin Zhizhao. Because he was poisoned earlier, and later got bitten by the python, Yi Mu was a little anxious and gave him a push. Lin Zhizhao. Wake up. Lin Zhizhao was in a daze, opening his eyes once more. He was sleepy to death, as if he would sleep at any moment. At this moment, Yi Mu had no choice and said to him, they'll tell you a joke. Lin Zhizhao suddenly was dumbfounded. This was the first time someone offered to tell him a joke. Yi Mu saw him staring at her, and with a light tone, want to hear. And. Good, it'll begin. Listen carefully, it's funny. Okay. Where could Yi Mu know a joke? She racked her brain, and finally thought of one. She said, a farmer rushes an ox into town and encounters a wealthy person. That wealthy person sees the farmer dirty all over, 
and immediately thinks of making fun of him. Running over, he asks, do you want to enter the town? The farmer feels extremely flattered seeing the wealthy person talking to him. He hurriedly says, yes, I want to go in. Who would have thought the wealthy person would glare at him, saying, who's talking to you? I'm talking to the ox. Hearing this, the farmer turns around and slaps the ox, saying, you ox, you have a relative in town and didn't think of saying anything. After Yi Mu finished speaking, she laughed herself. She saw this joke from a certain magazine, it's been many years since. It should be funny, right? But Lin Zhizhao, not sure whether or not he understood, merely looked at her, remaining silent. Yi Mu saw him staring at her, and her vigor shook. She tried again, is this not funny? There's one more, listen. She paused, as if organizing her words. Amidst the gurgling sound of flowing water, her voice sounded hoarse. In a worship hall, a pair of chopsticks asks the sandalwood bodhisattva, why are we all wooden? I have to be bitten by humans, but you're fed by humans. Bodhisattva says, you just need to be shaped a few times, but I've actually experienced being hacked into pieces to be a bodhikaya. A chopping board on one side says, I object, am hacked by people every day, but am still a chopping board. After Yi Mu finished, she felt Lin Zhizhao would understand this joke, but he was still very quiet. Isis it not funny? Yi Mu felt awkward. Lin Zhizhao fixedly stared at her. Under the moonlight, she seemed very embarrassed. At this moment, that extremely small face seemed to look more innocent. Although her hair was in disarray, and her clothes also a mess, her eyes were big and bright, as if reflecting the round moon in them, which greatly reassured him. Lin Zhizhao suddenly laughed. He originally had a chubby face, and his two dimples were sweet the moment he laughed. This made Yi Mu baffled, is this person's reflex arc so long? It had been a long while since she told her jokes. But she didn't understand Lin Zitzhou's thoughts. He didn't expect that all his life, there would be someone who would go through fire and water with him, that there would be someone to comfort him in a dangerous time, to tell a joke during a peril to keep him awake. He really felt. Yi Mu. His eyes sparkled. If I die along with you today. He smiled brightly. I won't have any regrets. Hearing his words, Yi Mu was dumbfounded beyond description. And at this moment, red fireworks burst in the sky before them. Yi Mu instantly got up, looking at those dispersing red lights. It's Mo Lin Yuan, Mo Lin Yuan had come to save her. Mo Lin Yuan had found a number of secret entrances, but didn't find Yi Mu. Without any choice, he could only go down the mountain and assembled the previous 500 people together, planning to search up the mountain again the first thing in the morning. But he was afraid that Yi Mu would be scared, so he ordered someone to let off the fireworks. If Yi Mu could hear the sound or see the fireworks, she would know that he was beside her and had never left, much less had given up. And looking at those red fireworks, Yi Mu's uneasiness fell quiet in an instant. After the fireworks dispersed, she squatted down in front of Lin Zhizhao in an extremely good mood, telling him, you're cold, right? I've regained a little of my internal energy, it'll give you some. After saying this, with no room for protests, she clapped a hand onto Lin Zitzhou's back. Lin Zhizhao opened his mouth, and in a moment, a warm current poured into him. It not only warmed his body, but also warmed his heart even more. He tightly hugged the bundle in his chest, quietly thinking. Mother, I think, I like a girl. Although the time is short, I really like her, but she's not destined to be with me. I can only tell you. The next morning, the sun rode high in the sky. Besides waiting for Mo Lin Yuan to save her, Yi Mu was also thinking of a way to save herself. She looked at the height below and also the current of the water. She felt that leaping off at this height, if she wasn't careful, the water would instead beat her to death. After all, falling from a high place and directly falling onto the water is not that much different from falling to the ground. She gazed at the vine that wasn't far, seeming to be lost in thought. Although it wasn't sturdy, it was long enough. Through Yi Mu's internal energy in a night's rest, Lin Zhizhao felt much better now. With a pale complexion, he said, what are you planning to do? Yi Mu pointed to a rock on the other side of the waterfall. If we can use the vine, we can jump up there. Lin Zhizhao looked at the distance, immediately saying, it's too far, the vine isn't that long. 
After Yi Mu compared it for a while, she also felt it was a little risky. Then what do we do? If Mo Linyuan doesn't find me, well be doomed, won't we? Do we need to wait until I recover my internal energy? In this case, it's recovering very slowly. Suddenly, Lin Zhizhao covered her mouth. He said in a low voice, listen. Is it the sound of horse's hooves? Yi Mu quickly quietened, and then looked up. She saw a crowd of people closing in, but it wasn't Mo Country's uniform. It's Zhao Country's people. Lin Zhizhao nodded. To provoke both countries, Yan Country told Zhao Country's people that Mo Lin Yuan would come here to find the treasure. Chapter 356 Mirror Whether it was the treasure or Mo Lin Yuan's head, Zhao Country's people would want it either way. Because their princess who had an arranged marriage sneaked back, their second prince and the princess contingent died a tragic death in Mo country. Zhao country wouldn't possibly let the lower people know what happened behind the scenes, so the people of Zhao country thought it was Mo country that provoked first. This time, Mo Linyuan finally arrived at the borders of the two countries and also brought 500 people, so this was a really good opportunity. After waiting for them to run the other way, Yi Mu was worried. What do we do? From the location of yesterday's fireworks, Mo Linyuan is definitely near. We can see those people hiding, but Mo Linyuan might not. Lin Zhizhao said, don't worry, their target is very obvious, he'll find out. But before long, Yi Mu saw the people who had just run away turn back, it was uncertain where they had hidden the horses. This time, they had part of the people hide in the woods. Although the distance between them was a little far, Yi Mu was on the high ground, so she could see them clearly. After all, they were a lot of people. Oh no, they're hiding here. Lin Zhizhao continued reassuring her. Even if they're hiding here, Mo Linyuan might not come here and be ambushed by them. But after a while, Yi Mu found that another group of people came. Of course, their hiding location was different, but it was as if they deliberately surrounded this mountain. It couldn't be seen below, but Yi Mu who was above could clearly see their premeditation. We're done for, I'm guessing this mountain is already surrounded by Zhao country's people. I only hope Mo Linyuan's people aren't divided, or else, ITLL be very easy to ambush them. But Yi Mu realized she sort of jinxed it, because before she finished speaking, she saw someone in the distance rushing over. It's not Mo Linyuan right? It must not be him. But unfortunately, the other party was Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan had the 500 people dispersed to comb the mountain, and he himself was in the very front of a contingent of troops. Yi Mu saw he was about to fall into Zhao country's encirclement, and also, not many people were brought here. In this heavily outnumbered situation, the moment they weren't careful, they would be in danger. Mo Linyuan's. No. I can't let him come too near, he'll get hurt. If I shout loudly, do you think he can hear? Lin Zhizhao pursed his lips. If you want to shout then shout, I've lost my voice. Yi Mu felt her own throat wasn't well either. Drenched in the water all night, she and Lin Zhizhao had signs of fever. Moreover, they didn't have anything to eat. Now feeling weak, wanting to shout over the waterfall and also for a very far distance, it truly was impossible. But I must notify him. Think, think, I can't let him come. Yi Mu, torn with anxiety, frowned. But suddenly, the moment she looked at Lin Zhizhao, she snatched the mirror from his neck. Time of emergency, in borrowing. Lin Zhizhao was stupefied. You want to reflect light using the mirror? Are you sure Mo Linyuan can see from this distance? Yi Mu clenched her teeth. There's no other way, just give medicine to a dead horse. Give medicine to a dead horse idiom to try everything in a desperate situation. So, she held the mirror to the sunlight reflecting it. So long as Mo Linyuan raised his head, he would be able to see the slight reflection. Although it was very small, he would notice the two people alive. And as it happened, like a telepathy, Mo Linyuan raised his head. His phoenix eyes squinted, and then he hastily quickened his speed. He saw us. Yi Mu said, pleasantly surprised. But Lin Zhizhao jabbed, but he's running quicker to the enemy's trap. Yi Mu faintly smiled. It's alright, I have a way. Saying this, as she reflected the light, she continuously covered the face of the mirror, making it shine and then not. When Feng saw, 
and then hurriedly said to him O Lin Yuan, Your Majesty, hurry and look, it's as if Yi Xiaojia is trying to give us a message. Mo Linyuan listened, looking up. Looking at the speck of flashing light, everyone didn't understand Yi Mu's message, but Mo Linyuan understood, because it was the same thing she taught when they were young, Morse code. But with such frequency of reflection, it was as if she was saying, there's an ambush? The moment Mo Linyuan spoke, Wen Feng and the others stood at the ready at once. Your Majesty, how can there be an ambush, we don't see anyone. Mo Linyuan attentively stared at the other side, smiling softly. The people lying in ambush are in front. There are two groups of people, and they outnumber us. Yi Mu saw Mo Linyuan clearly understood what she was saying, and quickly relayed the message one after another. It's the people of Zhao country. Mo Linyuan said with a smile, Wen Feng, go gather our people. Be careful, don't alert the enemy. We'll destroy them one by one. Understood. Wen Feng hurriedly went, but Zi Su was still puzzled, Your Majesty, how did you know it's the people of Zhao country? Mo Linyuan pointed to Yi Mu's direction. Xiao Muer told me. By only relying on the flashing light, she could inform His Majesty it was the people of Zhao country. What was this ridiculousness? How come they couldn't understand? Not only Zi Su, the dozens of people behind him also couldn't understand. A while passed, and Mo Linyuan had gathered all the hundreds of people, stealthily approaching the ambushers in the east. Seeing Mo Linyuan suddenly changing route, Lin Zhizhao was astounded. No way. What riddle were you guys playing? Why didn't I understand? Yi Mu said with a smile, only he can understand this. Not long after, Lin Zhizhao saw both peoples in the east had engaged in a fight. Because the distance from the other was far, the other side was still oblivious. In addition, Mo Linyuan gathered his forces before passing through, so not long after, relying on the dominant number of people, they were killed. Not expecting there really was an ambush here, Zi Su excitedly asked, Your Majesty, is there any more ambush? Did Yi Xiaojia tell you? Mo Linyuan pointed to the other direction, said, There. Their number is about the same as us, but we still have to be quick. Understood. This time, it was more difficult, but after more than a half Shirchen, because they grasped the initiative, Mo Linyuan and the others didn't lose many people and killed the ambushers. Seeing that Yimu didn't flash the light again, Mo Linyuan knew there was no more ambush. He ran to the direction of the waterfall at lightning speed. He was clearly excited. The whole night yesterday, he had trouble sleeping. Because of Lin Zitzhou's words before, and also the earlier ambush, he was very worried that Yi Mu had encountered an accident, and then just like what Lin Zhizhao said, would die. The more he thought about it, the more he was scared. And right now, seeing that she still lived, he approached step by step, feeling very eager. She was very powerful and never disappointed him, but why was he still very worried? It felt as if she would disappear. Chapter 357 Reunited. He arrived at the bottom of the waterfall, but saw that Yi Mu was in an extremely high place. From such a far distance, even if he called her, his voice would be drowned out by the waterfall. Mo Linyuan furrowed his eyebrows. At this moment, the others who were dealing with the remaining enemies caught up. Seeing this height, they also felt helpless. Even if they excelled in martial arts, they still wouldn't be able to reach such a height. But at this very moment, Mo Linyuan suddenly ran forward. Next, he used Qing Dong to quickly climb up. Not long after, his hand caught the vine hanging down beside the waterfall and used it to support him going up. Above, Lin Zhizhao respectively said, Surprisingly, Mo Country's Emperor's martial arts is this excellent. This Qing Dong is comparable to yours, right? But Yi Mu was rather worried. He's risking himself. But no matter if it was risky or not, Mo Linyuan had leaped onto the huge rock Yi Mu thought of jumping to before. Looking at them, the distance between them now was only about 20 meters. Upon seeing this, Yi Mu hurriedly said, Don't come up. Mo Linyuan looked at her strangely. Yi Mu's voice was hoarse as she shouted, Ill jump down. If Mo Linyuan came up, after saving her, he definitely wouldn't be able to save Lin Zhizhou. After all, for such a high place, for Mo Linyuan to come up once, he had to consume a lot of internal energy. Mo Linyuan doubtfully looked at her. 
In a second, Yi Mu took another vine and handed it over to Lin Zhizhao. Hold it, you go down first. Lin Zhizhao was dumbfounded, why did he have to go down first? Not giving him a chance to question, Yi Mu shoved him from behind. His feet suddenly hung in midair, making Lin Zhizhao scream as he tightly held onto the vine. Mo Lin Yuan, seeing that it was Lin Zhizhao who came down, didn't want to help at first, but instantly, Yi Mu's voice was heard. Catch him, he's useful. Mo Lin Yuan then gave a hand. When Lin Zhizhao swung to the edge, he used Qin Gong to catch him. They instantly fell onto the place he was previously at on the rock. Mo Lin Yuan quickly released his hand, looking at Lin Zhizhao with displeasure. What's the smell on your body? It was fishy and pungent, and there was also the indescribable smell of death. Lin Zhizhao was swallowed by a python before, his body naturally would not have a pleasant smell. He went several steps further from Mo Lin Yuan and said, Then your majesty can stay away from me. At this moment, Yi Mu's voice came from above, Hang on, I'm coming. Mo Lin Yuan raised his head, and then saw Yi Mu pouncing toward him. Her whole body looked to be in a mess, but still contained a lot of vigor. At that moment, Mo Lin Yuan felt his eyes twinkling. Seeing that she was fine, his anxious heart could finally relax. A smile formed, and then he leaped using Qin Gong, stretched his hands out and caught her. Yi Mu definitely also had the smell of death, but Mo Lin Yuan didn't find it a single bit unpleasant, embracing her tightly. Good, she's okay. Lin Zhizhao saw this on the side and his eyes turned gloomy. So Mo Lin Yuan really liked Yi Mu, liked her to the point that others wouldn't have a chance. But he instantly cheered up, patting the skeletal remains on his chest and smiled again. No matter the case, he finally could lay his mother in peace. After spending a lot of kung fu, Mo Lin Yuan finally brought the two of them down. He firmly held Yi Mu's hand, not letting go. And the moment Lin Zhizhao came down, he was seized by Wen Feng. Seeing this, Yi Mu hurriedly asked, What are you doing? Wen Feng said, This person harbors evil intentions, he deceived Yi Xiaojia. He'll bring him back and interrogate him. On the side, Mo Lin Yuan didn't say anything. Yi Mu said with a smile, What did he lie to me about? When Feng conscientiously replied, he said he knows where the city boundary map is, but you faced danger instead. If this is not a trap, what is it? Yi Mu said with a smile, oh, he didn't lie about this. Lin Zhizhao listened and looked up to Yi Mu, but Yi Mu didn't look back. Her eyes glimmered, and with full confidence said, I already know where the city boundary map is. He said hell lead us to the city boundary map, and that's true. What? The moment Yi Mu's words came out, everyone stared at her. Could it be, it wasn't a trap inside this dangerous mountain, but really the city boundary map? But the terrain here and the drawing on the city boundary map were completely different. Mo Lin Yuan also looked at Yi Mu, puzzled. Yi Mu walked closer and said beside Mo Lin Yuan's ear, just now on the waterfall, I saw the city boundary map. Mo Lin Yuan heard her and frowned. He clutched Yi Mu's hand tightly, not speaking. Frankly, if the city boundary map could only be found at her risk, he would rather not have it. Next time, don't act alone, he said. Yi Mu was taken by surprise. How are you not excited after hearing about the city boundary map? Mo Lin Yuan stared at her. In the end, he could not help but sigh, and then in front of everyone, he hugged her in his chest. Hear me. Next time, don't take risks, don't be bold, also, don't separate from me. The imperial guards around them looked at the sky, some at the ground, not daring to look at them. But Yi Mu was embarrassed, there were so many people here, if there was a concern couldn't they talk about it at home? Answer me. Mo Lin Yuan's voice sounded very serious. Although his demeanor did not seem to change, only Yi Mu knew, he was hugging her very tightly. Her face turned bright red before she stammered after quite a while, I I know. Well get married after we go back. Mo Lin Yuan had thought of this for a very long time yesterday night. Maybe after binding her to him, he would not be worried. Yi Mu did not hesitate this time. Okay. She paused, and in a low voice said beside Mo Lin Yuan's ear, actually, earlier inside, I was worried, I was scared I would die, and then wouldn't see you again. With the two people whispering to each other, the others suddenly burst into dry coughs, collectively catching a cold. 
what to do, all of them have not found a wife. But Mo Linyuan was ecstatic. He looked at Yi Mu and smiled. That smile made Yi Mu feel, it was worth whispering words of love again. But how embarrassing was it to hug like this? She tapped Mo Linyuan a few times before he let go, but he still firmly held her hand. Ahem. Okay, now that everything is clear, let's search for the city boundary map. Yi Mu patted her face, and said to everyone with a smile. But Mo Linyuan said, Zhao Country's people are still near. To prevent them from stirring trouble, I say we get rid of them first. What do you think? In this matter, Yi Mu believed in Mo Linyuan. Then he'll rely on you. Need me to help you with anything? Mo Linyuan shook his head. No need. His handsome face gazed at her, forming a clear and light smile. You just have to stay beside me, that's enough. Chapter 358 Bid you farewell today. The two were so sweet and happy that it made the people around highly envious. They suddenly felt it was really great to have a wife who could fight side by side. No matter where they went, there was no need to separate. The following event, thanks to Lin Zitzhou's betrayal, Mo Linyuan easily knew that this time, Zhao Country had dispatched no less than 5,000 people. Besides the people who conspired against him two days ago, and also the earlier two groups that were eliminated, there should be 3,000 people left. Their ranks were only 500, so eliminating them in a short time would be quite difficult. Yi Mu said, I think it's better to act quickly. How about this, we find a squadron to disguise as us two and lead Zhao Country's people away, and the rest will quickly find the treasure, lest a long night fright with dreams. How about it? A long night fright with dreams trouble comes after a delay. This indeed was the fastest and the simplest way, so after everyone discussed for a while, they decided as such. Their troops divided into three roads, one to find the people of Zhao country, and then lure them to a fixed location another was in charge of fleeing and leading those people away and the rest naturally followed Yi Mu to find the city boundary map. Seeing them still discussing, Lin Zhizhao stood up. Facing everyone, he said, they'll find a place to bury my mother. Mo Linyuan and the others frowned. After all, Lin Zitzhou's status among them was very awkward, so it was Yi Mu who stood and said, they'll go with him, all of you continue discussing. Seeing Yi Mu stood up, everyone became at ease. After all, Yi Mu was His Majesty's quasi-empress. With her around, Lin Zhizhao wouldn't play some wicked trick. Then, Yi Mu followed Lin Zhizhao out. Why bury your mother here? It won't be convenient for you to see her in the future. Yi Mu said, feeling odd. Lin Zhizhao smiled. Although he just ate an antidote, his face was still pale, though his vigor was a little better. He said, no need, I plan to wander around the world in the future, I don't know when he'll be back. The scenery here is enchanting, it's suitable for my mother to sleep eternally in and be secluded from the rest of the world. Lit. TL of Ra is this place has green hills and clean waters idiom. Yi Mu looked around. It was all primeval forest here with no human trace. It was indeed a good place for a peaceful sleep. You plan to leave. Yi Mu only got along with him for a few days, yet she genuinely was reluctant to part with this friend, just like with Zhao Mingyu. Why do you want to leave? It's exhausting to wander everywhere. Is it not good to stay in Imo country? Lin Zhizhao then suddenly smiled, revealing his two dimples. He looked at her with sparkling eyes. You must not be hating to lose me right now, right? Mo Linyuan must not hear these words, or else I won't leave alive. Seeing him still cheeky at this time, Yi Mu gave a smile, diminishing her sad thoughts. She raised her eyebrows and said, Look at you, you're already twenty-something and look like someone who can't trust a chicken. You didn't study feng shui until quintessence, and the only eyes of heaven disappeared, too. You didn't succeed in anything. You won't die from hunger out there, will you? Can't trust a chicken physically very weak. The moment Lin Zhizhao listened, he put up a scared expression. Then until then, he'll come back. Will you give me food? I don't eat a lot, really. He was merely joking, but Yi Mu unexpectedly said in earnest, any time you're tired from gallivanting, Mo country will definitely have food for you. He was stupefied. He didn't know how to respond for a while, but heard Yi Mu sigh. Looking ahead, she said, I don't like this era. 
Between people, communication is so little, the distance is too far, disasters are too many. There is always a farewell, never seeing each other again. Her small face was solemn. She thought of a certain person and felt more melancholic. I don't like to bid farewell, but there are so many people whom I think are interesting leaving me in the end. Lin Zhizhao stared at her, those sweet dimples indescribably catching a little bitterness. Then, he took out the sole mirror left by his mother and handed it to Yi Mu. Can you help me split it into two? Right now, Yi Mu had regained some internal energy, but she was puzzled. Isn't this the only thing left of your mother? Lin Zhizhao pressed on, hurry, split it into two. Yi Mu weirdly walked over, and extremely carefully, used force to split the beautiful colored glazed mirror into two. Lin Zhizhao took half of it, and gave the other half to Yi Mu. I'm letting you hold on to this. Yi Mu smiled. Are you for real, you damaged the only mirror left by your mother for me to keep as a keepsake? Lin Zhizhao mysteriously said, this is not an ordinary keepsake. If I don't have anything to eat in the future, I'll hold this and find you to request a meal. Yi Mu listened and looked at him genuinely. The young man in front of her eyes still looked as pale as before, looking very distracted with a smile that formed two dimples. He looked very small. But there was something filling his eyes that wasn't there before. Yi Mu thought, maybe it was the belief in redeeming hope. So she simply accepted it, and said with a smile, let's go, let's find a suitable burial ground. In the end, they decided on a small hillside that seemed decent, and buried the remains under the foot of the hill. While doing all this, Lin Zitzhou's heart was especially calm. For so many years, he had often come to this place, well aware that his mother had died, well aware that he would not find an answer. But because of his obsession, he repeatedly came. Today, his mother was found. He first thought at this point, he would lose all his life's hope. Unexpectedly, in the span of a few days, he had gained his hope in Yimu. Life belonged to himself, he didn't want to take revenge on his father anymore. To come and go for a period of time for the two maps, he had wasted more than twenty years of his life. Later, it was time to live for himself. Yi Mu saw Lin Zhizhao and knock his head three times in a loud kowtow. He neither left a tombstone nor left a mark. Even if he wanted to come next time, he would not be able to find his mother. Or maybe, this was his proof of letting go. After everything was done, they started heading back. Before long, Lin Zhizhao suddenly said, Uh, I want to relieve myself. Yi Mu waved her hand. Go. There might be people from Zhao country here, be careful by yourself. Lin Zhizhao listened, deeply staring at her. Okay, I'm leaving. After saying this, he turned his head, and walked away without looking back. Yi Mu waited in the same place, but after waiting for a long time, she didn't see Lin Zhizhao coming back. Feeling odd, she went over to check, but found a few lines of neat writing on the exposed ground. I'm going. I don't know if he'll come back. No need to look for me, he'll be careful, avoid Zhao country's people, begin my new life traveling the world. I also won't look for the treasure anymore. I used to be set on that thing, but now, I think it's alright, so cherish it. May I bid you farewell today, and have a reunion someday. The name of the sender was the two characters, Qin Zhao. Qin Zhao it must be his real name. Yi Mu gazed at it, and lightly smiled. She erased the writings after a good while. She sincerely hoped they could see each other again, too. Chapter, 359 Feels like dreaming. Seeing that only Yi Mu came back, Zi Su became anxious. Yi Xiao Jie, did that traitor flee? This subordinate will catch him at once. Mo Linyuan also looked at Yi Mu with bewilderment in his eyes. Yi Mu smiled as she walked to Mo Linyuan's side. He left, I let him go. Suddenly, everyone stared at Yi Mu with a complicated expression. Yi Xiaojie, you're too soft hearted. What if that traitor goes and reveals our plan to the enemy? Zi Su said, sighing. Yi Mu shook her head. He won't. On one side, Wen Feng also said, someone who has lied to us once is unworthy to be trusted, why not let this subordinate bring him back? Yi Mu chuckled. You don't believe me? She tugged him Linyuan's hand, asked him, what about you? Do you believe my judgment? 
I said that, even if Lin Zhizhao is seized by the other party, he won't tell on us, and maybe will help us. Do you trust me? Mo Linyuan stared at her helplessly, but firmly held her hand. It's only an insignificant person, everyone sit down. If you are worried about a setback, execute the plan earlier. Since Mo Linyuan said this, the others did not have a choice and resentfully let go of Lin Zhizhao. Next, 500 people set off in three different directions. Mo Linyuan did not leave too many people behind, he only brought a hundred to hide, and then saw that the enemies were alarmed. In the end, they assembled together and chased over to the north. The people who led those troops away were Zi Su and his squadron. At this moment, he was wearing Mo Linyuan's clothes, charging ahead in the very front. Their speed was extremely fast they should not be outrun. Mo Linyuan had changed into very ordinary clothes and was lying prone among the thick grass with Yi Mu. Seeing the people had left, Yi Mu excitedly said, Let's go. Let's find the treasure. Mo Linyuan looked at her excited expression and was moved. Then, he moved closer and lightly pressed a kiss on Yi Mu's ear. Okay, let's go. Yi Mu immediately covered her ear and turned around. When she saw that no one around them noticed, she glared at him. Clenching her teeth, she said in a low voice, Can't you hold yourself back? They were in public. Mo Linyuan earnestly nodded. You don't know how slow you grow, much less how long I've been waiting. He said it without the least bit of hesitation, making Yi Mu's face turn red. Shall just ignore him. Only when those people were far enough did Yi Mu and the others stand, and then set out toward the place she previously saw. City boundary map, this time, she was finally going to find it. After that, they walked for one whole day. Although Yi Mu had seen the city boundary map, it was only an illusion of distance and actually took a very long time. These words were not wrong, because when night fell, Yi Mu, who got tired early, wanted to rest, and she and Mo Linyuan shared a tent. She was probably exhausted, falling asleep soon as she hit the pillow. Seeing this, Mo Linyuan smiled. He covered her with a quilt, walked to the table, and took out the city boundary map. If they couldn't find the location, this city boundary map was useless. But they had already walked inside the map area, so finding the location of the treasure was easy. Based on their pace, there was probably a day left until they arrived at the treasure's location. But until then, should he let Xiao Moor go down? Mo Linyuan was rather hesitant. He just found her after losing her, he actually didn't wish for Yi Mu to take risks with him, but he also felt anxious leaving her alone outside. Why are you still not asleep? Yi Mu who had already slept suddenly squinted her eyes. Mo Linyuan was startled and quickly stashed away the city boundary map. Yi Mu smiled looking at his action. Don't worry, I'm okay. When I was underground, Lin Zhizhao admitted that he lied about my dying. I'm someone who can live long. Mo Linyuan was doubtful. Really? Yi Mu vigorously nodded. More real than a pearl. Means more than 99% sure. Seeing Mo Linyuan walking over, she reached out and pulled him onto the bed. Let's sleep together. After a simple wash, she felt extremely comfortable, hugging him also felt cozy. And unconsciously, she uttered sincere words. Without you, I can't sleep peacefully. This sentence instantly reached Mo Linyuan's heart. At this moment, he, who was wearing a pale yellow shirt, couldn't help showing a delighted smile. All right, let's sleep together. Anyway, the one sentence that he had not said was, not only was she used to sleeping by his side, he, too, was used to it. The following journey went without a hitch. The evening after a day and a half, they arrived in front of a mountain. If the map is not wrong, then the mountain before us should be the treasure's mountain. As soon as everyone heard it, they were suddenly full of vigor. Each and every one of them rubbed their hands, wanting to go all out. Mo Linyuan said with a smile, today, the sky is already dark. Some people stay behind to camp, the rest follow me to see if this mountain has an entrance. Yes. The crew quickly settled the distribution. Yi Mu followed Mo Linyuan, and on the way, she could not resist asking, Yen Country has interfered in this matter, what do you plan to do after going back? Mo Linyuan said, Yen Country and Zhao Country have had a long-standing discord, now that Yan Country wants to use someone to do the dirty work, why can't I give them a taste of their own medicine? 
Anyway, inciting both countries to a war is a very simple matter. He said it as if it were easy, but to others, it was very hard. But who told him to be clever? Yi Mu looked at him and suddenly snorted with laughter. I didn't think you were this kind of person before. Mo Linyuan led her around the mountain with her hand. What did you think I was like? Yi Mu recalled the time when she read the biography book, and an image appeared in her mind. She genuinely said, because you were soon to be an emperor, I thought you'd be decisive, heroic, wise, and mighty. I didn't expect. Crafty thinking, scheming, and calculating. Also, likes to take petty advantages. Mo Linyuan could not help but smile hearing her words. Yi Mu stuck out her tongue. After the evening sun completely sank down, the sky was very dark. But, there is something that I didn't think of wrongly. Which is? Mo Linyuan asked with full curiosity. Yi Mu said with a smile, at that time, I thought you're definitely handsome, and I also thought, if there was such a person, I would really want to know what he looks like. Mo Linyuan abruptly stopped, pulling her into his chest. The people behind them were tactful to fall a few steps back, and Mo Linyuan fixedly stared at Yi Mu. Now you've seen that he really likes you, what do you feel? Yi Mu raised her head to look at his eyes. In the faint white light, his eyes were delicate and touching. Among them were glimmering rays of light, like the stars in the sky. He seemed to be smiling, and in fact very genuinely, which made Yi Mu involuntarily form a smile. And, it feels like dreaming. Chapter, 360 Dangerous Treasure Mo Linyuan listened and faintly smiled, then softly kissed her forehead. Thinking that we can get married after going back, I suddenly don't want the treasure anymore, I want to go back right away. Hearing Mo Linyuan's rare unruly and coquettish words, Yi Mu pursed her lips in a smile and tugged his hand as they started walking back. Don't worry. We can't run away. It's already so late, let's not continue looking for it. Let's go back. Mo Linyuan nodded, and then the group walked back. When they had walked halfway, the sky was already enveloped in black, but at this moment, someone suddenly exclaimed behind Yi Mu, Everyone look, what's over there? Seeing a blue flickering flame on the pitch black mountain, Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan looked at each other, and could not help going toward that direction. When they were near, Yi Mu smelled something irritating to her nose, and then saw the blue flame emitting for no reason on the ground. Likewise, a foul gas reeked outward, but Yi Mu was instantly delighted. I think we found the right place. However, she did not approach too near and dragged Mo Linyuan away. This gas will remain for a long time but don't worry about it, it should be fine when we come back tomorrow. It's a leakage of phosphorus and sulfur, which means there's a mechanism below. I just don't know why the mechanism broke, but it's truly a blessing from heaven. We don't need to find the door anymore, tomorrow we dig this place down, we can certainly dig out the treasure. Despite not understanding what she said about the flame, Mo Linyuan nodded. Alright, not finding it. Well go down tomorrow. But when they reached the campsite, they found that the people who stayed in camp had all passed out. Yi Mu startled and hurried forward. Only when she found they were still breathing, did she let out a sigh of relief. What happened? Mo Linyuan's look immediately turned ugly, the dozens of people behind him hurried forward and checked, and then said, reporting to your majesty, it seems they're poisoned. Poisoned? Mo Linyuan looked around, the surroundings very quiet, there was only the rustling forest. This forest was in the hinterland, it was deserted, how could they be poisoned? Yi Mu carefully smelled, and noticed there was a faint, weird smell around them. But it was too faint, she could not distinguish it. She tugged at Mo Linyuan, frowning. Maybe it's not because of a person, let's look around the area, I smell something unusual. At this moment, someone yelled behind them, Your Majesty, we found something here. Mo Linyuan hastily went over with Yi Mu, and then saw, under the foot of the mountain, a person collapsed on one side carrying dry firewood, and beside his body was a large hole. Yi Mu moved closer and sniffed. Yes, it's definitely the treasure's trap. Because it has been too long, a hole appeared. After this ground collapsed, the poisonous gas from inside wafted out, and our camp is situated on the leeward, and then they got infected. So now what? Mo Linyuan asked. Yi Mu said, as of now, move these people to the windward. 
didn't we bring an antidote? Give them some, and then have someone inform the others to come help. Mo Linyuan nodded. It's the only way. One phone, move quickly, call the others to gather here. The two thousand people that were sent here first, call them over. Yes. One phone quickly left. This time, many of his friends were in the five hundred people that followed, so he did not wish for a mishap to befall them. But what happened tonight? Yi Mu looked at the large hole before her. It seems the poisonous gas inside has been released, but I can't be certain. Also, it's strange, how could this treasure keep having holes? Normally it shouldn't. Mo Linyuan said, in any case, wait until tomorrow to talk about everything. Tonight, let's rest a bit further away in case something happens to it. Yi Mu nodded. At this moment, those who fainted had been dragged to a drafty place. The remaining dozen people took turns to guard. Tonight, they did not pitch a tent and instead slept directly on the grass. Yi Mu lay in Mo Linyuan's embrace. Despite having shut her eyes, she still could not fall asleep. I thought the trap on the other side was already very dangerous, I didn't expect this place to also have so many traps. We haven't gone down and people are already harmed, it makes me uneasy. Mo Linyuan reassured her, if you're scared, we won't go down tomorrow. Well wait above and see the outcome. Yi Mu shook her head. Forget it, let's wait together. Don't we have people who were sent in advance? Now that Wen Feng has informed them, well wait patiently. The more people, the greater power. Until then, there are many things to take care of. Only, we're very deep into the hinterland, we don't know how many days we should wait until they come. Mo Linyuan nodded as he hugged her. In any case, the situation is amiss. Well just withdraw and wait for a few days, the army must already be on the way. Anyway, it's easy to demolish it. Only when Yi Mu heard such words from him, did she nod feeling at ease. The forest at night was very quiet. There was a rustling noise occasionally, but it quickly disappeared. At this moment, Yi Mu's internal energy had almost recovered, so her hearing was more acute than other people. She suddenly furrowed her eyebrows, and then abruptly opened her eyes. Not good. Once she woke up, Mo Linyuan also woke up. The rest of the troops were still clueless, only when Yimu cautioned them did they know what had happened. Fall back, all of you carefully look under your feet. They quickly looked down. The sky was too dark, the ground was all grass. Nothing could actually be seen. Only until those things were in close proximity, someone cried out in alarm, it's worms. So many worms. A mass of centipedes pressed on toward their direction. Fortunately, Yi Mu warned them early. They kept retreating. At the moment, no one had been bitten. These worms are really strange, shouldn't they be afraid of people and light? How could they keep coming to our direction? Yi Mu also did not understand. It was Mo Linyuan who said, I've read from an ancient book, if these worms are specially trained, they can indulge in the exact opposite of their natural instincts, such as light and warmth. Yi Mu pondered. After retreating a few steps back, she threw a luminous pearl. Those worms did not bother about the object at all, and still crawled toward them. Yi Mu frowned. They're not scared of light. Or maybe, not scared of this cold light. Then, they retreated as they experimented. Yi Mu threw a fire over. This time, these worms reacted, they unexpectedly liked fire so much, they shrouded the fire in an instant. What was terrifying was, even though the air was filled with the smell of worms being burned, they were not in the least fearful, like moths hurtling into flame, persistently advancing toward these heat sources. Moths hurtling into flame to seek their own destruction. Chapter, 361 Xiaolang Yi Mu pondered, and brought a palm to strike down the tree beside her. Then, she tossed a torch upward. Sure enough, the next second, those worms abandoned them as heat sources, and instead crawled toward the huge tree that was burning and set ablaze. Seeing the lot of worms throwing themselves into the fire, and the air filled with the smell of burning meat, everyone had lingering fear in their heart. Luckily, Yi Mu Xiaojie quickly warned them, otherwise, they would have died. After all, taking a close look at these centipedes, all of them had red hair and green bodies, so they were definitely extremely poisonous. Yi Mu sighed. 
looks like they also crawled up from underground, but I don't know what's actually happening down there, why is it that we haven't gone down, but the treasure has started attacking us. But the others were more worried about where they would sleep tonight, after all, they had exhausted themselves these few days. If they could not rest well tonight, what would they do the next day? Until most of the worms had died, Yi Mu said, fortunately, these worms didn't rush to the wounded, so it seems the powder spread around them still has some effect. Let's do this, we'll stay with the wounded. The powder is already finished, so we can only squeeze in with them. The others had no complaint. Finally, no other troubles emerged, they had passed a daunting yet uninjurious night. Because they were worried there was something frightful below, and their number now was very small, Mo Linyuan and the others took no action for several days in a row, merely waiting for the large troop to come and discuss a strategy together. It was another night. Many people were on night duty these two days, afraid that something would be sent out from the underground. When it was late at night, Yi Mu, who was sleeping soundly, suddenly gave out a blood-curdling scream. What happened? As soon as the voice sounded, everyone awakened, these few days they did not sleep genuinely. Then, the group on patrol immediately came, only to find a lot of wolves. Yi Mu sat up. If it was only a wolf pack, she would not be worried. With their kung fu, even if these wild wolves were powerful, it was only a matter of time to kill them. But she soon could not hold that wishful thinking because, suddenly around them, a lot of green eyes faintly glinted into appearance. Seeing this number, was it only a wolf pack? Could it be that all the wolves from the entire forest came? Wolves are clever animals, it seemed they had eyed the group of people for several days, but only today did they realize the onslaught. And these wolves were much larger than those Yi Mu and the others had seen before, so they were obviously harder to deal with. Everyone formed a circle, surrounding Yi Mu and Imo Linyuan, but Yi Mu said, His Majesty has my protection, the dozen of you, go protect our unconscious companions. Those people did not dare move, and only stared at Imo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan also nodded, saying, do as she says. So the group shifted again. There were still a few remaining with Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan. When the wolves saw Yi Mu and the rest, they thought the two stood out, and from their keen animal instincts, they felt both of them were most threatening. So, once they attacked, most of them charged toward Yi Mu's direction. Watch out! Mo Linyuan held Yi Mu back behind him, a hand unsheathing his sword. Despite the many wild beasts around them, he wasn't in the least fearful. This calm composure also made the others calm. Yi Mu stuck to his back, smiling lightly. It's time to see the result of your training all these years, I've never seen you go all out. Mo Linyuan slightly curled his lips in a smile. They are probably not qualified. Saying this, both shot out at the same time. The sharp claws of those beasts and the stench that hit directly in their faces were especially vexatious in the dim light of the night. Once the wolves started attacking, it was a group attack. From all directions, they pounced toward Yi Mu's group. Yi Mu barely beheaded one when another came pouncing. The beastly instinct that was not scared of death made the smell of blood in the air thicker and thicker. Suddenly, Yi Mu noticed a wolf charging toward someone beside her through his opening and would snap his neck in a second. So Yi Mu shot out a hand without thinking, poured internal energy into her arm and used it to help him block. Careful! Mo Linyuan went to stab the sneaky wolf with his sword, but he was still a step late, and their attack became unanimous all of a sudden. When there was an opening to squeeze through, they came rushing at them one after another. But just in this life and death situation, a wolf whistle suddenly rang out among the forest. It was very resonant, like the roar of the king of the forest directly piercing through the forest. The originally violent beasts, after hearing this cry, seemed to freeze, crawling down to their forelegs one after another. And the wolf that had its mouth open to bite Yi Mu, realized it couldn't, and quickly jumped down, running toward a direction. The next second, all around the forest emitted the glows of torches. A person in the very front bent over, half kneeling down. The wolf had run and crawled to the side of his feet. The person had neat short hair, his eyes were extremely bright in the dark, like a wolf's. The others behind him quickly rushed over. Before, it was the wolves that surrounded Mo Linyuan, but now that his people had come, it was the wolves' turn to be surrounded. All right all right, don't kill them, okay? I assure they'll be good and listen. 
After playing with the wolf for a while, a young man's voice sounded out. Neat snowy white teeth showed the moment he smiled. Before anyone could respond, he had walked to Yi Mu's side. Long time no see, Xiao Jia. Yi Mu was stunned. Over the years, everyone called her Yi Xiao Jia, there was only one person who would call her Xiao Jia, and that was Yi Xiaolang. Xiaolang's Chinese characters is, which means little wolf. It's you. It had been many years. Because Mo Linyuan trusted Yi Xiaolang, after sending him to the army to train, he also let him climb up from the base level step by step. Unexpectedly, this time, Mo Linyuan had sent him over in advance. Yi Xiaolang also felt sensational seeing Yi Mu. Having not met for many years, he had grown up to be a tall man with a sturdy build. But why is Xiao Jia still small? Mo Linyuan cut off his reminiscence and hummed, drive away these animals first. Yes, your majesty. When Yi Xiaolang faced Mo Linyuan, he was still extremely respectful. Shortly after, a whistle came out from his throat. As soon as the sound came out, the wolves that had wanted to run away after feeling uneasy seeing the huge number of people, as though a ban was lifted, instantly took off at lightning speed, disappearing into the pitch black forest. As for the corpses of wolves on the ground, they were cleared away at once. The smell of blood still hovered in the air, but besides 45 people who were injured, there were no other casualties. Yi Mu didn't think Yi Xiaolang had this ability. When she was very small, when she rescued him that time, she had felt there was a semblance of wild nature on him, similar to a wolf. Was it possible that he really could communicate with wolves? Chapter 362 Calamitous Beauty As if seeing her bewilderment, Yi Xiaolang laughed heartily. He said, the reason is simple. When I was young, I was raised by a wolf, hence a wolf child. I understand all the rules of the animal, I naturally know how to make them scared. Hearing this, Yi Mu felt Yi Xiaolang was very cool. While the people around pitched the camp and reported to Mo Linyuan, Yi Mu tugged Yi Xiaolang to one side and whispered. Have you been well all these years? Did Mo Linyuan bully you? Yi Xiaolang touched his nose. It doesn't count as bullying, he just simply doesn't treat me as a human, always at his immediate disposal. I want to come back and see you, but I don't have much time because of the training. When Yi Mu listened, an understanding expression instantly dawned on her. No wonder, every time I bring you up, he always says you're busy. He's bullied you to work too much. But Yi Xiaolang did not mind. It's all right, I'm rather comfortable in the army. I'm already a major general now, and now that I'm called back to the capital, if there's a war in the future, I'm unlikely to be assigned to a post outside. Yi Mu humphed. I also won't let him assign you outside the capital again. The two talked in whispers on one side, making Mo Linyuan by the bonfire upset. Indeed, he should not have let Yi Xiaolang come back, he was too good at snatching attention. Once he appeared, Xiao Muor didn't even glance at him. Your Majesty, Your Majesty. When Feng who had hurried back said, Do you think this arrangement is proper for tomorrow? Depressed, Mo Linyuan nodded. All right, go with your plan. He paused, and pointed to Yi Xiaolang. Also, call Yi Xiaolang to come and listen, while not have him stay above tomorrow, he'll follow us to go down. Wen Feng, you stay up. After that, Yi Xiaolang and Yi Mu who were happily chatting were inexplicably brought over. Yi Mu wanted to join in, but Mo Linyuan coaxed her, you go rest first. Yi Mu said, you all are not sleeping, why do I need to rest? Mo Linyuan reasoned, you're the strongest, you'll definitely be using a lot of strength tomorrow, so tonight you must save your energy. As Mo Linyuan said this, Yi Mu acted cute, pouting. When she saw that the tent on one side had been set up, she reluctantly said, then you should rest early too, when the discussion is done, remember to tell me the plan tomorrow. And Mo Linyuan gently looked at her. Go ahead and rest. Sitting among the crowd, Yi Xiaolang saw the way Mo Linyuan treated Yi Mu so affectionately. Although he knew it already, he was still slightly speechless. Who would have thought the slave boy before would actually end up being Mo country's emperor? Who would have thought, the man who seemed to be very calculating since childhood, would be so gentle toward a woman? Having thought of something, Yi Xiaolang lightly smiled, it seems Aji will be henpecked. After Yi Mu went to sleep, the men went to sit and continued discussing. 
Because Yi Xiaolang brought over 2,000 people, their strength now was enough, so somebody suggested. What if it's like this, we divide into three directions, one to find the main entrance and go down from there. Another group will directly use a tool to dig a hole and go down to open another path. And the other group will wait outside. Another person suggested, at that time, each of our group brings along a rope and a bell. For every some distance, hammer a wooden peg, tie the bell on the rope so we don't lose our tracks, so we won't get lost. That's right, if something wrong happens then, we still can pull the rope, request help from the people outside. Everyone drew on suggestions together, preparing for the next underground treasure. In the end, they only went to rest after they finished discussing their strategy. The next morning, everyone woke up very early, and started their operation. They first found the main entrance halfway up the mountain, and then sent a group of people to go in. Meanwhile, Yi Mu and Imo Linyuan planned to open a way in by themselves. They walked to the place where the poisonous gas emitted before and dug. Indeed, not long after digging, a secret path appeared. Yi Mu first threw a pheasant down. Seeing that it was still alive when it was brought back up, she guessed that it was no longer poisonous below. Then, she also threw a fire down to distinguish the air speed according to the direction of the fire. After finding that there was no problem, they went down. Now that the treasure was right before their eyes, everyone was excited. But there was the lesson learned from the Bright King map, Yimu felt the city boundary map's treasure was also not easy. Before going down, Emo Linyuan tied a red rope between him and Yimu. No matter what happens, we will not leave each other, understand? Yi Mu smiled, nodding. I know. It's only some ancient mechanism. That Bright King map's imperial tomb did not make me stranded, much less here. Only then did Imo Linyuan nod. Currently, he wore black clothes, his hair simply tied up high. He first jumped down before carrying Yi Mu down. With Yi Mu's skill, why would she need someone to carry her? So imperceptibly, it was a moment's show of affection to abuse single dogs. CN slang for single people. Their group of people was not many, only ten. The group led by Yi Xiaolang, on the other hand, had even more people, reaching over a hundred. This was Yi Mu's decision after much consideration. The underground was cramped, so more people were not necessarily better, hence they decided to travel in simple clothings. After going down, the two people resolutely walked downward. This corridor was built extremely simple, it looked the same as an air vent, short and small. After passing through this corridor, Yi Mu noticed they had arrived in the first stone room. This stone room had many piled up bones, looking like the emperor's tomb. The craftsmen here were also killed being witnesses. Because there was no map, no path to follow, they decisively kept walking downward. After walking toward another section, they could see a mural, the ground below them was also paved with slab stone. At this moment, Mo Linyuan was looking at the mural, and the people that followed them were busy hammering a wooden peg and tying the red thread, hanging a golden bell above. It was easy to get lost underground, doing this may ensure this kind of situation to not happen. Yi Mu saw that Mo Linyuan had been looking at the mural for a long time, so she moved closer and asked, what's the matter? She raised her head to look at the mural. Is there something interesting in this mural? Mo Linyuan said in a deep voice, murals in general are a message the workers here want to relay to the outside. For instance, the place where Mo country's ancestor was buried. On that tomb's mural, the drawing showed him killing everywhere, pacifying the rebellion, establishing Mo country's image. There is also his wedding, congratulated from all sides. His major birthdays, and other major events. Birthdays for an older person on the 10th marking a new decade, typically over 50 years old, e.g. 60th birthday, 70th, 80th, etc. But it's the treasure here, nothing should be drawn right? Yi Mu asked, feeling odd. Mo Linyuan said, that's why I feel strange because this mural which obviously paints this place buried a woman. Woman? Mo Linyuan nodded. If I'm not wrong, the one buried here is most likely the favored concubine of the last dynasty's emperor. They say, the empire perished because of her, and she was known by people as a femme fatale, an evil spirit that causes world chaos. Chapter, 363 Red Rope Yi Mu felt this matter was getting more and more interesting. They obviously were searching for the treasure, but now it seemed they were robbing a grave. 
but this really is not good news. Yi Mu said in an almost joking manner, if the favored concubine is really buried here, then there will certainly be more mechanisms. Now we can only hope that there is also more treasure. Mo Linyuan nodded. There will be, let's follow the mural. He tugged Yi Mu's hand walking downward, and the ten or so people behind them were busy tying bells. In the darkness, there were the occasional jingles of the bells. Listening to it was rather strange. Usually, the deeper they went, they should be feeling colder, but it was different here. The deeper they went, it actually became hotter. Yi Mu said, seems like there is a hot spring down here, the air here is really humid. The more they walked downward, the humidity and heat became stronger. Suddenly, someone said behind them, what's going on? My body feels itchy. As soon as he spoke, the others followed. Yi Mu listened and hurriedly pulled her sleeve up. She saw that her body was covered with specks of red. Not good, this water vapor is poisonous, we should stop going forward. Then then what do we do? Someone asked. Yi Mu immediately used the idea from her direct experience in the emperor's tomb, and immediately knocked about the precipice. In the end, she realized there was air current, so she directly brought her palm down, smashing the precipice. Everyone saw Yi Mu's expression suddenly change. The very thick stone wall couldn't be penetrated with ordinary internal energy. Yi Xiaojie truly was powerful. Yi Mu glanced at them. Why are you just staring? Divert. She wanted to leave after saying this, but her hand was grabbed by Mo Linyuan. Carefully looking at her hand, he noticed that her hand was all red, and immediately wanted to sigh. Before, he thought Yi Mu wanted to look for a secret passage, he didn't expect she would directly. Let me do this kind of thing next time, he gravely said as he rubbed her hand, his heart aching. Yi Mu could not restrain smiling. Can you break through it? Mo Linyuan pinched her cheeks. Don't underestimate your husband. Yi Mu's face immediately turned red. This they have not married yet. After diverting, they continued onward. There was no mural on this path, but they still kept going down. After diverting, they were more careful. Yi Mu was better, what she was afraid of were those mechanisms, while the others the ancestors, which naturally were the mystery of mysteries. Finally, they arrived in the second stone room. This stone room lay many skeletons. Each of them were reclined, both hands serenely placed in front of their bodies, looking like they were willing to be buried alive with the dead, lying there. Because they were walking in puzzlement all the way, at this moment they also didn't understand where this section of the underground palace was. These people are not interesting to look at, let's continue. Yi Mu's voice was unusually calm. She was never scared of these, so right now she could still keep her head. Those behind her were also elites who killed people naturally, they weren't scared, but they didn't expect Yi Mu to be brave despite being a girl. In the third stone room, it was the burial objects, but the burial objects here were all textile material. These things were placed very long ago and had decayed. A person behind Yi Mu scrutinized the decorative pattern, and regrettably said. What a waste, these materials are flawless, it must be the empire's most famous cloud brocade. Some examples HTTPS, WW. Nuhanfu. COM 14140. HTML. Cloud brocade. This many. Isn't it only produced a few tens in a year? Yi Mu intercepted, this also explains, the one buried here is really the favored concubine. Let's go, these things are now useless, nothing good to look at. The people behind nodded, and then started hanging a bell and hammered a wooden peg. Their speed advancing forward was not fast as they prioritized safety. But it was at this moment that the person who was currently threading a needle froze. He pulled and pulled, and found that the thread worn on his hand had unexpectedly snapped off somewhere the bell had also dropped. What's the matter? Yi Mu asked. He rubbed the back of his head and replied, the rope we've been using to come here broke. It's really strange, these ropes are clearly strong and firm. What about letting this subordinate go back and check? Yi Mu knew in her heart that it was harmful to act alone in this kind of situation. She shook her head. If it broke then it broke. You keep piling here, continue tying the rope. Even if those ropes broke, it would have broken in the same place and won't make a turn. We won't get lost. 
you have a point. Yi Mu saying this, they continued tying the red rope, but Mo Linyuan's expression was not relaxed. Of course, Yi Mu's calmness was also a pretense. It broke, their tying of the rope was not even tight, how did it break? Mo Linyuan was worried about Yi Mu's safety. What if we go back and send other people to come down? Yi Mu shook her head. We've walked this far. Now that a strange thing has occurred, turning back might not mean it's safer. Let's continue walking around. Okay. Mo Linyuan clutched Yi Mu's hand tightly. Whatever happens, don't leave my side. Yi Mu nodded, her expression grave. They arrived in the fourth stone room. The objects in this stone room were a little more feminine. Since they were boxes of women's adornments, it seemed that a woman buried here was not wrong. Yi Mu took a look at a hair clasp as she picked it up in passing, being knowledgeable about the quality. These are all valuable things, the pearls on top can't be exchanged even for gold. But even if all of you brought gloves, don't arbitrarily touch so as to avoid activating the trap. These words from Yi Mu refrained those who previously wanted to touch. And at this moment, with the wooden peg fixed, the rope on the person's hand who was preparing to tie the rope loosened, and also broke. At this moment, everyone became nervous. This situation recurred one after another. And in this kind of confined surroundings, it made them panic. If it were the troops that Yi Shaolang brought, they would definitely not do this kind of thing to their own people. But if it wasn't them, how did this rope break by itself? These were all excellent ropes, and crucially, the sound of bells was not heard when it broke. It really was strange. What about this, one of the soldiers said, they'll turn back and check. Don't worry, I'm not afraid of anything. Yi Mu firmly refused, no one is allowed to turn back. Since we're now inside, we should walk together, and retreat together. This underground path is complicated, once you separate and get lost, it will be a tricky matter. She also said to the person binding the rope, from now on, you don't have to tie and pile anymore, just lay the rope aside. What we want is only markings. Besides, I've also made other marks along the way, so you don't have to worry. Hearing Yi Mu say this, they immediately became at ease. All right, all of us believe in you. Let's continue. Chapter 364 Hidden Crisis Despite such words, everyone was even more tense. Then, the forks in front of them multiplied, and the underground path became more complicated. The moss on the ground also kept getting thicker, to the extent that it would make someone slip from time to time. At this particular moment, they noticed the smell of blood. Until now, the team with Yi Mu made sure that nothing happened to anyone by their side. This smell of blood definitely didn't come from among them. Everyone was silent for a moment. It was Imo Linyuan who said, looks like another team faced danger. But how is that possible? Someone said, feeling odd. The other team has over a hundred people, this underground actually still can threaten them. Mo Linyuan said, don't be too anxious, the problem shouldn't be big. Yi Xiaolang is not an ordinary person, once he discovers a trap, he'll carry out the most appropriate action. He spoke these words to let others hear, but even more for Yi Mu to listen. Yi Mu frowned before nodding. True, he's a wolf child. Let's continue, maybe we'll run into them soon. But after a while, they saw dead bodies collapsed in a disorderly manner on the ground. There were as many as seven or eight people, that many. It's our people. The people behind Yi Mu rushed over. Regrettably, they found that they were all dead. What caused this? Yi Mu felt unwell. It was only to take a treasure, she never thought people would die. A few people bent over to check, and found these people had marks of being stabbed. This showed that they had had a chaotic fight, and the other party had a knife. Could it be besides us, there is another force here? Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu inspected them together for a while. In the end, he and Yi Mu glanced at each other, each of them reached a conclusion. They were not killed by an outside force. Yi Mu stood up with difficulty. They killed each other. Killed each other. How? The soldiers next to Yi Mu either revealed a scared or doubtful expression. Mo Linyuan said, there's a reason for what she said. I've read from a book before, there is a kind of plant that can create hallucinations. They most likely fell into a similar trap. Yi Mu nodded. 
I have the same thought. Didn't everyone prepare a gauze mask and wear it? If there is an unusual smell or someone feels strange, everyone has to report. As for these bodies. Yi Mu said with a heavy heart, let's search this mountain first. After we're familiar with this place, send people to come take them and bury them outside. Everyone was downcast. Someone said under their breath, we don't know where the other team's remaining people went. It would be good if we met them, so we know what happened. Yi Mu looked at the moss on the ground layered with chaotic footprints, and was even more perturbed. Well meet them, I feel that many of them have wandered off to our position, let's continue forward. And no one objected to this, since the way back might not necessarily be safe. Finding out what this treasure exactly was would be the most reassuring move. When they continued on, before they could reach a stone room, someone suddenly came running toward them. Who's there? In that instant, everyone pulled out their knives. And seeing that it was Yi Mu and the rest, the person who came running madly was immediately overjoyed. Your Majesty! Yi Xiaojie! Save me! What's going on? Yi Mu saw that this person was with Yi Xiaolang. Seeing that it turned out to be their own comrade, they put down their guard. But Yi Mu still felt unsettled, so she stepped forward and stopped him. What about Yi Xiaoling? What did you encounter? The person looked flustered, but he appeared not to have sustained a severe wound. At the moment, he was stuttering as he flurriedly explained. We didn't come down for long and immediately encountered yesterday's centipedes. Because it's dark down here, it was too late when we found out. Those who were bitten by those centipedes went unconscious and started killing each other. General Yi found it strange and brought the remaining people to run, but there were too many centipedes then. Even if General Yi's voice was loud, there were still many people who ran wildly toward me, so I also ran. Luckily I met you. He was nearly crying tears of joy as he said this. Heaven knows, seeing his own people in this underground made him feel so relieved. Just now in the dark, he ran by himself and was almost compelled by madness. Yi Mu didn't expect there were still many of those poisonous insects down here. She frowned and said, Okay, everyone extinguish the flames, use luminous pearls. Those worms like fire, sprinkle some powder on ourselves, and then put out the torches. Yes. Everyone complied, and the torches were out. After that, someone among them who was holding the luminous pearl suddenly screamed. What happened? Some jumped out of their skin and quickly looked at him, but he pointed at that person who just joined them. All of you look, look at his face. Everyone looked over. The person himself didn't know what was on his face, and stretched out his hand out to feel it, while everyone who saw was stunned. Under the cold light of the luminous pearls, his face was swelling. Under the shine of the pearls, those worms slightly glowed, and then slowly moved under his skin. It made the scalps of those who were watching tingle. What happened Wiriwalu can get me like that, what's on my face? His hand touched his own face a few times. It was Yi Mu who turned and walked over to the other party. But before she took several steps, she was pulled by Mo Linyuan. Don't go, that thing looks very dangerous. Yi Mu shook her head. It's all right, I have Qi protecting my body, I'm safer than all of you. Only those who possessed a 60-year internal energy could form essential qi to protect the body. It could strengthen the skin, bones and muscles for a short period of time to avoid sustaining an injury. That person was already terrified from looking at Yi Mu and the other's expressions he didn't dare to move as he stood there. Yi Mu said, you, relax a little. Better yet, close your eyes. Out of his trust in Yi Mu, he closed his eyes. And then, Yi Mu's pocket knife slipped out of her hand in a flash. He nearly didn't feel any pain as his face was cut open, and two worms were immediately dug out by Yi Mu's dagger. That person covered his face as he cried out in alarm. He was clueless as to why Yi Mu did that, but when he saw the blood red, distorted worms on the ground, his face instantly went pale. These these were from my face. That's right. Yi Mu looked at him with sympathy, and then lowered her head to look at those worms. Looks like these worms have neurogenic toxins in their body, so you didn't realize when they got into your body. Once they reach your face, I reckon you will be the same as those people before, starting to massacre each other. Yi Mu's words made everyone shudder with fear. These things were actually this terrifying. Chapter, 365
treacherous creatures. Yi Mu said, if we meet this kind of thing in a while, turn back to the same way we came from. But everyone must remember, stay calm. If you get lost underground, you'll die. Everyone nodded repeatedly, and then continued their trek. Mo Lin Yuan walked in front of Yi Mu, as if indistinctly wanting to protect her. Yi Mu's heart felt content, and the party continued forward. The long and narrow corridor seemed to have no end, they kept encountering a fork. Yi Mu walked the path that had air current, and gradually, the path started to have a mural, but the painting seemed to become dangerous. Mo Lin Yuan watched along the way, and his expression also became odd, especially that one of them, the countless poisonous snakes and worms on the resplendent hall were encircling a woman. That woman wore a phoenix coronet, her face enchanting. But after careful observation, it was not decorative patterns lying on her body, but rather, were poisonous worms. Yi Mu was confused. She whispered, what happened to this woman? Isn't she the calamitous woman of the country? Why does she actually look like Miao Yu over there, a wicked woman who is very good at witchcraft? Mo Lin Yuan recalled the past. I just remembered, I previously read an ancient book. The book said, the reason why the empire perished so quickly, is because this favored concubine had always liked to torment people all her life. The punishment she left behind that time is now gone, but according to the records, her favorite was to see a living person swallowed by snakes and other worms, and the emperor really indulged her. He didn't bat an eye at the cries of the common people, and so the country perished. Yi Mu inferred, so when this favored concubine was still alive, she really liked to fiddle with these things. That said, the many worms down here must have been left behind by the favored concubine, right? Generation after generation, since it's in the mountains, it's easy for them to find something to eat. Mo Lin Yuan shook his head. It's not clear, but probably by not getting rid of this, if it's all poisonous creatures by this woman's side, the following journey will definitely be more dangerous. Before he could finish speaking, he heard someone yell, Snake! There's a snake! Everyone followed the direction his finger pointed to, but didn't see any snake. Someone asked, Are you blind? Where's the snake? That person said with certainty, I saw, it was a gigantic snake, and it moved really fast. Their words made Yi Mu's expression frigid. I believe them I encountered a black python before. I fought with it. But that soldier's complexion lost color as he said, the snake that I just saw was red. His words made everyone quiet. So, there was more than one. But Yi Mu smiled. Nothing to be very worried about, I've recovered my internal energy now. If it dares to come, well eat snake meat tonight. Everyone listened, and slightly relaxed and laughed. But it wasn't possible to eat snake meat they didn't know how much human meat the snakes here had eaten. Just when they were relaxing, suddenly, small sounds came out, and the speed was very, very fast. Yi Mu was the first to hear it and stopped everyone at once. Very soon, they saw what the things that were coming were. They were rats, so many jet black, red-eyed rats. Careful. The moment Yi Mu finished speaking, she blocked them first. Those rats, however, were not scared of them, and they could bite people. Once those piercing teeth bit onto something, that bitten place would be rendered numb. Seeing the troops panic-stricken in an instant, Yi Mu said in a low voice, Don't panic. Everyone get behind me. Everyone did as instructed, and then from the chi below her navel, she brought the invisible internal energy out. That internal energy was like a knife, and immediately pressured those rats that they didn't dare to come anymore. They started to turn and run away in a mass of darkness, just like a tide. Soon, they disappeared. Where Chi resides. Everyone released their breaths. Someone leaned against their back on the wall, and suddenly felt a force. He turned his head, and saw the sharp fangs of a black snake. Watch out! Mo Linyuan swung a sword over. That snake's head was chopped off, but its tail seemed to still be alive, firmly winding around the person's neck. It was Yi Mu who finished it off with a knife, and the snake finally released its grip. Everyone was badly shaken, and then was filled with reverence and fear toward this place. The person buried here definitely doesn't want to be disturbed. What if we just leave? Yeah. These poisonous creatures are certainly attacking us for the sake of that favored concubine. A good number of people had this kind of thought, 
but seeing M.O. Linyuan's sudden overcast complexion, no one continued speaking. A manly man, at this critical moment, how could they be in chaos? Yi Mu said, actually, you don't have to be too scared. She looked at the depths of the cave and said to the point, to guard against theft, every tomb occupant will think of the best way to complicate matters. There are so many treacherous creatures here, so they must have been attracted by something inside, and then we disturbed their territory, so they attacked. It's actually not because of the control of a remarkable person. Hearing this explanation from Yi Mu, they immediately felt so relieved. Then what do we do if there are still many of those creatures inside? The place where the rats had just bitten me is aching and itchy. Could it be poisonous? Yi Mu frowned. She compromised, let's do this, well walk on for a bit. If there are many of those creatures, well retreat out. If there are none, well continue. How's this? M.O. Linyuan was the first to nod. Well do as you say. I am the chosen one, I don't believe any evil will block my way. Means an emperor who inherits the fate of the world-ordained son of heaven though now it's also used as a metaphor for destined lover true love. With this said, he was the first to walk in front. M.O. Linyuan and Yi Mu were the same, they completely didn't believe these, so they were fine in the dark they were also fine with the hidden danger they weren't problems that couldn't be solved. Seeing his majesty was this calm, the others felt ashamed and calmed down. After eating an antidote, they felt so much better and regained their confidence. And finally, they walked out of the tunnel and arrived in a very vast area. It looked like an enormous cave that naturally took form, there were side paths all around. At this time, a surprised voice came out, Your majesty. You're here too. M.O. Linyuan saw it was someone from Yi Xilang's side. He quickly inquired, where is General Yi? That person's expression dulled. General Yi is a little wounded, he's resting over there. Please follow me. When Yi Mu heard that Yi Xiaolang was injured, she hurriedly followed, and then in one of the cave tunnels, she saw Yi Xiaolang and the rest. At this moment, they only had about sixty people. The others, if they didn't die, they were lost. Seeing Yi Xiaolang firmly shutting his eyes, Yi Mu asked, what happened to him? A soldier next to Yi Xiaolang said in a low voice, General Yi got bitten by the snake to save me. That snake was red, it might be extremely poisonous. Chapter, 366 The Woman Among the Treasures As soon as Yi Mu heard, she hurriedly sat down and helped force the poison out of Yi Xiaolang. And after Mo Linyuan watched, he asked a deputy general about what had happened. That deputy general said, just as we came down, we were ambushed by a mass of poisonous worms. It wasn't easy to run away, and we also encountered poisonous snakes and rats. Fortunately, General Yi is sharp. He brought us to a detour, so we don't have many losses in the end. And then we ran all the way here. General Yi said, he has a feeling that the treasure is not far from here, but we can't pass. Why can't you pass? M.O. Linyuan asked frowning. He sighed. Your Majesty, please come with me. M.O. Linyuan followed, and walked into the vast cave. This place was like an underground world that had no boundary. Of course, it was also because the luminous pearls in their hands could only illuminate a limited range. How big this place was was utterly unknown. Then, M.O. Linyuan saw there was a large pit straight ahead. If he wanted to reach the opposite, he had to get past this large pit. This pit seemed to be neither deep nor shallow, roughly a few meters, but its length couldn't be seen. What's in here? M.O. Linyuan wanted to advance, but was pulled to a stop by the deputy general. Your Majesty, don't go on. With this said, he lighted a flame stick and threw it ahead. Like this one here. HTTPS, Wuxia Wanderings. Come flame stick. From the brief flame, once M.O. Linyuan saw the sight in front, his pupils immediately shrinked. After that, the flame was enveloped by the black worm shadows. The deputy general said, there was someone who didn't see before and jumped down intending to pass. It's precisely how General Xiaolang was bitten to save him. Underneath does not only have worms, there are all the five poisonous creatures. Surprisingly, they don't attack each other despite being in the same place. General Xiaolang said it's because something they're fond of is buried here. It must be the powder the doctors concocted at the time, enabling them to multiply. Five poisonous creatures may include, scorpion, 
snake, centipede, house lizard, and toad. Mo Linyuan furrowed his brows. He raised his head to look toward the opposite. There, there was a tunnel lit by luminous pearls. What they were looking for might be inside, but in this situation, how could they pass? Use Qin Gong. There was no leverage, for such a far distance, it might not work. At this moment, Yi Mu came over and said, I've suppressed Xiaolang's condition, and also understood the situation. It looks like the creatures here are many because of the powder, but I don't know what kind of powder is so impressive. It's been many years, yet it's still effective. Mo Linyuan said, it might not be the powder at all. I've read from a book, to make the favored concubine happy, the last emperor nurtured a very strange flower on the mountains behind the imperial palace. That flower attracts snakes and other insects. Provided that it's dried under the sun and pulverized, its effects won't disappear no matter how many years have passed. But those flowers in the end were burned by the rebels who charged into the palace's gates. Henceforth, it's gone extinct. Yi Mu didn't expect there would be such a thing. Truly a world full of bizarre things. What do we do now? Go back, or find a way to go over and look. Mo Linyuan was rather hesitant. There is so much pollen underneath, it's uncertain how widespread and thick it is. This place also goes deep under. Even if we go out, this problem still has to be solved next time. Yi Mu said with a smile, this is easy, splash some oil and set it on fire. It doesn't matter whether these things are afraid of fire or not, ITLL work out. But her gaze settled on the tunnel illuminated by the luminous pearls on the opposite side. The entrance had been embedded with twelve luminous pearls. What a huge spending. How about I go there first? It's possible with my strength. Mo Linyuan shook his head. Too dangerous, let's go according to your idea. After we're out, we'll bring oil and fire in. Yi Mu was rather eager. Just once glance, they'll just have a glance. If it's really the treasure, they'll come back right away. Mo Linyuan asked, how are you going there? From here to there, the distance is too far. Yi Mu said with a smile, hang on. And then, she barehandedly broke a stalactite column on the side. To pass through here, I just need one leverage. Watch me. Saying this, without waiting for Mo Linyuan to say anything, she already flew up. When she was about to drop, she threw down the stone pillar in her hands. The stone pillar was thrusted into the piles of insects. Before those poisonous creatures could react, Yi Mu had already stepped on the pillar, and flew up once more. In the end, she steadily landed on the opposite side. Seeing her waving her hand at him from the entrance of pearls, Mo Linyuan couldn't help but say, a glance, then come back. Yi Mu gave a response. About this, she knew her limits. Although she was very powerful, when she must be careful, she would be extremely careful. So, she stepped into the corridor. As soon as she entered, she immediately felt the previous tunnels couldn't be called tunnels. They were unlike the one before her, the surroundings all painted with elegant murals. Moreover, every section had one luminous pearl, illuminating the place very brightly. Such a spectacle, the treasure was definitely here, no doubt. Very soon, as though confirming her words, the treasures next to her gradually increased. After passing through the tunnel, what welcomed her was not darkness, but instead an almost blinding ball of light. Yi Mu had thought about what the treasure looked like. She had thought it should be around fifty chests of gold, silver, and jewelries. Or something. But what was before her completely subverted her initial thoughts. First of all, in front of her was a rockery of gold and agates. And below the rockery was a river of pearls and jewels. The mural above was an ancient deity, and the big and small luminous pearls were used to mark the starry sky. Even the surroundings were not murals instead, pure gold and silver were used to create small people, developing into various scenes that were so lifelike. An arrangement might be needed to count this many treasures. No wonder, in the biography, M.O. Linyuan could conquer the world. With these, M.O. country's financial resources definitely could compare with the other countries combined. She was awed to a stop, and continued onward, hoping to see what was behind the rockery, if there were other treasures. Who would have thought, when she walked behind the rockery, she found a woman sleeping there. That's right, it was a woman. 
For a moment, Yi Mu couldn't tell whether it was a real person or a dummy. Anyway, from the looks of it, it was like she was sitting there asleep, her head resting on the gold mound, both feet stuck in the piles of pearls that turned into a river, as if she was merely resting for a bit. Yi Mu was nervous for a moment. Although the woman in front of her wasn't wearing a formal outfit, the Chinese dress still looked very stunning. The texture on it wasn't in the least rotten under the candlelight, it delicately glistened with golden light. And her face that was slightly drooping was shrouded in the shadows. With this look, it really seemed as though she fell asleep. It must be a dummy, right? Yi Mu surmised as such. After all, counting the time, no one had entered this place for at least 200 years. Chapter 367 Porcelain Bottle Thinking this, Yi Mu walked over step by step. The nearer she was, the more lifelike that woman's face became. Yi Mu furrowed her brows. Why did she feel this was not a dummy, but was a real person? Seeing the medicine bottle carefully held in the arms of the other party, Yi Mu felt that object was probably useful, so she carefully and cautiously stretched out her hand. Of course, she didn't forget to wear her gloves. Just as her hand was about to hit the medicine bottle, a distant, piercing whistle was heard from outside. Yi Mu withdrew her hand right away. Mo Linyuan was calling her. So she turned around to go out, planning to tell Mo Linyuan about this matter. But in the instant she turned around, she strangely stepped on grease. In haste, her hand flew to the side for support, and happened to grip the body of that woman who was sound asleep. As soon as she did, she was shocked. This woman was soft. Yi Mu repeatedly stepped back, and then she suddenly noticed, the woman that she had grasped for a moment moved. No, it shouldn't be said she moved, rather, something was moving inside her body. And in the next second, Yi Mu saw the scene she would never forget all her life. She saw the countless arches under the woman's skin, and in a second, long worms broke out of her body. Those worms were very, very thin, like delicate snakes, and this sight made a person's scalp tingle even more. When that woman's glamour-like body shriveled down, Yi Mu had only one thought, which was to leave. But at this moment, she felt a stab of pain in her palm. In the end, she threw off the glove to check. Just now, she merely supported her hand on the woman's body, but her palm had already turned into a dangerous green color. Seeing that she had been poisoned, she gritted her teeth and grabbed the bottle from the woman's body, and then used all her strength to escape. As she ran, the worms behind her followed all the way. Even if they couldn't chase her, Yi Mu felt scared. Seeing Yi Mu come out, Mo Linyuan released a breath. The next second, Yi Mu used the same way to leap over, and just as she landed, she spitted out blood. Mo Linyuan was frightened. What happened to you? But Yi Mu stepped backward first. Don't touch me. Mo Linyuan looked at her with a puzzled expression, not understanding why she refused him. Yi Mu said in a hoarse voice, Impoisoned, this poison is very severe. Don't touch me, it's contagious. How could Mo Linyuan not touch her? He still stretched her hand out to her, but she avoided him. Mo Linyuan, hurry and leave. There seems to be a powerful mechanism that flared up inside, all of us get ready and go out now. Seeing Yi Mu's expression so frightful, the rest of the people hurriedly began to turn back to the previous way. Mo Linyuan saw Yi Mu persistently not letting him touch her, and quickly said, Okay, I won't touch you. Let's go, we'll go out together. His expression was quite flustered. A poison that could make Yi Mu this pale with fright must be very fearsome. Seeing him worried, Yi Mu comforted in a hoarse voice, Don't be scared, I can already suppress this poison now, it'll be okay as long as I don't use qi. Mo Linyuan nodded and brought her out. But as they were leaving, the creatures that were mutually entangled with each other in the pit suddenly were alarmed by something. Yi Mu keenly noticed, it was those tiny worms that caught up. They were slender and long, like snakes, and slipped into the pool of five poisonous creatures. Suddenly, the creatures inside boiled with excitement. Even if they were already far, Yi Mu could still hear the noise of the creatures restlessly moving. She hurriedly said, Everyone, go a little faster. Those things behind us are coming. Upon hearing that, the soldiers immediately flee in disarray. Fortunately, there were Yi Mu's marks along the way, so no one got lost. But the scary thing was, those things really caught up. 
the first to come were rats. Every one of them had white nematodes winding around their bodies. Those nematodes pierced above the rats' heads, the remaining parts writhing outside. When Yi Mu saw this, her pupils contracted. Then, she disregarded the poison in her body, and stayed at the very back of the troops. Xiao Mu Er. Seeing her not moving, Mo Lin Yuan hurriedly ran toward her, but Yi Mu only shouted a sentence. You go first, it'll collapse this place. Saying this, both her hands exerted power, her internal energy leaking out, and directly shook the tunnel in front into ruins with one blow. As huge rocks rolled down, the whole tunnel rumbled. Those rocks sealed off the path, and in the split second that it was tightly sealed, Yi Mu heard the horrible shrieks of the rats. Watch out! A huge rock smashed down, and Mo Linyuan threw himself to block for Yi Mu. That rock smashed against his head, and blood immediately flowed out. Yi Mu didn't dare touch him. Seeing him injured, she immediately felt panicked. But Mo Linyuan only flung his head back, and ran out as he pulled her. This time, Yi Mu didn't refuse. Are you okay? Yi Mu looked at the side of his face that flowed with blood, feeling very apprehensive. But Mo Linyuan said. I'm fine, don't worry. Yi Mu wanted to ask again, but the situation right now didn't permit her. This underground had many paths. Even if she had sealed one off, there were still other paths. So she didn't dare to delay, and continued running forward. The people in front had encountered poisonous worms, but those were worms that they had encountered before. Now escaping, how could they handle too many of them? They directly stepped on those worms, their speed extremely fast. Maybe this way, they could avoid being bitten. After all, they were all wearing boots. Mo Linyuan also pulled Yi Mu along. At this moment, because Yi Mu had used her qi, her poison surged up. While everyone was in an abyss of suffering, her body kept going hot and then cold, feeling as if clouds and mist were weighing down on her. Mo Linyuan, go first, I can't anymore. The underground extended in all directions. If they delayed even for a moment, they would be in danger of being besieged by those five poisonous creatures, and Yimu really felt she couldn't go on anymore. Her heart was burning hot, and a strange green color also appeared on her face. Well leave together, I definitely can't abandon you. Saying this, he immediately held Yimu by her waist. Yimu was frightened and hit her poisoned hand, lest it touched him Olinyuan. Put me down, I'm poisoned. Even if it's deathly. I won't let go of you. Mo Linyuan's firm words made Yi Mu immediately moved. The next second, sounds that made people's teeth on edge were heard. Mo Linyuan did the same as those soldiers, trampling on those worms as he rushed out. Yi Mu's expression was tense, her hand tightly clutching the medicine bottle. She nestled in Mo Linyuan's embrace. It was clearly a dangerous moment, yet she felt safe. But at this very moment, a blood-curdling scream suddenly came out from in front. Mo Linyuan hurriedly ran forward to see, and found that there were many places emitting out with thick, corrosive liquid. Someone stepped on it and gave out a blood-curdling scream. Those liquids didn't seem to be a mechanism, rather, they looked like something that was naturally produced by the foot of this mountain. Chapter, 368 A Life for a Life Yi Mu internally thought, these things must have melted the red ropes before. Moreover, they weren't conspicuous, like thick water gathering on the ground. And it was actually this fearsome, those people of the empire that time really knew how to find a place. Mo Linyuan said, everyone, avoid those puddles. Go out using full strength. The people who got accidentally injured could also only clench their teeth, helping each other to go out. But even if it was like this, they still lost some people. When they went in, there were 120 people in total. In the end, there were only about 80 people going out. In addition, each one of them were injured, and many had worms in their bodies. Anguished wails were immediately heard everywhere. After they went out, Mo Linyuan made quick decisions, and asked someone to cover the exit with a boulder. He had also seen those dangerous white worms. It was unknown how many poisonous creatures there were below, it was better not to release them to keep from harming people. While carrying Yi Mu, he walked in large strides to seek the imperial physician. There were three imperial physicians who were sent first. He hurriedly placed Yi Mu down in front of them, and anxiously said. 
Hurry and look at her. She's poisoned. Seeing that Yi Mu was the one poisoned, the imperial physicians hurriedly surrounded them, but Yi Mu still hazily remembered Imo Linyuan's legs. While in haste before, he must have stepped on those corrosive liquid, were his legs all right? Yi Mu hoarsely asked them to check on Imo Linyuan's legs, but at this time, how could Imo Linyuan think about that trivial wound? The blood on his forehead had dried, the wounds on his legs had also gone numb. He gripped Yi Mu hard, and then said in a loud voice, I'm fine, can't you care about yourself for a while? Be good and let the physician check. Don't forget, you said you'll marry me when we go back. Yi Mu went submissive from his loud voice, but she knew in her heart that this time, it was hopeless. This poison was a hundred times more poisonous than arsenic. Before she died, she just wanted to see him well. Sure enough, after the imperial physicians had a look, each of their faces went pale. Too poisonous. With this hypertoxic poison, it was already a miracle that Yi Xiaojie lived until now. Seeing none of the imperial physicians speak, Mo Linyuan was immediately upset. Why are you not moving? Treat her. The imperial physicians shared a look of blank dismay, and one of them hesitantly said, Your Majesty, this poison is too complex, and the pathogens attack the heart, it's unsolvable. Unsolvable. At that moment, Mo Linyuan's eyes showed fear. He gazed at Yi Mu who had fallen into a stupor, and furiously said. If it's incurable, what's your use? If it's incurable, I want you all to die together. The imperial physicians dropped to their knees, trembling with fear. Your Majesty, this poison is really unsolvable, the pathogens have already attacked Yi Xiaojie's heart, if we want to cure her, there's not enough time to research for an antidote. Yes, Your Majesty, this poison is more complex than arsenic trioxide, these servants are truly helpless. For a moment, there were only the noises of pleas of mercy in the tent. Mo Linyuan looked at them, and in the end, his eyes stayed on Yi Mu. Why can't she be saved? Why he muttered to himself, and suddenly roared. All of you, scram. They didn't dare stay, and frantically escaped. Mo Linyuan sat next to Yi Mu, gazing at Yi Mu who had fallen into a coma, his hand curling into a fist. In the end, his fingers softly stayed on Yi Mu's face, his eyes gradually turning resolute. This poison was threatening, and even with Yi Mu's hundred years of internal energy, she had fallen into a stupor, not to mention those quacks. Mo Linyuan deeply looked at her, and uttered in a hoarse voice. When I was ten, it was you who saved me from that person. At that time, I made a vow to treat you well all my life. After he spoke these words, he suddenly lowered his head, placing a soft kiss on Yi Mu's forehead. His long eyelashes lightly trembled, and his thin lips pursed into a line after the kiss. Then, he helped Yi Mu up, his fingers sealing the six major acupoints on her body. He sat cross-legged in front of her. At last, he glanced at her. I won't let you die. I've said, as long as I'm alive, you'll be safe. After a shirchen, as Yi Mu felt very warm, there was something flowing out of her body. It was her internal energy, and her internal energy was being sucked away, as well as the poison in her body. Quiescent Shingong, it was actually quiescent Shingong. Who was it, exchanging life for a life? Shingong the practice of cultivating the spirit consciousness, or to promote spiritual development. She wanted to open her eyes, but couldn't. She felt the internal energy in her body diminishing, as well as the poison. Then, there was exhaustion deep into her bone marrows, making her want to sleep. Finally, she fell into Mo Linyuan's embrace. Sensing that her poison had disappeared from her body, Mo Linyuan's eyes became frightfully green, but his eyes that were gazing at her were incomparably soft and gentle. I said I'll protect you, I keep my promise. In the end, when Yi Xiaolang entered, he saw Mo Linyuan collapsed on the bed. He looked at Mo Linyuan's poisoned face, and hurriedly went to shake Yi Mu. When Yi Mu awoke, she felt extremely tired, but very soon, she noticed her internal energy had disappeared, yet she was alive. Yi Mu looked at Yi Xiaolang with shock, but Yi Xiaolang pointed at Mo Linyuan. Xiao Jie, what's happening? What happened to Aji? Yi Mu looked at Mo Linyuan, her eyes suddenly widening. So the one who sucked away her internal energy and poison, it was Imo Linyuan. 
Seeing Mo Linyuan's face that kept floating with more death qi, Yi Mu hastily blocked Mo Linyuan's acupoints, but she had no internal energy now, her fingers couldn't block the acupoints. She could only have Yi Xiaolang come. Yi Xiaolang hastily stretched out his hand to seal the acupoints, looking at Yi Mu incredulously. What about your martial arts? Yi Mu quickly got up. It's not the time to talk about this. To save me, Mo Linyuan used quiescent Qinggong. I don't know why I didn't die, but hell die in a moment's delay. Yi Mu was right. Right now, the green color on Mo Linyuan's face kept on spreading. He also had no other way but to do this, because among the people in the scene, he had the greatest martial arts, and only he could do it. He fused quiescent Shingong in the Paramount Heart Sutra he cultivated himself, and then without harming Yi Mu's life, sucked away the poison from her body. But this was merely exchanging his life, exchanging a life for a life. What was the use? Yi Mu hurriedly called the imperial physicians to come in. Seeing that Yi Mu was still alive, the physicians were shocked, because just now, they thought His Majesty was accompanying Yi Xiaojia on her last journey, but His Majesty who was in a good condition, was now unconscious on the bed. How could they not understand what happened? His Majesty must have used a method to save Yi Xiaojia. Yi Mu also didn't waste time, and immediately asked, I don't need you to save him, I just want to know, what method do you have to suspend his life? The imperial physicians all shook their heads, but at this moment, Yi Xiaolang, who was covering his own injured hand, softly said, I have a way. Chapter, 369 Fragrance to Repel Worms What way? Yi Mu asked. Yi Xiaolang said, I've seen someone whose heart was attacked by poison, and the method other people used to suspend his life was to make a small opening in his upper heart tube and let the poisonous blood flow out. His life then can be suspended. Yi Xiaolang coughed at this point, thinking they were hurt too. But, this method is very dangerous, because with just a tiny mistake, if he's not killed because of poison, he can die from excessive loss of blood. People only use this method when desperate. Yi Mu thought in her heart, wasn't she desperate now? She was silent for a moment, then asked the imperial physicians on the side, you don't have any other way. The imperial physicians wanted to cry without tears, especially seeing Mo Linyuan unconscious, each one of them had been frantic, not to mention the others. Yi Xiaojie, this servant really does not have other methods, it's also unknown what poisonous substance this is, other people would die once infected. We don't even know any method to suspend his life, much less anything else. The people outside were currently injured, anguished wails were heard from time to time. They still didn't know, Mo Linyuan had collapsed. If they knew, everyone might go into a frenzy. The only person who could take responsibility now was Yi Mu. Yi Mu shut her eyes. Seeing everyone at a loss, she said in a low voice, Don't disclose this matter to anyone else. Two of the three of you attend to His Majesty, the other one go brew ginseng soup. Xiaolang. Xiaojie. Yi Xiaolang firmly looked at her. The method you mentioned to suspend life, can you do it? Yi Mu looked at Mo Linyuan's complexion that kept going green. If they had no other way, Mo Linyuan might die in a quarter of a shirchen. It looked like they needed to take risks. Yi Xiaolang said, I know how to. Good. Determination appeared in Yi Mu's eyes. Come and start the operation. Yi Xiaojie. An imperial physician felt alarmed. Once you do it, if something happens to his majesty, your reputation will be at risk. Yi Mu waved her hand fearlessly. If he dies, I will pay for his life. Xiaolang, go ahead. Yi Xiaolang listened, and without any hesitation, he took out a small knife. On Mo Linyuan's left chest, he made a cut of one cun deep. After an opening was made, suddenly, dark purple blood gushed out, soiling through his lapel. CUN tradional unit of length, equivalent to 3. 33 centimeters or 1. 31 inches. But the strange thing was, the green color on his face had disappeared a lot. Seeing that it was effective, Yi Mu faintly released a breath. She said, everyone guard this place, I want to go down once more. If Mo Linyuan can't hold out, just give him the ginseng soup. Because they didn't understand the medicinal properties of Mo Linyuan's poison, Yi Mu also didn't dare to recklessly use the ginseng soup. The imperial physicians only nodded. 
Seeing Yi Mu get up, Yi Xiaolang looked at her and suddenly asked. You're going down. What if you don't come up? This question made Yi Mu instantly freeze. Mo Linyuan was infected with severe poison now, so Yi Mu was the pillar of these people. If Yi Mu also died below, without an imperial family member, Mo country would definitely be in chaos. But Yi Mu had no choice. She didn't look back as she said, whether I live or not will have no effect. After all, even if Mo Linyuan dies, I can't be Mo country's emperor. But he can't die. Yi Xiaolang lowered his voice as he quickly said, if his majesty dies, though you're a woman, you're the most capable to convince Mo country's people. His majesty is already like this now, even if you go down, he may not necessarily survive. Staying would be the best result. These words may be cruel, but you'll let Mo country sink into chaos for the sake of one person. Yi Mu lifted the curtains, her young face that was normally innocent and lovable, was now filled with coldness. When he saved me, he didn't think about Mo country arising with problems. Besides, I've promised to marry him after we go back. Her face pale, she smiled. I don't want to be a widow before I get married. After that, she left without looking back. The porcelain bottle that she held between her fingers became her sole assurance. It was not medicine in the porcelain bottle, merely shaking it for a while gave it away. After Yi Mu opened it, the porcelain bottle gave off a fragrance. She guessed this fragrance was related to those worms. Hearing that Yi Mu wanted to go down again so soon, everyone was bewildered. The soldiers that went down before said, Yi Xiaojia, don't. Those worms are being held back by the boulder, once it opens, they might come out and cause a mess. And they also felt very strange, wasn't Yi Xiaojia injured? Why does she look fine now, and what about his majesty? Yi Xiaojie is about to do such a dangerous action, why is his majesty not coming out to stop her? Yi Mu didn't have time to bother with them, she said in a flurry, it opens now. This is an order. She added, after I go down, send people to guard this place. If something is wrong, you can seal the place with a boulder. Although the effect wouldn't be very big, if those creatures wanted to come out, they could drill themselves out from anywhere. Seeing Yi Mu being persistent, they didn't dare to go against her words, so they only pushed away the boulder. Yi Mu opened the bottle of fragrance. Right now, she was only gambling, gambling that this fragrance was to repel worms. If this fragrance drew in worms, then she, who didn't have any internal energy now, could only have death waiting at the end, furthermore a tragic death. Her steps were rather exaggerated, but she walked very fast because Mo Linyuan was constantly losing blood right now. Once there was an excessive loss of blood, even if she brought back an antidote, it would be useless. So she followed down the marks she previously left behind, and at the end, she sprinted with all her might. Very soon, she encountered the poisonous worms from before. Those worms seemed to not have noticed her yet, but she still stopped at the only road. After all, Yimu definitely didn't have time to find another way, she could only walk on these worms to pass. Thinking this, she held the fragrance bottle, walking past those worms step by step. She prayed in her heart, this fragrance must be to repel worms, it must. After she went in, when those worms smelled the rich fragrance on her, all of them lifted their heads. The looks of those red centipedes lifting their heads in uniform could be visualized. The next second, they crawled toward her. At that moment, Yi Mu's heartbeat was unbearably fast. But she didn't retreat. Even if her internal energy was sucked away, even if her body right now was still very weak, and that her hand that was holding the porcelain bottle was sweating, she still didn't leave. In the end, those worms didn't attack her. Rather, they stopped a half meter away from her. Seeing this sight, beads of sweat rolled down Yi Mu's young, pale face. She loosened a long breath, and continued walking. Looks like this really is to repel worms. Mo Linyuan, it'll definitely save you. Yi Mu had her reasons for being bent on coming down. After all, the poison was caught from here. If she wanted to find an antidote, the possibility would only be below here. She just needed to hope that the antidote really existed, and that it was not an incurable poison. Chapter 370 The Life Journey on the Mural She walked all the way forward. All the poisonous worms dispersed back to make a path, just like servants, politely escorting her. 
After Yi Mu bypassed these worms, she hurried in. The porcelain bottle she was gripping seemed to have answered her wish, her eyes becoming even brighter as she headed straight to the treasure. She met many snakes, worms and rats on the way, which really made her scalp tingle. Yi Mu did her best not to look at them, but sometimes she met lumps of worms. Figures of white-fleshed worms were occasionally seen in the center of those lumps, but instantly, the previous nematodes, in addition to looking more like small snakes now, had two heads. It made one's scalp tingle. With this growth development, if these things were released, they would definitely bring a disaster. Yi Mu felt a chill in her heart, but didn't look for long and continued rushing forward. Finally, she arrived at that enormous cave pit. This time, she couldn't use the same method as before, using Qin Gong to leap over. She must walk step by step, and currently, there were still many of the five poisonous creatures gathering in the pit. Not all of them had left. Yi Mu took a deep breath, and then jumped down. It was only two meters high, it wasn't much to her. What made her scalp tingle was, after jumping down, she noticed that besides the snakes, worms and rats, there were also five small poisonous creatures that were just born not for long. Those that had grown up dispersed back when they smelled the fragrance on her. But the small ones crawled very slowly, so in her every step, she walked on countless corpses of small worms. The crunch crunch noise under her feet was never ending. Yi Mu really wanted to walk a little faster, but at this moment, she walked slowly, because the creatures beside her needed time to crawl back. If her carelessness made her step on the grown poisonous snakes, its reflex would be to bite her. If so, she would most likely die here. So in the darkness of the underground and in the deep cave pit, there was only a little light walking slowly. Endless poisonous creatures were all around, and they slowly stepped aside to give way, letting the small, young girl pass through. Finally, Yi Mu passed through. When she climbed up the pit, she didn't have time to shake off the small worms on her body, and immediately ran toward the treasure. The place of the treasure was still brightly lit. There were white nematodes crawling past on the ground from time to time, but after smelling the fragrance on Yimu, they didn't go near anymore, making her release a big sigh of relief. If there was an antidote, the antidote would definitely be here. She needed to carefully, carefully look for it. Yimu first found that woman's corpse, where the porcelain bottle was found. Maybe the antidote was with her. But the woman's body had shriveled down, the skin loosely covering the bones, her face completely deformed. Yimu didn't look for a long time and directly searched her body, her face streaming with sweat. But there was nothing on her body. Besides that porcelain bottle, there wasn't any pouch that could hold materials. The cold sweat on Yimu's head increased. In the end, there was no other way, she could only go to a different place to search. All around were treasures, seeming to flash with golden lights, and the luminous pearls here were honestly too many. Under the gold reflections, the whole treasure was utterly bright, but this didn't help Yimu. Instead, her eyes seemed to almost be blinded by these shiny objects. Where is it? Where is a similar medicine bottle? Under her unbridled search, she finally found an object similar to a medical kit. Just that, because a long time had passed, the medicine inside lost its properties. She lightly touched it, and it immediately turned into a pile of powder. At this moment, Yi Mu's heart was in despair. Shouldn't there be an antidote? Normally, the perpetrator of the poison wouldn't leave an antidote. After all, who would be kind to a treasure robber? But Yi Mu still hoped that there would be. If, what if the one who came in was the Empire's Imperial Orphan? Would they also be killed with poison with no exception? But finding it nowhere made Yi Mu break down. She suddenly waved furiously, and the countless gold, silver and jewelries collapsed to the side. It was all treasure in these chests, there was no medicine, not even one. Yi Mu pulled at her own hair, forcing herself to calm down. She had always been calm, her temperament had long been polished, she shouldn't be irrational from anger. Calm down, calm down, there must be something she had overlooked. She would think of Mo Linyuan's words before. Did he say the predecessor's wishes could be expressed in the mural? Yi Mu looked at the beautiful murals all around, each painting exquisite, depicting different scenes. She scrutinized the paintings one by one, from the discovery of the favored concubine to the dedication to the emperor. Then, she slowly worked her charms and finesse, fully fascinating the emperor. 
everyone who dared to hinder her was killed by her, and they were all killed by worms and snakes. Allegedly, she had an unusually sweet smell, and all of the poisonous creatures listened to her words. And then the scene changed, and even the emperor was trampled under her feet. The emperor was madly in love with her, wanting to be with her in life and death. But the favored concubine was not willing, so the emperor built two tombs, one piled up with countless gold, silver and jewelries another could be further away, looking at her from an elevated distance. Yi Mu saw this and felt this was only a romantic story, there was nothing useful. She ran up to another wall, pushing away the small gold and silver people that were in the way, before she continued observing. Turns out, the reason why the favored concubine was heartless to the emperor was because she had another person in her heart. So after she entered the palace, she took advantage of the emperor's passion toward her to start a rebellion. This was to impose a superfluous accusation on the emperor, making other people sagacious. And that emperor was indeed fatuous, daring to be reckless for her. Regrettably, the empire started to have frequent wars, with rebels everywhere. If this continued, it was only a matter of time before the emperor was overthrown. The favored concubine who served her purpose wanted to leave before the palace was attacked, because the rebels wouldn't let her off as she had committed many grave crimes. So, she looked for that dear person of hers. She had done everything he wanted, he should also give the happiness she wished for as promised. Who would have thought, the other party actually wanted to kill her. In the end, the emperor found out something was wrong and brought people to save her, saving her life by a hair's breadth. But unfortunately, she was still injured, and her life would end soon. On one side was an incapable ruler willing to pay everything for her, and on the other was her beloved that schemed in every possible way. Before the favored concubine died, she dug out her own eyes, saying that she had been blind all her life. And after her death, the incapable ruler stood his ground and buried her, in the end secretly burying her here. And then, there was nothing else. Yi Mu looked through the murals several times, and didn't find the message she wanted. What about the antidote? Where is the antidote? Chapter, 371 Antidote Over at Yi Mu's side, she couldn't find what she was looking for, and on the other side, Mo Linyuan's condition also started getting worse. Bloodletting could only slow down the speed of the poison infusing with the blood vessels. In addition, at the end of this method, a lot of blood would have flowed out and the person would be weaker. By then, even if there was an antidote, it would still be hopeless to turn around the situation. Seeing Mo Linyuan on the verge of death, each of the imperial physicians panicked, while Yi Xiaolang was calmer. With a pale complexion and while covering his wound, he said. Pour him the ginseng soup. An imperial physician responded, with his majesty's current condition, even if he's given the ginseng soup, it might still be useless, there might even be a counteraction. He was about to cry as he said this. It was clearly Yi Mu who was poisoned before, how did it suddenly become his majesty? If it was Yi Mu who died, they wouldn't be very worried, but if his majesty didn't wake up, he was Mo country's only pillar. Once he fell, the flourishing Mo country would definitely fall apart. If that happened, it would be a disaster for all the common people. Yi Xiaolang shut his eyes. I said, pour it. Seeing him unyielding, the imperial physicians had no other way, they could only pour the ginseng soup for Mo Linyuan to drink. But Mo Linyuan at this time no longer knew how to swallow, only less than a quarter of the ginseng soup was fed. Yi Xiaolang furrowed his brows as he felt agitated. He paced back and forth, then personally gave Mo Linyuan the decoction. Gulp it down. Aji, Xiao Jia is risking her life for you. If something happens to you, you'll be sorry for her. He roughly pried open Mo Linyuan's closed teeth, and indignantly said, Xiao Jia also said she'll marry you. Do you want her to be a widow? Maybe Yi Xiaolang's words had an effect, but Mo Linyuan finally swallowed it. After the ginseng soup was downed, everyone quietly waited for his reaction with rapt attention. Seeing Mo Linyuan not spitting blood, everyone released their breaths. His Majesty must have heard General Ye's words, right? Yi Xiaojie was risking her life for him now. Just these words alone made him hate to die, right? Yi Mu nearly turned the whole treasure place upside down. Aside from this treasure room, there was another place to hide treasure. But unfortunately, the mountains of gold and silver before her didn't have the object she needed. She, who was restless with anxiety, 
in the end sat next to the mountain of gold. There must be a place that was overlooked. How could there be no antidote? Thinking this, she ran up to the female corpse again, and directly moved her away. She was extremely frantic, but her eyes were also very fierce. Below the female corpse, she found a secret compartment. She was extremely surprised. Opening the secret compartment, she found a scroll inside, as well as a bottle of medicine. Yi Mu immediately fumbled for that medicine bottle, but the irritating thing was, the medicine bottle was empty. She was rather flustered, before she opened the parchment scroll. There was a message written on it. It was a message from the emperor to a confidant. The big picture was, the person who killed the favored concubine had been given an extremely hypertoxic poison by him. He had used all his strength to avenge her. And then, he himself couldn't live for long. On his deathbed, so that that poison wouldn't be curable, he asked people to destroy all the antidotes, including the antidote in the treasure place. And the reason why the letter would be here was because, at that time, the person who came to bury the favored concubine wasn't the emperor himself, but was the confidant of the favored concubine before her death. After the favored concubine was buried here, so that bad people wouldn't touch the favored concubine's corpse, the emperor put this kind of poison on her. This not only prevented her corpse from rotting, but also made everyone who wanted to touch her die without a corpse. Dying without a corpse is believed to affect the person's descendants. But because he was afraid it would be his descendant that was poisoned, before he was buried, he stored two antidotes in this porcelain bottle. But because the situation changed and it made the emperor want to destroy the antidotes in the porcelain bottle, he passed on a message to Ali, asking him to handle it. As soon as she thought this poison no longer had an antidote, Yi Mu's hands that were gripping the parchment paper trembled. This poison really had no antidote. According to the depiction on the murals, although the favored concubine was buried here, the emperor never personally came. He also couldn't come because of the situation at that time, and the one who buried the favored concubine was her most trusted person. And only after that person received the message, then he removed the antidotes in the medicine bottle. So he really destroyed it. If it was destroyed, Yi Mu felt she herself didn't have a chance anymore. If it wasn't destroyed, she couldn't find it in this whole treasure place. Where exactly was it, then? In the end, Yi Mu fixed her gaze on the favored concubine that was placed on one side by her. At this moment, her skin sluggishly covered the skeleton. It looked extremely frightful, but Yi Mu now didn't feel scared, only sadness. That time, you were wronged. Before you died, you dug out your eyes yourself to express your wrath. I understand you, you were unfortunate, but you were also so lucky, there was someone who acted so recklessly because of you. Yi Mu looked at her own hands that were turning green, the corners of her mouth overflowing with blood. She had touched the corpse of the favored concubine again before, and was also in a state of emotional turmoil. If there was no antidote, not to mention Mo Linyuan, she would also die. Just that, she didn't expect, they couldn't be together before death. She wiped off the blood on the sides of her lips, her eyes sorrowful. And I, the antidote I request now is for two people. He could die without hesitation because of me, just like the ruler of the last empire being reckless for you. Because of me, he cast aside the country, taking my place to die. So, that's why I'm here. Her complexion turned uglier, but she still persistently spoke. If if there really are spirits, if you're seeing all this, he's a person worthy to be saved. I'm not asking for two antidotes, I just need you to give me one, just one. I've disturbed your body, how about giving you my life? But he please let me save him. After Yi Mu was done speaking, she fixed her gaze on the favored concubine. She felt she had gone crazy herself, actually pleading to a dead person. But right now, she held the completely empty antidote bottle. Besides asking her, who else could she ask? After a long time, just as Yi Mu laughed at her own foolish behavior, she suddenly saw the corpse's eye move. She went frigid from head to toe, and held her breath. Rather than fleeing, she stared fixedly at the female corpse. The next second, a worm drilled out under her eyelid. So it wasn't that her eyelid had moved, but a worm was pushing out of her eyelid. Yi Mu immediately felt despondent, but right at this moment, she froze. The murals illustrated that the favored concubine dug out her own eyes. But right now, her eyelids didn't shrivel down, but instead were slightly bulging, 
she. The next second, Yi Mu stretched her hand out to open the favored concubine's eyes. In that instant, her heartbeat almost stopped, and she even forgot to breathe. Chapter 372 Snake Soft, ice-cold eyelids opened, and Yi Mu found beneath the favored concubine's eyelids, a white pearl was hidden on one side. She took out the thing that looked similar to a pearl. As her finger rubbed it, the white surface fell, revealing black-colored medicine inside. At that moment, Yi Mu nearly cried tears of joy. She held the medicine between her fingers, knelt down and gave the favored concubine three loud kowtows. Then, she ate the medicine. At this moment, she was rather nervous because she wasn't sure if this antidote of over 200 years still worked, but slowly, she felt her limbs regaining their strength. The poison was disappearing quickly. This antidote was real. Yi Mu didn't dare to stay. She held the antidote tightly in her palm, running outside. She ran at lightning speed, even in the deep pit, she didn't slow down her speed, directly stepping on the snakes. Because she was so thrilled, she was bitten by the five poisonous creatures, but she nearly didn't feel any pain. She only knew that she found the antidote. M.O. Linyuan could be saved. The corners of M.O. Linyuan's mouth endlessly spilled with blood. This was the sign of poison attacking the heart, and at this time, Yi Mu had no signs of coming out. Yi Xiaolang looked at M.O. Linyuan's face that kept floating with death chi every second. He heaved a sigh in his heart. Aji, do you really want to leave and abandon Xiao Jie? He was rather indignant as he said, you're really overbearing. When you seized Xiao Jie, drove me away, and didn't allow Xiao Jie to see me, I could see you're treating her very well and didn't argue with you. But look at yourself now, hanging between life and death, with Xiao Jie risking her life for you. If I knew it would be like this earlier, I would take Xiao Jie with me, her life maybe will be happier. Seeing M.O. Linyuan not refuting him, Yi Xiaolang became angrier. You clearly promised to marry her, but right now you're lying here. After you snatched away her heart, you want to leave her. Then you're really not a man. The imperial physicians on the side were about to cry. His majesty was about to die, what was the use of saying these? Yi Xiaolang also knew it was useless. Looking at his decreasing life qi, he knew it couldn't be suspended any longer. He said to the physicians at the side. If I remember correctly, you all know the acupuncture skill to briefly recover consciousness before dying. The physicians were dazed. One of them plopped down to their knees. General Yi, let's not trouble His Majesty anymore, okay? His Majesty is already very miserable, let's let him go quietly. The other physicians also couldn't bear to see. At this moment, there were only them in the tent, the people outside still didn't know what had happened. Once the news of M.O. Linyuan's death was heard by them, who knew how much panic it would bring. Yi Xiaolang asked, muttering, how long has Xiao Jie been down? One of them replied, about one Shurchen. Yi Xiaolang counted the distance. One Shurchen. If Yi Mu was fast enough, she should arrive any time soon now, provided that she successfully found the antidote. So Yi Xiaolang made a quick decision. Perform acupuncture on His Majesty now, ill bear all the consequences. These imperial physicians shared a helpless look. The oldest of them all clenched his teeth and firmly said. All right. Let this servant do it, to buy the last bit of time for Yi Xiaojie. With this said, he lined up the acupuncture bag in his hands, and then took out the needle and did the acupuncture, stimulating M.O. Linyuan's nerves. Very soon, M.O. Linyuan's breathing became more intense, but this was not enough. They wanted M.O. Linyuan to regain consciousness. This exhausted M.O. Linyuan's final strength, but right now, he was dying, they couldn't mind it much. After more than ten needles were in, M.O. Linyuan suddenly deeply inhaled. And underground, Yi Mu tripped. She got up and ran madly without any hesitation, but she didn't expect, at this moment, she met that enormous dark red snake. The python blocked her path, it didn't retreat from the fragrance on her. Instead, it fixed its gaze on her, looking as though it was starving. This time, Yi Mu had no more strength to fight with it. Even if she could fight past it, M.O. Linyuan couldn't wait. If she got entangled in a fight with this snake, M.O. Linyuan would surely die. At that moment, Yi Mu's heart was in despair. She looked at the python before her, 
but she didn't know how many years it had lived for it to grow so big, and looked at its eyes that laid bare its desire to devour its meal. In the end, she released a long breath. She walked toward the snake. That snake looked as if it didn't expect Yimu to not be afraid of it and also didn't hide. It weirdly looked at her, as if thinking where to sink down its mouth. It was very hungry, and although the person before her had the sweet smell it loathed, it could coerce itself to eat. Who would have known, Yimu actually walked up right before ITT. The snake raised its head high looking at her, ready to attack at any time, but saw Yimu extending her hand. I know you won't be full after eating one hand, but right now, I can only give you this to eat. There's someone that I must save. I must live. I can actually fight you right now, but I really don't have time anymore. Sorrow appeared in Yimu's face, but her hand lifted up before the snake's face. I'm only giving you one hand. After you've eaten, let me leave inside the cave, there are still dead bodies. You can eat them, okay? If other people were here, they would definitely think Yimu had gone insane. She was actually talking with a snake trading with a snake. Snakes were cold-blooded animals, how could it only eat one of Yimu's hands? The next second, the snake opened its mouth widely, and bit Yimu's hand in a mouthful. Its poisonous fangs instantly sunk into Yimu's arm. Just like Yimu guessed, even the snake was different in this cave not only did it have long, sharp teeth, but also densely packed teeth. As long as it was willing, it could bite off Yimu's arm and directly swallow it down. Yimu cried out in pain, but didn't dodge. Eat, just eat, there was still some poison that had not cleared in her body. After all, the green color on her hands had not completely disappeared. As long as this snake ate it, even if it didn't die, it wouldn't be able to chase after her. But at this particular moment, the snake looked at her with ice-cold snake eyes. It looked at her determined expression that wasn't afraid to die, looked at her almost indifferent face. Unexpectedly, the snake released Yi Mu's hand. Chapter 373 Saved Yi Mu skeptically looked at it, and then that snake's ice-cold expression looked at her fixedly. She withdrew her hand. Blood streamed down her arm, but her arm was still intact. Whether this snake really had the character of a human, or that after tasting her blood it knew that there was residual poison, at any rate, this snake didn't eat her. So, what was she waiting for? Yi Mu stared at it. Cautiously and carefully, she planned to bypass its body. At that moment, her breathing was still, afraid she would suddenly alarm this snake and it would launch an attack. But luckily, she stepped past its tail. It didn't move at all. Yimu first walked several steps, before running wildly with full strength, the hope in her heart getting bigger and bigger. Even the snake let her pass, so this meant Imo Linyuan wasn't meant to die. He would definitely live, definitely. At this moment, Emo Linyuan finally opened his eyes. His eyes floated with death chi. Even if he had sucked Yimu's internal energy and his strength right now was very powerful, he himself felt hopeless from being saved because of the excessive loss of blood, in addition to the poison attacking his heart. So, when he saw the excitement in the eyes of the people around, he only asked in a hoarse voice, Where's Xiao Muer? One of the imperial physicians rubbed his tears away. Yi Xiaojie went to find an antidote for you. What? Mo Linyuan was startled and immediately wanted to get up, but as soon as he moved, he immediately spat out a mouthful of blood. A strange kind of silver color appeared on his face, the trace of green in his eyelids growing thicker. Yi Xiaolang quickly restrained him. Don't move. He loudly said, Yi Mu will be alright. Seeing Mo Linyuan still agitated, he said, there are one Feng and the others protecting her below, so shall be alright. But. There might not be enough time for her to come back and see you one last time. Yi Xiaolang did not finish his words. Mo Linyuan then immediately understood his plight. He looked at the silver needles on him, and understood that he was treated with acupuncture to briefly regain consciousness. The time left for him was not long. He held down the violent pain in his chest, and hoarsely said. Ink, proposed decree. Knowing this maybe was a will, the imperial physicians hurriedly prepared. During the whole process, sadness seeped through the tent. Your Majesty, it's been grinded. Mo Linyuan's breathing at this moment was more and more rapid. He panted as he said, pass on this sovereign's decree, 
after this sovereign passes away, Yi Mu will succeed the throne, and Yi Shaolang will assist her, Prime Minister, as the acting emperor. This sovereign I, a form of address Mo Linyuan uses to refer to himself. I thought it'd be better to change to this sovereign so it's closer to the meaning. Gu Ming De Chen is someone whom the emperor trusts to govern the country before his death. He spat out blood once more after saying this, and the physicians deliberated his words, holding back the shock in their hearts as they wrote down Mo Linyuan's words. So after his majesty dies, an empress will emerge in Mo country? Can she convince the public? Will there be a round of carnage? Mo Linyuan lay on the bed, slowly closing his eyes. In the end, he hoarsely said to Yi Shaolang. This sovereign has been with her for a long time, you have to take good care of her. At this moment, his heart was flooded by intense regret. Before his death, he actually couldn't see Yi Mu one last time. Was this the will of heaven? But he was also glad Yi Mu didn't see him like this. He definitely looked unappealing. Yi Xiaolang's eyes were red. Don't worry, your majesty, Xiao Jia has always been my most important person, I will take good care of her. I don't want anyone. Suddenly, the tense curtains were thrown aside. Yi Mu's body was covered with blood as she rushed in. When Mo Linyuan heard her voice, he abruptly opened his eyes to look at her. At that moment, his heart tightened. He actually could see her one last time. Yi Mu's body was in a mess. After she walked in, she looked at Mo Linyuan as she said, I don't want anyone else, I only want you. Mo Linyuan forced a smile. Just when he wanted to bid farewell, Yi Mu suddenly lowered her head and kissed his lips. A pellet of medicine passed through. Mo Linyuan widened his eyes. Could it be, this was an antidote? After the kiss, Yi Mu pallidly looked at him, smiling. If you die, I'll accompany you. If you live, I'll live. I came here for you. After she finished, she couldn't resist the darkness before her anymore, and suddenly passed out. Before she went unconscious, she could hear the cries of the people next to her, but whose voices those were, she couldn't tell. Poisoned, internal energy sucked away, risks undertaken again, then ran wildly, her strength had long been exhausted. Being able to persist and run back all relied on her willpower. So she was fatigued, as though the moment she slept, she wouldn't wake up. After two days, when Yimu awoke, she suddenly shot up to a sitting position. The moment she saw Yi Xiaolang when she got up, she was immediately startled. Where's Mo Linyuan? Her voice was hoarse when she asked. Yi Xiaolang didn't expect Yi Mu to suddenly awaken with a start, making him jump with fright. But he instantly revealed a sad expression. You came back a little too late. Even if the antidote was taken, because he had excessive loss of blood, he was already. Yi Mu listened, and her whole body froze. She stared blankly at Yi Xiaolang, before finding her voice after a long time. So he died. Yi Xiaolang looked at Yi Mu's face that was too calm, and felt somewhat strange. He then continued to tease her, yeah, he couldn't survive. This time, before Yi Xiaolang finished speaking, he saw Yi Mu hugging the quilt. The tears tumbling down looked like broken pearls. He died. He died. Yi Xiaolang was immediately flustered. Just as he wanted to explain, someone hurried in. Mu Mu. Yi Mu froze, and then was pulled into Mo Linyuan's embrace. Yi Xiaolang was afraid of being beaten and hurriedly went out, while Mo Linyuan held Yi Mu tightly. Yi Mu looked at him, her tears still dropping, her expression somewhat incredulous. You didn't die. Mo Linyuan now really wanted to grab Yi Xiaolang and mercilessly beat him. He looked at Yi Mu's eyes that wouldn't stop flowing with tears. He released her, wiping them with his hands. You even gave up your life for me, how could I die? Mu Mu, don't be scared, I'm fine. Yi Mu's small hands were on his chest. Her face looked like a small rabbit, her eyes and nose red. She stared at him. You're really fine. You're truly okay. Seeing Yi Mu this scared, Mo Linyuan cursed at Yi Xiaolong a hundred times in his heart. He only went out for a while and came back to hear Yi Xiaolang saying he died, scaring Xiao Mu er to the point that she was this badly shaken. He had never seen Yi Mu cry so miserably. I'm fine, I'm absolutely fine. I can take off my clothes and let you check. 
Hearing Imo Linyuan say this, Yi Mu suddenly fell into his embrace, tightly hugging him. I thought you died. Yi Shaolang lied to you. No. Yi Mu choked with sobs. I dreamed, dreamed that you died, and then was startled awake. Mo Linyuan hugged her, gently patting her back. That's right, I died. Then Yu Yi Mu was instantly flustered, but was tightly embraced by Mo Linyuan. But since the King of Hell saw that you acted recklessly because of me, he didn't have the heart to let you live alone, so, he mercifully let me come back. Chapter, 374 Moving away the treasures his words weren't in the least funny. Yi Mu glared at him, but she was no longer as scared. The two figures quietly hugged like this for a long time. Xiao Muer, if I died, would you really leave with me? As Yi Mu calmed down, she shoved him. As if. They'll take the city boundary map home and forget everything here. Mo Linyuan pretended to be upset, but seeing Yi Mu's indignant expression, he felt bad and said, that's why I won't die. I still want to live a long life and have many children with you. Yi Mu looked at him irritated. Who's going to have children with you? Mo Linyuan fearfully said, What to do, if you don't, my Mo family line will really end. He cajoled and amused her. It was only a good while later that he made Yi Mu completely calm down. Yi Mu checked for a while, and found that although Mo Linyuan's wounds had not healed, he was no longer in danger. The big rock in her heart fell in an instant. She said, let's not come to such a dangerous place again. Mo Linyuan nodded. And, won't come even if there are mountains of gold and silver. He just wanted to protect her. This thinking was both very simple and difficult. The two talked for a long time, then Yimu asked, how long have I slept? How is the situation outside? Mo Linyuan blew the porridge that had been prepared on the table beside him. He fed her as he said, the situation is quite complicated, many worms came out from below. All of us have retreated three li away. Yi Mu pondered. She asked, what about the bottle I brought out last time? The one with the fragrance. Mo Linyuan quickly gave the bottle to her, then said, the thing inside this bottle is extracted fragrant, but when I gave the imperial physicians to check, they couldn't distinguish it. But what's certain is, it's not from a plant. Yi Mu held the bottle, a crazy idea flashing through her mind. I might have a way. She moved closer and spoke next to Mo Linyuan's ears. Mo Linyuan nodded, and quickly called someone to handle it. In the afternoon, outside the tent, the soldiers were all downcast because those worms were like a nightmare. They saw many white nematodes suddenly bursting out of one of their friends with their own eyes. It turned out, those worms could lay eggs in a person's body. If these things escaped outside, the consequences would be unimaginable. And under this situation, some people had the campfire ready. Then, they saw Yi Mu, who was finally out after being unconscious for a few days. A few days ago, Yi Mu went down by herself, found the antidote and saved his majesty. Everyone had heard those worms were very fearful. Having come out alive, they could only say she was very amazing. After she came out, everyone unconsciously came surrounding her. At this moment, the campsite had over 2,000 people. The main forces would roughly arrive tomorrow. Yi Mu looked at everyone who was mostly wounded. Remorse appeared in her eyes. If they had been more prepared, maybe some wouldn't have died. Yi Xiaojia, it's broad daylight. What are you doing lighting the campfire? Someone couldn't help asking. And with the company of Mo Linyuan, Yi Mu walked up beside the campfire, taking the bottle out. I'm only testing something out. Wait for a while. If something wrong happens, everyone go far away, in case it's dangerous. Everyone didn't understand, but nodded. Then, they saw Yi Mu throwing the bottle in her hand into the fire. That porcelain bottle blew up. Then, the black fragrant inside was exposed in the fire. A faint smell arose. The smell was indiscernible, but later became denser, making those who smelled dizzy. And at this time, a few people gave out horrible shrieks. They saw the frightful white nematodes drilling out of their own bodies. Those worms crawled to the fire wave after wave, making them frightened. If these worms didn't come out and instead multiplied in their bodies, they were doomed. After those worms crawl into the fire, they immediately burn. 
seeing there was an effect, Yi Mu felt extremely glad. Not a long time after, everyone saw a horrid scene. The nematodes that parasitized or swallowed up some people, as well as the grotesque worms that came out of the forest, they advanced wave upon wave, as if they were beckoned. And the worms that were killed by the heat increased, and the fire smelled sweeter. It turned out that the fragrant was extracted from these nematodes. In the end, not only the nematodes, but those rats, centipedes and so on all came over. Yi Mu and the others couldn't leave because the hotter this fire was, the bigger it became. In the end, it reached the trees, and completely became a large fire. Fortunately, Yi Mu had people dig a firebreak in time. Otherwise, they would have set fire to the mountain. Seeing those creatures burning to death and the frightful nematodes even more burned, everyone burst into cheers. The looks given to Yi Mu was like looking at the Savior. And Yi Mu's eyes became brighter. The big fire burned for the whole night, the air was filled with the smell of meat. The next day, after the fire died out, Yi Mu sat up and only said one sentence. Let's move the mountains of gold. It was not at all an exaggeration saying that. The main forces had come, they had enough convoy. Yi Mu first asked people to dig a grave, before carefully burying the favored concubine. She remembered the favored concubine's kindness. After all, those two antidotes were found from her eyes. Then, everyone started moving away the treasures. After Yi Mu burned that porcelain bottle, the poisonous creatures underground had all disappeared. There were still some undeveloped ones in the biggest cave, but it wasn't dangerous. The treasures were loaded into chests and were brought away one by one. The army escorted them the whole journey. Even if the people from the other countries knew, they didn't dare to rashly come and fight over them. After all the treasures were ransacked, looking at the void cave, Yi Mu said in excitement. Great, our MO country's many constructions can be put on the agenda. With this much money, how could it all be spent? Yi Mu originally wasn't avaricious, but now became money obsessed. After MO Linyuan waited for everyone to leave, he hugged Yi Mu, smiling. There are many things to spend money on, for example, giving you a grand wedding. Yi Mu immediately became somewhat embarrassed. Seeing no one in the empty cave, she pecked Mo Linyuan. The wedding doesn't have to be too extravagant, we should leave some for our children. Her words made Mo Linyuan happy and laugh. Don't worry. I can still afford supporting you and our children. Both of them freely imagined the future in the treasure cave that look of sticking each other like glue, and the picture of the favored concubine digging out her own eyes on the wall, looked very contrasting. Perhaps feeling is feeling, but because the person that was met was different, the ending would also be different. Chapter, 375 Endless Sweet Nothings Mo Linyuan returned to his country in high profile. Yen Country knew they could no longer proceed with their conspiracy and quickly became dormant. Zhao Country also didn't dare to provoke Mo Linyuan and quickly retreated, treating as if this had never happened. It wasn't that there was no covetousness for these treasures someone pointed out, since these treasures were in the borders of the three countries, they should be shared to the three countries. The people of Zhao country uttered these words the most. When Mo Linyuan saw his own confidant, the news coming from Zhao country, he was indifferent. He didn't respond to this matter it was impossible to spit out what he had eaten. Moreover, what was important wasn't these annoying matters, but his upcoming wedding. He had waited too long for this day. After Yi Mu came back, she rested for several days. Then, someone came to give her a tailor-made red embroidered dress with a phoenix coronet. She totally didn't expect she would one day wear this kind of attire herself. The people that come and go to deliver clothes, embroideries, jewelry and head ornaments lined up in a long queue, coming in and out of the imperial palace in an endless stream. Yi Mu must select her favorites among them, and the remaining would be handed over to the craftmasters. Yet, she was still bewildered. So many jewelry and ornaments, shall need to use so many of these on the wedding day. Because weddings were particular about auspicious dates, despite feeling urgent, Mo Linyuan also hoped to have a highly auspicious day. To drive away the bad luck of this period, the auspicious day was set to three months later. Compared to the other empress's weddings, this was definitely very rushed, but to Mo Linyuan, it felt really long. And Yi Mu's coming of age was just before the wedding. This was also good, he could help with her birthday first. Girls reaching the age of 15, of marriageable age. 
At night, Mo Linyuan, who had worked the whole day, hugged Ji Mu to sleep. Because they had promised each other, they hugged like this, but it was honestly a torture. Yi Mu was scalded by his blazing body that she felt uncomfortable, she honestly couldn't resist any more and sullenly said, if you can't bear it, let's just start. She said this unflinchingly. Anyway, she would marry him in the end, she didn't mind making love before marriage. Mo Linyuan heard her determined words and chuckled. Xiao Muer, he'll really do it if you insist. With this said, in the darkness of the room, he flipped his body over and held Yi Mu down. The hot breath and body temperature burned even more. Yi Mu subconsciously held her breath, and thought with a stammer, go ahead. Although her body was only fifteen years old, many women of the ancient seemed to marry at this age. Since others could, it was no problem for her, too. Mo Linyuan looked at her brave look, and was amused for a moment. Then, he flipped back. Yi Mu was baffled, then heard Mo Linyuan say. Don't move. The physician said it's not good for a woman's body to make love too early. I'll do my best to wait until our wedding. There's still three more months, let me take good care of you and nourish you. Yi Mu blushed after hearing his words. Why did it feel like the feeding before the killing? You really want? She shifted. If not, I'll sleep. Mo Linyuan couldn't take it, how could he let her go? In the dark, his eyes faintly shone. He said in a low voice, even though I let you go, you can't sleep. What else can I do? Yi Mu lazily asked. Mo Linyuan said, you have to say loving words to me, like how you did in the treasure place. Yi Mu was immediately embarrassed. That time, she thought Mo Linyuan would die, so she spilled out everything that was in her heart. They were safe now, how could she say them? Mo Linyuan saw her play dead, and hoofed with discontent. If you don't, I won't be able to sleep tonight, and you will not think about sleeping either. Both of them went through life and death this time, he really didn't want to sleep just like that, but they couldn't do anything too intimate, so he could only settle for the next best thing. Yi Mu touched her own nose. But I can't say loving words, I can't say it with the setting right now. Mo Linyuan was persistent. You have to. Yi Mu racked her brain. In the end, she thought of something and said. Okay then, I'll say. She paused, deciding to look through the loving words in her memory from her past life. She lightly sighed. Actually, liking you is a troublesome thing. Mo Linyuan instantly stared at her. Why? Yi Mu smiled as she moved closer, kissing his lips. But, I like trouble. In the dark, Mo Linyuan was dazed, and then kissed her back. Continue. Still want. Yi Mu quickly racked her brain, and added, Em, mm, you're indeed perfect, but you have one weakness. Mo Linyuan raised his brows. What is it? Yi Mu pecked his forehead. Me. The heat in the air seemed to rise a degree. Mo Linyuan clearly couldn't bear it, but he felt extremely content in his heart. Go on. He wanted to look into Xiao Muer's mind, to see how many more sweet words she had. Yi Mu suddenly found it easier to say the words. I must have eaten too much salt. Why? Yi Mu hugged him, contentedly rubbing against him. Because the moment I'm unoccupied, I'll think of you. Mo Linyuan felt he couldn't listen anymore, as if his heart was incessantly scratched by a small brush. His body became restless, and so was his heart. However, he thought of something and his mood suddenly changed. Don't tell me, you can speak these loving words because in your world, you were betrothed to someone. Yi Mu puffed a laugh. This person's imagination was too great. Moreover, in her world, how could there be a betrothal and such things, it was easy to get together and part without hard feelings. But she still genuinely said, no, I've only liked you, and only you from the start to the end. In that world, I actually don't have much freedom, I don't even have time to think about other things besides working, so I'm just with you, spoiled by you like this. Mo Linyuan listened, and was extremely satisfied. Xiao Muer only had him, very good. He'll also only have you, and he'll spoil you even more in the future. Yi Mu smiled heartily. Then you might be at a loss. You're the emperor and the country is in your hands. And there's me, who's just a soldier who's a little better than ordinary soldiers. 
you liking me is actually a big loss. Mo Linyuan genuinely said, whom I like is you, it has nothing to do with your status or ability. You might feel ordinary, but in my eyes, you're very special, I'm satisfied to have you in this life. Yi Mu immediately covered her teeth. Aya, how sour. Yi Mu use his son here. This can mean sour, or sorek hence Mo Linyuan's response in the next paragraph, but what Yi Mu means here, sour teeth at least, it's what I'm translating it to, is that Mo Linyuan is being so sappy nauseating. Mo Linyuan thought her teeth really ached at first, but glared at her after he reacted. In telling the truth. Chapter, 376. Married. Yi Mu hurriedly reassured him, I know, I know. But there are times when the truth is moving and only the truth makes my teeth sour. Xiao Mo Mo, you know how to flirt more than I do, I should learn from you. Mo Lin Yuan lightly smiled. All right, they'll give you a lifetime of learning, and then let you use them on me. The two people were simply like honey mixed with oil. Very soon, three months passed. Honey mixed with oil idiom deeply attached to each other. A lot of things happened in these three months. A small-scale war broke out between Yan country and Zhao country, and news came out that the six countries seemed to want to ally with each other to become enemies with Mo country. However, there was no evidence to prove this. Mo Linyuan sent someone to investigate, but at the same time, he felt confident. Even if the six countries really had formed an alliance, he was not afraid. Moreover, the six countries forming an alliance was impossible since Yu country had friendly ties with Mo country. As for Zhao country, he assessed it may be possible for Zhao Mingyu to help him. So while dealing with the matters of Zhao country and Yu country, Mo Linyuan gave Yi Mu a lively coming-of-age ceremony, congratulating her for becoming an adult. After the ceremony, there was the highly anticipated wedding but prior to this, Mo Linyuan received urgent messages from Zhao country and Yu country. Attention focused by millions of people. It was the replies from two countries, but both brought bad news, there was someone who wanted to unite the six countries to go against Mo country. Yu country had directly refused. Yi Mu was from Yu country and was virtuous to the country. As long as Qi Yan still reigned, Yu country would still be safe. Zhao country was weaker. After Zhao Mingyu went back, the plight was much more difficult than before, and Zhao Mingyu said, her father emperor was extremely interested in this matter, and also said, when Zhao country and Yan country fought before, it was all spectated by Mo country. When Mo Linyuan saw, his expression was rather cold. He just obtained the treasures and became the most prosperous country among the seven countries. His territory was also the most vast, and his rights were also the most centralized. He didn't expand, yet these people wanted to ally and hunt him down. But he didn't know from whom this all came from, and which country initiated this suggestion. Mo Linyuan pondered, and sent his own people in Zhao country to continue helping Zhao Mingyu. If the need arose, he could also dispatch troops to help her seize the throne. He just needed to see whether Zhao Mingyu dared to or not. And at the moment, these matters could be put aside first. He would think about it after the wedding. Yimu didn't know the situation had become so tense because of the treasure's case, moreover gradually deviating from the original track. She was constrained in the room, studying the necessary procedures on that day. These procedures were for the sake of auspiciousness, and it was her first time to get married, so Yimu studied very earnestly. Finally, on a day when the sun rode high in the sky, Yimu got married. Long troops of the bride's escorts came out from Mo country's imperial palace. After circling around the city, they needed to go back to the imperial palace. The common people in the whole city made a commotion that day because they had never seen such a high standard wedding before. There were many examples that violated the rules, but no one dared to say any fault. The little empress wanted the stars in the sky, his majesty also wanted to pluck them off for her, what was a mere violation on an object. Yi Mu was extremely excited. During this time, she secretly looked out through the curtains. Everyone was still in a trance, she married just like that. She was only fifteen and wanted to become someone's wife right away. This thought was truly inconceivable. As she thought of the time when she left, Mo Linyuan pulling her hand, the words he spoke next to her ears made her cheeks flush. She didn't dare to think about it again. At this moment, she fleetingly saw an unusual figure. 
Yi Mu couldn't grasp what she felt, and quickly drew the curtains to look outside, only to hear the common people's sudden cheers. Seeing Yi Mu lifting the curtains, the palace servants also didn't dare to stop her. But the person Yi Mu just saw had already disappeared. The reason why she was especially attentive was not because that person's figure was especially outstanding, but because the person's half smile made her sense a dangerous feeling. But very soon, Yi Mu threw out that dangerous feeling. Was she being overly suspicious? It was but only one man. It then went smoothly all the way. Yi Mu didn't make any mistake as she arrived at the entrance of the palace, and Mo Lin Yuan was already waiting there. He wore a red dress. That bright red accentuated his bright, handsome and cheerful face, just like a deity. Yi Mu's heart stirred. She didn't expect she would actually get married, and especially married to a person of the ancients. That person had the most handsome face, was tall and straight, and was chivalrous. He looked gentle, yet he carried a very powerful aura. It was obviously the majestic bearing of being in a high rank for a long time, every move seized a person's heartstring. Such an excellent man who was loved by a myriad of people was her future husband. Suddenly, Yi Mu doubted herself, but also felt an incomparable joy. He could be a wise and mighty emperor, but she definitely couldn't be a good empress. His imperial harem only consisted of herself, there was nothing wrong with her taking care of herself. The moment the sedan chair stopped, Mo Lin Yuan was already beside her, pushing aside the curtains. Under the sunlight, Yi Mu only saw his eyes that faintly shone, as well as his smile that couldn't be ignored. He extended a hand toward her. The people around them immediately knelt down. The imperial guards that couldn't be seen at the back lowered their heads. Behind the lofty and broad palace walls and doors, Yi Mu passed her hand to Mo Lin Yuan. From today onward, she would be the empress. Mo Lin Yuan lightly smiled, leading her through the long corridor with his internal energy, guiding her step by step to the terrace, accepting the deep respect for more people. The people kneeling down around them, from the imperial guards to the palace maids, gradually became ministers. And on the terrace, the master of ceremonies eunuch had long been ready. Welcome, your majesty welcome, empress. The long voice passed through the numerous heavy palace doors one by one, passing through to the outside. And the ministers said in unison, Welcome, your majesty. Welcome, empress. Those uniform voices were earth-shattering, causing people to be overwhelmed. Maybe people sought this loftiness because everyone would be trampled under your feet. Yi Mu was supported by Mo Lin Yuan, step by step walking toward the high platform. Mo Lin Yuan's internal energy flowed heavily at this moment, he was afraid Yi Mu didn't have enough strength, and kept transferring internal energy to her. But Yi Mu also wasn't a woman who couldn't trust a chicken after losing her internal energy. She wore a smile, and finished walking with him. In the end, the two stood on the high platform. The moment they turned around, the hundreds of officials and guards below uniformly kowtowed, and in a loud voice sang. We wish the Emperor and Empress a lifetime of peace, eternal unity, endless fortune and blessings for the nation. And after they finished knocking their heads on the ground, Prime Minister Wan on the side lifted and passed over the imperial seal. Mo Lin Yuan immediately held that imperial seal, handing it over to Yi Mu's hand. Yi Mu's palm sank. She raised her head to look, and saw Mo Lin Yuan's brilliant smile. It was as if he smiled this happily for the first time, his face lit up with such delight. From now on, you are my only wife, and I will love you forever. Chapter 377 Farce of the Newlywed Because Mo Lin Yuan proclaimed amnesty, Mo country brimmed with jubilation. DSH Tin 11 in ancient China, after the emperor ascends the throne, announces the empress, the prince, etc. The emperor may grant amnesty to criminals. One lets go of the past, does not look back to the past, giving a new chance to start over. After all the red tape was over without mistake, on the same evening, it was finally only Yi Mu and Mo Lin Yuan alone. Under the blazing candles, the original Golden Emperor's bed had changed into the wedding sheets, becoming somewhat unfamiliar. Yi Mu nervously sat there, waiting for the next thing. How to describe this feeling? She originally felt she was confident, but when the time really had arrived, it was hard to feel at ease, feeling as if she was a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. When Mo Lin Yuan came in, he saw Yi Mu sitting upright and still. 
He faintly smiled, his delicate phoenix eyes narrowing, carrying a naughty implication. Xiao Moore, you're nervous. He said, lifting her head covering. Yi Mu immediately raised her head to look at him, those big and innocent eyes looking moist at this moment, making Emo Lin Yan couldn't resist giving a light kiss on her eyes. You're really beautiful today. Emo Lin Yuan's gentle words made Yi Mu shiver from head to toe. Her mouth slightly open, she didn't know what to say. Then, the phoenix coronet on her head was removed. With that weight reduced, she felt relieved, subconsciously saying thank you. Mo Linyuan only said, if you want to thank me, just saying it is not enough. Then what should be done? Yi Mu just raised her head when Mo Linyuan kissed her lips. The next second, she was pushed down. That passionate kiss made Yi Mu's body burn. It was only after a while that she pushed away Mo Linyuan, and stammered. I haven't removed my makeup. Mo Linyuan loosened his collar. Yeah. He was towering above her now, looking like an evil demon. But I can't wait anymore. He didn't wait for Yi Mu's response, bending over once again. The kiss this time was deeper and wilder, making Yi Mu unable to breathe. Her clothes were stripped off one by one. Mo Linyuan wanted to be gentle at first, but when the moment approached, he just wanted to be unrestrained. At last, Yi Mu was stripped bare. The two were very intimate again, but whether it was because it was too intense or not, Yi Mu felt something warm flowing below. She lowered her head to look, and her entire person froze. M.I. menstruation came. This voice definitely spoiled the fun. M.O. Lin Yuan only felt like a tub of water directly poured straight down his head. What did you say? Yi Mu blushed, pulling over the quilt on the side to cover. She said with much embarrassment, my menstruation came. That moment, M.O. Lin Yuan was so irascible he wanted to kill someone. He calmed down for a while before taking a deep breath. Seeing the sheets stained with specks of blood from who knows when, his temples throbbed endlessly. He clearly had calculated the time well, but he didn't know this thing would happen in advance. But it couldn't be helped now. He only calmed down after a good while, sighing. All right then, he'll let you off for a few days. Was what Mo Lin Yuan said ferociously, gnashing his teeth. Yi Mu became more guilty. It really wasn't intentional, she originally had been prepared. Then, Mo Lin Yuan called someone to change the sheets, and Yi Mu wore her clothes, using the handmade sanitary pad. When the maids came in, they were a little puzzled. No way, His Majesty is at the age of having the energy of a dragon and vigor of a tiger, moreover excelling in martial arts. His strength is outstanding, but he can't be inside for a long time. They couldn't believe it. Meaning high energy and vigor. But the bare bloodstains on the sheets proved the fact. The maids quietly shared a glance, thinking they were discreet. But Mo Lin Yuan had caught them, but he also couldn't explain. He could only sulk. It was Yi Mu who laughed up at her sleeve, then said. Ask someone to boil a bowl of brown sugar water my menstruation came early. The few little maids then just realized what had happened. So that's what happened. They didn't dare look at Mo Lin Yuan's expression, hurriedly carrying the sheets out. Not long after, there were people who came in to change the sheets, as well as delivering the brown sugar water. The brown sugar water was definitely more than just a simple brown sugar water. Many good things were added inside, all suiting her taste right now. Although Mo Lin Yuan was just upset, he moved closer to her now. He took the bowl, and deeply said, I'll feed you. Yi Mu bursted into a laugh. It's only menstruation, I'm not injured. It can come by itself. Mo Lin Yuan said, every time it comes, you'll have cramps after a while. Don't act tough, behave a little. I'll feed you. We're already husband and wife now. There's no problem being more intimate. Yi Mu couldn't help it then and let him feed her. Under the warm candles, the newlywed sat on the bedside. The husband looked gentle, feeding his own wife the sweet water. That sweet water seemed to have magic, able to let the sweetness reach inside the heart. Yi Mu actually knew, in this world, the majority of men belittle women, but she could meet one who was this attentive, who was thoughtful. How lucky was she? Feeding and feeding, Mo Lin Yuan suddenly smiled. What are you smiling at? Mo Lin Yuan said, Suddenly thought of your being pregnant. 
By then, I will also look after you like this. Yimu tilted her head and said while smiling, you're not only my husband, but also the sovereign of a country. Is it really okay to waste your time on this kind of trivial thing? Mo Linyuan said without the least hesitation, how are your matters trivial? After he fed her, he wiped Yimu's mouth, and said word by word, I'm not only the sovereign of a country, but also your husband. If I can't balance them out, I'm useless. Yi Mu chuckled. How are you useless? It's you who is the most useful. You are now the most powerful master in the world. You haven't even told me, when did you learn quiescent Shengong? How come I didn't know? Mo Linyuan was rather proud of himself. You have so many things you don't know. That's right, I'm this powerful, even if you want to run away in the future, you can't. But Mo Linyuan was also quite worried. Yi Mu, who had lost her internal energy, was in fact like a fragile porcelain, so he added. It's best for you not to ever leave my side. Since I snatched away your internal energy, I must protect you. Yi Mu moved closer to hug his waist, and earnestly said. All right then, for the rest of my life, he'll be in your protection. Mo Linyuan nodded, then he helped Yi Mu remove her makeup, freshen up, and lastly hugged each other as they slept. Just like those previous days and nights, they would always remain the closest to each other. The next day, something big happened. Yan country and Zhao country were fighting, but someone found out, the battle line kept stretching out and out. In the end, it was approaching Mo country. After Mo Linyuan read the account's book, he was rather annoyed as he narrowed his eyes. They pretend to fight, but in fact, they have ulterior motives. Do they think only the power of two countries can deal with this sovereign's country? Chapter, 378 War Arises Each minister gave their own opinions. Someone said to send people to inquire about the situation first, so as not to create a misunderstanding. But there was a radical person who said to dispatch the troops directly to hold the lines. Let them see. Of course, the state affairs sought stability, so the former was certainly more reliable. And at this moment, an extremely urgent letter was sent breaking the deadlock. Report, you country's dispatch. Hand it in. That travel-worn person passed on the letter. There was only one sentence on it, Wei country marched through Zhao country, intending to attack Imo. If it was before, everyone could still feel safe, thinking that Zhao and Yan's war wouldn't come through. But right now, they could already smell the conspiracy. Zhao, Yu, and Yan all had moved. Even if Yu country was neutral, the other two were too far apart, but who knew they didn't have clandestine support? This situation was extremely disadvantageous to Mo country. This was because Mo country seized all the treasure. The ministers buzzed about with discussion. Mo Linyuan thought this matter couldn't be discussed in the courtroom anymore he asked some people to go to the imperial study, and then announced the dismissal of the imperial court session. After Mo Linyuan left, this matter made a lot of people uneasy. Could this lead to war? Mo country was not afraid of anyone, but a group assault was rather strenuous. This matter very quickly reached Yimu. Yimu was feeling strange that Mo Linyuan was in the morning court for so long when she heard this major news. Siege? Yi Mu asked a young maid at one side. That person nodded. Yes, everyone has been talking about this. Said the other six countries want to lay siege on Mo country. They secretly have a pact furthermore, there's a middleman. Yi Mu thought of the underdeveloped communications of this era. If there really were an agreed siege, that agreement must have been made several months ago, but Mo country obtained the treasure which sped up the process of this argument. For some reason, she suddenly thought of the wedding day, the man with a half-smile she saw when she looked out the palanquin. What do we do now? Everyone is saying if they should give out the treasure, they all think it's because of the treasure. Yi Mu shook her head. The treasure is merely a triggering factor. This matter has definitely been premeditated since long before. She felt uneasy. According to the history book, it should be Mo Linyuan who wiped out the other countries alone, and not other countries attacking Mo country. This can't do. His Majesty is currently in the Imperial study, right? The palace maid nodded, and then Yimu was gone. Your Majesty, this official thinks this matter arose because of the treasure. What if we divide the treasure to avoid the calamity? Someone couldn't help but ask. 
Another person then echoed, yeah, it's such a big treasure, it's not surprising people get jealous. We can divide it only with you country and Zhao country. After all, the treasure is in the borders of these three countries. We naturally don't have to share it with others, maybe ITLL aroused their internal conflict. However, Prime Minister Wen had a dissenting opinion. If the treasure is given out, no matter how much it's given out, are you certain the other party won't suspect it too little after receiving it? A person's greed is endless. When the time comes, they will only think MO country has swallowed the bigger end, and hate MO country more. Someone stepped forward and said, Prime Minister is right. This official thinks we can win over you country. By then it will be two against three, so we might have odds of success. What if the Farley country and Yuan country also secretly support them? Then we'll be two against five. Although you country is an ally, they are unlikely to know the danger and implicate themselves. Everyone immediately fell silent. If it really was an attack of the five countries besides you country this time, then even if Mo country's power was strong, it would still be very difficult. It's all good if we can pull in another helping hand. Someone suddenly spoke, but no one responded to him. Not to mention pulling in a country, as long as those two far countries were neutral like you country, Mo country would not be very worried. Only Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes, as if he had thought of a way. And at this time, Zhao country's letter arrived. Mo Linyuan turned frigid. This was a letter from Zhao country's monarch. It was delivered by Zhao country's spy in Mo country and was directly handed over here. That person from Zhao country who was hiding in Mo country had been captured, but nothing was said. It seemed to be a death soldier. Death soldier a warrior, soldier or the like who sacrifices themselves for a purpose. Mo Linyuan opened the letter. After seeing the contents on it, a murderous look gradually appeared in his eyes. How outrageous! After Mo Linyuan read it, he threw the letter on the ground. When Prime Minister Wen saw this, he stepped forward to read the letter. It turned out, on the letter, Zhao Country said that as long as Mo Country was willing to surrender all the treasure, divide it equally with the other six countries, this war could be avoided. Otherwise, the Allied forces would soon barge in Mo Country. Even if Mo Country's strength was tyrannical, it was absolutely no match to several countries combined. Surrendering all the treasure this was simply ridiculous. Forget about whether the other party would keep their promise or not after handing it over first. What if the other party was not genuine and said Mo Country still had private stash and still wanted to attack Mo Country? Then Mo Country would be more vulnerable. And the possibility of the other party not keeping their promise was very big. After all, if Mo Country really surrendered the treasure and suffered such a big loss, even if they quitted, Mo Country wouldn't stand still. Mo Country's power itself was more powerful than any other country. This time, they definitely were determined to bring Mo Country down. This letter merely was to confuse M.O. country's decision. After everyone saw it they also felt furious. This treasure can't be handed over. The other party definitely won't reconcile. There was also someone who felt safe. They came all the way only for wealth. Maybe we really can throw away wealth to avoid calamity. Prime Minister swept a glance at those people, and said to M.O. Linyuan, this official thinks someone is behind this matter. Otherwise, the several countries are like loose sand and impossible to unite. If we can find this person, behead him, and send lobbyists to persuade the other countries this coalition may seem firm, but it may crumble in an instant. Mo Linyuan said, this sovereign thinks Prime Minister is right. He narrowed his eyes. There must be a middleman. Send all the secret force to find this person. Since this person wants a better arrangement, he's definitely in Mo country right now, in this sovereign city. The moment they heard there was a fearful enemy that might be hiding in the capital, all the ministers felt uneasy, all of them felt overwhelming pressure. The Prime Minister said, Your Majesty, please be at ease, this official will personally take charge of this matter and will put all efforts in catching that person as soon as possible. There was still no result after discussing this matter until the end, and Yi Mu came right at this moment. Why have you come? Mo Linyuan waved his hand, letting everyone go first. Although he didn't keep Yimou in the dark, he didn't want her to worry. Yimou frowned. Such a serious problem, I naturally had to come. What you were discussing, I heard it all. Can I help with anything? 
Mo Linyuan said, you just have to stay safe, that will be most helpful to me. Because he felt, if they wanted to threaten him, Yi Mu would be the best choice. Chapter, 379 Women Working Inside Yi Mu was stymied. Don't tell me if you go to war, you don't plan to bring me. She was irritated. I'm still good at fighting. The next second, she was pulled into Mo Linyuan's embrace. Because Mo Linyuan's chin rested on her forehead, she couldn't see the expression in Mo Linyuan's eyes, very solemn. If we really have to go to war, I also need someone who can help me guard the back, so you must stay. Yi Mu immediately was not convinced, but because the matter had not escalated to the extent of going to war, she endured her unease, nodding. However, the situation was getting worse day by day because Yu country refused to lend their route, saying that they didn't want to get involved in their war, and Mo Linyuan also refused to hand over the treasure. So, very soon, news came, Zhao country and Yan country officially joined forces, and then went in the direction of Mo country to launch an attack. Lend the route not allowing to pass any part of their territory. This war was no small matter. Mo Linyuan must personally oversee it to stabilize the army. He didn't expect he had to leave just a few days after the wedding. Mo Linyuan really hated to leave Yi Mu, but he also had his own responsibility. Yi Mu had wanted to follow, but Mo Linyuan hugged her, and said in a deep voice. You can't go. If you go, you'll be my greatest weakness. Yi Mu wanted to say she was useful, but Mo Linyuan didn't give her the chance to. Just stay in the palace. Moreover, I suspect that person who schemed this is in the capital. You have to be extremely careful. The Prime Minister will protect you, and I'll come home as quickly as possible. Yi Mu, unwilling, asked, the moment you go to war, it will take at least a few months, a few years at most. You'll make me wait for you alone in the palace. Mo Linyuan said, it won't be that long. Zhao country and Yan country have a feud, their coalition is actually a joke. I've sent lobbyists to both sides, and those people who secretly plant the strategy will play effective roles, so I guarantee it'll come back at most in four months. Only when Yi Mu saw that Mo Linyuan had his mind made up and victory was in his hands did she calm down. Moreover, although Mo Linyuan didn't want her to help, would she really not help? So she said in a sullen voice, if you leave and there's a revolt, what do we do? Mo Linyuan felt it was impossible. Besides the prime minister, who else had the power to? But considering his wife's safety, Mo Linyuan took out a black tally, placing it in Yi Mu's hand. Take this. I go to war. The most important is the frontier soldiers. This tally can command the capital, as well as the military strength of every county in Mo country. If someone really dares to have any thought, go to the barracks. It'll leave 30,000 troops in the capital to protect you. Yi Mu tightly clutched the tally in her hand, nodding. Because the war called for emergency, Mo Linyuan quickly left with the troops. The day he left, Yi Mu stood at the rampart, watching for a long time. She thought in her heart, Zhao country and Yan country's combined forces may not be comparable to that of Mo country. Since they dared to do such a thing, either another country had their backs or this was also one of the plans of the other party. Maybe the other party was waiting until the tiger was lured away from the mountain, so Mo Linyuan left 30,000 troops with her for fear something would happen to her. Tiger lured away from the mountain enemy lured away from their territory. Thinking this, she grasped the tally tightly. The childish-looking face held a touch of unswerving determination that was out of place. If that person who schemed all this was still in Mo country, maybe he would appear. When that time comes, let her accompany and play with him. When Mo Linyuan left, he had indeed thought of the other party creating a diversion, so Zi Su and the others all stayed, just in case. Mo country's territory was very apparent. His east side was the sea, and the rest of the territory bordered Zhao country and Yu country. Now, Zhao country dispatched troops to suppress the borders, so if the other party had another plan, they could only pass through Yu country. So Mo Linyuan also secretly guarded against Yu country. Although Yu country's letter before said, Wei country wanted to borrow their route but was refused by them, there were no true friends there was only sheer benefit. Yu country's monarch Qi Yan could refuse for Yi Mu once, but could he refuse every time? Under this atmosphere, everyone in Mo country felt in danger. Yi Mu behaved herself in the palace. 
she didn't go out and didn't give other people any chance. The Prime Minister concentrated on taking care of everything outside, he didn't trouble her in the least bit. But a month after Mo Linyuan left, a very terrifying event occurred. And that was, Wei Country marched through Yu Country, coming to attack from another direction. Yi Mu thought back to her childhood times. Qi Yan had helped her like that, she didn't expect this time to really come. Yu Country yielded to power. After all, the situation right now was very obvious. The other five countries might have joined forces. If Yu Country persisted in not participating, then when the time comes, when Imo country was destroyed, it would be hard for them to escape death. In the end, Yu country didn't believe Mo country could win fighting one against five, so finally they relented. This time, the courtroom raged into cries. What to do, His Majesty was in Zhao country's border, and the two armies had gotten into a fight. And Wei country over here also wanted to come. What should they do? Although Prime Minister Wen was wise, at this moment he was also rather troubled. On this day in the morning court, Yi Mu suddenly walked onto the courtroom. As soon as she came out, everyone became quiet. All of them knew the Emperor dearly loved the Empress. For the sake of the Empress, any rules and regulations could be disregarded. Hence, they somewhat feared this young Empress. And Yi Mu directly sat on the Dragon Throne. The Imperial Throne. This time, some people quit. Empress, please allow me to ask, what do you mean by this? Yi Mu wore a phonix robe that only empresses had, sitting there with heavy makeup for the first time. Hearing the question, her eyebrows faintly rose. There is no royal heir in this palace. Besides His Majesty, there's only Metwo masters in the palace. Now that His Majesty is not here, it is difficult to shirk from my responsibility. Am forced to show up merely for the sake of sharing the burdens of His Majesty. Do you have any objection? How how could this be allowed? Someone hurriedly said, Empress, there are teachings from the ancestors, the imperial harem cannot interfere. Yi Mu swept a glance over with cold eyes, making that person freeze. What period is it today? You're still concerned about the ancestors' teachings. I don't know any ancestors' teachings, I only know men work outside women inside. Now that His Majesty is warding off the enemy, I, in any case, have to help him defend this home. I believe the Prime Minister will support me, right? Prime Minister Wen originally was rather hesitant. After all, Yi Mu was sitting on the dragon throne right now, but just like Yi Mu had said, what period was it right now? Once Wei country came to attack, the country would not be a country. What ancestors' teachings must they abide by? The most important thing was, His Majesty treated Yi Mu in such a favorable light. There must be other significant reasons for it. Maybe she really could think of a way. So the Prime Minister finally lowered his head. Time of emergency requires special conducts. I am willing to hear Empress order. Since the Prime Minister said as such, the others did not object anymore, so not long after, the voices in the courtroom gradually quietened. Chapter 380 Persuading you country. Then I dare ask Empress, Wei country wants to borrow use route now, so they might attack here soon. What should we do now? It began with the most troublesome problem, and everyone looked at Yi Mu. Yi Mu sat on a high place, but also felt the pressure. For this matter, I think we can split into groups. One side will start preparing for war. I have His Majesty's 30,000 elites, and also have the tally to transfer order to every county's military strength. Scraping a hundred thousand army should be nothing difficult. Everyone didn't expect His Majesty had long prepared and also left the military tally behind. They felt slightly relieved. The tally given to Yi Mu as proof of authority for troop movement. Second, bring the treasure to lobby Yu country. If one falls, the other follows. Let them remain neutral, or pull them into our side. This second point was very difficult to do, but everyone felt this was the only safest thing to do at the moment. For a moment, no one posed a conflicting opinion. But someone asked, then who's the best person to send to lobby? Right now, you country and way country might have reached an agreement. It doesn't matter who's sent, it's very dangerous either way. Yi Mu said in a deep voice, I myself will go. No way. After she finished talking, 
not only Prime Minister Wen, Zi Su, and Wen Feng who were to protect Yi Mu objected. How could they let the Empress go to deal with this matter? But Yi Mu had her mind made up. It'll be fine. With a disguise, I just have to be a little careful and there won't be any danger. Most importantly, Yu's monarch and I used to be friends. I'm from Yu country, and in the first place, my father has some former subordinates who are staying at Yu country. I believe no one is more suitable than me. Yi Mu's words made everyone unable to refute. The Empress maternal family was Yu country, and also had a relation with Yu's emperor. From everyone in the courtroom, there was no one else more suitable than her. But the Prime Minister still shook his head. That's not allowed. I have promised His Majesty not to let Empress risk herself. Yi Mu said, but I also believe, His Majesty also said, if something happens, all of you have to listen to my order, correct? The Prime Minister opened his mouth, suddenly held back by her words. What Imo Linyuan was most worried about was definitely Yi Mu's safety, so Yi Mu definitely owned the highest right, but it had to be effective during a dangerous time. Yi Mu asked, and right now, is the problem not serious? Could it be that you refuse to listen to my order? The Prime Minister, under Yi Mu's overbearing manner, shrinked back. He was helpless. Mo Linyuan had said, for a special matter, her order was the priority. Seeing his stance, Yi Mu faintly smiled. Good, looks like I said it well. Then this matter proceeds like this, the Prime Minister will be responsible for allocating the armed forces with Zi Su assisting, and Wen Feng will accompany me to Yu country. Let's resolve this quickly. Yi Mu's vigor and resoluteness didn't give these men on the scene any chance to express themselves, and Yi Mu lived up to her words. After the morning court, she changed her clothes and left with Wen Feng. The Prime Minister had wanted to send more people to protect her, but hadn't had time, and waited until he got a letter left by Yi Mu. The letter wrote, for the sake of being quicker, the less the number of people who went to Yu country the better, and also wrote that while she was gone, she would let things be in the Prime Minister's care. The Prime Minister deeply sighed holding the letter, and then quickly wrote a letter for Mo Linyuan who was at the border. At this moment, Yi Mu and Wen Feng were already on their way. Yu country was not very far from Mo country's capital, it would take about ten days to reach by horse. And they rode in a hurry, rushing to Yu country in seven days' time. Also, Yi Mu with the help of an insider directly requested an audience with Yu's monarch, Qi Yen. At this moment, Qi Yen was discussing the final matters with Wei country's people, and had a servant whisper next to his ears, said someone from Mo country requested an audience. He was rather in a daze. He didn't expect the other party would arrive so fast. But he had already fixed his decision in his heart. Mo country that was threading through muddy water, he couldn't thread it anymore. The other five countries had joined forces, bearing down menacingly. Even if he and Mo country joined hands, they wouldn't be a match, so he could only defend himself, agreeing to the other party's request to borrow his route. Threading through muddy water getting involved in something disadvantageous. But Mo country's people still wanted to meet him, so, after asking Weiss people to withdraw, he received Mo's people. Although he had made up his plan in his heart, when Qi Yen saw who came, he couldn't help widening his eyes. Yi Mute was actually Yi Mu. Yi Mu also didn't bring Wen Feng, having the audience alone. Seeing Yi Mu who was disguised as a man, he hurriedly drove away the other people in the room, then quickly walked down the throne, surprise painting his expression. Yi Mu, it's actually you. At this moment, Yi Mu was fifteen years old. Her looks were starting to get older, but he could still vaguely see her childhood appearance. That look was soft and adorable, but actually couldn't be bullied. When Yi Mu saw Qi Yen, she also felt deeply moved. Forced by the situation, she believed Qi Yen wasn't intentionally making things worse. After all, he was the monarch of a country. Even if he wanted to help Mo country, he also had to consider use common people. Qi Yen, it has been years. I didn't expect to be meeting you in this kind of situation. Although she felt very anxious, her face still looked calm. Will you not invite me to drink? Of course I have to. Come, follow me. Qi Yen personally took Yi Mu to dine. On the way, Yi Mu really didn't eat well. The small face that originally had some baby fat had completely gone thinner now. She first ate a bit of food, and in this silence, the excitement in Qi Yan's heart subsided, 
slowly understanding why Yi Mu had come. Are you thinking of persuading me, that you want me not to lend the route to Wei country? After filling up her stomach a bit, Yi Mu put down her chopsticks, and calmly said. No, I came to ask you to lend the route to Wei country. Why? Qi Yan widened his eyes at her. Yi Mu forced a smile. She said with a light voice, Have you thought of one thing? Wei country borrowing route, what's his intention? Qi Yan said, Certainly to attack Mo country. Although Qi Yan also knew that lending the route was extremely dangerous for Yu country, the other five countries had allied. Anyway, for the sake of their plan, they also wouldn't take action on Yu country before destroying Mo country. Yi Mu nodded. That's right. They want to attack Mo country, but everyone knows that Mo's armed forces are currently small. After all, they are currently fighting. So long as Wei country brings a few people, collapsing the capital of Mo country is very easy. After all, both our countries are very close. But have you ever thought that after they easily destroy Mo country, and Mo Linyuan cannot come back in time, in this period of time, it's enough for Wei country to attack you country from both sides? Qi Yan had long thought this was possible, so at this moment, his expression was stern, and didn't speak with his lips pressed together. Chapter, 381 Persuading to Fight Back Seeing Qi Yan silent, Yi Mu continued, Yu country has always been on friendly terms with Mo country. This time the five countries allied. Besides agreeing to lend your route, you don't involve yourself. What does this mean? This means you're not of one mind with them. You think if you don't involve yourself in the conflict, you will be spared. No, their ambition will only become scarier after devouring Mo country. I'm sure once Mo country is occupied, you country will follow behind. He knew that she came as a lobbyist, but Qi Yan carefully analyzed her words, and had to admit that her words were reasonable. When one falls, everyone follows. No matter how hard he tried, he might not be able to defend himself when the time comes. And Qi Yan had thought of the worst outcome which was, after the fall of Mo country, he would take the initiative to latch onto one country and capitulate to the country, not for his country. This was the worst he thought of, but also the most possible result. Seeing him not speaking, Yi Mu suddenly said, Are you still thinking if Mo country falls, you'll capitulate? Then do you know what it means once you capitulate? It means you's common people are gratuitously inferior, it means you country will most probably be divided up without hindrance. By not revolting, people will not die, but your country will. Yi Mu's words were like a heavy hammer striking Qi Yan viciously. His brain buzzed. In the end, he asked with a cold expression, then what am I supposed to do? Don't tell me you want our two countries' power to oppose the five countries. No. Yi Mu shook her fingers. It's using two countries' power to oppose the other four countries. Four countries. Another country has gone neutral. When Qi Yan asked this, he looked very excited. Yi Mu looked at him, and coldly smiled. If you lend your route to Wei country, when they arrive at an appropriate location, both of our countries ambush together, causing Weiss dispatched people to die here. The main force will have heavy casualties. What storm do you think can Wei country set off in a short period of time? Qi Yan's eyes shone, but soon dimmed. But even if it's two against four, aren't we still at a disadvantage? Yi Mu narrowed her eyes. Leaving aside Mo country's formidable strength, one against two is not a problem. This method of mine will bring benefits to you country. She wet her finger, drawing a simple territory on the dining table. She smiled as she said, Past you country is Wei country, past Wei country is Yuan country that hasn't appeared for the time being. According to what you said, the two countries that are far from Mo country, Yuan country, and Li country, have secretly supported this matter, but they're very far apart. After Mo country falls, they can't divide the land and can only divide the treasure. Are they willing? Yi Mu smiled. And after we ambush these troops, you turn to strike Wei country. At this time, Wei strength is gone. I'm not saying you can seize Wei country in a short time, but swallowing that wide expanse country is very easy. Yi Mu's finger pointed at the Yuan character on the table. And Yuan country. After Wei country is caught by surprise by you, ITLL definitely borrow troops from its temporary ally, 
and when Yuan country sees that you come aggressively, if it's kind-hearted enough, it will lend its troops to Wei country and you will also be easily seized. If it's not kind, it will definitely take the opportunity to devour what's remaining of Wei country. If you were even a little bit more ruthless, while attacking Wei country, send someone to lobby Yuan country's monarch, let him know you want to attack Wei country. He might even start before you, striving for more benefits. Wei country will face the converged attacks of both countries, and there's Mo Lin Yuan blocking. It won't be able to wait for help from the allied forces of the other countries, so ITLL soon fall. When the time comes, not only will Yu country expand its strength, Yuan country will just fight with Wei country. It definitely won't move against this new neighbor in a short time. One day, even if Mo country loses, you'll be more confident in front of other countries than you are now. Hearing Yi Mu analyzing as such, Qi Yen felt even more interested. He didn't think this matter could be carried out like this, the feeling of toying with everyone while applauding, this kind of strategizing, gaining victory a thousand miles away, all made him impressed. He suddenly had confidence. As long as he handled things as such, it would definitely go according to Yi Mu's plan. Wei country wanted to breathe down their necks, and wanted to turn back and attack Yu country after attacking Yimou country. And now he wanted to give it a taste of its own medicine. Regarding this matter, I need to discuss it with my confidants first. Although Qi Yan didn't directly respond, the light in his eyes clearly showed that he had been moved. Yu country had always been too inoffensive, maybe now he could only use the massacring of a country to make clear that Yu country could not be easily bullied. Yi Mu nodded. She smiled as she said, I'll wait for your good news. Although she looked calm, she was actually very nervous. Her time was extremely precious, every minute and every second. Qi Yan clearly also understood Yi Mu was anxious right now, so on the same day at night, he called his confidants to discuss. Why special envoy thought Yu country was still hesitant about lending its route, and was rather in disdain, but didn't know they were actually discussing about fighting back. Early morning the next day, Qi Yan told Yi Mu agreed to this plan. However, the ministers all expressed a question, which was, did Yi Mu standing here mean she had found a way to break the stalemate? If she had, Yu country was ruthlessly forced and didn't mind allying with Mo country, there was no way out. Whether there was the hope of victory or not, this issue made Yi Mu smile. Yi Mu said, if I tell you that I'm probably sure that the other party will lose this time, do you believe me? Qi Yan looked at her. Unhesitatingly, he said, yes. Based on Yi Mu's words to persuade him yesterday, he knew Yi Mu's heart held the whole world's territory. She looked at problems from a long-term point of view than most people did, and her words held odds of success. Even if the situation at hand was tense, Qi Yan still believed her words were true. Seeing him have such confidence in her, he couldn't resist a light smile. Of course, as the monarch of a country, the burden to carry is very heavy. Even if you believe me, my words just now, it's hard for you to convince your courtiers. Let's do this. She paused, her expression rather sly as she said. If I can make Xiao country fight between themselves, then, you don't have to hesitate in joining hands with Mo country. Qi Yan widened his eyes. You can get Xiao country fight between themselves. Are you going to Xiao country? Yi Mu nodded. It's not difficult. I'll personally make a trip there and make sure. I'll go by myself and leave Wen Feng behind. You can contact Mo country through him. In addition to attacking Wei country and catching them by surprise, this must be done in a very short time. Whether or not we can win this battle is important, understand? However, the ministers all expressed a question, which was, did Yi Mu standing here mean she had found a way to break the stalemate? Chapter 382 Visiting Zhao country again. Qi Yan nodded. Il plan very carefully, I won't let you down. Yi Mu smiled. Then I'll take my leave now. I hope to hear your good news when I'm in Zhao country. Qi Yan nodded. They exchanged a few more words before Yi Mu left. After she left, she gave the brief to Wen Feng. Immediately get in touch with the Prime Minister about this matter. This time Wei country will dispatch 150,000 people. When the time comes, Yu country will send out 100,000 people. Our MO country had to send out 80,000, so use the tiger tally to assemble the troops for immediate action. 
seeing when Foam worried about her safety, she earnestly said, we will win this war. The pressure over at M.O. Linuans will lessen a lot, ITLL then be easier for him to control the situation. There's nothing more to say about the other matters, he'll take care of myself, and this important matter is handed over to you. You must not let me down. When Foam listened, his eyes slightly reddened. He saluted with determination, and didn't say more. Please don't worry, Empress, this subordinate definitely won't disappoint you. Yimu nodded, and no longer hesitated. She was by herself, and as she traveled more than half the country, finally after ten days, she arrived at the capital of Zhao country. Zhao country still had many of Mo's spies. The moment Yimu arrived, they quickly received the news and went over to welcome her. Let's cut to the chase, what's the situation right now with Zhao country? In a secret room, Yimu sat at the head. The others completely didn't expect the one who came would be Yimu, M.O. country's empress. Everyone was utterly shocked. Seeing her young age, many of them were discontented, but Yimu only sat there, and even if she didn't bring anyone else, everyone felt an overwhelming momentum. That momentum was very contrasting with her young face, making their backs cold, not daring to be rash. An old man as the leader said, Empress, Zhao's people seem to have great opinions concerning Imo country's battle. Although there's an alliance contract, the common people are still terrified the courtiers too, who are divided into two groups. The majority demanded not to participate in this risky contract, but Zhao's monarch insisted on war. What about Zhao Mingyu? Yi Mu asked in a cold voice. How's her situation now? Someone said, Royals Zhao was thrown into the death cell half a month ago. Yi Mu asked, How many people do we have now in Zhao country? The old man replied, 500 people, 10 among them are internal energy masters. Yi Mu suddenly stopped speaking. There were very few people. Being in another country, how could she save Zhao Mingyu? Yi Mu pondered for a while. Which cell is Zhao Mingyu in? The palace's death cell or outside? The old man thought about it. The biggest Taiha prison outside the palace. Recently many officials who oppose the emperor have been confined there. Yi Mu quickly asked, what's near Taiha prison? Important departments, residences, streets, say it all. Everyone discussed in a low voice, then someone said, Yuan Chang Street is not far from Taiha prison, which is Zhao country's most flourishing street. Many residences of high officials and nobles are there, but I have to say, the most extravagant of them and the nearest is the Empress' parents' house, the royal residence. Because the Empress' son died in Mo country, this time, the Empress is also in the pro-war faction. Yi Mu faintly smiled. Then let's go with the royal residence. Next, I need you to help me with something. I plan to burn down the royal residence. Isn't this not good? Someone hesitantly said. The royal residence's head has over a hundred internal energy masters. If we dare to get close to set fire, before we even can, we'll be discovered by the residence's people. Yi Mu chuckled. No worries, they'll let you prepare something. With those things, we don't need to go near to set the fire. After she told the tools needed, everyone didn't know what Yi Mu wanted to do with those things. No need to go near to set the fire, but why did they need to set fire? Wouldn't this be alerting the enemy? Yi Mu's eyes were sharp. Smiling, she said, the royal residence is close to Taiha prison. Well set the fire to the royal residence near Taiha prison. After those in Taiha prison notice, they'll definitely dispatch troops to put out the fire. When that happens, it will be easy for us to break into the prison. What? You want to break into the prison? That's right. Yi Mu acted as usual, as if she wasn't going to break into prison but rather strolling around the streets. Princess Zhao is the key to my trip right now. I must bring her out so that ITLL work, and all of you just need to listen to my plans, understand? A faint warning came from her person, making everyone's heart sink. This little empress' imposing manner was truly terrifying. Moreover, she spoke the plans clearly, and her brain also moved fast, no wonder His Majesty liked her so much, insisting on making her empress. The things that Yi Mu wanted were soon prepared. She looked at the niter, kerosene and more vicious things, slightly zoning out. Originally, she didn't plan to use any modern things, but right now she thought of Mo Linyuan who was fighting in the frontier, her eyes scared. She wouldn't use much, 
just a little, just this once. So after she took the things, she entered the room. She didn't go out for the whole night. On the other side, Mo Linyuan had fought with Zhao's and Yan's generals twice. These two times were actually just probing. Mo country, after all, had been in power for a long time. They didn't dare to come up and immediately went with you die, I live, but Mo Linyuan felt this was only because the allied forces didn't trust each other's outcome, and it was in their distrust that was his best opening. When he and his subordinates were discussing the manner to fight back, a letter written by the prime minister came. Mo Linyuan was rather surprised. He had been out for over a month, this was the first time receiving news from the palace. Mainly because of the war, delivering letters was very slow, so when he received the letter, Mo Linyuan's hands slightly trembled. He thought Yi Mu's letters for him would be among them, but he didn't expect, the moment he looked, there was only the prime minister's letter. Mo Linyuan frowned, but after seeing the prime minister's letter, his expression changed drastically. His Xiao Moor actually went to Yu country. Even if the prime minister explained in detail of the plan of Mo country and Yu country fighting back Wei country, even if the prime minister assured that this plan was perfectly safe, even if the prime minister highly praised that Yi Mu had very, very high wisdom, solving such a difficult problem in one Gomo Linyuan was still not happy. His Xiao Moor should not be participating in this affair. She did it all for him, to not let him struggle alone, for him not to worry. Although Mo Linyuan really wanted to rush to Yi Mu's side right now, really wanted to chide her, he mostly felt wistful. She was making such an effort, making such risks for him couldn't admit defeat. This war, he must win. Chapter, 383 Arson Yi Mu took advantage of the night to start action. And then they divided into two groups, one went near Taiha prison for ambush, the other went to a viewing platform not far from Taiha prison. That viewing platform was the highest building in the entire Zhao country that Zhao's late emperor spent a lot of time building on. Everyone could go up to view. At this moment, Yi Mu brought a group of people up to the viewing platform. The night was a sheet of black. Although those great families lighted oil lamps, the flames were faint, it truly was testing out one's eyesight. Luckily, they had familiarized themselves in the daytime they weren't afraid to make a mistake on their target. Everyone skeptically looked at the object in Yi Mu's hands. How should they describe this? It was like giant fireworks. Only, these fireworks were not the same as those they usually saw. Yi Xiaojie, this object can really burn the royal residence from such a long distance. How could he not be doubtful? This merely looked like fireworks. Even if it sparked, not a little while later it would die. Yi Mu smiled as she said, just wait. It will be a little loud later, cover your ears. Everyone's expression still looked doubtful, but covered their ears. Then, they looked at Yi Mu's movements with wide attentive eyes. All of them wanted to know, is this person truly skilled? Or pretending to show off? The night breeze lifted Yi Mu's black robe. Her complexion was as still as water. Under the moonlight, she did not look like a young child. Chang Pao traditional Chinese men's robe. She took out the fire stick, making everyone step back. After that, she lit the fuse. The spurting sounded really clear at this moment. The next second, they only heard a piercing whistle. That object that looked like fireworks leaped up and looked like a fireball, an orbit in the night sky. The next second, it exploded above the royal residence. The flames that were like scattering flowers dropped. Everyone watched. This act was no different from how others set off fireworks, but the dangerous part came. Those flames that dropped were not at all like fireworks, extinguished after falling to the ground instead, many areas went ablaze. What was going on? Not only the royal residence's people were caught off guard, even the people at Yi Mu's side were also shocked. They weren't at all afraid of the royal residence's people to discover them. After all, they were very far away. At this moment, seeing that so much noise was happening in the royal residence, seeing the spark that burned even more and much fiercer, this matter actually was easily solved. Their expression when they looked at Yi Mu again was like looking at an immortal. But Yi Mu's expression was indifferent. Let's go. Let's go down, else they will come and arrest us. Although Yi Mu felt the other party wouldn't find out, that sound just now was very loud. Someone might notice this place. This time, the people with Yi Mu listened to her, 
the shocking act still lingering in their minds, completely not understanding how she did it. At this moment, an old man took a few steps forward to catch up to Yi Mu. Empress, since you can create such a powerful weapon, why not tell His Majesty about it? This way, no matter how many people come to attack us, His Majesty wouldn't have to worry. Yi Mu didn't wish to disrupt this world's order, so she only said, that thing can only be made by me and can't be taught to others. Most importantly, this thing is too harmful. Forget about what you saw today, don't tell other people. Yi Mu was not worried they would reproduce it because some of the key materials were secretly bought by herself. This kind of object would be best to appear once, flash in the pan, the province's affected people remembered. Seeing Yi Mu didn't want to speak much about it, the others didn't bring it up anymore. Once they were near enough, seeing the flames in the royal residence over there soaring and rising, they felt excited. As soon as the people in the royal residence saw the fire, they hurriedly started putting it out, but that fire dispersed, burning ferociously. For a moment it was difficult to extinguish. At this moment on that street, a lot of people ran outside adding to the trouble. Yi Mu also joined them, and heard a disheveled man beside her say with a smile. This maleficent royal residence, who knows who's exterminating them? Seems like you still don't know, huh? A person beside him moved closer. I heard from the night watch, what he saw was a flame dropping from the sky, smashing into the residence's courtyard. Their house then burned, so the royal residence is punished by the heavens. This kind of bizarre case was most loved by the common people. Yi Mu watched as the people from Taiha prison had dispatched soldiers to extinguish the fire. She smiled, making the people beside her help the people breaking into prison. She stayed here alone, continuing to watch the ruckus. Not long after, the fire still had not died, but the matter of the royal residence being punished by the heavens was already everywhere. People said it very detailedly, as though having seen it with their own eyes. But at this time, Yi Mu suddenly heard an old man say. The heavens drop fire to give a warning. If a house is in peril, the nation is also in peril. His words, somehow, were heard by the soldiers who rushed over. One among them who was leading furiously shouted, You actually have the audacity to spread false rumors here. Someone, seize him. Seeing the soldiers start arresting the person, everyone scattered like flocks of birds. Only Yi Mu was still in her original place, looking at that old person dragged away by the soldiers. In her mind, she suddenly remembered Zhao Country's final ending in the biographical records. Before Zhao Country was destroyed, the heaven sparked fire. It was written that when the fire happened, an old Taoist priest warned the common people, but no one believed him, and he was even arrested. And the words that the old man said continuously echoed in Yi Mu's head. The heavens descended fire. It turned out, she was the heavens. After pushing down the shock in her heart, Yi Mu shook her head and smiled, then started to follow up on her plan. Seeing the large fire in the royal residence still needed some time to be stamped out, she didn't feel worried about the people that broke into the prison. Eventually, some would come out. She had wanted to follow inside, but those MO people firmly rejected. They didn't allow her to take risks with them. If she wanted to take risks, they gave frightening comments. This must be their limit. So, after she arranged everything, she could only wait here for their news. Soon, a bell sounded from Taiha prison someone had broken in. This was doomed to be a noisy night. The soldiers currently putting out the fire in the royal residence worked hard to ingratiate themselves with the royal residence they weren't the least bit slow extinguishing the fire. But after hearing the bell, they had to abandon the fire, rushing back. But unfortunately, the head of the royal residence was recalcitrant. Seeing these soldiers about to leave, he quickly stopped them. What are you all doing? these fires haven't died out. The head of the soldiers was full of sweat. I'm sorry, but recently there are many important convicts locked up in the prison, nothing should happen to them. But the head was used to being arrogant as the empress was his daughter. He said in a loud voice, no, you must extinguish the fire first before you can go. That's my study, don't you know how many valuable things are in there? Put out the fire quickly. Chapter 384 Internal strife. Yi Mu definitely couldn't hear what was happening inside, but she had waited for a while and still had not seen the soldiers go out, and guessed what was up. She faintly smiled and returned to her base camp, hoping to receive good news soon. 
Zhao Mingyu thought she would really be doomed. After she was imprisoned, she never thought there would be a day she could survive and go outside. But unexpectedly, there were people who came to save her. When those people pulled her to walk, although she was heavily wounded, she stubbornly said to those who were dragging her. Fellow knights, if you can, can you save them? They're all my officials, all of them are. Zhao Mingyu guessed they saved her because they saw she was in the peaceful faction, so after coughing for a bit, she added, all of them are the people who support me, can you save them? After those officials went into jail, they were tortured. At this moment, seeing there were people to come save her, each of them called out. At this moment, the depths of Taiha prison were already burning with flames. Among the flames and thick smoke, the leader of one of Mo's people gave a meaningful glance toward his subordinate. That person immediately understood. With all their capability, save those who could be saved. Seeing them saving people, the other prisoners also cried out, but they definitely couldn't save too many people. After saving a few officials, they fought quickly, fighting their way out before the soldiers come back. This time, they had saved thirteen people altogether. When they were brought to a secret room, they still didn't know what was waiting for them. Only Zhao Mingyu somewhat understood. You are Mo's people, aren't you? Did Mo Linyuan ask you guys to save us? Before Zhao Mingyu could finish, she was called alone by a person. Princess Zhao, please follow me. Zhao Mingyu's complexion was pale, but still summoned her energy. After she endured the pain, unexpectedly, she wasn't seeing some stranger, but Yi Mu. The moment she saw Yi Mu, Zhao Mingyu was suddenly shocked and sobbed. At this moment, she forgot all the heavy wounds on her body and threw herself at Yi Mu, hugging her tightly. It's you, I didn't expect it's you who came to save me. Filled by Zhao Mingyu's hug, Yi Mu felt her body and slightly frowned. Sorry, I came late and made you suffer. No, no. Zhao Mingyu hurriedly released her, wiping off her tears. While crying and laughing, she said, you're not the least bit late, it's me who is. At the beginning I thought father was only putting on a show with Yan country, and thought the battle was just an act. It's me who didn't notice my father's real intention. When I did, it was too late. Before my letter could be sent out, I was caught. Yi Mu shook her head. This matter is not your fault. Besides, I came to help you. Zhao Mingyu's excitement finally calmed down a little. Help me. But right now, I. Right now she didn't have anything, her trusted aid was beheaded. She really didn't expect the moment the Five Countries Alliance came out, her own father would lose his reason like that. Not to mention, she only stood up and stated the pros and cons, only advocated for neutrality, yet was inexplicably thrown into prison. All these years of affection really was no match to one's interests. Yi Mu brought her to sit down. Although she was very anxious, she wasn't in a rush to speak about this matter, and had everyone leave the room. She dressed Zhao Mingyu's wounds for a while. Of course, she needed to clean the wound before dressing it up. She brought Zhao Mingyu to the bathroom that had long been prepared. Zhao Mingyu who had lived in abject conditions for over a month, seeing the tub of water, it was difficult to stop the tears that were streaming down again. She said, sorrowful, did you know? I never thought there would be a day taking a bath would be a luxury. She didn't want to recall her life in the past month. She removed her clothes and got in the water. One to wash off the dirt on her body, second to wash off the dirt in her heart. Yi Mu helped her wash her hair. In this dense steam, seeing Zhao Mingyu already completely relaxed, Yi Mu said, I came here to help you, to make you Zhao's new emperor. Zhao Mingyu who had relaxed immediately tensed, and then heard Yi Mu continue. Just listen to what I've arranged. I know the limits of this matter, I won't let you be harmed, and you just have to decide whether you want to do it or not. That's enough. Zhao Mingyu didn't speak. In the few months, she lost her former vigor. She became cautious because she had suffered too much stimulation. As if noticing Zhao Mingyu's change, Yi Mu said, Maybe I should ask you, do you dare or not? Your ambition, is it still there? Her light words made Zhao Mingyu's cold and still heart suddenly a little hot, but she still doubted herself. Can I still now? I don't have anything anymore I don't even have father's affection anymore. Yi Mu smiled as she said, no, you still have the bloodline. As long as you haven't been expelled from Zhao's imperial family, 
you're still the princess. As long as you're the princess, I can help you reach everything you wanted before. Of course, the condition is you can't be scared, and have the courage to risk everything. She thought she lost the meaning of courage already, but hearing Yi Mu's reassuring voice, Zhao Mingyu smiled. What do you want me to do? She hoarsely said, the scars on her face making her look a bit more resolute. As long as it's within my ability, just say it. Anyway, I've got nothing to lose, maybe countering is the only way out. Seeing Zhao Mingyu could regain her vigor again, Yi Mu was really happy. Easy. You just have to return to the courtroom. She paused. Those officials that you saved are your greatest bargaining chips. Those people were not only officials but also represented every aristocratic family. At this moment, Zhao's emperor had gone insane. He recklessly locked up the opposing party, but actually didn't have the time to deal with them. And the people of those families brought their own people out. For the moment, they didn't have the energy to go against the emperor. But right now, they were Zhao Mingyu's people. Because it was Zhao Mingyu who saved them in the critical moment. Zhao Mingyu quietly listened, and in the end, lightly laughed. That's right, this can be utilized. After all, in this period of time, father has done many wrongs, those people have long been discontented. Yi Mu smiled. After she finished helping Zhao Mingyu wash her hair, her hands shook in the water, the flowers rising and falling. And I need you to stir up internal strife. Now that Zhao country is in a battle, it's powerless. If you can stir up internal strife at this time, it's your best opportunity to rise. Internal strife? Zhao Mingyu was rather embarrassed. Father and eldest prince are of one mind now, which brother would dare to fight them? Yi Mu smiled. There are many kinds of internal strife, it doesn't have to be a conflict between a prince and a prince. And that is? Zhao Mingyu asked. Yi Mu smiled. If you stir up internal strife between the royal court and the royal family, wouldn't it be more interesting? Right now, she didn't have anything, her trusted aide was beheaded. She really didn't expect the moment the five countries' alliance came out her own father would lose his reason like that. Not to mention, she only stood up and stated the pros and cons, only advocated for neutrality, yet was inexplicably thrown into prison. All these years of affection really was no match to one's interests. Chapter 385 Chaos Yi Mu's words made Zhao Mingyu dumbfounded. She nervously asked, is it that easy to stir up a fight between the royal court and family? Yi Mu said, the matter is on humans. Everything has to be done first to know, and I really believe in you. Do you believe in yourself? Zhao Mingyu wryly smiled. Right now, what was there to hesitate about? Then, Yi Mu quietly said beside Zhao Mingyu's ear. The power of the big aristocrat families is very frightening. They can ally and overthrow a whole country, but right now they're not willing to do so because they think the alliance of the five countries will succeed. So, even if your father imprisoned the aristocrat families, they will momentarily suppress their anger, will only rescue in secret, and will not oppose your father. But if they see that the alliance of the five countries can't beat MO country, they will resent your father's decision. By then, if you want to stir up internal conflict, ITLL be very easy. Zhao Mingyu wryly smiled. Then what should we do to make them understand that the five countries' alliance is not enough to beat MO country? After all, the situation right now is disadvantageous to MO country. Yi Mu said, you don't have to worry. I've talked with you country, let Yu's and Mo's remaining forces counter Wei country. As long as Wei country's main forces lose, it should scare these people of Zhao country. Zhao Mingyu froze. Does Mo country have any energy left to attack Mo country? Yi Mu smiled. We definitely can't just rely on Mo country, so long as you country can handle the matter according to my plan, then Wei country will for sure lose. And once Wei country loses, it will make some people anxious, then we can start moving. Zhao Mingyu asked, then when will the defeat of Wei country reach Zhao country? Yi Mu revealed a faint smile. I've already made arrangements there. What you have to do next is, with those officials you saved, reconnect with them. Make them support you. Zhao Mingyu recalled those who went out together with her from Taiha prison, and faintly smiled. All right, let me handle this. Things went smoothly on this side. 
When Zhao's monarch found out Taiha prison was raided, he couldn't do anything because they couldn't find where those prisoners were. On top of that, the most important thing right now was the war. So after Zhao's monarch heard the prisoners couldn't be found, he only frowned and didn't utter a word. He even suspected the aristocratic families had cooperated to break into prison, but right now wasn't the time to deal with them. On the other side, Wei country borrowed Yu's route. 150,000 army set out from Wei country, passed through Yu country, and soon would reach the borders of Yu country. Yu country and Imo country were waiting for this opportunity, but Weiss people were unaware. They even thought they would win for sure. Even Weiss general said with a smile. Yu country really is foolish. Such a good opportunity to swallow up Imo country, he actually doesn't participate. Does he think he's safe like this? Little does he imagine well attack Imo country first before going for Yu country. Hearing the general's words, the commanders all laughed aloud. At this moment, they could see the frontier already, and the frontier was between Imo country and Yu country. So long as they passed the border, they could attack Imo country. But what was unexpected was, at this moment, a batch of troops suddenly poured out. It was as if they had long lain low here, attacking Weiss people in surprise. Weiss people suddenly panicked. When they looked back, they realized those Mo's people were only a little, roughly only 10,000. These people should be Mo's frontier army. Weiss general coldly smiled. Only these little people to stop us. Men, kill them all, kill every last one of them. When the others saw that Mo's people were small in number, their spirits immediately rose, pouncing one after another. And at this moment, when those Mo's people saw that they couldn't fight back, they began to withdraw. But how could wise people let this pass? As if pursuing their prey, they unrelentingly followed behind them in hot pursuit. Soon, they were led into the mountains. One of wise commanders said, General, they're avoiding like this, could there be a trap? Wise general coldly humphed. What's to be afraid of? The majority of Mo's military strength is now with Mo Linyuan to fight the allied Zhao country and Yen country. How much more military strength do they have? Even if there's an ambush there's nothing to be scared. When everyone heard that, they also reached the same conclusion, so they followed Mo's people closely behind. But those Mo's people were indeed too cunning. They kept hiding in the mountain as they didn't dare to clash with Weiss front army. In the end, Weiss general became impatient and said, we've chased them for a long time and still haven't caught them. Forget it, we have better things to do. But just as Weiss army was about to leave, they were suddenly met with an ambush. Numerous rocks and logs rolled down from above the mountain slope, barring their way. The 150,000 army was trapped in the ditch. The path ahead had been blocked. A large log that's pushed from a height to hit the enemy in ancient times. When they saw there really was an ambush, Weiss people quickly began to retreat. But they didn't expect after a few hours of walking back, they actually encountered large numbers of Yu's army. This time Weiss country was excessively furious. The leading general yelled, who's your commander? Call them out. Yu country actually goes back on their words. Is it that you want to fall just like Imo country? From among Yu's army, a person slowly walked out. He was Zhao's emperor's elder brother, the second prince. It had always been the second prince who garrisoned the frontier, so this time it was also him leading the group. He smiled. You said you country goes back on our words, then I'd like to ask you, after Wei country attacks Mo country, will you really not turn back and lay a converging attack on us? So we deployed in advance, paying you back in your own coin. What's wrong about that? The second prince's words made wise people at a loss for words. And the other party didn't give them any time to respond. The next second, Mo's ambush troops and Yus moved together. Both sides attacked together, attacking Wei country. A fight suddenly began, but the most important thing in marching in a battle was the momentum. Once wise people saw that they were surrounded by both countries in the mountain, and they were also clearly a lot more in number than them, they all became panicked. So, soon, they were slowly pushed back. In the end, the troops fell apart. But Yus and Mo's people were aggressive. After they defeated all wise people, they seized the remaining survivors as captives. A great war went on until late at night, until it completely finished. This time, they attacked Wei country by surprise. 
From here onward, if Wei country wanted to escape it would be hard. The person who led Mo's troops over here was Yi Xiaolang. After he had everyone count the captives, it was already dawn of the second day. Seeing Yu's second prince, once it was over, he walked over to talk with him. Chapter, 386 The Women Behind the Scenes Your Highness Yu, you want to attack Wei country soon, right? Our Prime Minister said, if Yu country needs financial resources, Mo country can support you. But Yu's second prince only smiled. Actually, this time Mo country has helped us a lot, so how could we ask for Mo country's money? Besides, after we win this war, those neutral people of my country might completely stay with Mo country. By then, our two countries will be one family. Yi Xiaolang listened. He grinned as he said, that would be the best, we'll be one family in the future. The second prince thought of something and told Yi Xiaolang, come to speak of it, we have to thank Yi Mu for all of this. If she didn't come to advise us, we wouldn't have made up our mind like this. Also, I heard Yi Mu has gone to Zhao country, how is her situation there? Yi Xiaolang said, Xiao Jia said, as long as our success here reaches there, it will be a big help to Zhao country. She said Shell make Zhao country have internal strife, and I believe Shell succeed. The second prince laughed. I also believe, the so-called women are not inferior to men, she's definitely the most outstanding among women. Yi Xiaolang nodded. I'm going to give her a letter, I hope she completes the layout soon. This way, the five countries' alliance will not be worth the fear. Having said that, the second prince suddenly reminded Yi Xiaolang with a grave expression. In the letter, remember to tell Yi Mu, Wei country once told us, all of this is deployed by a person called Min Liang. He claims to have a worldly talent himself, deciding to use his own strength to compete with the world's most outstanding person, and he's from Yen country. You must tell Yi Mu this because I'm guessing Min Liang is in Mo country. Yi Xiaolang nodded. I will tell her about this. If that person is really in Mo country, they'll definitely capture him. The battle here had just calmed down, and a letter had been quickly sent to Yi Mu. At the same time, a lot of people sent out news, Yu country reneged. Before anyone responded, Yu country beheaded all of Wei captives, before turning back to attack Wei country. Wei country just received the news about Yu country's betrayal when their army had reached the entrance. Yu country also looked for Yuan's people in advance to spread the news, said that Yu country wanted to renege to attack Wei country. The moment Yuan's people heard, it happened to be when Weiss' cry for help came through. Yuan's monarch immediately used the excuse to lend their army, dispatch them, and wantonly invaded Weiss' territory. At this moment, if Yuan country didn't help, Weiss' territory would most likely fall into Yu country. How could they allow that? Weiss people had wanted to look for Yuan country to borrow their troops, but unexpectedly, what came was a wolf. So under the two countries' converging attack, Weiss people panicked. Not many days passed when the country was destroyed. And at the peak of Wei country's battle, Zhao country's internal strife also sparked. Zhao's people heard Yu country had reneged and destroyed Wei country in one go, invading the majority of Weiss lands. They were all uneasy, so they signed a petition, requesting the emperor to call off the battle. But Zhao's monarch had invested so much military strength in this battle and financial resources. How could he give up now? An official in the courtroom said, Your Majesty, it's still possible to stop now, ITLL be too late later. MO country isn't easy to push around. MO country and U country are cooperating together now, and Wei country is also destroyed. If we don't stop, the next one that will fall might be our Zhao country. Zhao's monarch stood his ground. Although one of our five countries is destroyed, there are still four countries left. For against two, how could they possibly win? How could you all be speaking so negatively before the ending? But before Zhao's emperor could finish his words, an urgent battlefield report came. Reporting your majesty. Our allied forces are losing ground to Mo's army. They're already retreating 300 li. General Liu said, the rations and weapons will soon be used up, they need the royal court support once more. And Mo's monarch is extremely cunning. This war to defeat him, I'm afraid it's very dangerous, more military support might be needed. More military support meant Zhao country and Yan country needed to borrow Yuan's and Li's military strength again. They had already borrowed some, but for Zhao's and Yan's own interests, they didn't dare to borrow a lot. 
But right now Yuan country was fighting with Wei country. The only one that could lend them troops was Li country. However, when Li country had said to dispatch tens of thousands more people, Zhao and Yen both refused. To look for them again right now to borrow troops, who knows what the outcome will be, and if they'll make it in time. Besides, once they started attacking, money would gush out like water flowing. Zhao country wasn't as wealthy as Mo country. After a while of battle, they would be void of strength. And they needed more provisions and weapons now. Where should they get them? This urgent battlefield report made Zhao country's situation more ruffled. One side was a war investment that was like a bottomless pit, while another was to immediately stop to prevent further loss. There were currently many officials. At the encouragement of some officials, all of those in the pro-war faction turned into the peace faction. Zhao's monarch can't take it. So he asked all of them to withdraw, and said he will think of a way himself. When this news came out, Yi Mu only felt amused. She said to Zhao Mingyu who had changed into gorgeous attire, it should be your turn to appear next, you might have a way. After those officials go home, everything goes according to our plan to agitate the family members. The mood in the courtroom has changed. Even if Xiao's monarch insists on having his way, under so much opposition from the aristocratic families, he won't hold out too long. Zhao Mingyu smiled. Growing up, anything else won't do, but rabble-rousing is the most useful. Ever since I saved them that once, those officials have been deeply grateful to me. They go home and dare not reveal their identities. If they still want to be officials, the only thing they need to do is to prove their right. As long as they prove this, they will have the opportunity to return to the imperial court, so they naturally will encourage their family to help us. Father should declare these people innocent soon. Yi Mu smiled. Your big brother should be considered your next obstacle. When the time comes how do you plan to deal with him? Zhao Mingyu coldly smiled. This is easy. As long as I agitate the aristocratic families to put more pressure on my father, he will not admit he's wrong. By then, he'll secretly send someone to agitate father to make him sacrifice for the good. Father then will definitely present Big Brother to calm the aristocratic family's fury, so in my eyes, Big Brother is already a dead man. Chapter 387 Min Liang's Counterattack Zhao Mingyu's words made Yi Mu laugh. You're right, eldest prince is already a dead man. While they were making fun, Zhao's monarch could not withstand the pressure anymore. More and more people said this five countries alliance was a conspiracy. Said that the peaceful faction wasn't wrong, demanding for the officials who were thrown into prison to be released. Zhao's monarch had wanted to resist, but because the treasury was empty and everywhere around him was mobilizing rations and weapons, no one paid him attention. With no other choice, he went with the idea of seeking a truce, just in time to stop loss. But at this moment, Yan country passed a message. Yan's monarch made it known that he could provide an army Zhao country just had to provide rations. War had already started, if they stopped halfway, it would only result in an unrecoverable loss. Might as well press forward and directly swallow Mo country to compensate for this loss. Zhao's monarch was persuaded. Hearing this, the officials were speechless for a while, and after hearing this, Yi Mu knew Min Liang had meddled. That person called Min Liang from Yan country seemed to have Yan's monarch's utmost trust, he could even agree on dispatching more troops. It had to be known, that every country had its own last batch of troops to hold on to. Zhao country and Yan country had both brought out all troops that were possible to be brought out. But right now Yan country said he still wanted to give military support it was clear that he wanted to hand over the last troops that were supposed to defend the city walls. After Zhao Mingyu heard this news, she looked for Yi Mu with a frown, said the determination of those officials that supported her was now wavering. Because Yan country could be reckless like this, and since Zhao country had started fighting and had invested so much, stopping now was too much of a pity. Besides, Zhao country didn't have to dispatch more troops and only needed to provide rations. These rations were gathered from every aristocratic family, so it was actually possible. But those families were unwilling to invest before, but with the situation now, they felt it was worth the try. After all, Mo country had gotten so much treasure. They were really envious. Yi Mu didn't expect her own actions would lead to more pressure on Mo Linyuan's side and was even more surprised that Yan country would have the courage to be so irrevocable. She furrowed her brows. 
Now Wei country, Yu country, and Yuan country are at war, and Zhao country and Yan country refuse to give up. If they increase rations and military strength, the situation over at Imo Linyuans will get out of control. Zhao Mingyu said, not only that, I heard Li country has been persuaded by Yan country. Among the additional troops this time, there are 50,000 troops from Li country. It's just that this information, because their distance is too far, has no confirmation yet, but I think it's very possible. Yi Mu thought in her heart, Li country actually is helping Yan country like this, looks like they also trust that person called Min Liang. This made Yi Mu very curious about this person. She asked Chao Mingyu, do you know who this Min Liang is? How is he able to persuade the five countries' monarchs to join hands? Zhao Mingyu said, Min Liang hasn't made himself known for long, but his master is a very well-known scholar. The moment Min Liang appeared, Yan's monarch stated he wanted to give him the prime minister position, but he refused. He said he wants to challenge the whole world's cleverest and wisest. At that time, everyone said Mo Lin Yuan is the world's wise monarch who's hard to come by. Only he is able to create a glorious world, so Min Liang gave the idea of starting a war. Yi Mu listened and thought to herself. In other words, this person is very mysterious and conceited, but unfortunately has amazing skills that he can bring about this situation right now. To prove himself, he didn't hesitate to start a war, he seems more likely to be perverted. Yi Mu pondered. Looks like I must go to Li country. Zhao Mingyu was immediately surprised. What are you going to do in Li country? Yi Mu said, now all countries are participating in the war. Only Li country maintains their integrity. As a player behind the scene, I really want to know if there are other agreements between him and Min Liang. If I can convince it and make it defect. Zhao Mingyu said, if you want to go, I definitely support you. But Li country is so far. You definitely don't have anyone to help you there. If you go just like this, it's too dangerous. Yi Mu smiled. Who is not in danger now? Since everyone is in danger, what am I afraid of? She said to Zhao Mingyu, they'll be right back, and you stay here. Zhao country is handed over to you continue persuading those people. Wait for my news, I believe this problem can turn for the better. Min Liang can actually react so quickly, it's clear he's got an extraordinary messenger. After I go to Li country, I might not be able to send a message to you in time. I can only let you pay close attention to this matter secretly and respond in time. Zhao Mingyu nodded. All right, you can go ahead. They'll send someone to carefully follow Li country's movements. You also have to stay safe, please be okay. Yi Mu smiled faintly, telling her not to worry. Min Liang thinks he's the world's cleverest and wants to challenge him O Lin Yuan, doesn't he? Then he'll let him know that he can't fight past me, a girl. Having said that, she revealed a flamboyant smile. This smile carried resolute confidence. Zhao Mingyu immediately thought, maybe this time she needed to rely on Yi Mu once again to turn the tide. Zhao country's situation was calm for the moment. Zhao's monarch vigorously turned to the aristocratic families to mobilize the rations and weapons. On the other side, Yan's soldiers were catching up to the border. Yi Mu left Zhao country alone. Those subordinates in Zhao country thought Yi Mu was going back to Mo country, and had wanted to send her, but were refused by Yi Mu. Yi Mu requested them to stay and help Zhao Mingyu. She also said she was a small target and wouldn't be easy to be discovered. The subordinates didn't doubt it, so they sent Yi Mu off. Who would have known, after Yi Mu left the city, she ran in the exact opposite direction. Li country, a country that revered etiquette. She had never been to that country. Allegedly, there were many scholars there, and was more literary than a fighter. Who knows what was special about that place. But no matter what, before Zhao country build up rations, and before Yan's army arrives, she must solve this matter. Otherwise, Mo Lin Yuan will be in danger. On the other side, Min Liang who was in Mo country looked at the letter in his hands, smiling slightly. This world had such things as carrier pigeons, but the majority were not precise and could cause oversight or mishaps. But Min Liang was different. His master had used a special way to raise a group of war pigeons. Chapter 388 Within Li Country These pigeons behaved like humans, and they could deliver letters regardless of how far the distance was, so his messages were very fast, 
at least faster than other people. Hearing Yan Country and Zhao Country were following his plan, he smiled as he thought, he doesn't know who planned all of this, causing Yu Country to defect and causing civil unrest in Zhao Country. But this doesn't hinder his plan. As long as Yan Country and Zhao Country as well as Li Country continue following his arrangements, Mo Linyuan will lose. He will prove to the whole world that he is the smartest person. Mo Linyuan. The world's wisest emperor. He is no comparison to him. When Yi Mu was on the way to Li Country, she encountered many expected situations. Countless commoners suffered the flames of war and were forced to move. In addition, those peasant farmers only brought so limited rations and supplies that many of them became victims of the war, wandering around. This situation was grave in Zhao country. Those places in Zhao's borders were already destitute. Large swaths of people were dying. In addition, those few areas suffering from famine happened to be the war zone. Those cities that were considered prosperous had now become dead cities. It so happened that at this time, no one could pay attention to them or care about their life or death. This made Yi Mu feel sad. All of this could have been avoided, but because of one ambitious individual, it happened, and everyone was implicated. When Yi Mu arrived at Yan country, the situation changed again. To send more troops, forced conscriptions were everywhere. It wasn't enough to send out one son, so other sons were taken away by the soldiers, to the point that in many of the villages, farms, as well as cities, the majority were women. There was basically no shadow of a man. In this world, men were the pillars. Without men, these women's lives became very difficult. Each one of them looked malnourished and haggard, and let's not mention those frilier children. Moreover, after the men left, an opportunity opened for the bandits in the mountains. They wantonly brought trouble to these areas, plundering the hard-earned wealth of the people, snatching women, and maliciously killing children. No one took care of this. No one was farming in the fields, weeds had grown, and there were no vendors in the streets. Everyone had fled for their lives. It was as if the whole world had turned upside down overnight. Everyone was panicking. As Yimu walked, she often could hear some cries of lament. She looked up and asked the heavens, when will the war end? But how could wars end that quickly? Especially in this underdeveloped ancient time. Once war broke out, it would take a few years to end, and the peaceful days would be nowhere in sight. Yi Mu sighed in her heart. No matter what period it was, what standpoint, wars would always bring in grief. History was indeed written because of war, and civilization was also propelled forward because of war, but when she saw the commoners implicated in the war with her own eyes and had no power to retaliate or even the power to self-defend, she was disheartened. So the further back she walked, Yi Mu had one more conviction. This time, she was fighting not only for Mo Linyuan. She was also fighting for the many people hurt by the war. If war could stop, these people could feel secure. The world would look like how it was before. With this thought, Yi Mu rode at full speed, and without looking back, dashed into Li Country. But to her surprise, Li Country was full of peace and laughter, as if not affected by the war. Yi Mu felt skeptical. She had wanted to meet Li's monarch, wanted him to take advantage of Yan Country's powerlessness to seize them so Yan's monarch would call the troops back. This then could ease Mo Linyuan's pressure. But now she had a different idea. The six countries are all covered by the flames of war, but Li Country is unscathed. What does this mean? This means that this Min Liang, he might not be from Yen country, but rather Li country. Everyone would think of their own country. If Min Liang was truly from Li country, then if she wanted to instigate Li's monarch, it was no longer possible. And if she guessed correctly, this Min Liang was one of the most important people in Li country. With this guess in mind, Yi Mu didn't immediately meet Li's monarch but chose to scout out the condition in the area and in passing look for Mo's people who were hiding here. As Zhao Mingyu said, because Li country was too far, the spies planted here were only a few, probably only ten odd people. Using her own knowledge, Yi Mu found their location, and then knocked on one of the household's doors. Who are you? The one who opened the door was an old man around fifty years old. Yi Mu looked at him. She directly said, I came to ask you, do you have a book oil for sale? That old man frowned. What oil is book oil? Yi Mu smiled. It's something that can be spread in a book. 
I think your house might have it. The old man looked Yimu up and down a few times, then said, Come in, this old man sells oil, but don't know if you can find what you're looking for. Yimu went in. The neighbors did not notice this exchange, but the old man still looked left and right before closing the door. Who exactly are you? The old man asked after closing the door. Yi Mu said, I'm a messenger from Mo country. You should know the reason I came here. You've stayed in Li country for more than twenty years, are you still loyal to Mo country? That old man didn't expect to meet a fellow countryman here. His eyes suddenly reddened. He said, I may have stayed in Li country for over twenty years, and have married and have a child here, but in my heart Mo country is still my home. Your Excellency, whatever instructions you have, you can tell me. Even if I, Old Lu, have to sacrifice my life, I will do it. Yi Mu was actually nervous when she came because the distance was so far and this person also had dwelled here for so many years. She was very worried he was completely assimilated into Li's people. But he still thought about Mo country, moreover with such a determined look. Yi Mu was relieved, she finally had a helper. She said with a sigh, I won't beat around the bush, the situation outside is very tense now. After arriving here, I saw that only this country is safe and sound, so I want to know certain information about the country. In this war, what role does it play? Old Lu nodded. He welcomed Ji Mu indoors. At this moment, his wife and child were not present, but he still lowered his voice as he said to Yi Mu. This is about Min Liang, right? Chapter 389 Caught. Yi Mu nodded. Now Min Liang was her core problem. She came here to know more about this person and the agreement between him and Li's monarch. Old Lu said, Well, the only relationship between Min Liang and Li country should be, his master is from Li country, and he himself is from Yen country. This is for certain. Old Liu's words overthrew Yi Mu's previous guess. Did she guess wrong, Min Liang really had nothing to do with Li country? Old Lu said, think about it, if it's not because he's from Yan country and has been Yan's crown prince's study companion since a child, how can Yan country trust him so much and send out their remaining troops? Yi Mu furrowed her brows. Agreed, but something's not right. Old Lu didn't understand. What's not right? Yi Mu said, Yan country's behavior. She spoke quickly, Li country currently preserves the most strength among the six countries. Yen country is powerless now, so it's the best opportunity for Li country. It's such a risky situation, and Yen country doesn't mind. Old Lu said, so this is what you meant. It's like this, for Yen country to trust Li country to keep their promise during the period of the agreement, Li's monarch sent the crown prince to Yen country as a hostage. If it was like this, it made sense. The ancients often focused on honor, and a country's crown prince was equal to a country's honor. No wonder Yen country could trust Li country. This kind of plan is indeed astounding. Yi Mu stroked her chin as she pondered. That's not right. Why do I feel like there is something more to this? At this moment, movements came from outside. Old Lu turned pale. Not good, my wife has come back. Yi Mu definitely didn't want to cause any misunderstanding. She immediately prepared to leave from the windows. Before she left, she told Old Lu, wait until I confirm some things, they'll come back to look for you. Old Lu quickly said, don't worry, even if I had to go through fire and water, Old Lu, will not run away. Yi Mu nodded before jumping out from the windows. At this moment, she was thirst and hungry, so she randomly went to find a small store to satiate her hunger. After ordering a few dishes, Yi Mu kept thinking about the problem. Li Country sent the crown prince as a hostage to Yan Country and still had 50,000 troops, and seeing Li Country's sincerity, Yan Country sent out their last troops. What if after Yan Country and Zhao Country defeated Mo Country, Li Country seized Yan Country before they could respond? After all, it was only a crown prince. From the view of a modern person like her, one person was incomparable to one country. But thinking of how the ancients valued supernatural beings and honor, she also felt it was unlikely. Right now, she firstly didn't have any personnel by her side second, she couldn't find any solution. It was at this upsetting moment that a group of men nearby talked loudly. The six countries were currently busy fighting outside. Only Li's people could be so carefree. 
This particular point alone was enough to see that Li Country was given special treatment in Min Liang's plan. He gave Li Country special treatment and emptied Yan Country. If there was no conspiracy in this, Yi Mu couldn't believe it even if she died. At this moment, after one of the men drank, she heard him say. The Empress looks so beautiful, Our Majesty is also good looking, but the Crown Prince's looks is disappointing. A few days ago when the Crown Prince and the 50,000 troops rushed to the battlefield, I went over to have a look. The Crown Prince is short and fat, and his face is flat. I really don't know how such a beautiful Empress could give birth to a child like that. The person next to him quickly stopped him. Just a few mouthfuls and you're off your head. You can even talk about the imperial family. Besides, the crown prince left to become a hostage so that the five countries can win this war. To have such a brave crown prince is a blessing to Lee country. Everyone listened and nodded repeatedly, no longer commenting on the crown prince's looks. But Yi Mu's eyes gleamed. So he looks ugly. She reckoned she had understood something. On the other side, as soon as old Liu's wife came in, she asked, bolting the door in this broad daylight. Are you neglecting work? Old Liu was nervous. No, I just want to take a nap for a while. Don't disturb me, I'm going to sleep now. With that said, old Liu went upstairs. Old Liu's wife was a person whose features were ordinary but very gentle. Seeing old Liu go upstairs, she skeptically walked over to the windows and opened it. On the grass outside, there were a few subtle footprints. Light gleamed in her eyes. Such light footprints couldn't be a man's. Was it a girl who came? She looked up the stair once again, then turned around and went out. Not long after, a white pigeon flew up the sky. After Yi Mu ate, she reckoned she had understood the situation. Min Liang was Yan's crown prince's study companion, and Li's crown prince was held hostage in Yan country. She had a very risky thought, but wasn't there a saying? Eliminate all impossibilities, and the remaining possibilities, no matter how fantastical it was, were possible. If this crown prince from Li country was fake and Min Liang was actually Li's crown prince, wouldn't all of this make sense? Only if Min Liang was from Li country would he be partial to Li country, and only if the crown prince was fake, when Li country wanted to go to war and Min Liang came back to his position, would be the most spectacular ending. By that logic, coming here was indeed a mistake. This was Min Liang's territory. With this thought, Yi Mu carefully looked around. At this moment, she was dressed up as a boy. She wasn't conspicuous, but she still had to be careful. For now, there were only two ways. One, get evidence. Look for Yan's monarch. This way, he could stop his foolish behavior. But this would take too long and couldn't dissolve M.O. Linyuan's desperate situation. So the only thing she could do was. The next few days, Yi Mu stayed silent. On the other side, Min Liang received a letter from a subordinate. Oh. A woman. His handsome face slowly turned happy, revealing a mysterious smile. For some reason, after seeing the two words a woman, he thought of that wedding day, that sharp woman. She opened the curtains of the moving palanquin looking outside. When he saw her, he thought she was indeed a pure woman. Who would have thought M.O. Linyuan's and his taste were similar? But now that he thought of those clear eyes looking outside, and associating them with the person next to her, he had a brazen thought. Could it be that while he was in M.O. country to target Yimu, Yimu had run off to his home? Interesting. In that case, ITLL be so easy to catch her. Chapter 390. Using explosive weapons again. With this thought, he sent back a reply. That faint lift of the corners of his mouth seemed to display a good mood. Yi Mu stayed silent for a few days. A few days later, she looked for Old Lu again. As soon as Old Lu saw it was her, he quickly opened the door and worriedly asked, Your Excellency, where have you gone these few days? I thought trouble befell you. After Yi Mu came in, she quickly said, could you contact the other Mo's in the country? I've thought of a way, but I need someone trustworthy to do this. Old Lu said, don't worry about this, we have always remembered the secret signal to communicate. Besides, we've hidden here for many years. We've waited too long for this day. His eyes stirred with excitement. It wasn't hard to see the extent he would go to serve the country. 
Yi Mu showed her first relaxed smile in these few days. Sorry for the trouble. I need them found now, the faster the better. Old Lu nodded. You can wait here. My wife usually doesn't come back during the day, she puts up a tofu stand in the west. If she comes back, just say you came to purchase oil, and because my store lacks supplies, I went out to replenish the stock. Yi Mu nodded and quite embarrassedly said, I've troubled your family. Old Lu smiled. Not a problem. I'm going now. With this said, Old Lu went out. Yi Mu sat in the dim room, ready for him to come back. Time ticked away. Yi Mu gradually became uneasy and got up. Normally, it wouldn't take this long, was it possible that? Yi Mu just stood up when someone smashed the windows and came in. The cold light of that sword flashed and Yi Mu hastily dodged, so close and she would be hit. Who's it? The other party covered his face and did not utter a word. Before long, more assassins poured in from the windows. Yi Mu hastily evaded. Although she no longer had internal energy, she wasn't someone who could be easily defeated. While she dodged, she snatched a sword and stabbed two people to death. Who are you all? A black-clothed person in the lead had known Yi Mu could do martial arts, but smiled. Mo's empress truly is brave, actually coming here by yourself. Our monarch requests for you. Think wisely, it's best if you don't struggle. With that said, they went to attack Yi Mu again. The other party had internal energy masters while Yi Mu completely depended on her external kung fu. Naturally, it was strenuous. Slowly, her wounds increased, and blood trickled out. Yi Mu knew, in this period when medical wasn't good, if her injuries were deeper even by a little, she might not be able to be saved. So she had no choice. She suddenly fished out something from her arms. After igniting it, she threw it toward them. Those people didn't know what it was. Because it didn't hit them, no one dodged it. The next second, a small ball exploded and countless small nails burst out, giving out a loud bang. Yi Mu had gone to hide behind a pillar before the explosion and then heard horrible shrieks after the explosion. This was her chance to escape out the windows. She was a little flustered because she had so many wounds that kept dripping with blood. She also had a headache. The excessive loss of blood didn't let her come round if old Lu had betrayed her, or if there was a spy around old Lu and he was found out. Yi Mu who wasn't able to think in the end ran back to her own rented small courtyard. But this wasn't a place to linger for long. They would chase after her from the smell of her blood. She must give them a good show. Yi Mu gritted her teeth as she quickly and carelessly bandaged herself while taking out the thing she prepared these few days. When more internal energy masters ran after the bloodstains, they saw Yi Mu standing by herself in the courtyard. Fear still lingered from the strange hidden weapon Yi Mu used before, so now they didn't dare go near and stand on the enclosing walls. Not long after, she was surrounded. Yi Mu sat in the middle of the courtyard as though she had given up struggling. She weakly looked at them. Who exactly are you, least people? If I have to die, you should at least let me know. The previous men in black had died. A new leader came out and looked at her with a cold smile. You're a woman, so why did you have the guts to come to Lee country? Turns out you have something terrifying. Your previous weapon was really interesting. My fellow men were all harmed, but that weapon was of excellent workmanship, so you must not have many on your person, right? Yi Mu ignored his probing. She directly asked, You're Min Liang's people, am I right? Ask Min Liang to come and see me, otherwise, suffer the consequences. Yi Mu was surrounded, and yet she still held such a manner, making everyone quite overwhelmed. The leader in black asked, so close to death and still have so many questions. Do you think our master will see you as you please? Yi Mu smiled. Which also means he isn't here. Her face was becoming paler and paler. Dark blotches slowly stained her grey clothes from the blood, but her expression remained normal and she still spoke confidently. What a pity. Pity what? That person asked. A pity I can't kill all of you. The moment he heard that, his expression changed, and then coldly smiled. Is there any meaning to talk big? Everyone come up. Master has said, as long as she is alive, intact or not doesn't matter. In that split second, Yimu also raised her head. 
Her eyes shone alarmingly. That's right, intact or not I also don't care. The second she said this, she suddenly fell down in place. Those people in black coming to kill her did not expect her reaction. In the end, they came down from the walls. The moment their feet touched the ground, the courtyard resounded with a large boom. Silent gun smoke soared up. After the explosion, the aggressive group of people was now wailing in anguish. Yi Mu's body was covered with soil, but luckily, there was finally no one to kill her. Be grateful y'all. Yi Mu climbed up from the ground, looking at the people on the ground with a cold smile. If it wasn't for the insufficient materials, the result wouldn't be like this. Although she had said she wouldn't use explosive weapons, desperate times call for desperate measures. Since the other party had fixed their eyes on her, she couldn't just await her doom. She glanced at these people before limping outside, but she didn't walk far. Hidden below the cellar of the building next door, the most dangerous place was the safest place. The things she had prepared these few days were also here. In a critical moment, she only needed to get close to these things to save herself. Of course, before all, the most important thing was to wrap up her injuries. Just wait, she would never admit defeat. Chapter, 391 Fight Back Mo Linyuan knew Yi Mu was risking her life for him he could never stay calm. He knew Zhao country and Yan country would increase army, rations, and weapons, which was all the more reason he couldn't sit idly. But right now, Mo country couldn't move their troops. He must inflict heavy losses on Zhao and Yan armies before reinforcements arrived so that it was possible to win. By now, both parties had fought many rounds, and each had their victories and defeats. The side Mo Linyuan was guarding, Yuan City, was the city's frontier he must defend. Your Majesty, the enemy has retreated. We've won this round and there aren't too many casualties, but because the enemy knows they have reinforcements, their morale will only rise. What do we do? Mo Linyuan asked, have all Yuan City's people been evacuated? Besides the garrison, the commoners have all evacuated. Mo Linyuan nodded. Suddenly, he had a risky thought. He told the soldier beside him, come closer. And then, he told him his plans. The other person listened and was rather hesitant, but seeing Mo Linyuan's persistency, he nodded. It'll get moving now. If we succeed this time, they'll surely suffer heavy losses. Even if their reinforcements have come, they might not have too much advantage. But if they failed, the situation in Imo country would become more difficult. So this time, there could only be success, no failure. The next day, Zhao's and Yan's armies attacked again. Before this, they were the retreating party because Mo Linyuan's offensive was too fierce, but now, reinforcements were coming. To keep Mo Linyuan from dealing damage, and to keep their morale up, they would attack once every day, no matter if they could take him down or not, no matter what the outcome was. It was also that Mo Linyuan would have to resort to a surprise attack. They attacked as usual, and Mo Linyuan still sent people to meet them head on, but for some reason, this time the Allied forces' offense seemed to be especially fierce. Mo's defending troops felt overwhelmed. Zhao Country's general saw this and thought Mo Country had lost its strength. He thought this was a good opportunity to make merit, so this time, he didn't retreat when it was time to but commanded to keep attacking the city. The battle continued for more than half a shirchen, and suddenly, Yuan City that was standing upright, after more than half a month of being attacked, the doors finally broke open. One shirchen two hours. And then, the allied forces heard a cry inside, Yuan City fell, run. This cry was very loud, and reached the ears of the Allied forces soldiers. They rushed over and saw many dressed like commoners turning around fleeing for their lives. This was a good chance. Zhao's general was a good warrior. The moment he saw this situation, he commanded to charge. So not many remained of Yuan City's soldiers. Else why did they not see a single soldier once they got in? A large contingent of troops had broken into Yuan City. When Zhao's general saw that it was all the commoners and both sides did not make an ambush, he laughed. Ask everyone to come in. Mo's army has fled, there's no ambush here. His words made those hesitant rush in. They started to pillage and completely didn't notice that those scattering to escape were mostly men. After around 40 to 50,000 people came in, suddenly, Yuan City's doors collapsed, 
and then a dragon gate pounded down from above. Making the forces inside and outside separated. The forces outside were baffled, and those inside were still unaware of the circumstance and saw those escaping people suddenly bring out knives and launch a surprise attack. When they wanted to go back, the path was blocked. And those outside without a leader were clueless about the attack. The soldiers dressed like commoners continued defending the city regardless of the sound of killing filling the air behind them. This battle went on for four to five hours before it ended. After the Allied forces reacted, they turned around wanting to send the remaining people to attack the city. This time, with the impregnable Dragon Gate and City Gate, when the war inside was over, the people outside couldn't charge inside. And Mo Linyuan stood among them. Dead bodies were everywhere around his feet. He was all bloody, but he wore a scary smile. Today, if the Allied forces were on standby and responded fast, his surprise attack would become the enemy's converging attack inside and outside. But just like he guessed, because the enemy was an alliance between two countries, the power was definitely not in the hands of one person. When sending troops, there definitely would have a delay and they could not be on standby. In addition, they had been attacking the city every day. He defended every day and had given the enemy the impression that he was helpless. Thus, the remaining Allied forces didn't think he would suddenly fight back, so he could catch them by surprise. Zhao and Yen suffered heavy losses in this war. They didn't dare to report this. It said that Imo country still excessively piled up corpses at the city entrance to break the Allied forces' confidence. On the other side, Yen country suffered from Li country's surprise attack. Because Yen country was a small country, as well as was nearly country, this news quickly came. In the courtroom, Yan's monarch was frantic. Who did you say are attacking Yan country? Someone said, Li country. They also have taken down one of our cities. Yan's monarch's expression changed. Li country enters while we're powerless. The spy Min Liang left behind was startled, and hurriedly spoke up, Your Majesty, this is impossible. Li country values promise, how can they go back on their words? Besides, their crown prince is still in the palace. Li country is known to be a country of propriety, do they not want to regard their honor anymore? Yan's monarch calmed down. He fixed his gaze on the journalist. Explain the situation carefully. Is it really Li's people? That soldier nodded but also shook his head. The attack came from Li country. Before the commoners in the frontier could see anyone, they scattered. That city was so easily lost. What do you mean haven't seen anyone and already lost? Yan's monarch felt strange. Although their military strength was void, there were still over a thousand troops in every city. What's going on? The journalist said, because, at that time, so many cattle and horses rushed inside. Very small strange casks were hanging on their tails, and they went mad. The troops wanted to intercept, but they quickly scattered. Wherever those animals went, the place caught fire. Someone even shouted least people have come to kill us. So under panic, everyone quickly fled. This is how our city was lost. In other words, it's also uncertain they're not least people. The official who spoke earlier soon caught the main point. He cupped his hands toward Yan's monarch. Your Majesty, this official believes this matter is not clear. Maybe somebody else is trying to sow discord. Hope your majesty will make a wise judgment. Chapter, 392 Scare Yan's monarch then calmed down. He also felt this situation was strange. How could there be such amazing animals running amok and could initiate fire? At this moment, someone suddenly cried, Your majesty. A special envoy from your country requests an audience. Everyone was surprised. Isn't you country attacking Wei country right now? How do they have the time to send someone to come to Yen country? But Yan's monarch glanced at the token. Seeing it was indeed Yu's monarch's jade tablet, he called the person in. Who knew, the one who came was only one person, moreover was a petite youth. You wanted to see this sovereign. In the courtroom, all of the officials stared at the person who came in, expressions quite bad. If not for you country's sudden turncoat, not lending their route anymore, it wouldn't be possible to have today's difficult situation. Yi Mu calmly faced everyone's gazes, and arrived in the middle of the audience hall. That's right. 
this foreign official came to represent you country for an audience with Yan's monarch. Yan's monarch was a thin middle-aged man. Seeing Yi Mu was only one person, he felt rather strange but didn't question much. He only said, what do you want to say? Yi Mu raised her head to look straight at his eyes. This foreign official only has one thing to say. Your Majesty, please listen. Your Majesty, your country is about to be destroyed. Yi Mu's words made everyone in the courtroom turn icy. Before Yan's monarch could respond, someone by his side hurriedly said, Guards! Kill this liar! Yi Mu didn't move even when the guards ran toward her. She stared at Yan's monarch. On the thin and small face was a look of confidence. Sure enough, when those guards were about to touch Yi Mu, Yan's monarch shouted, What do you mean? You better speak clearly, otherwise, this sovereign will not show mercy. Yi Mu smiled. Please let these guards move back a little. Yan's monarch consented, and then Yi Mu, surrounded by the guards and swords, spoke calmly, Your Majesty, this foreign official came from you country. Wei country first spoke with good intentions. After borrowing Yu's route and attacking Imo country, Yu country will benefit from it. But do you know why Yu country defected? An official couldn't help but say, Yu country is treacherous. Isn't it better to say it straight? Yi Mu said, treacherous is of course not correct, but what if the other party schemed in advance? At that time, our monarch has already agreed to lend the route, but who knew someone from Wei country wasn't careful after drinking and said the truth? Said that after destroying Imo country, they'll attack you country. Our monarch then understood, even though head help, had become the other's meat, so how could we not defect? Everyone didn't expect there would be such a reason. They had thought you country and Imo country had long joined hands and waited to trap Wei country. Turns out, Wei country was the first to have this idea. Yan's monarch stroked his beard. Even if you're speaking the truth, how is this related to my country? Yi Mu looked at him. She revealed a rather wicked smile. Your Majesty, you can think again, the same for the Five Countries Alliance. How did you not know Wei Country's plan? This means that person who instigated the Five Countries Alliance spoke differently to every country. Her words inexplicably made Yan's monarch shocked. The other officials discussed among themselves, and Yan's monarch gravely asked them to be quiet. He looked at Yi Mu. Continue. Yi Mu smiled. Maybe that person told Wei Country, you borrow Yu's route, and after destroying Imo Country, not only can you seize Mo's territory, you can turn around and attack Yu Country from multiple sides, obtaining Yu's territory. So Weiss Monarch was then desperate and had the plan of borrowing the route. And maybe, that person told Yuan Country, Wei Country is about to borrow Yu's route. When they're attacking is the best opportunity for Yuan Country to annex Wei Country. Yi Mu's words were nothing at first hearing but gradually made everyone's backs covered with cold sweat. Yi Mu continued, and then that person also said different ideas to Zhao country and Yan country. He might have said, Zhao's and Yan's forces are used to draw Mo's military strength or make it powerless, giving Wei country the upper hand. After Wei country invades Mo Kutnri, when Mo Linyuan is homeless, Zhao and Yan don't have to spend so much manpower and resources to win. Your Majesty, do you think this foreign official is right? Did that person convince you like this? Yan's monarch sat on the throne. His whole body turned ice cold. He suddenly got up and walked down, walking up to Yi Mu. You know all of this. Yi Mu raised her head to look at him and faintly smiled. If not for his promise that the two forces will not suffer heavy losses, how could you ally with Zhao country and risk yourself? After all, Mo country's power isn't inferior to the two countries combined, right? So, this foreign official is guessing he would do this. Yan's monarch was speechless. Yi Mu changed the topic. But you can think again. What's the situation of the six countries now? Wei country is about to fall. Although Yu country and Yuan country can destroy them, they will lose a lot. Not to mention Mo country can only defend the gates to survive. And you two countries didn't think Wei country would end up like that, causing the allied forces, which were originally Bates, to become the main forces that are now in a dilemma. So that you won't lose, you can only keep throwing in more people recklessly. But right now, which country is watching the fires burning across the river, not suffering any damage? Li country. No one knew who shouted out as such. 
the whole courtroom was immediately abuzz. But during this raucousness, Yi Mu's voice clearly reached the ears of Yan's monarch. Your country's Min Liang, gifted with intelligence, turned down the position of prime minister, and maybe he still talks big in your face, said he wants to expand Yan's territory and make it powerful. But the fact is, Yan country is the most miserable in this war. Even Wei country still has the strength to revolt, but Yan country, the supporting allied force that dispatches their last troops, if they want to be seized, it's justly country's matter. So, want your country be destroyed? This time, no one dared to argue Yi Mu's words. The facts spoke louder than words. Then Lee's crown prince is still in. Yi Mu interrupted, Lee's crown prince has been weak and ill since a child and is rarely seen before people. Even many people in the country only have seen him when he's sent hostage, so what if this crown prince is fake? Lee's monarch fell back a step, but Yi Mu approached him a step. If Lee's crown prince is not ill and has been hiding in another country, for example, Yen country? Maybe because of his intelligence, he gained your majesty's trust and became the crown prince's study companion? Yi Mu's words were too terrifying. Min Liang whom they trusted so much, Min Liang who became special friends with the crown prince, could he be from the country? Chapter 393 Successful Persuasion The whole courtroom became quiet for a second, then flared up in an instant. Many thought Yi Mu was right, but there were still some who secretly colluded with Min Liang and ran up and spoke up for him. Your Majesty, don't trust this person from you country. He came to drive a wedge. Yan's monarch's complexion was pale. He stared at Yi Mu and didn't speak for a while. Yeah. You country must want to fight for their friend Imo country, so they sent someone to persuade us. His Excellency Ming is loyal and clearly our Yan country's person, how can he be Li country's? Your Majesty, the reinforcements have been dispatched. It's life and death between our allied forces and Imo country, you must not listen to this person and withdraw. Various voices flooded the courtroom. Of course, there were some who wanted to help Yimu, but Yimu was a foreigner, so even if they wanted to, they had to wait until Yimu left. The noise went on for a long time. In the end, Yan's monarch slowly raised his hand. Everyone fell quiet. He said, although what you said is reasonable, what about the evidence? All of this is your guess. Yi Mu's smile was very calm. This foreign official does not have evidence. Your Majesty does not have to trust, this foreign official came here only to give advice out of goodwill. Yan's monarch said, then let's do this, this sovereign will ask you a question. If you can answer, this sovereign will agree to withdraw the reinforcements and will not fight anymore. One wrong move came a repercussion. For a while, the courtroom filled with Your Majesty in disagreeing tones. Yi Mu nodded. Your Majesty do ask. Yan's monarch said, before, those many cattle and horses that came running from the country, their tails caught fire. Wherever they went, places burned, and in an instant seized this sovereign's frontier city. What's the reason? Yi Mu faintly smiled. Isn't this simple? She said word by word, this clearly is testing the waters. If Yan country still has strength left, then it's possible to fight back. Until then, Li country can say these animals aren't placed by them, that there are people who are framing them. If Yan country can't fend the animals off, it shows that Yan country indeed dispatched all their remaining troops. So storming into Yan country will be very easy right? Yi Mu's explanation was reasonable. Although it was just a guess, no one in the courtroom was able to give a better explanation. Li country was good at literature and not in combat. They wanted to take down Yan country, but they also worried Yan country still had strength, so they probed like this. The result could show the number of troops they could dispatch. Brilliant, indeed brilliant. They weren't able to think that Yi Mu bought those cattle and horses, that it was Yi Mu that pretended to be a merchant and bought them from the herdsmen, that it was Yi Mu who requested a large group of coolies to drive forward the animals, flare up the pots, and set fire releasing them in batches. Those people didn't know why Yi Mu wanted to do that. Even when Yi Mu wanted to set fire in front of them, they couldn't guess the intention. Yi Mu gave them money anyway. She didn't bring anyone this time, but she brought a lot of gold. But Yan country didn't need to know this inside story. They just needed to be frightened. Yan's monarch was quiet for a long time, and then he suddenly turned around. 
He sat on his throne as he ordered, Go. Quickly send someone to summon General Yuan back. Your Majesty. No. How can you believe one side of the story and someone ran up to Yan's monarch, and Yimu laughed. How is it one side of the story? Isn't Li's crown prince still in Yan country? You just have to tell him, say Li country has come to attack. Watch his reaction and won't you know if he's the real crown prince or not. Yi Mu hugged her arms. But you have to hurry because I noticed Min Liang still has many spies in Yan country, maybe someone has sent a warning. What Yi Mu said was reasonable. Yan's monarch hurriedly sent someone to look for that crown prince of Li country. The final result made one apprehensive because, after Li's crown prince knew that Li country has started a war, he immediately killed himself. Yan's monarch was a cautious person. Once this crown prince was in his vicinity, he was closely guarded and imprisoned, so he didn't know the news outside. But after he knew, he immediately killed himself. This showed that, regardless of whether this crown prince was fake or not, he had known the country would come to attack, and had prepared to sacrifice himself for the country. After hearing this news, Yi Mu was relieved. Yan's monarch immediately conferred her as a distinguished guest in a rush and dealt with stopping the war himself. Yi Mu listened to the chaos in Yan country. She knew she shouldn't, but she still fell asleep the moment she touched the pillow, tightly closing her weary eyelids. There were also the wounds on her body that had not healed. It clearly showed it had been such an arduous travel for her. Zhao country and Li country immediately knew about the matter of Yan country urgently calling back their soldiers. It was said Yan country wanted an armistice. The first who disagreed was Zhao country. Their supplies had been delivered to the battlefield. Now the battlefield had also become white hot. Withdrawing the troops at this moment, wasn't it a double loss? But Yan country's reply was, it was schemed against by Li country. So as to not follow the steps of Wei country, it could only defend itself. Seeing Yan country planning to withdraw its troops, Zhao Mingyu knew it was Yi Mu. She didn't know how Yi Mu did it, but it didn't stop her admiration for Yi Mu. Then, she finally instigated the courtiers again to cease fire. Yan country wanted an armistice because it was defenseless and had no other choice, but Zhao country was different. It felt it was made a fool by Yan country. Yan country was bringing it to death. Meanwhile, the one who was very dissatisfied with Yan country was Li country. Two dogs fought for the bone while the third ran away with it. Li country had prepared well, but suddenly, it was disturbed in the middle. So that they would not incur losses in the end, just like what Yan country said, they launched an attack. At this moment, the allied forces opposing Mo Linyuan were stalled by Mo Linyuan, and the reinforcements Yan country wanted to withdraw were still on their way, so Li country attacked Yan country, like a hot knife cutting through butter along the way. This made the whole Yan country sink into the midst of immense panic. But at this moment Yimu didn't know all of this because she had a high fever. Yan's monarch saw that she was smart and had wanted her to help think of a way, but Yimu was burning. How could she think of a way? There was no choice, Yan's monarch threw Yimu to the imperial physician and let her fever run its course. Yimu felt dizzy, there was a feeling like the weight of cloud and mist. She wouldn't die, right? But at this moment, she was kidnapped by someone. Yimu wanted to resist at first but was powerless. She also guessed who would be kidnapping her right now. There was no one else other than Min Liang. Chapter 394 The World as a Chess Yimu wanted to resist at first but was powerless. She also guessed who would be kidnapping her right now. There was no one else other than Min Liang. The moment she thought Min Liang got a hold of her, maybe to force Mo Linyuan to surrender, Yi Mu clenched her teeth, forcing herself to clear her head. At this moment, she still had a fever, and in the horse carriage, two men were with her. Seeing she had woken up, they fiercely said, Don't move. Yi Mu felt something cool was nestling against her neck. Yi Xiaojie, I know you're very smart, but if you want to stay alive, you better not move. Yi Mu swept a glance at him. Seeing he covered his face, she no longer looked. Where were they bringing her? Directly to Mo Linyuan's battlefield or another place? Fever made it hard to think. Yi Mu gradually fell asleep, until the next morning, she opened her eyes, tired and hungry. Water. Yi Mu's hoarse voice came out. 
The carriage was still rushing. Someone heard her and said, why not give her a little water? She looks like she'll die soon. No. The other person refused immediately. This girl is extremely sly. The plan our master has built for many years is destroyed in a moment because of one girl. We absolutely can't underestimate her, well fall into a trap. Yi Mu's smile was bitter when she heard that. She was truly dying right now, how could she think of a plan? But maybe it was because she was tough, but she actually pushed through. These people gave her a bit of medicine along the way, a little water, and a little food. Her body rapidly thinned down. In the end, when she arrived in Zhao country, she was all skin and bones. Finally one day, she went down the carriage and heard someone's e. You guys are too rough, such a little young lady, how'd you make her look so ghastly? Yi Mu strained her eyes open to look at the other's face. His face seemed to glow under the sunlight. She couldn't completely open her eyes, but the other person's features made her sigh in her heart. It's him. Yi Mu wryly smiled. So it was indeed the person she saw on her wedding day. And then she was moved indoors. This time, she finally could drink medicine and eat. She didn't even have the strength to pick up the chopsticks at first. Later after she had a little strength, she grabbed the chopsticks and wolfed down the food. The hypocrite before her frowned. Yi Xiaojie, you represent a country, can't you mind your manners a little? Yi Mu didn't feel like dealing with him. Besides being hungry and sick for days, it was also how she looked when eating. Min Liang faintly smiled. Yi Xiaojie, you must have figured out who I am, right? He had peach eyes full of tenderness. When she saw that the person was extremely gentle, Yi Mu was surprised because she messed up his plan of years. Even if he wasn't seething with rage, he shouldn't be so friendly with her. The only clear explanation could only be that this person was very shrewd, and didn't show his emotions. Min Liang, your country has joined the war. You're actually not worried. After Yi Mu had her fill, she finally had the desire to speak. She looked at Min Liang, surmising his intention. Who knew Min Liang would say, smiling, what's to worry about? His finger pointed in front of the table. If you didn't disrupt the plan, Mo country would be besieged and destroyed by the three countries Zhao, Yan, and Wei. Zhao country would be flanked by Wei country and perish. Wei country would be invaded by Yuan country. And Zhao and Yen would suffer heavy losses after they win. At that moment, looking at the world, only Li country will be in its prime. A year isn't needed to break them up one by one and unite the countries. His plan was perfect, ambition was also wild. Even if Yi Mu knew already, hearing him say it made her think he was a lunatic. He toyed with the world and the people. Each country was like the pawn in his hand. He was playing chess with Mo Linyuan in different places, but Mo Linyuan cared about the lives of the common people, while he didn't care because they were merely pawns. Min Liang added, and now, you ruined my plan. A distressed expression appeared on his pretty face. My perfect chance is messed up because of you. Now Wei country has fallen. Yuan country and Zhao country are reaping the last territory of Wei country. Li country has no other chance but to fight Yan country earlier, and Yan country recalled the reinforcements. Mo Linyuan's pressure is immediately gone. All of this isn't what I want to see. Yi Mu stared at his aggressive look. But you look like you're not worried at all. Worried? What's worrisome? He faintly smiled, peach eyes blinking. Even if Yan country wants to recall the reinforcements, it needs time. Meanwhile, it will be annexed by Li country. Zhao country's main force is stalled by Mo Linyuan so they must fight and its remaining troops aren't enough to resist Li country, so until this war is over, regardless if Mo Linyuan wins or loses, Li country will not suffer damage. The only change is just annexing two countries and unifying all the countries, so what do I have to worry about? Most importantly, if Mo country, Yu and Yuan countries want to win, huge sacrifice is needed, but Li country doesn't have to. Zhao and Yan countries are already rendered powerless by Mo country. Li country on the other hand can expand its land effortlessly, honing its strength. Until then, Li country will be the most powerful leader in the world. His train of thought was clear, making Yi Mu unable to refute. She couldn't help but admit this person was smart, giving people no chance. 
His only mistake was staying in Imol country and didn't rush over in time. If he was in Li country, her acts would be difficult to accomplish. But now the situation was fixed. She also didn't have to worry and only looked at him and said. You're right, Li country flourishes the most until now, no wonder you have nothing to fear. Then why did you capture me? You want to use me to threaten Imo Linyuan? Min Liang smiled, nodding his head. It's what I was thinking before. Mo Linyuan treasures you, it's not impossible for him to surrender because of you. Before Yi Mu could speak, he suddenly shifted the topic. But after seeing you, I changed my mind. Until now, I've always wanted to compete with Mo Linyuan. Although the victor isn't decided yet, if I'm a hold of you, I'm afraid the blow to him will be more serious than losing, right? Yi Mu stood up with a tang. Her face was cold as she said, besides lying and threatening. You even want let go of a woman now? You're getting more and more shameless. Min Liang took her anger as praise. He chuckled. You're not an ordinary woman. Besides, Mo Linyuan likes you so much. I also want to see if you're still capable in a foreign place. Chapter 395 Threaten him. Despicable. Yi Mu's words made Min Liang more excited. His beautiful peach eyes swept over Yi Mu. He clicked his tongue. Don't worry, I won't touch you now. At least I need to fatten you up a bit first. With this said, he smiled widely and left. Behind him, Yi Mu showed a look of despise. She must not let this person have his way. This won't do. She must find a way to leave this place. A few days later, Yi Mu felt her fever finally go down. These few days she had been having a fever. After it went down, she felt life returning to her. But that Min Liang was really low. He knew she could do martial arts, so Ruanjin powder had been put in her medicine and food. Now, she was just like an ordinary woman with very weak strength. Ruanjin powder poison to make the muscles and bones of the body weak and render the internal energy useless. Now what? How could she run away? Just as she was racking her brain, Mo Linyuan advanced victoriously, defeating Zhao's and Yan's armies again and again. Because Yan country suddenly recalled the reinforcements and suddenly wanted to withdraw troops, it gravely shocked the allied forces' morale, and Mo Linyuan kept on charging. They couldn't retreat even if they wanted to. The battlefront was slowly approaching Zhao country from the frontier. Zhao's monarch was distressed, was troubled in and out. Those aristocrat families had said this war wasn't a good idea from the beginning. For such a result now, Zhao's monarch must give them an explanation, must compensate them. Those families used to be strong. After all, in this world, a country could change its name every once in a few years, but aristocratic families were different. There were families that could carry on for millenniums, so when they became stronger, to calm their wrath, Zhao's monarch could only present his eldest son to death. But even if their wrath subsided, the news about the border continuously getting defeated made Zhao's monarch stressed. Now Mo Linyuan was about to reach Zhao country. If he couldn't find a way to stop it, Mo country could annex Zhao country while they were at it. Zhao Mingyu, who had restored her princess status, heard the summon and walked to the imperial chamber. The imperial chamber smelled of medicine. Zhao Mingyu slightly frowned. She no longer had affection for this father. From the start of that matter in Mo country until now, she realized his true colors. But right now, she pretended to drop a tear, stepping forward and asked. Father, are you all right? The fifty-odd-year-old Zhao's monarch's forehead was tied with a yellow headband. His whole person was breathing weakly. When he saw Zhao Mingyu, his eyes teared up in an instant. Muer, you're the only one who can save Zhao country now. Zhao Mingyu was dumbfounded, and then quickly said, Father, if you want to tell daughter something, just say it. As long as daughter can do it, daughter will not refuse. A thought flashed in his cloudy eyes. He didn't have time to beat around the bush and directly said, Moor, tell me honestly. That time at Taiha prison, did Mo's people save you? Zhao Mingyu knew this matter wouldn't remain hidden forever. After all, he was a country's monarch, he would never be completely clueless. Zhao Mingyu hadn't thought of how to answer. The emperor on the bed said, since you're friends with them, what if this sovereign sends you to Mo country to ask for peace? 
no matter if it was losing the land or others, we will not fight this war anymore. No more. Zhao Mingyu's smile was cold in her heart. Before when there was hope, he acted willfully, but after knowing that there was no chance of success, he said he wouldn't fight anymore. How could Mo country agree? Zhao Mingyu pretended to be embarrassed. This is difficult to do, but for the sake of Zhao country, daughter is willing to try. It's just that daughter is merely a princess with no power. How will daughter go to represent Zhao country? Others will ridicule a no one like me. If she wasn't a no one, how could a princess be sent to ask for peace? Zhao's monarch also understood this and immediately hardened his heart. Then, this sovereign will grant you the title of the crown princess. Your elder brother is not filial, a betting father to do so many foolish things. Now father understands. Among this sovereign's children, you are the most thoughtful. So this time, you must not disappoint father. Zhao Mingyu faintly smiled. Then father, deliver the imperial decree. Once the crown princess has been decreed, daughter will immediately leave. Zhao Mingyu's words made the old monarch dumbfounded. This is no small matter. This sovereign has promised, how can you? Zhao Mingyu cut him off. Father, it's not that daughter doesn't believe you, daughter really needs this status to be convincing. If father is not willing, daughter will not have the face to go out. You. The old monarch saw he couldn't deceive Zhao Mingyu anymore and immediately was irritated. But Zhao Mingyu had been fooled by him once. How could he do it the second time? She slowly stood up. This matter is settled. Father, daughter will await your decree. With this said, she paid no mind to the old monarch's ill complexion and left. After she left, she immediately contacted a person from M.O. country to pass on a message. She felt a bit expectant for the decree that was coming. On the other side, Li country irresistibly attacked half of Yen country. Luckily, at this moment, the reinforcements came back, but the difference in number made it difficult for Yen country to defend. In addition, M.O. Linyuan kept on winning. Yen country would soon follow Wei country's footsteps. However, Min Liang was rather unhappy. Originally, he wanted the Allied forces to stall M.O. Linyuan. This way, M.O. Linyuan would use up all his strength. In the end, no matter whether Zhao country or Yen country, everyone would be stopped by Li country. But it was as if M.O. Linyuan knew Yi Mu was in Zhao country, attacking the Allied forces until they were powerless and repeatedly retreating. If this went on, there was no need to mention Yen country. Maybe Zhao country would become a part of M.O. country. How could Min Liang sit still? Afternoon came. Yi Mu raised her head and saw Min Liang come over. At this moment, Yi Mu's hands were tied as well as her feet Min Liang's guard against her was impeccable, so the moment he appeared, Yi Mu was a little nervous. Sure enough, the next second, Min Lian's hand touched her face. That voice was a little sorrowful. Clearly we've been feeding you these days, how do you still not fill out? And your complexion is so bad and looks really disappointing. Yi Mu stared at him, not uttering a word. The next second, Min Liang shoved Yi Mu onto the bed. His gorgeous peach eyes clearly looked pretty, but in Yi Mu's eyes, she only saw hideousness. What are you doing? You're finally speaking. I thought you were mute. Min Liang smiled, a palm on her side, the other hand touching her collar without good intention. I'll tell you again. Mo Linyuan is stretching out the battle line and is about to reach here, but such a fast action is affecting my plan. To slow down his pace, what do you think I should do? Chapter 396 How to break out? You still want to use me to threaten him? Yi Mu glared at him. Min Liang faintly smiled. Well, I have no choice. Who told him to be unrestrained? But I've said I must have you. Then I will use you to threaten him, maybe the outcome will be better. With this said, his fingers go deeper inside as if wanting to do that. You better stop. Yi Mu's voice was calm. Even if she was held down by him on the bed, her thin face still looked calm. Min Liang didn't particularly like that calmness. What, do you still think you still can negotiate with me? Min Liang's fingers lightly undid Yi Mu's outer garment. He coldly smiled. I don't care if you've been touched by other men. You can serve me, it's your good luck. 
He wanted to continue, but Yi Mu closed her eyes and uttered, You can try. As long as you touch me, I will immediately commit suicide. Since you know Mo Linyuan cares for me, then you must know the consequences you have to bear after I die. Min Liang's fingers stopped. Then, he smiled. I don't believe you. You dare to go back and forth to different countries by yourself, and like those common women you'll attempt suicide after losing your innocence. Yi Mu smiled. Because I'm still a virgin. Mo Linyuan didn't have the time to touch me when the war happened. And so many years have passed and I've always waited for him. In this situation, if I'm raped by you, do you think you'll have the face to see him? She opened her eyes to look at Min Liang and said, so you can try. What? Min Liang thought he heard wrong. You are still a virgin. If he remembered correctly, Yi Mu has been with Mo Linyuan for many years. How can she still be a virgin? Yi Mu was indifferent. This is easy to check. I don't have to lie to you. Min Liang's smile suddenly turned dangerous. Did you not think he'll want you even more if it's like this? The woman Mo Linyuan hasn't slept with will be done by me first. I believe he'll go mad. Yi Mu wasn't amused by him. She coldly smiled. What you want is to only threaten him and not make him go mad, because deep down you know what will happen if he goes mad. Both confronted each other unyieldingly. In the end, it was Yi Mu who had the upper hand. Min Liang got up from her body and coldly said, Sure enough people aren't fond of women who are too smart. Since it's like this, then he'll use you to threaten him. You better pray you are that important to him, or else he'll kill you. After saying that, his face was gloomy as he left. Yi Mu let out a long relieved sigh, but her mind was still not at ease. Right now she didn't have a way to escape. If it was like this, would she really be used to threaten him O Lin Yuan? Determination flashed through her eyes. A soldier accepts death rather than humiliation. If that moment really came, she would go for the most extreme measure. Finally, Zhao's monarch could no longer stand Mo Linyuan's pressure and granted Zhao Mingyu the title of the crown princess, sending her to the border for a truce. After hearing this news, Min Liang relaxed slightly. If Zhao Mingyu truly had the capability to convince Mo Linyuan, that's good. Li Country then would have more time and opportunity. But who would have thought when the crown princess was sent out of the palace, Zhao Mingyu looked for the aristocratic families to borrow people to surround the imperial palace. The old monarch didn't know what was happening until, dressed in a yellow gown, Zhao Mingyu walked up to him step by step. Wh what are you doing? The old monarch panicked. What you wanted, didn't I give it to you already, what are you doing now? Zhao Mingyu faintly smiled, looking gorgeous, but her eyes were cruel. I wanted to become the crown princess, but who would have thought I would go out so grand but would be killed by you after coming back? Since you know me and Mo country are friends, how can you be at ease letting me have this position? So that you won't kill me off after I come back, I thought I should kill you first. She said it so lightly, making the old monarch ghastly pale from shock. You you want to kill the king? The old monarch never thought a woman would have such outrageous thoughts. Zhao Mingyu chuckled. I'm forced by you to come to this. You treated me as such that time, you must have known today will come. After she said that, she waved her hand. The soldiers behind her advanced to surround the old monarch. One of them didn't give him any chance and directly used a belt to strangle him to death. Too bad, the old monarch died with regret. But Zhao Mingyu only glanced at him before turning around to leave. After that, the king's death was kept low-key, and the letter of truce was written by Zhao Mingyu. After many aristocratic families signed it, it was sent to the battlefield. By now, the war was one-sided. Zhao Mingyu quickly became the empress, promising Mo Linyuan to look for Yi Mu with all her strength. Mo Linyuan only pondered for one Shichen to agree to her request. The allied forces hastily withdrew. The war immediately stopped, which Min Liang completely didn't expect. If the allied forces didn't continue to stall and deplete Mo country, if the relationship between the new empress and Mo Linyuan was that good, then after Li country destroyed Yan country, wouldn't it be dangerous to border Zhao country? But what he didn't expect even more was, that once the two countries made peace, their soldiers focused on Zhao country's frontier to look for Yi Mu. Because a secret report said Yi Mu was seen within the borders of Zhao country, 
Mo Linyuan and his troops directly surrounded this place. It happened that Zhao country didn't mind helping Mo Linyuan control the place. The commoners were frightened, clueless as to what was happening. Min Liang was caught by surprise like this. He was surrounded in Zhao country's border. Even if he still had many useful people with him, Mo's with Zhao's troops totaled to more than 200,000 people. How could he break the encirclement against so many people and with so many surrounding the place? But he would be found if he continued to stay. There was no choice, Min Liang ordered his subordinate to change their appearances, and then fit Yi Mu into a coffin and set a real corpse above her. There was a high chance of success using this method to exit the city, Min Liang thought in his heart, as long as they could leave, Yi Mu would still be in his hands, and the initiative would still be in his hands. That day leaving the city, all of them disguised as taking part in a funeral procession, wailing along the way. Like Min Liang had anticipated, even if it was like this, their procession would still keep being examined. Yi Mu was wedged between the crevices of the coffin, so they were able to escape from danger. Soon, they arrived at the last frontier gate. As long as they passed through this gate, they would be safe. Usually, even if the other party knew they were a funeral procession, they still had to check the coffin. Min Liang nodded and had servants open them. At this particular moment, suddenly a contingent of troops was just about to enter the city. The person at the head was Mo Lin Yuan. Chapter 397 Caught In that instant, the muscles in Min Liang's body tensed, but he quickly relaxed. Playing chess between experts sometimes only took a few milliseconds. He must not reveal the least bit of weakness. Mo Lin Yuan's complexion was pale and looked like head thinned down, but the look in his eyes was sharp like a knife as if one would be lacerated when stared by him. So the instant he entered the city, everyone subconsciously lowered their heads. The imperial guards had wanted to wait until Mo Lin Yuan left before checking the coffin. Unexpectedly, after Mo Lin Yuan saw the coffin, he immediately went in their direction. Before Mo Lin Yuan spoke, Zi Su who was beside him asked, You're doing a funeral procession? Why not do the burial in the city? There was also a mountain in the city. Many people did the burial inside the city. Min Liang was standing beside the coffin with a grieved face. My father, he died from a plague. With this circumstance, he cannot be buried in the city. This was also the result of Min Liang's special scouting. Mo Lin Yuan didn't mind it much. He said, open the coffin. We want to do the routine inspection. These words were said so casually. At the moment, Zhao country was like Mo country's vassal state, so while Mo Lin Yuan wore Mo's armor, no one objected to anything he said here. After all, if Mo country had not stopped, right now Zhao country would still have to fight. Whether it lived or not in the end would be another question. Hence, Min Liang pretended to be respectful. He opened the coffin and even went near Mo Lin Yuan, letting Mo Lin Yuan who sat on his horse have a good view inside. Seeing there was indeed a person lying inside, Although the face was covered, seeing from the figure, he knew it wasn't the person he was looking for. Mo Lin Yuan was disappointed. Min Liang was relieved. Yi Mu was thin and small, so no one would find her hidden in the boards. In addition, had given her a sedative. She couldn't move now, much less ask for help. Yi Mu indeed couldn't move. She clearly heard Mo Lin Yuan's voice, knew that he was very near, but she couldn't make a sound. Not only was she drugged, but her hand and feet were also bound and her mouth was stuffed. Min Liang had taken great pains to bring her along. Your Excellency, if there is no problem, can we leave? Min Liang asked in a low voice as if he didn't dare to raise his head and didn't know what Mo Lin Yuan looked like. Mo Lin Yuan didn't speak. He turned around and left. He had to urgently search the city, Yi Mu Er's whereabouts must be found today. Min Liang slightly relaxed, and then asked someone to cover the coffin and continued to exit the city. Under the boards, Yi Mu cried. Mo Lin Yuan, Mo Lin Yuan. I'm here. As if hearing Yi Mu's call, Mo Lin Yuan suddenly turned the horse around. That funeral procession had already advanced. At this moment, he suddenly turned back. The first who was frightened was Min Liang. He maintained his composure as he stood beside the coffin. Seeing Mo Lin Yuan left and then came back again, he looked at him puzzled. Your Excellency, you. Mo Lin Yuan cut him off. 
open the coffin again. This Min Liang revealed some anger and with a hesitant look, he said resentfully, Your Excellency, didn't you check it already? My father wants to be laid to rest. This sovereign said, open the coffin. This time, he used the word sovereign. Everyone around heard and immediately figured out his identity. They turned pale with fright, and then quickly knelt down. Tn, before this Mo Linyuan used the usual W. This time, he uses Zhn, a pronoun used by royalties. Min Liang was also startled in his heart, but he had no choice but opened the coffin. It was still an old man's corpse, but Mo Linyuan saw a few signs. Why does this sovereign feel like the base of your coffin is thicker than the norm? Min Liang braced himself. This coffin was hollowed out from a tree, father chose it himself. Mo Linyuan didn't mind it much. He jumped down from the horse as if he wanted to personally examine it. Min Liang couldn't stand it and stood before him. Your Majesty, your Mo country's monarch, but you can't disturb my father again. Mo Linyuan didn't bother talking with him and pushed him away. Seeing Mo Linyuan unrepentant, Min Liang also couldn't take chances. He immediately pounced on the coffin ahead of Mo Linyuan. He pressed a certain button and a slanting crack suddenly appeared on the side of the coffin. Yi Mu rolled out like this, and then was grabbed by him. Mu Er. Mo Linyuan was startled, immediately realizing the person in front of him. The culprit that maybe instigated the five countries to ally, eyes slightly red and glaring with wrath, Min Liang. Let go of her. He had not seen her for a period of time, and Mo Linyuan noticed Yi Mu had become skin and bones. How much had she suffered in Min Liang's hands? Good thing he didn't miss her. But right now, Yi Mu was held by Min Liang. Although with his martial arts he felt he should be able to strike before Min Liang could and save Yi Mu, he was worried Min Liang would move quicker. After all, according to the information, Min Liang was also a martial artist. Min Liang didn't expect his cover to fall through. He revealed a deranged expression. He didn't care about the lives of the people that followed him and fell back while pulling Yi Mu. Don't come near. Or I will kill her. Although Mo Linyuan was anxious, his smile was cold. I offer you a piece of advice. You better let go of her, otherwise, you will not leave this place alive. Min Liang paid no care to the threat. If I let go of her, then I'll have no way to survive. Your country moved so fast and joined hands with Zhao country so quickly. You caught me by surprise, but did you think I will concede like this? No. Even if I die, I will drag Yi Mu with me. How dare you? Mo Linyuan forced himself to calm down. He said, they'll give you anything you want as long as you release her. Min Liang squinted his eyes. He said, give me a swift horse. Mo Linyuan hastily asked someone to pull one. Min Liang added, have all of these soldiers retreat one Li. Mo Linyuan also complied. In this course of time, Yi Mu kept looking at Mo Linyuan. At this moment, her mouth was stuffed with an object. She could only communicate with him with her eyes. She blinked at Mo Linyuan. She believed Mo Linyuan understood. Whether Mo Linyuan understood or not, his expression didn't show it. He only said, everyone, go to the right and withdraw one Li. Min Liang was extremely smart. There were some hints in Mo Linyuan's words, so he said on alert, what did you mean by those words? Why do you want them to go to the right? By now, Mo Linyuan was only about 10 meters away from Min Liang. Hearing this, Mo Linyuan suddenly smiled coldly. Why? Of course to kill you. A short dagger flew toward Yi Mu. Min Liang subconsciously dodged to the right, but Yi Mu slightly inclined to the left. Chapter 398 No Antidote Because her body was stiff, moving only that little was already hard for Yi Mu. But luckily, the dagger stabbed Min Liang's hand. He pulled his hand away by reflex, and the next second, Yi Mu was back in Mo Linyuan's hands. Mo Linyuan's internal energy was outstanding. That instant just now was more like teleportation, not giving any time for Min Liang to react. Min Liang covered his bloody hand and took a few steps back, then was surrounded by the troops. Left turn or right turn was a game that Yi Mu played with Mo Linyuan when she was bored. One person says left, 
the other person will have to lift their right hand. It was to test how fast a person reacted. But Min Liang wasn't aware. He was dead inside, seeing Yi Mu already in Imo Linyuan's hands. Having lost his greatest trump card, he could no longer keep his composure. Eyes bright red, he glared at them. Mo Linyuan also wasn't in the mood to deal with him. His hands cupped Yi Mu's face and carefully examined Yi Mu. She was thin, her face was paler, eyes bloodshot. A glance at her and she looked like she suffered a lot. Mo Linyuan tightly hugged Yi Mu in his arms. Although Yi Mu was untied, her body was still numb. She still couldn't speak. She could only feebly lean against him. He held her hand, and earnestly said, Don't worry, I'll avenge you. So, his eyes indignantly glared at the arrested Min Liang, who unexpectedly didn't resist. Covering his hand, Min Liang smiled. You think I lost? I'll tell you. I fed Yi Mu drug. If you don't have my antidote, she won't live past ten days. As soon as Mo Lin Yuan heard that, he quickly stretched his hand out and grabbed Yi Mu's wrist. He used internal energy to check and found Yi Mu's blood vessels were blocked. She was indeed drugged. Yi Mu thought in her heart, she reckoned she was drugged when she had her fever. Min Liang truly was vile. No one knew what Min Liang was currently thinking, but right now, this drug was his last trump card. After all, Mo Linyuan's troops had locked this place down. There was not one civilian. Even if he stuck on wings he still wouldn't be able to fly away, so right now he only hoped Mo Linyuan really cared about her. What exactly do you want? Mo Linyuan hugged Yi Mu and then asked someone to call the imperial physician. It's simple, let me go. This drug's antidote is only in Li country. When I reach Li country, they'll send someone to give you the antidote. Mo Linyuan laughed from anger. Do you think me as a fool? After Min Liang went back, he would give the antidote. Impossible. Min Liang clicked his tongue. What you can do now is only to trust me, otherwise just wait and collect her corpse. Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes. No, there's still one way. Min Liang suddenly had a bad feeling. He heard Mo Linyuan say, I can take you to Li country and exchange you for the antidote. With this said, Mo Linyuan asked someone to seize Min Liang. Min Liang wanted to resist, but thinking that everyone here was under Mo Linyuan, if he was determined to arrest him, it was useless to resist. So he was soon subdued by Mo's people. While bringing Yi Mu, Mo Linyuan ran into the border's courier station to rest. After over a day, Yi Mu's paralysis finally disappeared. Only then did Mo Linyuan relax. The first words he spoke were, Xiao Muer, don't worry, from here to Yen country is near. Yen country and Li country are fighting now. I'll bring my troops to help Li country, then take Min Liang to Li country in exchange for the antidote. At any rate I won't let anything happen to you. Yi Mu had not seen him for a long time. She nuzzled in his embrace and hoarsely said. Sorry, I'm troubling you. Idiot, what nonsense are you talking about? Mo Lin Yuan frowned, but deep in his eyes was an ache. If it wasn't for you, M.O. Country's war wouldn't subside so soon. You are M.O. Country's hero, Moore. Yi Mu faintly smiled. Your hero. M.O. Lin Yuan resolutely nodded. Also my hero. But there was something M.O. Lin Yuan didn't tell Yi Mu, and that was, after the imperial physician checked Yi Mu's body, it turned out the drug in her body had no solution. That drug could make a person addicted until it could cause death. It was impossible to cure. But what if there is a chance? Mo Linyuan didn't dare to think deeply. Since this is Li Country's drug, maybe Li Country really had the antidote. Thus for the sake of Yi Mu's body, after she got a little better, he set off with her. Their objective was clear this time. Help Yan Country fight Li Country. At this moment, Li Country heard Min Liang was captured by Mo Linyuan. Everyone was agitated. Until now, they went according to Min Liang's plan. Now the mastermind was captured. Do they still have a bright future? This mood affected Li Country's troops. The high morale they had to destroy half of Yen Country was now eased down, giving Yen Country space to gasp for breath. And then Yen Country heard Mo Country was coming to help them fight Li Country. 
Hearing this news, Yan's monarch did not believe his ears. Because it hadn't been long since Yan country called truce with Mo country. Normally, Mo's monarch should be loathing Yan country. How could they help Yan country? But Mo Linyuan led the troops. Many people suspected Mo Linyuan was thinking to seize the opportunity to annex Yan country, leaving Yan's monarch with no say. But what time was it now? Yan's monarch gritted his teeth and let Mo Linyuan enter. And actually, if he didn't, Mo Linyuan could just fight his way in and would be quicker than Li Country. Later, knowing that Mo Linyuan came here to avenge his empress, Yan Country was then relieved. In addition, they knew Min Liang had been captured by Mo Linyuan. With that troublemaker out of the picture, the situation should be easy to get under control, right? But Mo Linyuan was not the least bit optimistic because these few days, Yi Mu had been suffering from loose bowels and vomit. Her condition seemed more critical than before. At this moment, there were only two days left from the allotted time of ten days, so when Mo Linyuan rushed to the battlefield, he dragged the tormented Min Liang for Li Country to hand over the antidote. No one from Li Country knew Min Liang because he had been hiding in Yan Country since he was small. It was Li's general who hastily came out after seeing Min Liang and cautiously asked. What do you want to let go of my country's crown prince? Mo Linyuan didn't beat around the bush and directly uttered the name of the drug. This sovereign wants you to hand over the antidote of forgetting the dust fragrant immediately, otherwise, this sovereign will kill him in front of you. Hearing forgetting the dust fragrant, the expression of least general changed. Forgetting the dust. That thing doesn't have an antidote. Held down in front of the battle formation, Min Liang struggled. His expression said he wanted to speak, but the instant Mo Linyuan heard there was no antidote, he almost went crazy. He clutched Min Liang's collar and took out the object in his mouth. Then he demanded word by word, where is the antidote? Chapter, 399 Exchange Transfusion Seeing his own country's troops, Min Liang slightly relaxed. As long as he could go home, he could make a comeback. He was confident in himself, believed he could do it. So he mutely said, I need to get the antidote myself. Let me go, and I will give you the antidote. He dared to be this confident also because of Mo Linyuan's actions these few days. If not for loving a person so deeply, how could Mo Linyuan come to attack Li Country so quickly? Since Mo Linyuan cared, he must be uncompromising so that he could leave with his life intact. Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes. That fierce murderous look almost made Min Liang suffocate. But after a long time had passed, he suddenly said, All right, I accept. The two armies were poised for battle now, and Mo Linyuan wanted to give the culprit to Li Country. This time, not only Mo's squadron, even Yan Country's people also revealed displeasure. Don't. A high-ranking officer under Mo Linyuan stopped him. Your Majesty, this person is ruthless and cunning, if we return him, there will be more trouble. Tn, he uses which means letting the tiger return to the mountains. Yan's general also said, the five countries' alliance this time we were all deceived by this person. His ambition is clear, tried in vain to conquer the world. All the six countries are injured now, only Li country is unscathed. If we let this person go, we will be the ones in danger. Min Liang wore white clothes stained with blood. Even in Mo Linyuan's clutch, he was still smiling coldly. He narrowed his eyes as he said, Mo Linyuan, the final say is in your hands now. This drug actually has no solution, but it was developed by my master. My master is now dead, so now only I know how to solve it. So what are you hesitant about? Mo Linyuan certainly wouldn't hesitate. He little by little loosened his grip on Min Liang. Wait. Suddenly, a female's voice was heard. Yi Mu walked up to the front step by step. At this moment, she was thinner than before, as if a gust of wind could blow her away. All right. She reached Mo Linyuan's side, and Mo Linyuan immediately turned around, but his hold on her hand was gentle. Before, Yimu didn't feel she was poisoned because Min Liang had been giving her drugs, making her body weak and paralyzed, so she didn't know she was drugged. But these few days, Min Liang no longer gave her drugs. She finally felt the change in her body. This world's drugs and her worlds were different. It could make her body suffer from so much pain. She might only be able to live by continuously taking medicine. 
but she knew better than anyone the consequence of continuously taking medicine. So Yi Mu raised her head to look at Imo Linyuan. Her eyes were filled with sorrow. This drug has no antidote. He's lying to you. Min Liang didn't expect Yi Mu would be the one to interrupt in the end. He coldly smiled. Do you not want to live anymore? Or are you afraid Mo Linyuan will release me, so you purposely said there is no antidote? Earnestly, Yi Mu said, in this drug, there is something that makes people addicted. All that makes a person addicted don't have an antidote unless it's endured or by continuing to take medicine. Min Liang was dumbfounded in his heart. Only Li Country had this drug right now, how could Yi Mu know so much? Yi Mu continued, with my body right now, after eating it ill at most be fine for a short while, but will only get worse later. It won't be long before I only walk the path toward death, so. She grasped Mo Linyuan's hand. Kill him. Well think of another way for my problem, okay? Mo Linyuan's heart ached. If there was another way, why would he have come this far? Min Liang was terrified. He was thrown to the side by Mo Linyuan, but did not dare to act rashly. Mo Linyuan, you won't really listen to her nonsense, will you? The thing I made myself, how can there be no antidote? Mo Linyuan gazed at Yi Mu, not speaking. Min Liang stayed calm as he retreated a few steps. In a loud voice he said, if you want her to live, I am your only option. Tears fell from Yi Mu's eyes. She leaned against Mo Linyuan's embrace. Voice muffled, she said, husband, I'm a little tired. Her saying tired made Mo Linyuan's heart ache so badly that he couldn't stand it. Seeing his own plan could no longer be carried out, Min Lian suddenly turned around and used Qinggong to quickly flee in the direction of Li's squadron. At this moment, both sides were the main forces that were holding the lines. So long as he moved a little quicker, he could live. As long as he could go back, everything was not over yet, he had not lost. Seeing Min Liang act as such, Li's general hurriedly sent someone to help him, but in the split second when Min Liang was about to rush into Li's squadron, Mo Linyuan waved his hand. A swift dagger passed through the gap between several people and plunged into Min Liang's back. His face still held joy and anticipation, but that expression was doomed to freeze at that moment. Following Min Liang's crash to the ground, both groups were stupefied. Without waiting for Li's general to say anything, Mo Linyuan hugged Yi Mu as he said, Lieutenant, listen to my command. Mo Linyuan uses Zhu Jiang Jun, which literally translates to left general. It's among the three highest senior positions, ranked second. The first being big general and the last right general. The high ranking officer that stopped Mo Linyuan earlier stepped forward. Here. Mo Linyuan's voice was very light. This sovereign will give you a month's time to wipe out Li country. Can you do it? That general looked at Mo Linyuan's extremely pale face and felt sorry for him. This subordinate will not let your majesty down. After that, both parties started fighting. Mo Linyuan had carried Yi Mu home. He didn't wear any armor and only wore a white long gown. At this moment, the long gown lifted from the wind, and there was an indescribable silence. Yi Mu was asleep, but Mo Linyuan knew, she was weak to the extreme. If this was fate, he did not believe it. He must fight it. Afterward, Mo Linyuan fed Yi Mu medicine to make her sink into a deep sleep. When Yi Mu woke up, she found she was already in Mo Country's imperial palace. What was going on? The moment she woke up, Mo Linyuan grabbed her hand. Yi Mu wanted to speak at first, but she suddenly felt queasy inside, making her whole person curl up. Mo Linyuan didn't tell her anything about the war. He stretched out his hands and lightly held her in his arms, her body curved from pain. Moor, don't be afraid, I've found a way to save you. Yi Mu looked at him weakly. If Head found it, why hadn't he saved her? She was in pain, every minute she was in pain. Mo Linyuan also lost weight with her. He said in a deep voice, the poison has seeped into your blood vessels. I found someone who said they can give you an exchange transfusion, but... Mo Linyuan didn't say the rest. In modern times, exchange transfusion of the whole body was very difficult, much less in this period. Yi Mu eased up after a long while, her body slowly relaxing. When she had calmed down, she saw Mo Linyuan's bloodshot eyes and her heart ached. He asked, 
are you willing to try? Chapter, 400 Went home. Feeling her weak body, Yi Mu knew she would surely die if she agreed to the exchange transfusion. But at this moment, she said without a second thought, I'm willing. Her words made Mo Linyuan who had been hesitating finally become determined and decided on the transfusion. Yi Mu sank into a deep sleep once more. After Yi Xiaolang heard the news, he unheedingly looked for Mo Linyuan. Aji, you really want to exchange transfusion? He was flustered. That physician from you country is like a lunatic. You want to listen to such a person? Even Yi Xiaolang knew, Yi Mu's time was limited now. When she awakened she would suffer from the poison, but with a long time of deep sleep, she might die from being weak. But this was better than being strongly tormented before dying. Hearing that person said exchange transfusion, special catheters had to be inserted into over a hundred acupoints of the person. With Yi Mu's current body, wouldn't she die right then and there? But Mo Linyuan had made up his mind. In his thin face, only his eyes shimmered with light. He covered his chest and word by word said. I will not let her die. Seeing he couldn't persuade him, Yi Xiaolang could only give up. After all, he knew well, that as long as Aji wanted to do something, Xiao Jie would have already agreed. On the day of the transfusion, Yi Mu drank a big bowl of ginseng soup. Although she threw up more than half, she looked better than usual. She saw a beard so long, a rather unkempt uncle, and also the many people helping him, as well as some strange equipment and tubes. Those tubes, would they be using them on her body? Although Yi Mu forced herself to smile in front of Mo Linyuan, she knew the best about her Bodhis condition. Even if she didn't do an exchange transfusion, she wouldn't live more than two days, so today, the probability of her surviving on the bed was close to none. This might be her last time seeing Mo Linyuan. She gripped his hand tightly, not willing to let go. Mo Linyuan sat by her side, expression gentler than ever. Don't be afraid, you will be fine. Yi Mu forced a smile. Shed used up her strength. Husband is really good, to meet you and marry you. Mo Linyuan's dry eyes gradually became red. He suppressed his emotions, saying nothing. Yi Mu lightly smiled. Tears streamed down the corner of her eyes. Too bad. Too bad what? Too bad I haven't left a child for you. The matters afterward, Yi Mu was not aware. She didn't know if the transfusion had started, didn't know that her body was too weak that it couldn't bear it from the start. In the end, the bearded man shook his head. It's useless, she can't endure it, shall die. In Yi Mu's dying breath, she heard Mo Linyuan's faint voice. Continue. Even if she has died, don't stop. And then, something was squeezed into her hand. A trembling kiss fell on her lips. Xiao Moor, I will always wait for you. You'll come back, right? These words were like a curse, resounding again and again beside Yi Mu's ear. The thing in her grip gradually became burning hot. And then, her body became light, very light. When she opened her eyes, she saw a nurse. You finally woke up. A beautiful nurse reassured her. I was just about to call you. The surgery will start soon. You look so tired, can you really do it? Yi Mu still hadn't come to her senses, but her body subconsciously said, I can. Let's start. And then she was pushed to the operating room. After injecting anesthesia, she should be fast asleep, but her head was incomparably clear. She knew she was in the process of having a bone marrow transplant, and also knew the target was her father suffering from leukemia, but so many memories surged in her mind. She fell in love with a man that wasn't here, much much in love. In the end, that man sent her back himself. Yi Mu used great effort to recall that person's face, but couldn't. Every time she did, it was white clothes, a pair of stunning phoenix eyes. It was as if he was smiling, but she couldn't remember most of his features. In her muddled condition, she was sometimes distinctly awake, sometimes in a deep sleep. Finally, the surgery was over. It was said the patient received it well, the body did not give any rejection. But the follow-up conditions still needed to be observed. This period of observation was at least six months. At this moment, Yi Mu was separated by thick glass and looked inside. It was as if she hadn't seen her dad in a very long time. She didn't know when his hair had all gone white. 
With a breathing mask, his weak look was just like when she was dying from the poison. She suddenly thought of this. She suddenly felt frantic, and then she turned away and ran outside. Hey, wait. Where are you going? The nurses chased after her, but how could they catch up to Yi Mu? Although she was wearing a hospital gown, she was not sick. She went back home at her fastest speed. After she got home, she was still quite in a daze looking at the small house in front of her, and then she rummaged through her room. That biography book. Where was that book full of his biography? Shed loved someone. That person's name, she at least had to know. Finally, she found that yellow biography. Fingers slightly trembling, she opened the book. It was still the beautiful writing. She sat on her bed, flipping through each page. Then, she saw his name. M.O. Linyuan, M.O. Linyuan. Yi Mu understood some of her missing memory. She had to retrieve them. Maybe all those memories would be recalled soon, but she missed him so much, so she couldn't wait even a moment. Soon, she finished reading the biography book. Her finger traced again and again over the section where M.O. Linyuan died of illness at the age of 40 odd. She didn't know when she started crying. It was difficult to imagine. That person with unmatched beauty, that wise man, was her husband. But why did he die so early, was it because of her? The missing memories were coming back little by little, but at this moment, Yi Mu closed the biography and decided on a plan. She wanted to go back, she wanted to go back to that man's side. Days passed, but Yi Mu didn't report back to the army. It was impossible for someone like her to go against the superior's orders, but Yi Mu had a reasonable reason. She wanted to stay and accompany her father. After Yi Xinda woke up, seeing his daughter still by his side, he was very surprised because since she became part of the special forces, his daughter had always been busy. She had countless tasks, her youth and life were all to serve the country. Seeing her father awake, Yi Mu quickly brought water up to his lips. Dad, drink water. At this moment, Yi Xinda was already moved out of the special ward. His recovering condition was also not bad. He couldn't help but ask, Xiao Mu, you asked for leave. Chapter, 401 Yi Mu was struck dumb. She shook her head. Dad, are you hungry? Yi Xin sighed. Don't feel like eating right now. Since he said so, Yi Mu didn't force him. Although a few days had passed, she knew her father's digestive function still had not recovered. Seeing Yi Mu not speaking again, Yi Xinda forced a smile. Xiao Mu, you were quite lively when you were a child. The more you grew up the more serious you became. Does the army not let you smile? Hearing this, Yi Mu smiled quite sheepishly. She remembered she was still lively in the other world, but once she got back to this body, she could feel the sense of mission and naturally couldn't relax and smile. She couldn't help saying, no, the army is very good. The superiors look after me, the new recruits under me also listen well. Then why are you frowning? Yi Xinda suddenly asked, actually, I wanted to ask a few days ago. Xiao Mu, you have something weighing on your mind. Yi Mu stopped her action of placing the glass. She wanted to say it later, but she didn't expect her father was so sharp. She sighed in her heart, better to say it now. Dad, I want to retire. Yi Xinda was stupefied. Why? You're still so young. Although it's the special forces, your work right now isn't very dangerous. Why do you want to retire? Have you forgotten the effort you've put into Kung Fu before you finally got selected? Yi Mu naturally knew the energy shed spent away that time, but, her heart currently belonged to someone. A caring person was not sharp anymore. It was time for her knife to withdraw. It's okay, anyway there's so much conscription every year. Having me or losing me isn't a big deal, I'm just afraid my superior will not agree. What if you help me call them, Dad? Yi Xindet seriously looked at her. That face that lost weight was very sharp. Xiao Mu, tell me honestly, what is your reason to retire? If you can convince me, they'll help you make this call. Yi Mu couldn't help but smile. If you really want to know, then they'll tell you. I, your daughter, want to marry. Yi Xinda was dumbfounded. Which soldier have you seen? It was no surprise Yi Xinda asked this. Yi Mu's training was closed, and only a few people would be with her when she went out to do missions. 
If she wanted to marry, her partner should be among them. Yi Mu thought of Mo Linyuan. She pursed her lips into a smile. Although she still didn't remember his appearance right now, she knew he was exceptionally outstanding. Your daughter wants to marry a sovereign, and he is very handsome and rules the world. Most importantly, he really loves me. If it weren't because he knew his daughter's psychological quality was perfect, he would doubt whether Yi Mu was crazy or not right now. Sovereign. Which countries? Which country's monarch would be very young? And with Yi Mu's identity, it was impossible for her to come into contact with other countries. Dad Yi was confused. Yi Mu was forced to an answer to this point. She had no choice, she just had to say it. AI, I didn't want to say it, I wanted to wait until you get better, but Dad, since you keep asking, I also can't hide it from you. It's like this, I've married, but, I didn't marry a modern person. I married an ancient person. Yi Shinda was muddled. Ancient person. Dad, are you with me? Yi Shinda felt weirder the more he listened. He furrowed his brows. Xiao Mu, what are you saying? Yi Mu didn't care whether he could understand or not, and continued. Dad, you might not believe it, I've crossed worlds before, like in movies. From now, I crossed to the ancient times. Yi Shinda suddenly doubted if his daughter had gone mad. How else could she say this? But before he could say anything, Yi Mu continued. I'm not lying to you. Everything I said is true. Dad, don't interrupt me. Just listen until I'm done. Maybe it was because Yi Mu was too calm and didn't look like she was not in her right mind, but Yi Shinda forced himself to hear Yi Mu until the end. From her crossing worlds and rescuing a person, until obtaining the city boundary map and coming back. This was a very long story. Yi Mu talked the whole afternoon before slowly coming to an end. Yi Shinda was completely dumbfounded. He had never heard of such a fantastical matter before, so hearing this, he felt it was unfathomable. But although this matter was absurd, he kind of believed it because he knew his daughter. His daughter couldn't make up this kind of story, much less use this kind of story to lie to him. But there was still a small doubt. He asked, what about the evidence? You said you brought the map back here. The map should still be here, right? Yi Mu shook his head. Just like when I went, I didn't bring anything. When I came back, there was nothing too. And I've spent so much time there, but only passed the time for sleep here. Yi Shinda couldn't help but say, maybe it was just a dream. Yi Mu suddenly pressed her lips and didn't speak. Yi Shinda had a bad feeling. You're not going to look for him, are you? Xiao Mu, even if what you said is true, you're back now. He's also been dead for many years. Yi Mu looked at her father's anxious face and couldn't bear it. Her father was her motivation to come back, and now, she wanted to leave because of a man. That was rather too unfilial. So she didn't say more. Anyway, her father would be hospitalized for six months, she also hadn't found a way to go back. And if she had, she wouldn't say it first. Even her heart kept resounding with Mo Linyuan's last words. I'll wait for you to come back. But at this moment, she didn't say anything. Okay dad, don't think too much. Just focus on recovering. Right now, your health is the most important. She changed the subject and resolutely said, but I want to retire. They'll have to trouble you to speak with the army about this. Because it was hard for the country to train a commando. It wasn't like if you asked to retire then you'd retire. But luckily her father had a reputation in the institution, so he could help her. Seeing Yi Mu had made up her mind and was faced with this kind of situation, Yi Shinda also didn't dare let his daughter go into the army anymore. Although his daughter had a dangerous occupation, not once was Dad Yi this scared, scared that she wouldn't come back after leaving again. This matter then was settled. Yi Mu didn't go back to the army and focused on taking care of her father. And father's health also didn't disappoint, getting better each day. One day, Yi Mu said happily, the doctor said you're recovering really well. If you don't have any relapse in five years, you should be fine. Yi Shinda smiled, but his face still carried a worried look. Xiao Mu, when you went to the army last time, did they tell you anything? Yi Mu shook her head. No, why do you ask? Chapter, 402 Ruling the World Yi Mu said, she was very clever in the army, 
so although her superiors strongly urged her to stay, seeing that her mind was set, they gave up. The men she led outside actually cried a lot and said when they had their vacation, they would come see her. But this group of special forces, when would there be an official vacation? She told them to work hard and then left with ease. Yishinda listened and was relieved in his heart. It went well, that's good. Xiao Mu, if you have nothing to do these days, go out less. You can accompany me and talk with me. Remembering they weren't able to get together much in the past many years, Yi Mu nodded. All right. After you're discharged, they'll make you food at home. Yi Shinda was elated. At night, Yi Mu was hungry in the middle of the night. She looked at Yi Shinda who was sound asleep on one side and gently got out of bed. After she left the room, the entire corridor was empty. It was truly scary. Yi Mu prepared to go to the 24-hour convenience store outside the hospital to buy some snacks, but when she was about to get off the elevator, a shadowed figure suddenly pounced on her. Yi Mu's reaction was fast. She quickly buckled the other's hands behind their back, and the two people tumbled into the elevator. Who are you? Why did you attack me? Yi Mu pushed the other party against the elevator's mirror. That person was a man she didn't know. At this moment, he was glued onto the elevator, but smiled at her as he said, Yi Xiaojie really has a bad memory. Did you forget snatching the cargo from me a few months ago? Yi Mu frowned. You're a pirate. At this moment, the elevator's doors suddenly opened, and the other person fought back, separating from Yi Mu. I came just to tell you, don't touch things you shouldn't touch. It'll give you three days to hand over that thing, otherwise, your father has to be careful. After saying that, he ran. Yi Mu didn't chase after. It was useless to capture a person who delivered a message and tested her skills. But, hand over the thing. How could she not remember taking their thing? This person who appeared suddenly made Yi Mu anxious and she made a few phone calls. Although she had left the army, she still had connections. The other party was rather slow in picking up the phone. Who? It's me, Yi Mu. The other party's casual voice became lively at once. Yi Xiaojie, what do you need calling at this time? Yi Mu asked, a few months ago, didn't I arrest a pirate and hand over the cargo to the higher-ups? I didn't check carefully last time, can you help me check right now what's inside the cargo? This request was a little bit too much, but the other party didn't hesitate the least bit and went to check. A moment later, he told her, it's a fossil, an iron meteorite, and some illegal weapons. Someone did illegal research and these things were mixed with narcotics and were together transferred to the higher authorities. Yi Mu felt strange. Then when those pirates were interrogated, they didn't say anything. The other party went to check for her again, then lowered his voice. The details of the interrogation are a secret. He'll tell you, but you must not tell anyone. He looked at the contents and it was as if he wanted to smile. He suppressed his smile and told her, among the group of people who were arrested, there were a few who did research. They said they had discovered a substance that can make people extend their lives, but the radiation of that thing is too strong and is not permitted into the country. So they took a risk and also said we have to return their research results to them. It's said to be a small tube of drug. Extremely small, the size of a finger. Yi Mu suddenly widened her eyes. If it was that thing, she she had an impression. That time, she first tracked down a historical relic that was about to be shipped out of the country. That biography book was among them. Later, on the way back, she smoothly tracked down illegal cargoes that were about to sneak into the country. That time, they had a fight with the pirates. During the fight, she stretched her arm out to grab an old man who was about to dive into the water to escape, but who knew that old man's kung fu was good, though was still not as good as hers, and was caught by her. In haste, he grabbed a syringe and plunged it into her neck. She thought it was anesthetic and didn't think about it much because the instant she was pierced, she felt dizzy. But she still didn't let go of that old man and succeeded in apprehending him. But regretfully, it seemed he killed himself in the prison. Now thinking back, the drug that old man injected her seemed to be the thing they were looking for. But after being injected, she didn't feel anything wrong. She had gone to the military doctor to check, and the doctor also said her body was fine, there was no problem. Or it could be said their research was already successful. After injecting that thing, 
besides being able to extend lifespan, there was no other effect. Yi Mu still felt odd after hanging up the phone, but right now she was being eyed. She was fine, but her father was still here, so Yi Mu gave a call to her superior, applying for protection. With her father's military merit, the superior immediately understood the situation and said would send people to head over to protect him. But Yi Mu didn't tell the truth. She only said they were eyed by a terrorist and needed help. As for the drug problem, she felt she should carefully check her blood again. On the other side, the other world. Yi Mu had successfully done the blood transfusion, but injecting the new blood was useless because Yi Mu had become a living corpse. Mo Linyuan watched Yi Mu who was in a deep sleep. It had been over a month. He kept watch over her every day, hoping she would come back, but unfortunately, she didn't. Her breathing was in its dying thread. No matter the imperial physician or the monk and Taoist priest, they couldn't reverse the situation. An old monk had said before, Yi Mu's soul had left. Her soul had left. How could she wake up? She might keep being in an eternal sleep until the moment she died. That monk indeed wasn't exaggerating. Yi Mu kept being in a deep sleep and couldn't eat. Even if Mo Linyuan fed her ginseng soup every day to suspend her life, it wasn't a long-lasting plan. At this moment, Mo Linyuan held her hand. Inside the resplendent palace, there were only the two of them. There was only the flickering of the brightly lit candle. Xiao Muer, they'll be leaving. This time, he came to say goodbye. Because a Taoist priest told him, that as long as he accomplished the fate he was bound to, maybe this person with destiny would wake up. And his fate, wasn't it what Yi Mu said, ruling the world? Mo Linyuan still remembered, Yi Mu said he was a legendary emperor. Then, when he became a legendary emperor, would she come back? Tian, Qian Gu E D, I translated it to legendary emperor but it's a title for an emperor who has done unprecedented achievements. This was a very uncertain hope, but Mo Linyuan still gambled. Besides, Min Liang had stirred this world into a complete mess now. If he wanted to obtain this world, it was easy, but what he needed was time. It wasn't that he didn't want to bring Yi Mu with him, but her body did not permit it, so, he came to say goodbye and lightly sealed a kiss on a section of her lips. Im leaving. His cheeks that had thinned down looked quite frightening, his eyes were also bloodshot, but his expression was determined. Im leaving, he'll accomplish my destiny. I hope when I come back, you'll wake up, okay? Chapter 403 Make a pact. But his words inevitably wouldn't get a response. On the wooden bed of golden silk with drawings of dragons and phoenixes, Yi Mu was still as thin as before, as if she would turn into dust at any time and disappear from the world. And at night, Yi Mu actually dreamed. In the dream, she felt someone kiss her. She still couldn't see that person's appearance, but she knew that person was her husband. After Yi Mu woke up, she grabbed her head, feeling pain. She hadn't found a way to go back, and she was her father's only daughter. Abandoning her father to go back was impossible, but with her emotion, a heavy one, and couldn't go back, what was she supposed to do? As such, she sat on the bad half the night. The next day, Yi Zhenda saw her weariness. What's wrong? What happened? Yi Zhenda had something on his mind but didn't dare say it. Right now, he was skeptical Yi Mu had encountered those matters. Nothing. Yi Mu got up and poured water for Yi Zhenda. Dad, the superiors will send two people to come protect you, don't think much of it. How could this not be thought about? Yi Zhenda was startled, and mutely said, Muer, tell me honestly, did something happen? Yi Mu felt weird. Dad, you've been acting strange. Could it be you feel something will happen? Seeing Yi Mu wasn't willing to talk, Yi Zhenda immediately said, It's not me, it's you. Me? Yi Zhenda sighed. Might as well not hide the truth. Before you left, the army pressed you to stay in every possible way. I think it's strange, there's no reason for them not to give me this honor, and then your superior told me, said a criminal syndicate might be eyeing you. What eyeing? Yi Mu remembered that person's words yesterday night and that phone call. Do those people think I took their thing? Yi Zhenda nodded. Me and your superior believe you, we don't think you'd take their thing, but those people seem to be looking for you, so that's why they didn't let you go before. Yi Mu frowned. Dad, I know. 
Actually, someone came for me yesterday night, that's why I applied for someone to protect you. In this period of time, you also shouldn't casually wander about. Yishinda couldn't help but ask, exactly what thing is it? I've asked, but Xiao Lu didn't tell me. Yi Mu smiled. Just some crazy people who want to stay alive, inventing a boring thing. It said it can stimulate someone's genes and prolong a person's life by at least 50 years. Yi Mu's words made Yi Zen's expression suddenly grave until now, people had never stopped the research in the field of the human bodhis genes, everyone wanted to live a long life. Once there was progress, it would definitely make everyone in the world deranged. He solemnly asked, then, have you seen that thing? Yup. Yi Mu replied without care. She touched her own neck. There was an old man who gave me an injection. I went for a checkup after that and nothing was wrong, so I'm guessing those are fake. It's just some medical element, tools used to get money from wealthy people, but those people believed it. Yi Shindo was terrified. What if you still train in the army? You've always been in the army before, they won't dare to take you or anything. The drug has been injected into your body now. You say it's fake, but the others don't believe it. What if those deranged people kidnap you? It's fine, dad, you don't have to worry. Yi Mu sighed. I want to accompany you. In the army, I won't be able to go home. So long as these people are taken care of, we can pass several days peacefully. After reassuring Yi Jinda, Yi Mu went out of the hospital room with a different look. Xiao Mao, I'd like you to check my blood carefully. This must be kept secret. Yi Mu's friends were all those who had gone through life and death, and this one called Xiao Mao was among them. Sure thing, ask someone to send a blood sample over. When the result is out, he'll tell you. Yi Mu nodded. After they agreed on a time, Yi Mu extracted her blood and had someone deliver it, and then went out of the hospital. She felt it was necessary to meet with those pirates, so she went out alone and waited for those people to visit. On the other side, the war had gone on for a few months. M.O. country suddenly declared war on the world. This was both unexpected and expected. It said it was because, that war, his most beloved woman became a living corpse, and also because of that war, countless commoners of M.O. country had suffered a lot. All of this couldn't end after Lee country was destroyed. If not for the other countries to be so avaricious, how could all of this happen? So after experiencing a large war, the second war started very soon. This time, it wasn't that the other countries didn't think of allying, but there was the bitter lesson from the five countries' alliance before. None of them trusted each other anymore. In addition, Zhao country immediately surrendered to Mo country. Zhao's new empress said, so long as a fief was given to her, she was willing to bow before Mo country and regarded Mo Linyuan as the master. So Mo country didn't put effort in the beginning and got Zhao country. Yen country was unwilling. They still wanted to resist, and then was attacked by the army led by Yi Xiaolang. After a month, Yi Xiaolang subdued Yan country, and continued forward and subdued Li country. After all of this was over, Yi Xiaolang and Mo Linyuan set out to the other side together. The first they encountered was Yu country. Qi Yan didn't expect, Mo country helped them before, but now they wanted to attack them. As the monarch of a country, he definitely couldn't just capitulate like Zhao country. But Mo Linyuan didn't want to fight him. He sent Yi Xiaolang to continue being the chief commander, and detour from Yu country to attack Yuan country. He himself stayed in Yu country. Qi Yan had no choice but to receive him as a distinguished guest. After staying for a period of time, Mo Linyuan suddenly raised a pact with Qi Yan. Within three months, if Mo country can defeat Yuan country, Yu country will capitulate to Mo country. I will still grant you a title like Zhao Mingyu, what do you think? At this moment, they were playing chess. Qi Yan was dumbfounded after he heard that. And if you can't? Mo Linyuan said, if I can't, we will divide this world equally. After I have Zhao, Yan and Li, they'll help you get Wei country and Yuan country. When the time comes we'll be neighbors. Mo Linyuan's indifferent manner could be said extremely indifferent. His thin finger held a chess piece. Even if his army was charging victoriously right now, even if his territory was expanding, he was not happy. That sorrow was etched in his bones. Deal. Didn't think you'd raise such a favorable term. 
You truly are giving me special treatment, Qi Yan couldn't help but sound out. Chapter, 404 The Little Turtle's Pattern Mo Linyuan placed a black piece on the chessboard, and indistinctly said, Who asked for this place to be her home? She quite likes you. Hearing him mention Yimu, Qi Yan couldn't help but ask, still hasn't responded. Normally, with her condition, it's impossible for her to live that long. Can she really wake up? Of course, I hope she will. She will. Mo Linyuan told him with confidence. Then stretched out his hand, and ate Qi Yan's large white piece. The chessboard became the black piece's field at once. Because I'm the son of heaven, she will wake up. The heavens is unlikely to strip me of my utmost need and give me things I do not need. Referring to the emperor. Qi Yan didn't know how to respond for a while. Since it's not required, why do you want to fight other countries? Mo Linyuan said, I regard this as a mission. He pointed at himself. I believe after I accomplish heaven's will, she will wake up, and ruling the whole empire is my destiny. Qi Yan was rather wordless. Like you're not already ruling the world. Conquering Yuan country within three months is not easy. By then, according to our pact, you won't touch Yu country anymore. Mo Linyuan shook his head. No, it's easy. He put down a piece and ate Qi Yan's white piece once more. Because I have Zhao, Yan, and Li in my grasp now. In the hegemon of the world, Yuan country will be scared of me before it starts. Furthermore, I'm playing chess with you here, do you know what this means? Qi Yan's complexion suddenly changed. You want to give a facade that we have allied? That's right. Mo Linyuan said complacently, Yuan country will think, in this whole world there is only his country that is enemies with me, a huge monster. Well, do you think you will let me attack for three months before the country falls? You're despicable. And he thought Mo Linyuan staying was merely to go over the old days with him, but he actually had other motives. A chill appeared in his eyes. You're not scared he'll kill you now. You should know, this is my Yu country's land. You can't kill me. Mo Linyuan stated this fact very calmly. He stood up. I dare to stay as your guest alone, of course I have something I can depend on. With this said, he held the piece in his hand. Those jade stones suddenly turned into broken bits. Not many people knew he had Yim Yu's hundred year cultivation. This skill of his, not to mention the number of kills, if he wanted to leave you country alive, it was easy for him. So don't waste your energy because the news of my being here has become known in Yuan country, maybe my army already broke through them. Despicable. Qi Yan, who was exploited without knowing and fooled to settle a pact, suddenly drew his sword and made a cut toward Mo Linyuan. Everyone withdraw. Qi Yan shouted. The trembling servants fled. Outside the pavilion of the garden became completely empty. He held his sword and indignantly said, You had the idea of seizing your country that easily since the beginning? You're dreaming. Forget the pact, I was used by you. Mo Linyuan looked at him. You better not force yourself to touch me because once I make a move, there will be kills. He was calm like water. It was as if his whole person died in the instant Yi Mu slept, so even if Qi Yan was Yi Mu's friend, if he didn't listen, Mo Linyuan would kill if he wanted to and would not hesitate. Then you can try. If you want me to capitulate, might as well kill me. With this said, he waved his sword toward Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan only severed a branch to meet with Qi Yan's sword. Qi Yan was alarmed. He was older than Mo Linyuan, why was Mo Linyuan's internal energy this profound? He kept being defeated into retreats by Mo Linyuan, and it could be seen Mo Linyuan was completely absent minded. He didn't care if he would die, only knew that if he didn't listen, killing would be best. This indifference made Qi Yan scared. He suddenly thought the living corpse was not Yimu, but the ice cold and heartless Mo Linyuan in front of him. Finally, Mo Linyuan pulled out the sword in his hand. That peach blossom tip soon pointed toward Qi Yan's chest. So long as he stepped forward a bit, he could kill him. Don't doubt whether a branch can kill a person or not. Anyway, the branch in Mo Linyuan's hand could. Mo Linyuan's white clothes fluttered. The peach blossoms beside him overlapped one another, and the peach blossom branch in his hand pushed down Qi Yan's chest. 
So do you plan to follow our pact or do you want me to kill you? Indignant, Qi Yen said, you clearly knew the outcome and still set this pact with me, I refuse to accept. Why not spend a small scale of troops to annex my Yu country, otherwise kill me now? You think I don't dare? Mo Linyuan chuckled, and then the pointed end of the peach blossom branch pierced Qi Yan's chest. The spring summer clothes was thin, so blood immediately seeped through. Qi Yan gritted his teeth. Just kill me, be my guest. Finished speaking, he closed his eyes. He had been prepared to die. Had seen Mo Linyuan did not take pity on him at all and made him sell his country cluelessly like this. He couldn't do it. Dying first was better. But the pain he was expecting never came. Puzzled, he opened his eyes, to see Mo Linyuan push aside the clothing on his chest using the branch. Using a dagger to carve, an extremely ugly turtle was revealed. Mo Linyuan had really wanted to kill him immediately. Besides, after killing Qi Yen, his plan would go smoother, but the instant he saw this turtle, he changed his mind and didn't speak because he knew who carved this turtle. After Qi Yen reacted, he quickly pulled his clothes tight. When Yi Mu was small, she played a joke on his body and the scar had always stayed there, but he wasn't worried Mo Linyuan would figure out who carved it. After all, the carving was horrendous. Right now he only worried about one problem, if Mo Linyuan would still kill him. He raised his head to look at Mo Linyuan, but saw Mo Linyuan suddenly throw the branch away. Don't worry, I won't kill you. Qi Yan didn't understand why he suddenly changed his mind and stayed on the ground, not getting up. What he didn't know was, on the back of the turtle on his chest, the messy pattern actually wasn't a pattern, but was pinyin. Only Yi Mu knew this pinyin, and Yi Mu also only taught Mo Linyuan. Tn, pinyin Chinese romanization. So the moment Mo Linyuan saw the turtle's back, written using pinyin was the three words don't kill him. Surprisingly, Yi Mu had long known he would kill Qi Yan by piercing through his chest, so she carved in advance this warning on this place. And how could he not listen to her? Chapter, 405 Everything is a conspiracy. Yi Mu didn't think Mo Linyuan would actually dominate the world. At this moment, she was attacked by a group of people. Although they were in a small alley, she was still unruffled. I already know the thing that you guys want. I didn't take the initiative to take that thing, it was one of your people who injected it into my body, but, that thing is useless. If you don't believe me, you can take some of my blood. Those people looked at each other. Finally, one person said in anger, Inject it into your body. Nonsense. You definitely want to embezzle the drug. That's the result of our research that we've spent more than a billion on. If you don't hand it over, we won't go easy on you. Seeing they weren't listening to her truth, Yi Mu could only take action. Both sides fought in the alley. Yi Mu fought against Ten, but was not at a disadvantage. Her swift action and movement seemed to be better than before. Yi Mu seemed to feel something. In a trance, she seemed to see a man doing a martial arts contest with her with his upper body bare, and then he used a feign to win, that person. When Yi Mu came back to her senses, those ten people were already knocked out. It shouldn't be this easy. She looked at her fists. Her strength seemed to be stronger than before. After Yi Mu went back, before she went up the elevator, she got a phone call. Hey, Yi Mu. Where are you now? Yi Mu said puzzled, I'm in the hospital, I'm about to go up. Don't go up. The other party's flustered voice came through. Yi Mu put away the foot that was already in the elevator, baffled. What's wrong? The other party seemed to be hiding in a place, and with a lowered voice said, Didn't you ask me to do a blood test? There is a very active gene in your blood. Every cell is in a perfect condition, and produces a much quicker metabolism than other people. These are not the important point. The most important point is, when I wanted to call you before, I was asked to leave by the leader. When I came back, I saw my things have been touched. And your gene data, everything was tampered with. Yi Mu furrowed her brows. What do you mean? You mean my blood has a problem, and someone knew that there's something wrong with my blood, so they intentionally tampered with your data? This is not the scariest. The scariest is, that I pretended to be fine, and then secretly asked Xiao Zhao to help me investigate this matter, but couldn't. 
all your information is locked into the 3S secret files. Ordinary people can't check it. I thought this isn't right and asked my husband to hack the files to check for you. Do you know what the result is? You're watched, the other party is not pirates, but a group of very powerful scientists. Your gene has been used for research for a long time, and you weren't aware at all. Yi Mu was stunned. You mean when I had my blood test in the army, someone noticed something is wrong with my blood, and then sold me? That's right. Xiao Mao's voice was flustered. And I checked, they've been watching you secretly these days, and they're still watching your dad. Did you know? You and your dad's marrows don't match at all, but your dad still survives. This is their test, you and your dad are test subjects. Yi Mu's mind burst with one sound. So my dad is fine not because the surgery succeeded, but because my blood changed because of that drug. Xiao Mao's voice sounded sad. And they must have put a different drug in your food, so while your body is different from other people, it's also dying quicker. If this goes on, you might become those wealthy people's prey. Yi Mu didn't speak for a long time. Then she heard Xiao Mao hastily say, Someone's come, I must go. I can't contact you anymore, take care of yourself. Xiao Mao immediately hung up the phone. Being able to help Yi Mu to this degree was considering their life and death friendship. But right now, Yi Mu felt dizzy. In other words, the two people the higher ups transferred were actually people that were to monitor them. Yi Mu pretended to be fine and continued to go up. Sure enough, the people to guard them had come. At this moment, they were asking Yi Zhenda a few questions about his body. Yi Zhenda thought they were only worried, and quickly told them. His body was recovering very well. He even felt he was livelier than before, it was as if his whole person had gone younger. When they saw Yi Mu had come, they stopped their exchange. After they greeted Yi Mu, Yi Mu faced them with a smile and casually said, You are sent by the higher-ups to protect us right? Sorry for the trouble. The other party hurriedly said, No trouble, this is our task. Yi Mu said, Uh, my dad usually likes quiet, what if, you stay outside the door? Yi Zhenda wanted to tell Yi Mu this wasn't very polite, but saw Yi Mu's fingers move, and then didn't say anything. Those two people didn't know the exact details. After glancing at each other, they hurriedly said, All right, then well wait outside. If there's anything Yi Xiaojie can just call us. Yi Mu nodded, and then watched them go out. Yi Zhenda wanted to speak but saw Yi Mu blink. She glanced around, and relying on her excellent skill to avoid detection, she quickly found where was wrong. Under their table, there was a tiny listening device. It must be placed by those two people just now. So that Yi Mu wouldn't realize it, they took great pains. Normally they would never dare to approach, this time, it was also because Yi Mu spoke first, so they had the opportunity. Yi Zhenda also saw that listening device, but what was going on? There wasn't any before, could it be those two people? Why were they doing this? Dad, you want to drink? Yi Mu walked up to him saying this, and then mouthed. Don't speak, they'll tell you slowly, but, you must not move. Yi Zhenda took the glass. He glanced in the direction of the listening device, and said in a low voice, Xiao Mu, come here. Come chat with me. Yi Mu obediently sat by his side, and then held her phone, typing quickly. Dad, we're watched. Those people outside aren't to protect us, but to monitor us. While she talked about daily life with Yi Zhenda, she also typed in what Shed learned and let Yi Zhenda read. Yi Zhen's shock couldn't calm down for a long time, and then heard Yi Mu say. Dad, Dad? Look at you, why have you been absent-minded lately? Yi Mu calmly erased the other party's suspicion. She continued to speak and then continued typing on her phone. Chapter, 406 Get out of here. So they tried to make me stay because monitoring me is easy in the army, but they let me stay by your side because you're part of the experiment. My body has been transformed. Xiao Mao said, my body is aging quickly, maybe very quickly, and will die. When the word die was typed out, Yi Mu actually didn't feel anything, but seeing Yi Zhen's sudden red eyes, her heart burst into pain. If Yi Xinda wasn't rational, he wouldn't be saying nothing at this time. Then, Yi Mu said, Dad, why are you crying? It's good that I have someone I like, he'll marry sooner or later. The other party that was eavesdropping heard Yi Mu's words and was baffled. 
she asked the person beside her, subject one like someone. Why is it not written in your report? The group of researchers shook their heads. It's impossible, she never had the chance. Even if it happened in the hospital, we also saw that she never had the chance to engage with the opposite sex. She rarely speaks with the doctor. That's weird, she can't imagine having a lover. At this moment, Yi Zhenda now hoped what Yi Mu said was true. He suddenly grabbed Yi Mu's hand and asked, Do you know where he is now? Have you found him? Yi Zhenda meant, Can you still go back to his side? Yi Mu forced a smile. Fate will let us meet again. We let things flow. Dad, don't be too sad, I'm certain. Those people that harmed her, those people who messed with her body when she wasn't aware, she would not let go of even one. Yi Zhenda suddenly said, I suddenly feel a little bored. Xiao Mu, can you walk with me outside? When they wanted to go out, those two people wanted to follow, but Yi Mu said they were only having a walk in the garden, they would be fine. Those two people feared Yi Mu would raise her vigilance when they had only just come, so they didn't follow. In the garden, Yi Zhenda finally impatiently asked, Xiao Mu, what exactly happened to your body? What did Xiao Mao say? Yi Mu shook her head. The higher-ups guard it very tightly, Xiao Mao doesn't dare speak a lot about it, but the condition is clearly not too optimistic. Seeing this kind of thing happen his daughter still could remain calm, Yi Zhenda was almost in tears. Those people are crazy. But why sacrifice you? You're still very young. Unacceptable. What if you get out of here? Go out and hide. You don't have to come back, anyway I'm a decayed old man and don't have research value. After you leave, they won't give me trouble. Yi Mu shook her head. They'll take a little of your blood sample later and find another trustworthy person to check it for me. You used my marrows and it doesn't match, something might have changed in your body too. If that's so. Yi Mu didn't dare to think about it. It didn't matter what she did, but if dad was watched by those people because of her, she was definitely to blame. Yi Zhenda was opposed at first because he feared after Yi Mu discovered there were changes in his body, she would not leave, but if she stayed it was too dangerous. Those people would stealthily give her drugs to see her bodhis reaction. She was the perfect living subject. But because Yi Mu persisted, he had to provide a little blood. Yi Mu looked through her phone before finding a guy, who dared to do anything as long as there was money, to help her. Yi Mu's phone was very safe. She specially studied it in the past her phone was assembled by herself. Her number was also different from ordinary people's, so it was impossible for others to bug her phone. The other side quickly connected. Yi Mu directly said, help me do a blood test, don't tell anyone of the result, 500,000. The other party listened and was excited, quickly agreeing. Both of them arranged to meet in a very concealed way. In the end, without them seeing each other, the other party got Yi Zhen's blood, but the result of the test made Yi Mu sigh in relief although Yi Zhen's gene was a little higher than others, it was still within the normal range. In other words, he was very healthy right now and was not like a 40-odd-year-old person. Yi Mu destroyed the result and told Yi Zhenda, then Yi Zhenda was more eager for her to escape, but Yi Mu said, this gene drug, they had to spend over a hundred million. It doesn't matter where I escape to. Even if I change my name, they'll still most likely be found in the end. Then what do we do? Yi Zhenda lowered his voice. A knife seemed to twist in his heart. Your body is aging quickly now. If you remain here, who knows what they'll do to your body? Who knows if your gene will crumble? Xiao Mu, consider my request, go run. As long as you live, dad is happy, as long as you live. His words made Yi Mu's heart ache. She hoarsely said, Dad, if I leave, what about you? The rims of Yi Zhen's eyes were red. At this moment, Yi Mu was kneeling by his feet, looking so lovably obedient. He took out the biography book Yi Mu gave him before and stuffed it into Yi Mu's hands. I still have Xiao Mao and Xiao Yuan. Don't worry about me. Get out of here, I'd rather you cross over and stay alive in another world. I don't want you to go in contact with them. If one day you can go back, then go back. They'll think of it as you marrying far away. You must not clash with them head on. Yi Mu held the biography book in her palm. Her eyes were red, but she smiled as she asked, Dad you agree to my marriage? 
Yi Zhenda was so sad he was speechless. Yi Mu wiped away his tear, and in a low voice said, Dad, don't worry, I could come back from that world to see you and save you. Actually, I don't have any regrets anymore. What nonsense are you saying? Yi Zhenda hit her head. What I want is for you to live. If you don't listen, then I'm not your dad. Yi Mu covered her head, smiling. Dad, I'll listen to you. I'm leaving then, you must take care of yourself. Seeing Yi Mu stand up, Yi Zhenda suddenly felt an intense feeling, as though the moment Yi Mu left, she would never come back. He tightly clutched her hand. Xiao Mu, you'll stay alive, right? Promise Dad. It doesn't matter which world, you have to stay alive. Yi Mu was least at ease with this kind of farewell. She lowered her head to look at him, then mutely said, That's right, you'll live well. Dad, Xiao Mao and Yuan Qi will take care of you later, you also have to be well, daughter is unfilial. With this said, she deeply kneeled by Yi Zhen's feet, deeply giving three loud kowtows. Yi Zhenda did not have time to be sad at this time. He cried as he helped her up, hurry and leave, those two people will come back soon. Quick, leave. Yi Mu sobbed. She said word by word, Dad, thank you, you're the best dad in the world. After that, she left without looking back, fingers holding the book tightly. Chapter, 407 Rescue When those people noticed Yi Mu was nowhere to be seen, they panicked. Yi Mu was their only living subject that could not be duplicated and had been in their control, how did she suddenly escape? Just as Yi Mu had thought, those people flew into a rage and captured Yi Zhenda. Although Yi Mu was very worried about his father, right now, she was getting ready to fight back. When they were eating, Yi Mu gritted her teeth, making her dad swallow down a GPS. She guessed the other party would control her dad soon and would bring him to their headquarters because that was the only way they could threaten her. This way she could find out where those people were. At this moment Yi Mu hid in Xiao Mao's house, currently wiping a gun. You're sure? Xiao Mao looked at her, concerned. She and Yi Mu were best friends, right now she was also risking her life by taking her in. Yes, didn't you also say something's wrong with my body and don't have much time? Are they not supposed to die with me? Yi Mu's ferocity went beyond Xiao Mao's expectations. Her eyes suddenly became red. If you don't do this, you can still live a few years. It can't wait. Yi Mu said, they took my dad's body as a subject, although my dad's physique didn't change because of my blood, who knows what will happen later. Once it changes, the other party will never let go of my dad. I can't watch him unaccountably become a test subject too. Xiao Mao listened and gradually made up her mind. If if something happens to you, later, your dad will be my dad. Yi Mu faintly smiled and lamented in her heart. Dad thought she really ran, but he didn't think, if she really wanted to run, how could she not bring him with her? Did he think she would throw him away bearing all this, and then only saved herself? After Yi Mu had prepared everything, her father's coordinate was also displayed. That place was in the suburbs, just conveniently right for her to take action. The night gradually turned dark. Yi Mu bound the book in her chest and then left Xiao Mao's house. There was actually a secret route below Xiao Mao's house, or else Yi Mu wouldn't be able to avoid detection and arrest. Finally, Yi Mu was in front of a villa in the suburbs. This villa didn't seem to be really different from others, but there were some other things underground. Although this drug bought some people to work for it to the bones, its nature was still illegal, and hence was kept low-key. The security system here was very good. There were guards, but there weren't too many. Yi Mu observed here. Finally, in the wee hour, she saw someone come out. That person wore a mask, looking like about to leave Yi Mu swiftly advanced and knocked her out, and also stuffed her with a drug-induced coma. After that, she deftly took off her clothes and changed, then left with her ID card and used a high-end instrument to record her pupil and fingerprint before going down. She was alone. If not for her fearlessness of dying, others would never expect she would come back so soon. Yi Mu hadn't been inside for long when she heard someone say, that uncle goes on a hunger strike but it's no use. Boss almost threw all the assets here, if Yi Mu really escaped and isn't found, who knows how many people will go bankrupt. For the sake of money, he will never give up. The other person hesitantly said, there will be mass production soon, 
but this kind of drug has a fatal drawback. The injected person will slowly become dull-witted. If it's like this, what's the use of having a long life? Do we not care about this? Care. The person who was inspecting the machine didn't turn around while saying, can't help this drug has a fault. It's told to the outside that only tens of a hundred million were invested, but actually, for the sake of this research results, hundreds of a hundred million were spent. If this money can't be earned back within a short time, those people will certainly end up miserably. That's why the higher-ups are this eager to start the production, probably to run away with wads of money. Because anyway after going overseas, they can live under the sun. Then what about those people who were injected with the drug? We're only working here, how can we care about other things? When they run with the money, well also run. You just have to remind your family members not to inject the long-life drug. Come to speak of it, the higher-ups can get the production certificate, and the sales certificate is also quite amazing, reckon a lot of money seems to go inside. After Yi Mu pretended to get something beside them she left. She simply remained calm and didn't look like an intruder. Wearing the mask, she indeed looked like a staff member. She even brushed past the guard several times. Those people didn't take notice of her. This kind of calmness, she guessed she learned it by that man's side. Then, Yi Mu lowered her eyes to look at the data in her hand. These data indicated that after 10 hours, they would do a transaction, passing the long-life drug data to the pharmaceutical company. In other words, she only had 10 hours. She narrowed her eyes. These drugs must have come from the test on her body. She herself was dying, so this drug must be more problematic. It was already like this and they still dared to mass-produce them. It could only be said some people could give up life for money. At this moment, the master of this laboratory suddenly received a video. The owner of the video was shockingly Yi Mu. I know what all of you want, I also know what you did to me. If you want me to appear, sure. Release my father right now, or else I won't show up. You better not think you have room to negotiate. I already know I don't have much time left. I will come out and help you, but release my father. Send him to the gas station outside a hundred li away from where you are. After the video finished, Yi Mu didn't wait for them to speak and hung up. Actually, Yi Mu recorded this video in advance to confuse them. The people at the experiment base were surprised. How does Yi Mu know our address? She won't report us, will she? Someone uneasy asked. Among them, a person in charge said, the background behind her looks like the mountain outside. It's no problem releasing him as long as Yi Mu is willing to come. Since she knows she doesn't have long to live, she must have thought to trade with us for a way to keep living. There's no one who doesn't want to live, she will come. So after they discussed, they released Yi Zhinda, but they were cunning before releasing Yi Zhinda, they would give him poison. Yi Mu had been waiting outside the room Yi Zhinda was confined in. The GPS showed they were only 10 meters away, but this door wasn't one she could open. Chapter, 408 Return of Soul So when she saw someone was coming, she quickly hid, and the instant that person opened the door, Yi Mu knocked him out. She picked up the poison in the person's hand and smelled it. She coldly smiled thinking, those people indeed wouldn't release her father just like that. Yi Zhinda walked over, hearing the movements. The instant he saw Yi Mu, he nearly called out. Even if Yi Mu only left a pair of eyes, knowing her well, he would never forget those eyes. Tn, she's wearing a mask. Yi Zhinda thought Yi Mu listened and left, who knew she would come back so soon and even came to such a dangerous place. He was so shocked that he was speechless. Yi Mu saw him and also didn't have time to explain. She only briefly said, they will release you soon. Someone will help you. Don't worry, this will end soon. You're not leaving with me. Yi Zhinda grabbed her hand. Yi Mu shook her head. I can't go with you, the target will be too big. Dad, go out first. It'll go out after getting their evidence. They want to illegally manufacture illegal long-life drugs, I must bring these people to justice. Don't worry, I did a similar mission before, it'll be fine. Yi Zhinda still wanted to speak, but Yi Mu no longer had time. She brought him out. In the end, she only had time to say. Dad, you have to be well. Then, she brought him up to another person. 
That person didn't look at Yi Mu much but said, the higher up said to give poison, is it done? Yi Mu nodded. Done. Seeing Yi Zhen's ghastly face, that person believed Yi Mu wasn't lying to him, so he brought Yi Zhenda out. Yi Zhenda turned his head to look at Yi Mu. At that moment, there were so many things he had to say, but he couldn't say them. He could only pray that nothing will happen to her. But Yi Mu faintly sighed as she watched his back. She was doomed not to listen. After Yi Zhenda was out, he felt very uneasy. Those people thought Yi Zhenda was dying and wasn't a threat, so they were unfazed by his mood. After reaching the gas station, they had wanted to capture Yi Mu while they were at it, but who knew they would be ambushed. In the end, after the people Xiao Mao brought took care of them, Yi Zhenda grabbed Xiao Mao's hand. He said, Xiao Mao, save Xiao Mu. She's still in their headquarters. Xiao Mao couldn't tell Yi Zhenda the truth and only said, I know, she knows her limit. You must come with me first. Yi Zhenda didn't accept. Tell me honestly. Did Xiao Mu tell you she will take revenge? No, I have to save her. Yi Zhenda turned around, but Xiao Mao knocked him out. Sorry uncle, I've promised her to take care of you. An explosion shook the ground. Half of the villa collapsed. Underground, Yi Mu calmly stood before everyone. She didn't have a gun on hand and only had a very small phone, a USB drive inserted on top. Didn't you want to find me? I'm here. She directly detonated a natural gas pipeline. Luckily, the underground was explosion-proof, or else everyone underground would have already died. You how did you come in? All of the researchers and guards' eyes stared at Yi Mu in hostility. Yi Mu faintly smiled, saying, by walking in. I got the evidence now, proving that the drug is problematic. Right now, ask the person behind you to see me, otherwise, before I die, the evidence in my phone will immediately be sent to the right person. Seeing it would secretly be produced soon but this thing happened, they quickly called the real boss to come over and clean up the mess. Those bosses were two rather fat middle-aged people. One of them made fortune by being a pirate, the other was a big-shot investor. In addition to this, Yi Mu used the evidence as blackmail to call more people over. Vehicles arrived one after another in these ruins, and the fat person leading streamed with sweat. He cursed in his heart while telling Yimu, you asked us to come and we've all come. Let's talk this through, since you already know your problem, you should know that, in this world, only we can rehabilitate your health. Many people stood around Yimu. Crushing this somewhat chaotic underground would seem a little crowded. All of them looked like successful people. Normally they would be arrogant, but right now, Yi Mu was holding evidence they could only persuade her. Yi Mu saw about enough people had come and only said. I didn't come to find a way to live. And that is. Someone didn't understand. And then saw Yi Mu smile. I just think the road to the underworld is too lonely so I'm looking for some people to die with me. Yi Mu uses Huang Quan here which translates to Yellow Springs, the underworld in Chinese mythology. Everyone was startled. How could there be someone fearless of death? Yi must be looking for a starting price. But at this moment, they saw Yi Mu press a button. A loud bang was heard as if there was some kind of bomb. What was going on? Didn't the explosion already subside? This underground had the best explosion proof system, it was normally safe. After Yi Mu sent out the evidence she had collected, she only had time to say her last words. Actually, I exploded the explosion proof system. Everyone's faces then contorted into expressions of wanting to flee, but it was too late, the sound of a tremendous explosion started one after another. Among the countless wails, the instant when Yimu was engulfed by the fire, she just realized what she did. Turns out, only one of her three souls came back. Because her strong attachment still hadn't quelled, after she came back, she was unusually calm as if she could do anything. Turns out, she came back and was unable to let go. This thought emerged. A lot of memories suddenly appeared in her mind, about M.O. Lin Yuan, and also her modern world, everything became vivid at once. She didn't have time to express her feelings when her frosty self in this life was engulfed by the fire. She hadn't bid farewell to her father, hadn't carefully entrusted him to her friend, but her life had come to an end. She tried her best, but couldn't stay even for another second. And then, this one of three souls that went back to the modern world suddenly returned. 
Yi Mu suddenly inhaled a breath and sat up. A dream? Really? She looked around the antique room before her and was a bit hazy. Why did she feel like she went back to the modern world and dealt with a lot of things in a calm manner? She remembered she saved her father and landed in an inexplicable crisis of experimentation. In the end, she chose to perish together with those people who harmed her. All the images were like a silent film. Did she really go back, or was it only a dream? Was her father really okay? Will Xiao Mao take care of him? What about Emo Linyuan? Why was he not by her side? Chapter, 409 Awake Yi Mu just woke up and felt out of her depth. She looked at her own bony fingers and was shocked herself. She wanted to say something, but no voice came out. Luckily, someone came in at this moment. That palace maid was supposed to change her shift as usual, but because of her upset stomach today she came a little late. But actually, late or not did not matter because the imperial physician came to check every day and then would shake his head. A guashir in Emo country also said, the empress was short of one soul out of three, he feared she did not have long. Tn, teacher of the state, a title given by the emperor to great monks. Though the medicine fed to her every day was helpful, it would make one thin down each day. Now, she was all skin and bones. But surprisingly, when the palace maid just came in the doors, she saw Yi Mu had woken up. Before she got back to her senses, Yi Mu extended her hand to her. She screamed. Throwing aside the basin in her hands, she ran outside. Yi Mu felt helpless. She was really hungry and thirsty, she just wanted her to get her some food, she didn't have to run as if she'd seen a ghost, did she? Of course, she knew her physique right now looked terrifying, or else the other person wouldn't react like that. She hoped they would come back soon, or she might die from hunger when she had struggled so much to come back to life. Sure enough, soon, a lot of footsteps bustled outside. A large group of people surged inside. The head was that palace maid. Among them, an imperial physician cautiously asked, Empress, are you really awake? It was another female doctor that was smarter she handed Yi Mu a ginseng soup. Only after Yi Mu drank a mouthful did she truly feel alive. But her stomach had become so small. After downing just a small bowl of soup, she felt too full. Through this sluggish effort, everyone knew she was truly awake. This was great news. Not long after, Prime Minister Wen hurried over. On the way, he couldn't believe his ears. A person who clearly was almost dead had woken up, could it be like what that guisher said? The three souls returned, so she woke up. Seeing the alive Yimu, he finally let out a sigh of relief. He quickly walked over and said, Empress, where do you feel unwell? Yimu shook her head. She couldn't really talk now, but the imperial physician had just given her a checkup and said she was just in extremely poor health right now. She needed to eat, but there were no other problems. After Prime Minister Wen asked, he felt he had been brusque. Yi Mu had been unconscious for so long and suddenly woke up, she must need time to adapt. He hurriedly asked people to carefully arrange and take care of her, and gleefully said to her, His Majesty is fighting outside right now, if he knows that you're awake, he'll definitely come back immediately. No good, I have to send him a letter now. But Yi Mu unexpectedly shook her head repeatedly, stopping him. Prime Minister Wen didn't understand, but he patiently listened to Yi Mu as she said in a hoarse voice, I don't want him to see me like this. Prime Minister Wen knew, Yi Mu, this was women's thought of wishing to appear beautiful, hoping to look beautiful in front of their sweetheart, but what time was it now? His Majesty thought about her day and night, hoping for her to wake up. Going to war was also to complete his mission and let her three souls return soon. He quickly said, Empress, don't worry, his majesty will never mind about these. Besides, his majesty has been worried about your health for so long. How can we hide such great news from him? Yi Mu still shook her head. The palace maid had filled her in on what had been happening. She knew Mo Linyuan was fighting and was currently in a crucial situation. She did not want to disturb him. Of course, there was one more thing, she looked too hideous right now. She didn't want to face Emo Linyuan like this when she had just struggled coming back. Seeing Yi Mu persistent, Prime Minister Wen was rather anxious. He heard Yi Mu hoarsely say, He has invested so much energy in me, I also hope I can give him a pleasant surprise when I see him. 
seeing Prime Minister Wen still reluctant, Yi Mu smiled. She said, you don't mind too much about these, too. This is between us husband and wife, but I'd still like to ask for your help. Stop this matter from reaching his ears, or there will be no meaning to this surprise. In such a weak condition, Yi Mu still asked for such a request. Prime Minister Wen had no choice and could only agree. He said. Understood, I can promise you. However, if His Majesty raises the question someday, you must put in a good word for me. He forced a smile. Or I will not have the courage to help you. Yi Mu quickly nodded. For sure. Thus Prime Minister Wen hid the news of Yi Mu regaining consciousness. Prime Minister Wen would tell Yi Mu about Mo Linyuan's matter every day, for example until which place had Mo Linyuan fought. What new plans did he have, and what was he plotting? Yi Mu knew nothing remained of the seven countries now. Only Mo country, Yu country, and Yuan country were left. Truly astounding. She reckoned this war needed at least two months before it was over, and two months was enough for her to slowly recover. Of course, she needed to be a little quicker because if she could, she hoped she could look for Mo Linyuan before he came back. At this moment, Mo Linyuan listened to the report of the happenings in the Imperial Palace. He felt a bit glad, releasing a long sigh. Guoxia had said, maybe after he accomplished his fate, Yi Mu's three souls would return, so he went out. But after going out, he didn't really dare to hear the news from the Imperial Palace, scared someday he would hear Yi Mu had died from being weak. But he had to listen because, to him, it was important. But right now, he and Yi Xiaolang heard that although Yi Mu was still in a deep sleep, her health was a little better than before. They were happy. Could unifying the seven countries really be related to her waking up? The two men thought, unsure. Yi Xiaolang couldn't help saying, Your Majesty, what if you go back first? Ill deal with the matter here. Mo Linyuan also wanted to go back, but in the end, he shook his head. Guoxia said, unification of the world must be done by my own strength. With this kind of situation now, I don't dare to make a single mistake. Luckily, the situation was favorable to them right now. It was as though pacifying the countries had succeeded. There was only the last step left. Hope after the last one was done, heaven will see his good faith. On the other side, Yi Mu exercised and nourished herself. Her dry and thin body slowly became rosy. Her face also gradually filled out, but it was still not enough. She looked better than her bony look before, but to become fair and delicate, she still needed to work hard. Chapter, 410 Goodbye Battlefield On this day, Yi Mu was building her physique. She ate five meals a day now, more meals but in small portions, and the rest of the time was used to recuperate. In the evening, Prime Minister Wen visited. Empress, Yuan country has been defeated. Only Yu country is resisting now. Yu country was friends with us before and is still Empress home, so His Majesty didn't want to fight them at first. But some people in Yu country saw that Mo country has fought so many countries and now is a spent arrow, and so instigated Yu's monarch and our Mo country to start a war. If this war is fought, it's uncertain when His Majesty can come back. As soon as Yi Mu heard that Yu country initiated a war with Mo country, she was saddened because she had the deepest involvement with these two countries. She asked the Prime Minister, if I want to go to the battlefield now, do you support? Prime Minister Wen was startled and quickly opposed. Empress, your body is very precious, how can you go to the battlefield? Furthermore, your body still has not completely recovered. If you go out now, what if something happens? How will I explain to His Majesty? No no, we can discuss anything else, but this is a definite no. Seeing such strong refusal from him, Yi Mu helplessly said, Lately I've been feeling pretty much recovered, I have no problem walking outside. If you worry about my safety, you can send someone to escort me. Seeing Prime Minister Wen still wanted to refuse, Yi Mu said. I was never by his side in all the previous wars. I want to accompany him in this last war, and, maybe, if I leave, this war can be avoided. After all, Yu's monarch and I are acquainted. Prime Minister Wen had wanted to stand his ground, but Yi Mu kept pestering him with her silver tongue. Finally, after a long while, Prime Minister Wen grudgingly agreed, but he also had a condition, Yi Mu must bring along enough people with her, or he would never agree to this. 
Yi Mu had wanted to travel simply by carriage. After all, in time of emergency, she didn't want to use too much manpower. But Prime Minister Wen persisted and she had no choice but to agree with Prime Minister Wen. Then, she rode the carriage. That day, about a hundred troops set out from Mo country, hurrying along toward Yu country. In this group of troops, everyone else was riding a horse there was only one carriage, and Yi Mu was inside. Yi Mu, who seemed to have little experience being in a carriage, felt bumpy. But so that she could see Mo Linyuan soon, she didn't say a word. She should replenish her bodice nutrition every day. When the appropriate time came, she would go down to rest. From here to Mo Linyuan's location, with the slow pace of the carriage would take over a month. This was perfect in giving ample time for her to recuperate. On the other side, Mo Country's army and Yu Country's met. Because Yu Country didn't spend too much strength and received the biggest advantage in the previous five countries' alliance, Yu Country expended the least strength right now. Although Mo Country expanded, it had fought so many countries and was quite exhausted at this moment, so many people kept an eye on Yu Country in this battle. The two armies had fought a small battle. At this moment in the camp, Mo Linyuan and his subordinates were currently analyzing, how should they operate now? Because they were actually at a disadvantage in this war. After all, they'd been fighting so many countries along the way. Although their demeanor was majestic, Mo Country's army was actually in an exhausted state. The number of troops of both sides actually were about the same, so Yi Xiaoyang thought if they wanted to win this war, they could only outsmart them. Yu's monarch personally led the troops. Last time, Mo Linyuan didn't kill him, and he couldn't capture Mo Linyuan. After Mo Linyuan escaped from Yu country, not long had passed and Qi Yan heard about Yuan country surrendering. Now only Mo country and Yu country remained in the world. Mo country had occupied many territories, but because their troops were exhausted, Yu country was likely to win this war. Qi Yan didn't think too much at first, but the people under him pestered him and told him, Mo country had annexed the other five countries, and also said, as long as Yu country could defeat Mo country, Yu country would be the new hegemon. The former Yu country never had this kind of thought, but with an opportunity placed before them, as if as long as they worked hard, they could attain the dream Yu country had never thought of, the monarch of the world. Yi Mu rushed to the border of the war at this particular moment. Both countries did not give way to the other and would fight soon. After Yi Mu reached the border, she couldn't rest and hastily went over in the direction of the battlefield. Unfortunately, when Yi Mu rushed there, she happened to encounter the two countries in the phase of a battle. At this moment, before they could fight, both sides' armies stood facing each other. The situation looked tense. Anyone who had eyes would not rush over and court death at this moment. Yu's monarch personally led the troops, and to show respect, Mo Linyuan also took the lead. Seeing Mo Linyuan, Qi Yan said, I really don't want to fight you, but since you wish to invade Yu country, I will not go easy on you. Mo Linyuan stood firmly. The ruling of the world only lacked the last step. No matter if it was for Yi Mu or himself, or for the commoners, he had to accomplish it. He wore silver armor, sitting on the horse's back. He said word by word, bring it on, this war will decide the hegemon. Just as the drum had been hit, when they were about to fight, a group of troops hurriedly rushed over. Both sides froze. Mo Linyuan, seeing that that carriage was from Mo country's imperial palace, felt puzzled. Who from the palace would be looking for him at this time? And the next second, he knew who had come looking for him. He couldn't help but widen his eyes. Yi Mu lifted the curtains and jumped down from the carriage. She was a few hundred meters away from Mo Linyuan, but to Yi Mu, this distance was a span of a few millenniums. She knew she had really gone to the modern world, and only one soul left her body. It was clear her heart cared for him so much. She also missed him. It had been such a long time he had lost a lot of weight and was no better than her condition. A lump formed in Yi Mu's throat and she yelled. Husband. And she ran all out toward Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan thought he was dreaming. The Yi Mu in front of him and before he left looked completely different. She had become lively and was not thin and weak as if she would die at any time. She woke up, she really had woken up. He didn't know what he felt, Mo Linyuan only felt his chest squeeze. He could only watch her run up to him. Chapter 411 Protect 
When Yi Mu dashed into Mo Linyuan's embrace, he was still frozen. He thought he must be dreaming, but the real sensation in his arms told him it was not a dream. Someone suddenly came out among the enemy group. It was Qi Yen. Seeing Yi Mu resurrected, he felt incredulous. He wished he could run to her and confirm it himself. But Mo Linyuan wouldn't give him the chance he directly carried Yi Mu onto the horse, turned around, and ran off. The remaining people looked at each other. Are they fighting this war or not? The commander is gone, it won't be appropriate to proceed, right? Yi Shaolang cleared his throat and used internal energy to speak to the other party. Cease fire today. With this said, they withdrew a hundred li. Some people from Yu country had wanted to instigate Qi Yen to pursue them, but Qi Yen refused. He similarly ordered to retreat, giving Mo Linyuan time for catching up. Similarly, he also needed to calm down. Yi Mu had appeared. Will this war continue? Yi Mu sat in Mo Linyuan's embrace, contentedly hugging his neck, but seeing his tense expression with no trace of a smile, she felt strange. Was he not supposed to hold her and twirl her around three times in a circle, and then kiss her? In the end, Mo Linyuan rushed into the camp while carrying Yi Mu. Where are the imperial physicians? Call them all to see me. As soon as he gave the order, all the physicians that followed here came. Seeing him holding Yi Mu, each of them was greatly surprised. If they remembered correctly, wasn't Empress in the palace with only a breath left? How was she frolicking now? But they couldn't be inattentive. They quickly took Yi Mu's pulse under Mo Linyuan's intimidation. Yi Mu was sitting on Mo Linyuan's lap. Feeling his tense muscles, she rather helplessly said, I'm really fine, is it really okay to run off like that? In the end, before Yi Mu finished speaking, Mo Linyuan stared at her. Those eyes were rather scary, making Yi Mu shrink back, obediently resting in his arms. Wow, why was it that she gave him a surprise but he didn't look happy? Yi Mu couldn't read Mo Linyuan's thoughts. His whole person was slightly trembling, even more, his thin lips closed tightly. He was very scared she got injured running here like that. He hadn't ruled the world and Shed woken up. Was there a lurking danger? Various thoughts flooded Mo Linyuan's mind. Only after all the imperial physicians checked Yi Mu's body and said that besides her body being a bit weak and needing a good rest, there was no other problem, did Mo Linyuan let out a long sigh of relief. Yi Mu sheepishly said, Actually I've been building up my health. I'm really fine, I'm all good right now. It was okay she didn't talk about this. The moment she did, it was like coming across a pot of gunpowder. Mo Linyuan's gaze was aloof on her. He hugged her tightly and demanded, when did you wake up? Why do I not know a single thing about this? Yi Mu didn't speak, so he hugged her tighter, pushing her head into his arms. Yi Mu then noticed Mo Linyuan's voice was trembling slightly. Do you not know it's dangerous to do that? Do you not know I'm very worried about you? How could you come here carelessly? If something happened to you what will I do? He pressed in a row, making Yi Mu overwhelmed. But the unease and fear in his words made Yi Mu touched. She hugged Mo Linyuan's neck and nuzzled. She said under her breath, because I wanted to surprise you. I don't want to look like a walking stick in front of you. That look is not pretty, what if you don't like me anymore? Her last words were clearly said as a joke. Mo Linyuan hugged her hard. He couldn't speak for a long time. After a while, he left a slightly quivering kiss on Yi Mu's forehead. Thank you, thank you for coming back. Before Yi Mu could speak, he said, the guesher said, as long as you're willing to come back, then you can come back to my side. If you're not willing, your remaining souls would also follow you and leave. Yi Mu just realized, turns out her heart had long been firmly held by Mo Linyuan because she had always thought of coming back. She sighed and smiled. I still couldn't let you go, so I came back. The two people quietly hugged like this for a long time, in the end feeling an upsurge of emotions. Yi Mu was still thin, and Yi Mu also felt Mo Linyuan was very thin. It was this scene Yi Shaolang saw when he came in. He cried. No way, you guys. Leaving me a terrible mess and then coming back, do you not consider my feelings? Yi Mu chuckled. She glanced at him. Thank you Shaolang, long time no see. When Yi Mu said that, 
Xiao Lang sighed with sorrow, his eyes reddening. Xiao Jia, luckily you came back, or else after defeating you country, we wouldn't know what we should do. They didn't know how to save her, but because they were working hard because of her, Yi Mu's heart suddenly became courageous. She shouted, now that I'm awake, let's have a feast. Yi Mu's words made the depression that kept lingering around the camp vanish. When night arrived, everyone cheered, but besides not being able to drink liquor and couldn't take off their armors, everyone enjoyed a great meal. It was clearly not a festival, but the atmosphere was livelier than a festival. Everyone's morale greatly rose. The exhaustion from fighting a long war disappeared. They felt you country was no longer a threat. They could get rid of it any time. The cheers over here could almost be heard in you country's camp. That night, Qi Yan drove out everyone who was giving advice, carefully thinking for the whole night. Mo country now held a large part of the countries. If they chose to withdraw and not fight, under the protection of the city and vantage place, although they gained the upper hand, a protracted seizing wouldn't hold for long. On the contrary, as long as they gave Mo country a chance to proliferate, it will become spirited again. When they made a comeback, it would be the day of you country's destruction. This was a hopeless situation. Besides, even if Mo country didn't retreat, they would continue to fight them tomorrow. Given the strength of the other party, it would be hard to win. So what should he do? Continue to attack, or seek peace, or surrender? The consequences of all the choices flashed through his mind. In the end, he remembered Yi Mu's face. He touched that ugly turtle on his chest. That time, because Mo Linyuan saw this turtle, he didn't kill him. In other words, Yi Mu imperceptibly had saved him once. Should he, repaying good with evil, continue? No one could give him an answer. He could only ponder over it himself, decide by himself. Chapter, 412 Motherhood At this moment, Yi Mu was taking a bath, travel-worn. She also experienced a party at night. She was actually quite tired and nearly fell asleep in the bathtub. At this moment, she saw Mo Linyuan come in. No one drank today because, after all, they were still in a what, but Mo Linyuan's face seemed to be a little red. He was almost twenty now, but not seeing Yi Mu for a few months, he was quite uneasy. Maybe this was an absence that made the heart grow fonder. Yi Mu hadn't felt anything, but when there were only the two of them in the tent, she squirmed. She shrank into the bucket. Mo Linyuan's eyes seemed to carry a hint of unease. His pretty and thinner face tensed for an instant, before relaxing and walking over. He said quietly, don't think too much. Your body is still weak, I can always wait. The atmosphere had been a little tense, but because of Mo Linyuan's words, Yi Mu suddenly laughed. Seeing Mo Linyuan had walked over to her side, she suddenly came out of the water, hugging his neck and kissing him. She mischievously said, you should be thinking if you can do it or not. You've lost so much weight, and I, if I can't, I wouldn't have been able to come to find you. Her low voice in the end disappeared from her lips. Seeing Yi Mu teasing like this, if Mo Linyuan couldn't stand it, he wouldn't be a man. He indeed really seemed to want to try completely have her, so he directly carried Yi Mu out of the bathtub, laying her on the bed. Yi Mu's whole body was soaking wet. Shed thought she could dry herself first, who knew the next second, Mo Linyuan would be like a ravenous wolf pouncing on food. He kissed her hard while assuring her. Two just want once. Xiao Muer, give yourself to me. Yi Mu's face was red, but they were husband and wife now, what was there to say? So she took the initiative to wrap her hands around his neck. Smiling, she said, as you wish, my king. Thus, the whole tent filled with ambiguous breaths. The night was still long. The moon shyly hid behind the clouds. Yi Mu also didn't expect their first time would actually be during the war. And Mo Linyuan did as he said and really did it once, and very carefully. Yi Mu saw he had worked hard, but the moment she moved a little, Mo Linyuan hugged her tightly. Don't move. Afterwards, the two people were like a stack of ladles on the bed. Both of their long hairs were entangled. From here onward, they were inseparable. To divert attention, Mo Linyuan said, Xiao Muer, tell me about what happened in the other world. He really wanted to know what Yi Mu had done these few months. Yi Mu recalled her father and felt remorseful, but she recounted all those things, 
but after saying half of it, she was already asleep. Seeing her sleeping, Mo Linyuan lightly kissed her forehead, the corners of his mouth slightly raised. No matter what, she was finally his. The next day, the demeanor of Ms. Team was imposing, but Yu Country was extremely quiet. A long time later, they surprisingly handed over a letter of surrender. This made Mo Linyuan surprised, but somewhat understood after thinking. Yu Country had the upper hand before because Mo's team was exhausted, but the moment Yi Mu appeared, the soldiers' morale invigorated, so nothing remained to Yu Country's advantage. Seeing Yu's monarch Qi Yen capitulated in sincerity, only requesting Mo Country to bestow him a title and treat his people well, Mo Linyuan only wanted to hug Yi Mu and kiss her. Xiao Muer, you truly are my lucky star. The following matters were much easier. Those who were conferred a title were conferred, those who had to recuperate recuperated. The whole continent had the same name as one country. Mo Country finally ruled the world. And then Mo Linyuan became especially busy. After the war was the time to tend to all neglected tasks. There were places where some people who had ulterior motives engaged in a peasant uprising. What Mo Linyuan had to quell he quelled, what he had to repair he repaired. In short, there weren't any big problems. However, every day after Mo Linyuan come back, he had to hurt Yi Mu once. Yi Mu's heart ached for his health at first, but Mo Linyuan told her, men had two kinds of forms, on the bed and outside the bed. Yi Mu laughed at his sophistry, but after each time, she noticed Mo Linyuan looked livelier and immediately believed in his words. And under this kind of nourishment, the color on Yi Mu's face slowly became rosy. When Zhao Mingyu looked for her a while later, she said she was excessively moistened. Finally, more than half a year passed. On this day, Yi Mu who was bored ran out of her quarters, going to Mo Linyuan's imperial study where he worked, sticking to him. Others said the fresh sensation was lost after marriage and the relationship might become bad, but both of them were just the opposite, becoming more and more stuck to each other. Seeing Yi Mu coming over, Mo Linyuan directly held her in his arms and weighed her. Face filled with satisfaction, he said, didn't feed you in vain these days, you finally don't weigh as if you'd be blown away by the wind. Yi Mu raised her feet and kissed him. Seeing this, the servants around them went out one after another lowering their heads. Yi Mu smiled as she said, guess what I'm looking for you for. Mo Linyuan's eyebrows rose. He smiled. To see me handle public affairs and sympathize me? That's right. Yi Mu said, and suddenly pulled down Mo Linyuan's clothes, startling him. What's wrong? He pulled his clothes, not reacting for a moment. Yi Mu went near his ear and said, Missed you, I want you. In the past, Mo Linyuan said these words. Suddenly, Yi Mu said it, making his handsome face blush. Cough, it's still daytime. So what? Yi Mu felt her desire had been especially strong lately, so she did it without hesitation. Mo Linyuan gradually was incited with heat by her, and slowly gave up resisting. Besides, there was an altogether different flavor in the imperial study right? Thus as such, he goofed off for two shirchen. Afterward, Yi Mu contentedly leaned in his arms, sighing. I don't know why I've been missing you so much lately. Mo Linyuan felt happy hearing that and quickly kissed her. But this kiss was broken. Yi Mu suddenly frowned, covering her stomach. Oh no, my stomach hurts. Mo Linyuan was dumbfounded, thinking he had used too much strength just now and hurt her, so he quickly called the imperial physician over. As a result, after the imperial physician came, with a red face, Your Majesty, Empress is pregnant, some matters should be done in moderation. What? Pregnant? Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan were surprised. Yi Mu didn't even think of being a mother at such a young age. On the other hand, Mo Linyuan secretly screamed how terrible, he hadn't had enough of spending his time with just the two of them. But it was inevitable. There was a child already, just control next time. So Mo Linyuan, who had just eaten meat not long before, became a vegetarian. This bitterness was only known to him. Chapter 413 Ending Five months passed in a blink. Yi Mu's stomach was like a bulging balloon. Many people said her child was definitely a boy, but Yi Mu quietly thought she wanted it to be a girl. On this day, after Yi Mu finished eating, she strolled in the imperial garden, 
walking about. Then, a servant stealthily ran up to her and told her. Empress, someone from the former empire is encouraging his majesty to select talented women, but his majesty refused and also found a pretext to punish that person. Yi Mu listened. She felt happy, but also unhappy. At this moment, Zhao Mingyu came. Zhao Mingyu was now Mo country's frequent visitor. After the war, many things had to be dealt with. Zhao Mingyu was unwilling to be implicated in this arduous task, so she looked for Mo Linyuan for an idle job and became a hands-off manager herself, making others help her handle the matters of the thief. As Shed thought, she was now providing for two male companions. Wherever she went, she was an enviable female role, awe-inspiring. Yeah, your tummy has become so big. The moment Zhao Mingyu came in and saw Yi Mu, these were her first words. Yi Mu was feeling bored. After she came, the two people had a talking partner, so quickly welcomed over. What wind blew you here today? Zhao Mingyu quickly said, You don't move, don't move, sit there. You're with a child now, what if something happens to you, his majesty won't chop my head off. With this said, she helped Yi Mu sit on the couch. Turns out Zhao Mingyu came to say goodbye, because although she was a hands-off manager, the previous Zhao country was after all her current fief, so she definitely couldn't completely neglect it. Hence this time, she planned to find Imo Linyuan to ask for two capable people to bring with her, and while she was at it, bid Yi Mu farewell. Hearing Zhao Mingyu was leaving, Yi Mu was sad. Zhao Mingyu unexpectedly told Yi Mu, I heard there has been an official who's been encouraging his majesty to select a talented woman. Most likely they noticed the imperial harem is empty and there's only you, who's also pregnant, making them think there is a chance. They can use the emperor's heir to force his majesty to bring in a concubine, what's your plan for this? Yi Mu was baffled. What can I plan? Isn't this up to him? Zhao Mingyu stared at her. You're soon the mother of a child. You ought to think of some matters already. Right now his majesty only loves you, you're also young, but what about later? As soon as you're pregnant, I'm afraid someone will climb into his bed. Rather than having some suspicious people climb into his bed, you'd better train a few trusted subordinates. After all, men can't stand it after eating meat again. Every time you're pregnant you can't always let him endure for a year, right? Zhao Mingyu's words made Yi Mu suddenly feel upset, but then quickly became better again. She told Zhao Mingyu, if it's others, they'll be skeptical, but I trust he's not that kind of person. Not to mention that I'm still young, even if I'm old, they'll still believe in him. Hearing Yi Mu say that Zhao Mingyu didn't speak for a long time. After a good while, she suddenly snorted with laughter. I was just teasing you. He has such a good wife, what else does he want? I just admire you a lot. You trust each other this much. Yi Mu patted her stomach and contentedly smiled. Afterward, Zhao Mingyu left. Yi Mu actually was rather sad. When Mo Linyuan came back at night, he told him about this matter, said Zhao Mingyu will soon go back to the fief, and also told her not to worry. He also heard that pregnant people like to overthink, so could only be comprehensive like this. Yi Mu rolled her eyes. She hugged her stomach, nestling in Mo Linyuan's arms. Mo Linyuan was like hugging his wife and child. The exhaustion of the day suddenly disappeared, and then Yi Mu said in a quiet voice, I heard someone wants you to choose a woman. What are you thinking? Mo Linyuan feared Yi Mu was overthinking and quickly said, Do you not know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of you. Yi Mu listened and very affectionately acted like a spoiled child in his arms. You've been vegetarian these days. When you start eating meat again, will it be difficult? What if? She had wanted to say, what if she satisfied him tonight? After all, if it was moderate there was no problem. Anyway, three months had passed. Who knew Mo Linyuan didn't wait until she finished speaking, covering her mouth. Mo Linyuan said, don't say the latter words aloud, I've always endured it before, if you say it'll be tempted. Seeing Yi Mu still didn't behave well under his hand and still wanted to speak, he lowered his head and kissed her forehead, sighing. You could come back to my side. That's already the joy of my life. I never asked for too much. Besides, I endured it for so many years before. It's only a short few months, you have to trust me. But having thought of something he added, of course, the condition is, don't seduce me. 
he couldn't stand her painstaking seduction most he would feel tempted in an instant. Hearing that, Yi Mu was touched. She suddenly hugged his neck and directly gave him a long French kiss. Her eyes were lit with slyness, and the words she spoke carried even more seductive flavor. You can stand it, but I can't. Pregnant women have a very intense desire. I don't care, I want you to be a bit gentle and satisfy me. Mo Linyuan knew she was doing this to help him, but under her instigation, he wouldn't be a man if he could still bear it. Being vegetarian for over five months, Mo Linyuan almost immediately carried her onto the bed. You asked for this, don't cry later. Yi Mu provocatively said, the one who cries is a dog. Mo Linyuan faintly smiled, directly pouncing like a ravenous wolf. The night was still long. Although a lot of restraint was needed, it could be relieved a little. Finally, after a few months, Yi Mu gave birth to a son. Mo Linyuan was very pleased and directly ordered to celebrate and then gave amnesty to the world. One month later, it was the child's one-month-old birthday. The emperor and empress couldn't be found and everyone panicked. It was the crown prince's big day, how come the parents were nowhere to be seen? What they didn't think of was, on the lotus pond in the palace, in a boat, Mo Linyuan was hugging Yi Mu, currently digging into food. Yi Mu had struggled from postpartum confinement, and in this period of time, he had been holding back. When Yi Mu was bathing, she said although her build recovered very quickly, it was still quite fleshy. Hadn't she lost her sex appeal like this? So Mo Linyuan couldn't stand it and earnestly told her with his body if she still had sex appeal. Yi Mu resisted at first. As a result, she was hidden by Mo Linyuan like this. Having such brazen parents also reflected the crown prince's future position. It seemed if this crown prince wanted to snatch his mother from his unscrupulous father, it would be rather difficult. Luckily Yi Mu loved him. But after he turned 18, the unscrupulous father took his mother away. From then on, the lovely couple traveled around the world, leaving him to suffer in the palace and take care of the younger twin brother and sister. But under the governance of Mo Linyuan and his son, Mo country flourished even more. Later, people called Mo Linyuan the first emperor for all eternity, a wise king of a golden age. His son was defiant such a deserving responsibility, knowing the guy who doted on his wife, how could he be a wise king? Just wait, his reputation will surpass his old man's. The End Chapter 414 Side Story, Popularized Simplified Chinese on a certain day of a certain day and a certain month, a little boy wearing a golden robe frowned as he walked toward the imperial study. In the end, the moment he pushed open the doors, he saw that unscrupulous father hugging his lovely mother, reading through a memorial. Outrageous, this is simply outrageous. The little crown prince endlessly ridiculed in his heart. The emperor in the imperial study finally noticed him. Why are you back? Class is over. Not yet, the crown prince gloomily replied. So you're skipping class? Seeing Mo Linyuan's expression become displeased, Yi Mu quickly said, Why are you pulling a long face? Maybe the child has a problem. With this said, she left Mo Linyuan's embrace and walked to the little boy. She crouched and, smiling, pinched his face. Xiao Qi, tell mother, what happened? Nothing. The little boy gloomily replied because he had understood it on the way back as if it wasn't a big deal, but seeing Yi Mu keep staring at him, he sheepishly said, I used simplified characters that mother taught me to write a poem. Master and the other students said, the characters mother taught me are wrong. I was so angry and explained it to them, but they were all saying like that. I got angry and came back first. Chinese characters have two versions, simplified and traditional. The simplified one mostly has fewer strokes than the traditional. Simplified Chinese was only introduced in the 20th century, it's still unknown in ancient times. Mo Linyuan frowned. Why did you use simplified characters, were you lazy? Hearing Mo Linyuan's stern tone, Yi Mu glared at him. Glared by his own wife, even if Mo Linyuan was still displeased, he couldn't say it. He warned his son with his eyes, and then lowered his head and continued writing the report. Yi Mu on the other hand smiled at him. It's fine, it's not a big deal, but because the simplified characters are characters that aren't popularized yet, no one knows it, so of course they said you're wrong. But, how will you solve this matter? 
The little crown prince furrowed his brows, and in a low voice said, Is it because it's not practiced yet? But I think the simplified characters is convenient. Not only is it easier to write, but it's also easier to memorize. If it can gain popularity, these characters can benefit the people who have never read or are about to learn to read. Yi Mu saw her own child could already think of such matters at such a small age. She also didn't hit him and only said, Then how will you popularize it? Tell me, mother will support you. Mo Lin Yuan on the side humphed quietly. Such a big child and still needed his mother's support, indeed too weak. The crown prince had wanted to ask his mother for help, but after hearing that humph, he puffed up his chest. Mother, don't worry about this, I already have a solution, I know what to do. Yi Mu was quite surprised. Her son was only ten years old and he could think of a good plan already. She smiled. Mother is all ears. But the little boy refused. Mother, I want to surprise you. Relax, I will show you that your son is outstanding. Seeing Yi Mu speaking softly with their son, Mo Lin Yuan was quite jealous. Wife, didn't you say you want to mix me some ink, how come you stopped halfway? Yi Mu glared at him in anger, you're telling me. He coaxed her to mix him ink, but the next second she was held in his arms. The little boy revealed a look of despise. It was always like this, every time mother talked with him for a while, the unscrupulous father would become jealous. But it's okay, had thought of how to bully his father. He complacently smiled and gleefully said to Yi Mu, Mother, he'll go prepare my popularizing plan. He'll secretly tell you at night. Yi Mu was just about to respond when she heard Mo Lin Yuan on one side say, Wife, you said you wanted to go boating and admire the moon with me tonight. Remembering the boat, Yi Mu felt somewhat embarrassed and angry. She glared at Mo Lin Yuan, but people could see there was a deep affection between this husband and wife. A few casual words could emit pink bubbles. The little boy sighed and slipped away first. Yi Mu watched his back and turned around. Irritatedly, she said, look at you, bullying our son like that. He definitely won't be close to you when he's older. Yi Mu walked over. Mo Lin Yuan held her in his arms once again, sighing contentedly. That's fine, as long as you and I are close. With this said, he lightly kissed her forehead. The two had been married for eleven years but were still as sweet as newlyweds. Yi Mu had completely grown up now, and the years had given her special treatment, almost didn't leave any sort of trace on her face. Although she was still not tall and her small delicate face also looked young, she was already a ripened peach. Tn, ripened peach mature woman. She nestled in her husband's arms. Having thought of something, she smiled. Say, what plan have Xiao Qi thought of? Popularizing a written language is not a simple matter. Mo Lin Yuan said, he's still young anyway, this matter handed over to him is enough to get him down for a few years. As for the end result, it will be up to his own ability. But this is also good, this way, we have more time to be alone together. After he finished saying these words, he also finished writing the memorial as he multitasked. Then, he carried Yi Mu onto the bed inside. Yi Mu glared at him. You still want to be lascivious at daylight? Mo Lin Yuan faintly smiled. As a reward for being busy all afternoon, satisfy me, wife. Yi Mu declined. No, today is a dangerous time. It's all right. Mo Lin Yan excitedly undid her belt. I've taken medicine, that medicine is harmless to a person's body, but can decrease your chance of becoming pregnant, don't be afraid. In this respect, Mo Lin Yuan had done his homework because once it occurred, he would need to be a vegetarian for a year. This kind of feeling was not good. Yi Mu had no choice and yielded. On the other side, in the eastern palace, the little boy was wielding his brush vigorously. Hmm, you big devil, since you've snatched my mother, I've decided, I will write a biography for you without mother, bite me. With this said, he used simplified Chinese to write the four characters emperor for all eternity, and then he recalled his father's life. Thoughts welling up in his mind, he wrote. The next day, learning what the crown prince had done, Mo Lin Yuan was awed. He listened to the servant's report, and his face didn't betray any emotion, but Yi Mu was very happy. Our son is really smart, actually thinking of such a way. With such a plan of his, it saves up manpower and material resources the most, 
and simplified Chinese will be popularized. The Crown Prince's way was both difficult and easy. He planned to gather a group of people to learn how to write the simplified characters first, and then let them use the simplified characters to write story scripts. The entertainment in this era was very few, so story scripts were rare products of pastime, but because those who could write came from well-off families and were well-educated, the people who could write widely loved scripts generally were officials or rich people with considerable literary talent, and the little crown prince wanted to start from story scripts. Chapter 415 Side Story, Pigeon Pair He decided to call together these people who could write story scripts and use their scripts to draw other people and those who wanted to understand the contents needed to learn simplified Chinese. These simplified characters and the characters that they already knew had some connection, so when they really wanted to learn, it was very easy. As long as their scripts were great, those books would be publicized and spread enough, and would imperceptibly change many people's impression of calligraphy. This matter might reach expectations within a short time. Once the new characters ran, it might help ease a lot of load to those who felt that reading was difficult. The new characters were also easier to record, write and memorize, it would definitely be accepted by everyone very soon. After listening, M.O. Linyuan twitched his mouth. This method is too slow, but seeing that he's still young, I won't haggle over it. Yi Mu snorted. I think this method is great. I heard our son is writing a script himself right now. Not sure what he's writing about, but he's still young, he shouldn't be writing about romance, right? M.O. Linyuan dangerously narrowed his eyes. For some reason, he felt like what that brat was writing might have something to do with him. Over a month later, the crown prince finally completed writing his script. But he didn't write about a gallant young scholar, but rather about his father's life. However, in the life written in the book, father didn't meet mother and remained alone all his life. Hence, in the end, he wrote his father died very early because when he was writing, he felt if father never met mother in his whole life, he must be lonely. When he finished, he brought the biography book for Yi Mu to read. Mother, mother, didn't you want to see my writing? I finished it. Just as he rushed inside, he saw that his unscrupulous father was yet again eating his mother's lips. But mother was good-tempered and always let him eat, but this big devil just wasn't aware, every day he would always eat mother's lips until swollen before he was willing to stop. Seeing their son had come, Yi Mu quickly pushed Emo Linyuan away and walked up to him, her face a bit red. You finished writing? Amazing, let mother see what you've written. But before Yi Mu's fingers could touch that book, her vision swayed. The moment Emo Linyuan came back to his senses, he held on to her. What happened? Someone, call the physician quick. The crown prince also panicked. He threw the book aside and moved closer. Mother, what's wrong? Yi Mu felt a little weak. She couldn't say a word for a while. After a moment, the physicians came. After they diagnosed Yi Mu, they congratulated Emo Linyuan. Congratulations your majesty, Empress is pregnant. It's been more than a month. As soon as the little crown prince heard, he immediately jumped up in joy. What? He'll have a younger sibling? But Emo Linyuan felt like thunder had bolted. He clearly had been careful, how come she still got pregnant? But regardless if he accepted this reality, there still needed to be a reward. When the physicians accepted the reward, they sighed with emotion on the way back. In this world, as a member of the imperial family, passing the days harmoniously like an average person is indeed rare. They usually had many wives and concubines as etiquette, but on the contrary, this kind of phenomenon wasn't seen in the palace. M.O. Linyuan's family of three was about to be a family of four, of five. They were undoubtedly the most honorable few people but were like an ordinary couple who deeply loved each other. The child could also casually act spoiled and didn't need to abide by too many rules. Many people said the crown prince was smart, so a lot of people thought, could it be that kind of relaxing way of raising someone could really encourage children? For a while, a lot of people imitated. Even more, a lot of men learned from M.O. Linyuan and only married one wife. Similarly, this kind of man was pursued by women, and was easier to get a happy marriage. Yi Mu also didn't expect she would get pregnant again. After she gave birth to Xiao Qi, she didn't want to have a child again, but since this child had come, she couldn't just get rid of him. 
After all, those officials were hoping her stomach would give a good showing and give birth to more children. After a long time of busyness, when Yimu could lean against the bed with a clear head, she told her son beside her, Xiao Qi, mother is very bored, didn't you write a story? Let mother see. Xiao Qi who had been in a state of excitement nodded and quickly left. Because Yimu suddenly felt unwell, he had become frantic and threw away the book he had worked hard on for one month. But it's okay, the servants in the palace could help tidy it up. But unexpectedly, when he went back, that script was nowhere to be seen, as if it had disappeared out of thin air. He asked other people, and they said they didn't see it. Xiao Qi immediately became worried. That was his result of more than one month, how was it gone? He looked for it the whole day and asked everyone nearby. All of them said they didn't see it. Xiao Qi was dejected but had to accept the reality. Seeing her son come back dispiritedly, Yi Mu was quite amused. No worries, if it's gone then it's gone, you can write it again later. Didn't you want to let everyone see your writing? Think of that previous book as your practice. But Xiao Qi sighed. His round face looked helpless as he said, No, that book isn't for others to see because it's about father, so it's not to be spread. Yi Mu suddenly became interested. Then what did you write about your father? Having thought of something, she cackled. In guessing you must have written something unpleasant, so he picked it up and purposely don't give it to you. Yi Mu saying thus, the crown prince immediately fumed with anger. Purposely don't give what? Speak of the devil, Mo Linyuan came in. Seeing Yi Mu all right, he faintly smiled. The little crown prince knew he should go back and sleep the moment Mo Linyuan came in, but he asked, upset, father, tell me honestly, did you take my script? Mo Linyuan frowned. Your mother wasn't well before. How would I notice your script? And what time is it now, still not sleeping? Someone, come and bring the crown prince back. The crown prince thought about it and felt, true, with father's manner of pampering his wife, it would be weird if he noticed the object on the ground. He opened his mouth and still wanted to speak. In the end, he was brought out by the servants. He hadn't told his mother that he wrote about father's biography. Forget it, just tell her next time. But where exactly did that book go, could someone have thrown it away? Besides, the hard work of over one month hadn't been shown to his mother. The little crown prince was disheartened. He decided he wouldn't write such things anymore and just focus on writing story scripts. And at this moment, that script suddenly appeared on an islet in the sea. Chapter, 416 Side Story, Formulation with Child Pregnant women worked very hard. Yi Mu's belly this time was especially big. Later, the physician said there could be two babies this time. This made Yi Mu shocked because pigeon pairs generally were hereditary. But it's fine, maybe it was a good thing for the male protagonist. Finally, it was the day of childbirth. Mo Linyuan was outside, anxious the physician said, because the fetuses were too big, it might be difficult for Yi Mu. Yi Mu had been inside for a long time and had not moved. Mo Linyuan was torn with anxiety as he watched a tub of watery blood carried out. He then rushed inside without a second thought. Yi Mu was feeling uncomfortable. And the midwife in this era actually was only to help calm one down. The person delivering the child told Yi Mu over and over to exert strength. Yi Mu's face was pale. She didn't give any reaction when she saw Mo Linyuan come in. The others seeing that His Majesty the Emperor had come in, were all shocked because it had always been considered an unlucky thing when a woman was giving birth, but they had no way to restrain the emperor. When Mo Linyuan came in, he didn't let them kneel as he sat by Yi Mu's side. Seeing Yi Mu sweating all over her body, he thought of an idea. He said unhesitatingly, we won't have children anymore. Yi Mu was beyond amused hearing this but was hurting too much, she couldn't laugh. Mo Linyuan was concerned. He pondered, and then put his hand on Yi Mu's stomach. He transmitted his internal energy to her. He didn't know if it was useful, but he was desperate anyway. Miraculously, once he did that, Yi Mu relaxed a lot. Mo Linyuan let out a long relieved sigh. Among the busy servants, he held Yi Mu's hand and fiercely said to her stomach, Come out quietly, or you'll get a good beating after you're out. His tone of scaring the child made Yi Mu burst into a fit of amusement, 
but whether the two children understood or not, Yi Mu suddenly felt at ease. Before long, the two children were born and were indeed a pigeon pair. The servants around them grinned from ear to ear, but Mo Linyan ached for Yi Mu. Yi Mu's face was pale, too fatigued. The face that was filled with vigor now looked sickly. Birthing the crown prince was easy last time and he wasn't very troubled. This time, however, Yi Mu was in much agony and a lot of blood streamed out, so when the two little children arrived, rather than excited, Mo Linyuan was angry. But what should be rewarded should be rewarded. Mo Linyuan gave amnesty to the world, letting people know he had another pair of children. A month later, the little crown prince looked at his white and tender younger brother and sister. He was bewildered. Mother, why do they look exactly the same? But it was right that the two little babies were cute, it was that kind of cute that made people want to kiss them the moment they caught sight of them. Yi Mu who was just out of her postpartum confinement smiled as she said, because they're born of the same parents. They will look very similar later. The little crown prince nodded in understanding. Because he really liked younger siblings, he told Yi Mu to give him two more. At this moment, Mo Linyuan came in. Hearing these words, he placed the nutritious soup on one side to cool and told his son, childbirth is an arduous task. You can't let your mother take the trouble because you want younger siblings, understand? The crown prince didn't respond, so Mo Linyuan continued, besides, as an elder brother, you have to take care of your younger siblings. This way, mother can relax a little, understand? Without realizing it, the crown prince had dug himself into a hole by his father. He nodded. You don't have to worry father. I will take good care of them. Mo Linyuan was very satisfied. He waved his big hand. Good, then these two children will be in your care. The little crown prince that was only eleven years old still had not understood what his unscrupulous father meant. When he turned eighteen and finally understood, it was too late. Every time he was surrounded by his six- or seven-year-old younger siblings asking questions, the crown prince just wanted to hide and cry. He had to handle his younger siblings' fights, had to handle his younger siblings' education, he had to handle all his younger siblings' basic needs. Having an unscrupulous father was indeed too painful. Did he think his formidable crown prince could be reduced to a stay-at-home dad? He was still unmarried, this was too much. Mo Linyuan paid no heed to his son's wailing. When the time arrived, he brought Yi Mu to start their late honeymoon trip. Yi Mu would occasionally dream of the modern world. She dreamed of her father, and only when she saw her father's health and life were great did she feel at ease. The first stop they went to after leaving the palace was a drizzling Jiangnan. That day when they arrived at Jiangnan, light rain was pouring from the sky. Countless gentle Jiangnan women walked past them and left a fragrant. Yi Mu looked at the still elegant Mo Linyuan. Thinking she was already thirty-odd years old and was a mother to three children, she couldn't help sighing. Those women's eyes were all about to be glued onto your body. Looks like you're still as elegant as before. Who knew Mo Linyuan was more jealous than her? He held her waist tight and resentfully said, So many men looked at you at the boat. I'm really furious. If you didn't hold on to me, I would have already beat them. They actually ignored his murderous look and stole glances at Yi Mu. Thinking about it made him mad. It couldn't be helped, not only was Imo Linyuan still attractive, but Yi Mu also became even more mature and beautiful. The childishness on her face had completely shed. She looked like a peerlessly elegant, beautiful woman. She faintly smiled, eyes wandering about. We're an old married couple, you're over-exaggerating. Mo Linyuan tugged Yi Mu into an inn. Still upset, he said, he'll let you feel the enthusiasm of an old married couple. With this said, he allowed no explanation as he made to bully her, draining the earlier accumulated jealousy onto her body. Later, they went to many places because previously, there were many things to do for M.O. country. After ten odd years of accumulation, a lot of places became prosperous. After the crown prince succeeded the throne, this prosperity thrived even more. Naturally, a lot of vermins also appeared. But it's all right, Mo Linyuan's martial arts skill was peerless. With him alive, Yi Mu could do whatever she wanted. They could always catch bad people and punish them. It would be chaotic like chickens flying and dogs jumping wherever they went, but when they walked, they could receive everyone's sincere support. 
The day naturally passed. Far away in the palace, Missouri Yuanchi struggled to read over memorials. Hearing his subordinates' report, he knew where his parents had gone frolicking. He couldn't help feeling envious. Just at this time, his younger brother and sister came. Each of their hands held small refreshments, and they placed them in front of their brother the emperor. Brother, hey raise something to eat. The cute and gentle sister soon climbed onto M.O. Yuanki's lap. His brother M.O. Shu fixed his gaze on the memorials on the desk with big eyes. Brother, you're reading over memorials. Looks like a lot of fun. Their brother the emperor's face was not the least bit happy. This kind of thing needed effort and was uninteresting. How was it fun? But he thought of something and looked at his younger brother, eyes gleaming. Xiao Xu, how's your studies? M.O. Shu deadpanned. Tudor said my knowledge is not bad, but still need to work hard. Brother the emperor revealed a devious smile. Then, do you think handling these state affairs is interesting? M.O. Shu nodded. In this small room, one can decide the fate of the majority of the people. Brother, I like this feeling. Good. The emperor rubbed his head. Smiling, he said, maintain this spirit. From tomorrow onward, after you finish classes, come find brother here, brother will teach you how to read memorials. Really? M.O. Shu, who didn't know he was sold, nodded. Okay, it'll come tomorrow. M.O. Shu thought, when he saw the look of his father and brother when they read through memorials, they had a domineering air. He would soon be like them. While the unscrupulous little emperor thought, when younger brother could do it, he could abdicate and let his brother take over. Thinking about it, it was a little exciting. Thinking he could go out and have fun like his father and mother, M.O. Yuanchi was excited. Some years later, learning that elder brother and sister-in-law brought elder sister to play outside, M.O. Shu let out a sorrowful sigh. Not bringing this pitiful brother. He read over the memorial while resentfully thinking, looks like it's time to find a wife. After giving birth to two sons, father and elder brother made him suffer. He couldn't make them suffer, so he could only make his own children suffer. Thinking this, he immediately laid down a decree to select talented individuals, but like his father and elder brother, he could also only choose one wife. After this, it became the tradition of Mo's imperial family. Many people eagerly followed suit, and they noticed that there were fewer women in the concubine's residence, fewer trouble, and the quality of life rapidly improved, until such that many years later, those noble ladies were unwilling to marry those who wanted to take an additional wife or concubine. Monogamy then seemed to become the era's trend. And that pair of couple that started all of this was still frolicking in the world. They would remain like this for their whole life, happy, until death parts them. End of story.